By the way, shouldn't these two books be your birthday present? Angelina took a look at the unpacked package and found that there were two thick books inside, the top one with economics principle. Is there anything wrong? Albert asked Angelina, looking at him in a puzzled manner. Angelina felt the corners of her mouth twitch, there was something wrong with Albert's eyes, and she knew what to say for a while. Why is this person in Greyfinder? Can I see it? Whatever you want, don't break it. Albert doesn't mind if others take it to see it, anyway, the other party will definitely not understand it, let alone be interested in it. The result was as Albert's guess. Angelina picked up the brand new Principles of Economics and turned two pages. She felt dizzy and could not understand what was being written in it. No, it should be said that she can understand every word, but she can't understand it even when connected. I really don't understand why your family sent you this stuff. George muttered. Interest. Albert didn't intend to go deeper, but turned off the topic, don't be too nervous, flying broomsticks are easy to learn. Is it the only one who can't ride a broomstick? Shauna murmured. Is the cake not to your appetite? Albert answered the question. No, no, I like chocolate cake. Shauna closed the quid ditch trace and wiped out the cake in front of her. Actually, Shauna can't help but feel nervous. She thinks that in Greyfinder's freshman, she may be the only one who can't ride a broomstick. This feeling is terrible. Actually, a few days ago, in the common room of Greyfinder, the announcement of Thursday's flight class was posted. Flying has undoubtedly become a hot topic among the freshmen of this year. Since the announcement was posted, words such as flying and broomsticks have been heard every day. It's just that this incident didn't bring much disturbance to the new students in Greyfinder. After all, everyone knows that Fred, George and Angelina, as the team's backup, follow the official players to train together, and prepare to participate in the official player selection next year. Albert and Lee Jordan occasionally participate in training. Both of them have very good flying skills. As for Alia, a witch from a wizard family, she has naturally been exposed to flying broomsticks since she was a child. As enthusiastic. So that after the flight lesson announcement was posted, no one had any special reaction, and even the topic of flying was much less than other colleges. There is only one exception. Shauna, who was born into a muggle family, has never been in contact with flying broomsticks. She is definitely the most nervous one of Greyfinder's freshmen. For this, she also borrowed a copy of Quidditch from the library, hoping to learn some flying skills from the book. It's a pity that Shauna doesn't have a panel, so she can't directly add some upgrades, and the book can't directly help her understand how to ride a broomstick. Don't worry, riding a broomstick is not as difficult as you believe. Have you ever ridden a bicycle? Albert actually understands the reason why Shauna is nervous, just like a person who is nervous when flying for the first time. It will be nervous, and it will be nervous. The most important thing is that she lacks confidence in herself. Honestly speaking, confidence is really important. Albert's confidence comes from his own panel. He knows that he will never fail, so he boldly tries and the big deal is to solve it through the panel. After all, there is still a lot of experience in the stored experience pool, which is the source of his confidence. Ride it. Shauna took a deep breath and replied. Riding a flying broomstick is like riding a bicycle. Albert reassured, someone will teach you it first. Try it a few times and you will definitely learn. Really? Shauna asked suspiciously. Really? Albert said, you should have a little confidence in yourself. Lee Jordan was speechless. Although he had never ridden a so-called bicycle, Lee Jordan dared to pat his chest to ensure that Albert was there again to fool others. You are amazing, but Shauna is not you. In the afternoon, a few minutes before the flight lesson, Albert and the students of Greyfinder hurried to the class venue, and the flying class of Greyfinder took place with the students of Slytherin. Why not have flying lessons on the quid ditch court? Fred was puzzled again, 
and their flying lessons took place on a flat lawn outside the castle. Who knows? Lee Jordan disagrees. It's not all the same anyway. Hurry up, don't be late. Angelina urged. She seemed to be eager to take the first flight lesson. Don't worry, there are five minutes left, enough time for you to go there. Albert was not in a hurry, and looked up at the lawn in front of him. The Slytherin student is already there, and is helping Mrs. Hooch to set up the flying broomstick. Mrs. Hooch is a short-haired woman with a hooked nose and pair of eagle-like eyes. After riding on a broomstick, it gives people an inexplicable illusion, as if it is an eagle that may swoop down to catch prey at any time. Flying lessons are almost the same as what Charlie taught them. First, let the broom jump into his hand. Most of the Greyfinder students succeeded after a few attempts. Only Shauna was an exception. Her broom did not move at all. Finally, Shauna bent down and held the broom in her hand. Come on, causing a burst of laughter. Madame Hooch, who saw this scene, also shook her head impenetrably. Don't worry, there are only a few who can do it easily. Angelina motioned to the flushed Shauna to look at the Slytherin students opposite. Their situation is not much better than her, those who were still laughing at her just now. Are still competing with their broomsticks. Next is how to ride a flying broomstick and the correct grip of both hands. Mrs. Hooch walked back and forth among the students to correct everyone's wrong grip. She was amazed by the high level of Gryffindor students and returned to Griffin for this. An extra five points were added, which made the Slytherin students who were criticized on the opposite side very upset. Then, practice lifting off the ground. Shauna's situation is even worse. The broom she is riding on is trembling slightly. I don't know if it is her broom or she is trembling. After finishing the simple tutorial, Mrs. Hooch allowed the best broom riders to practice freely. With her eyesight, it was natural to see that Albert had already mastered the skills of flying broomsticks. Fred happily watched the Slytherin student who was still receiving instruction, riding a broom off the ground behind George, and starting to fly like a treasure in the sky. Albert could not help but shook his head again and again, he naturally knew that Fred was doing this to stimulate the Slytherin student opposite. After all, the talent of the freshman in the opposite period is far less than that of Greyfinder. There is no way, except for the worst flight of Greyfinder, Santa was left behind by Mrs. Hooch, most of them have already flown in the sky. UU reading www.yunchu.com Actually, some of us don't need flying lessons at all. George said to Fred that the two were flying in a cross-spiral flight, which drew applause. Fly well, said Lee Jordan. He has gone to Quidditch Stadium training far less often than the Weasley twins. Even if I go with Albert, I just enjoy flying on a broomstick or playing ball with everyone. But, Slytherin students can't do it. When Lee Jordan landed, he said in front of the Slytherin students, instantly pulling up a wave of hatred, causing a group of little snakes to glare. I was right. We can only say that we are far better than them in this respect. Albert gave the Slytherin student a knife in his chest without hesitation. Come on, Warrington, overtake Weasley. In the sky, a well-flying Slytherin student is following George and Fred, and under the shouts of Zhang Shenson and the companions below, it has evolved into a circle game. Fly faster and more stable than anyone else. Same as the twins who often trained to fly around the court, Slytherin's Wallington was only one quarter short, and ultimately frustrated. After the incident, all three of them were trained by Mrs. Hooch, but everyone could see that Fred and George didn't care, and they cared more about Warrington who won the Slytherin. One, Fred announced happily. Isn't this normal? Albert looked at the two silently, they couldn't lose from the beginning. It's just that these words reached the ears of Slytherin students. I don't know why it is so harsh. What is normal? Is it normal that we Slytherin will lose? I'm so angry, I really want to beat him up. The sun is shining on weekends. The breeze brings the coolness of autumn. Looking out from the windows of the Greyfinder Tower, you can see students playing on the lawn. 
the door to the entrance of the lounge revolved open. Lee Jordan just crawled in from the hallway and looked around, his eyes fell on Albert by the fireplace, stepped quickly over, and said as he walked, Albert, I heard that you beat the Slytherin student. As soon as I said this, many people in the lounge turned their heads and looked over here, as if they were very interested in this topic. Oh! Albert stopped what he was doing, raised his head and looked at Lee Jordan, who was coming here, and asked with a puzzled look, what is it that I beat the Slytherin student? Literal meaning. At this time, the entrance to the Greyfinder Lounge was opened again, and Fred and George hurriedly crawled across the corridor. I heard that you beat the Slytherin people. As soon as they entered the lounge, they looked at Albert up and down, and said after a long time, good job, next time, remember to call us. What's the matter? Albert asked. Don't you know? George looked at the people around him suspiciously. I don't know. Albert shook his head, I have been practicing the cutting spell. But everyone is talking about this. Fred saw the doubt on his friend's face, and realized that something was wrong, just now, they said. Stop, I don't remember that I hit someone. Albert immediately stopped a few people. And, do you see me with thin arms and legs? looks like someone who is good at fighting, dot. After finishing speaking, Albert also stretched out his hand and patted his wrist, showing the expression that you are teasing me. On the surface, Albert is really not strong, at best he is not thin. I will be fine if the other party doesn't come and hit me. Seeing the surprised expressions of several people, Albert said angrily. Did you cast a spell on them? In fact, George also felt that the rumors were not very reliable. It would be more credible if Albert had cast a spell on someone and overturned the Slytherin students. After all, the magic level of this guy in front of him is indeed much better than other freshmen in the same class. Be careful I sue you for libel. Albert stared at George, pointed to the armchair next to him, and motioned for the three to sit down and listen to him. What the is going on? How many people say you put? Shut up, do you believe in rumors? Albert said grimly, believe it or not, I'll find a bunch of people to spread the word that you like to hum and dance in the shower. Is this true? Lee Jordan's eyes flashed with curiosity. Be careful and beat you, Albert said it was a rumors. Fred said badly. Let's talk, what's going on, the rumors can't be without reason. George motioned for the two to be quiet, and let Albert speak. As you know, after dinner on the weekend morning, I often walk around with my camera and take a few photos by the way. Albert began to recall what happened not long ago. In the corridor on the second floor, I met several Slytherin students walked towards me side by side. At that time, I was still sideways to make way for them, but I was hit by one of them in the shoulder. Somehow, the person who hit me fell on his own. On the ground, he covered his shoulders with pain. Speaking of this, Albert looked innocent, later, I reached out and pulled him up from the ground, and then he screamed inexplicably, this time he was holding his palm, and I didn't even figure it out. What happened? That's it. The three of them looked inexplicable. Why do people say that you put that Slytherin student into the school hospital? George said with a weird look. How could I know, Albert thought for a while and said seriously, maybe I persuaded those Slytherin students to take that person to the school hospital for an examination. Especially after listening to Albert's description, he was the most innocent victim, as if he had encountered an innocent disaster. The three of them looked at each other, and they were shocked. To be honest, if you don't know Albert, you really believe it but when this guy is fooling others, it's really easy to believe what he says. Things may be just like what he said. The actual version is. Albert had just finished his breakfast and took the camera to go for a walk and took pictures. On the way, he met a few Slytherin students of the same class who walked side by side towards Albert. At that time, Albert really turned to the side to make way for them but the group of guys really made trouble deliberately and planned to hit him with his shoulder. 
Albert never thought that he would encounter such a mess, but he was not an easy master, and he was not afraid of someone asking for trouble, whether it was directly or using a magic wand. In the eyes of others, the Slytherin student who fell over his shoulders, and Albert who was surprised. Whose problem is it, it goes without saying. Then, Albert gave the other gentleman a hand and asked if he was injured. That person probably wanted to use this to knock Alberta to the ground www.mtlnovel.com but as a result, he held Albert's hand and was squeezed hard, and all the painful tears were left behind. From the eyes of those who witnessed it, Albert had a helpless and innocent look, but he didn't know how to spread it, and it turned out that Albert beat the Slytherin student. The man entered the school hospital and it is said that Mrs. Pomford was cured. Actually, my shoulder was hurt too. Albert suddenly said seriously. The three rolled their eyes together. Anyway, I am also a victim of this. Who knows that he is like porcelain that can be broken at the touch of a touch. Hearing Albert used fragile porcelain to describe the Slytherin students, those who overheard couldn't help but laugh. The students of Gryffindor and Slytherin have never seen each other. What are you doing? Lee Keaton was not entangled in the matter just now, watching Albert was cutting a piece of wood. I didn't say that I was practicing the cutting spell. Albert picked up a wooden cross and there were a few circle-shaped objects beside it. This seems to be the wood of the Dharma tree. George said suddenly. Well, I got it from Hagrid a while ago, just to practice the cutting spell. Albert nodded naturally. Fred reached out to take the cross and commented. However, the workmanship is really rough. Do you want to give it away as a talisman? If you make a talisman and give it away, I will definitely make it more refined. Albert said grimly. Are you sure that the items made by the tree can protect people from dark creatures? Who knows? Albert also couldn't be sure whether the gadget in his hand was effective, but it was not difficult to figure it out. Just ask someone to ask. Well. Today's class will be over here, don't forget to write homework. Professor Broad announced that after class, the students began to pack their things and leave the classroom. Professor Browder. Albert deliberately stayed behind. What's the matter, Mr. Anderson? Professor Broad asked, looking up at Albert. That's it, I have a question. Albert said immediately, behind the dark force, self-defense guide. I read about Grindillo and remembered the one you mentioned in the first class. A plant called the Dharma tree. Professor Browder looked at this gifted student with interest, and asked with a smile, Do you want to know whether the guardian tree can protect people from Grindillo? Yes. Albert headed. Theoretically, it should be possible. Professor Browd pointed his finger outside and told Albert that someone was waiting for him outside. Theoretically. Albert turned around suspiciously and waved to the three of Fred, who signaled that he didn't have to wait for himself. Yes, theoretically, I'm glad you realized this. Professor Broad said happily, the guardian tree is a magical sorbus tree that will protect those who touch its trunk from dark creatures. Of course, this is a documentary record. Since it can be recorded in a thousand magical herbs and mushrooms, it shows that the tree is indeed effective, but, this kind of thing is only theoretical. Albert was silent and listened quietly to the other party to continue talking. Professor Browd looked at the scenery outside the window and was immersed in his own memories. When I was very young, a friend once gave me an amulet, claiming to be able to resist werewolves, dementors and yin as long as I was wearing it. Corpse. Does it really work? Albert asked curiously. Yes, it works. Professor Broad nodded and said, of course, the effect is not as exaggerated as he said, but the amulet can indeed make some dark creatures retreat. It does protect you from some wind traveling. Unnecessary interference. Is the amulet made of Yamanashi trees? Albert had already thought of what Professor Broad said. Yes, the effect of the amulet was gradually weakened due to the relationship of time. Professor Broad nodded. Albert was silent. He was thinking of Professor Broad's words to a certain degree of authenticity. 
is the amulet made by Yamanashi trees so effective? After the amulet expired, I asked him for another one, but it was rejected. He told me that as long as the amulet was soaked in smashed garlic, the vampire could stay away. Professor Broad looked at Albert, who was dumbfounded, shook his head and said, I followed his proposal and put the amulet in smashed garlic for a day. Later, the amulet was full of garlic. Are vampires really afraid of garlic and crosses? Albert couldn't help asking. Fear, it may be more appropriate to use hate. Vampires hate the smell of garlic. Professor Broad continued, that is an excitement for vampires, like someone driving you behind with something you hate. What about the cross? Albert asked again. At that time, muggles used the branches of the protector tree to make a cross. It did have an effect, but the effect was minimal. Professor Broad shook his head, of course, the more important aspect of the cross is to give people courage in terms of faith. So, vampires are not afraid of the cross. Yes, they are not afraid. Professor Broad brought back the topic again, later, I saw amulet sellers on the market again, and also spent two gallons to buy one, which is also a tree of dharma. Made of wood. No effect. Albert thought he might have guessed the possibility. No, I can't say that it didn't work, but... Professor Broad grinned and said, basically no effect. Why? Good question, why? Professor Broad asked, why do you think it is? I don't know. Albert shook his head, is the amulet made of wood from the tree? Do you know alchemy? Professor Broad suddenly changed the subject. I know. Albert said without hesitation, an ancient chemical prototype. Chemistry, sorry, kid, I didn't understand what you're talking about. Professor Broad was also taken aback. He really didn't understand how Albert actually spit out the word chemistry. In the wizard's worldview, there is no chemistry. This stuff. I mean the muggle worldview, you know, I come from a muggle family. I gather on muggle books. The so-called alchemy is the prototype of ancient chemistry. Albert explained casually. That's the case. But, the alchemy in the magical world is actually a kind of magic. Professor Broad continued, this is a profound subject. Alchemy includes many things. Unfortunately, this subject it's not popular in the UK. Only in Africa and Egypt have separate courses open. You think the amulet is an alchemy item? Albert immediately connected the two things together. Yes. Professor Broad was very happy that Albert had understood this, and he continued, Amulets made by alchemists can be regarded as amulets in the true sense and can best preserve the amulet. Tree effect. At least, Grindillo will not attack you when you wear the amulet across a swamp or lake. However, I need to remind you that don't buy amulets on the market. They are made by swindlers www.mtlnovel.com Although the Dharma tree is not very common, I think one is made from the wood of the Dharma tree. The amulet is not worth two gallons. Because it has not been processed by an alchemist. Albert asked rhetorically. That's right. Professor Browd looked at Albert and said, I guess you want to make amulets with the Dharma tree? Yes, I want to make a talisman for my sister, her birthday is coming soon. Albert did not hide, but avoided Professor Broad's gaze. He thought the old man might be seductive, although he didn't feel like he was seen through, but he should be more vigilant. As he said, Albert took out a cross made a while ago from his pocket. It's really simple, it's the ordinary kind of wood intertwined into a cross, the product of his practice cutting spell. This is indeed an amulet made from the wood of the Dharma tree. Professor Broad took the cross, looked up and down, and joked, however, it is very inferior. I dare to say that it cannot sell for two gallons. Albert knew that Professor Browder had just made a simple joke, and didn't care at all. If you want to make an amulet, I suggest you read books related to alchemy. Professor Broad suddenly suggested, if it is someone else, I might not recommend him to go to school. After all, 
it is at least 3. The difficulty of the grade selection. However, this shouldn't trouble you. Any recommendation? Albert asked. Simple Alchemy, this is an introductory book. I prefer to call it Foolish Alchemy. Professor Broad took out his pocket watch and glanced at the time and said, Well, I have another lesson later. If you still want to talk about defense against the dark arts, I suggest you come to the defense against the dark arts office on weekends to find me. Does Mars have no satellites? Fred was doing his homework. Not long ago, he discovered that he had forgotten the homework of the astronomy class, and now he can only do one temporarily. Mars has two satellites, but the satellites are relatively small. While flipping through the book, Albert answered Fred's question, the closer to the sun, the less likely it is to form satellites. Mercury and Venus have no satellites. That. Mercury and Venus, which is closer to the Sunday. Fred continued to ask. Mercury is closer to the Sunday. Finally caught up, help me check that there is an error. A few minutes later, Fred stretched out and passed the parchment across the table to Albert on the opposite side. The homework of the astronomy class is to draw a solar system astrological map. On the map, you need to draw a few large planets in detail, and you need to mark the names of the planets and the number of satellites. Albert glanced at the astrological chart on the parchment and saw the problem with Fred's homework. He reminded him, the positions of Saturn and Jupiter are wrong. Fred took the parchment and changed the positions of Saturn and Jupiter. After finishing his homework, Fred stretched, turned his head to look at George next to him and asked, Have you finished? George took it for granted, it's done a long time ago. Fred pretended to be angry and said, Traitor, you secretly do your homework without telling me. At that time I asked you to do it together, but you didn't do it yourself. Who can you blame? George couldn't help rolling his eyes at Fred, I still remember what you said back then. When you are done, lend me a copy. Lee Jordan grinned. Yes, you said that at the time. You didn't lend me a copy. You didn't say to copy again. The twins started quarreling daily again. In fact, the two of them were too busy. If they were busy, they would have no time to do such things. What book are you reading again? Lee Jordan asked curiously. He is writing today's homework. They will always get used to doing homework with Albert. The advantage is that if you have any questions, you can ask immediately, usually you can get it. GD, much faster than doing homework by himself. Fool style alchemy. Albert turned the book upside down and showed him the cover of the book. This book is Simple Alchemy introduced by Professor Broad. There seems to be no alchemy in the school. Angelina walked towards this side holding a single telescope that will be used in astronomy class in her hand, standing behind Albert and asked, By the way, when are you going? Astronomy Tower, class time is almost here. Wait another ten minutes. Albert took out his pocket watch, I don't want to stay on the tower to blow the air. He put his pocket watch aside and continued to look at the book in his hand. It's a pity that this book is a bit thin, and even after reading it, it can't be counted in a hundred. The author of Simple Alchemy is Yoko. That's right, it's the Yoko from the Yoko Joke Shop in Hogsmeade. To be honest, when Albert first saw the name of the author of this book, he was really surprised. Of course, it's not hard to guess what the book will be written by the owner of the joke shop. This book is actually telling everyone about the relationship between spells and alchemy. The invisibility cloak that originally sounded tall, turned into a cloak with a blinding curse in this book. Yes, this thing becomes the so-called alchemy prop. Blind eye curse can disguise an object, making it an inconspicuous stone on the side of the road, or something else. However, in the eyes of some wizards, using the blindfold curse on a cloak is undoubtedly redundant, and they can use it on themselves. Albert flipped through it and he really found a way to make the amulet. It's just that the introduction in the book is not to use the protection tree to make amulets, but to use the expulsion spell. 
The amulet made by this kind of spell can expel some of the dark creatures, but at the same time it will cause trouble to wear. When you carry this kind of amulet with you, it is difficult to receive the owl's mail again. The expulsion spell on the amulet will also expel the owl. Wizards who usually use this method to make amulets, the level of use of spells is usually very average, and they can't further use the expelling spell. Simple Alchemy also records the manufacturing methods of some prank and joke props. However, these weird things are not welcomed by most alchemists. After reading the whole book, Albert felt only one word, speechless. The most shameful thing is that at the end of this book, there is also an alchemy item that claims to be able to drive away vampires the garlic cross. Albert almost laughed when he saw the name. Is almost the same as the name. It uses the principle that vampires hate garlic to create a cross that exudes the smell of garlic. The simple method of making garlic cross is as follows. To make a wooden cross, use alcohol to extract garlic, heat and mix the extracted liquid with beeswax or essential oil in a water bath, and apply the mixture to the cross to make the cross full of garlic. Carrying a garlic flavored cross with him, there is a sense of inexplicable joy. Well. This book is really a shame on alchemy. Is alchemy interesting? Fred asked curiously www.mtlnovel.com interesting? No, alchemy is not interesting, but this book is very interesting. Albert closed the book and handed it to Fred, after reading this book, my understanding of alchemy has greatly changed. Let me see. Fred turned a few pages and said regretfully, this book is still a bit too advanced for us to understand at all. If there is alchemy, it should be an optional course in the third grade, but Hogwarts does not have it. Fred said with regret. Let me see. George took the book, and suddenly shouted, shocking the people next to him. What are you calling? Lee Keaton stared at George in a bad mood. Look, you must have not found out who the author of this book is. Author. Zoko. George has been deeply attracted by the above method of making joke props. Zoko from the Yoko Joke Shop. Several people asked curiously. Yes, it's him. Despite George's grimace, Albert put the book in his bag, let's go, time is almost up, if you are interested, there is still a long time, anyway, the book is there. By the way, why are you interested in this? George asked curiously as he climbed the spiral staircase. I happened to talk about defense against the dark arts when I talked to Professor Broad. He suggested that I read this book, so I borrowed it. Albert looked helpless, it's just, I didn't expect the content of this book is indeed a bit beyond my expectations. After reading Simple Alchemy, Albert's understanding of alchemy has gone wrong. Are the things in the book really alchemy? In this regard, Albert reserved his doubts in this regard. In the dormitory, the group of people who had just finished the astronomy class are all huddled by the edge of George's bed, reading Simple Alchemy and discussing the contents of the book. Albert never thought that Simple Alchemy would have such an attraction to the Fred trio. Perhaps it has something to do with Yoko, the author of the book. Although the title of the book is Simple Alchemy, the content of this book is not simple at all for freshmen in the first grade. The amount of knowledge reserves is not enough, and it is still very difficult to understand and understand the content of the book. In Albert's eyes, Fred, George and Lee Jordan showed an extraordinary enthusiasm for simple alchemy because they linked alchemy to Yoko's jokes. If an alchemist knew about this, I don't know how it would feel. Albert questioned simple alchemy. The main reason was that after he finished reading this book, there were no skills related to alchemy on the panel. As usual, by listening, reading or actively learning related knowledge, related skills will appear on the panel. No skills means that there is no alchemy in the book, or the knowledge of alchemy is not enough to form skills. While thinking, Albert stirred the milk tea in front of him, raised his head and looked at the three people whispering, and took a sip of the teacup. This is a good start, probably. I just pushed them gently, what will it look like in the future? Is really curious. Are you not going to eat it? 
Albert asked, shaking the biscuit he had bitten in his hand, by the way, do you understand that book? Reluctantly, but I didn't expect that Yoko would still be an expert in alchemy. Lee Jordan was quite moved. The publication of the book shows that he is good at this aspect. The expert can't talk about it, but he knows a little bit about alchemy, otherwise he won't be able to make those jokes. Albert ate the biscuits in his hand, drank the milk tea in the cup by the way, and stretched out. Lazy, ready to rest. You have finished reading that book, cough cough, water. Fred took a biscuit from the plate, handed it to Lee Keaton and then took a bite, but was choked up when he was eating. After reading it, I will return to the library tomorrow. Albert poured a glass of water for Fred, I want to go with me when I see it, and borrow it myself. Took a sip of water, and Fred was relieved. Okay, I'll go with you tomorrow. George said. He picked up the biscuits from the plate that Lee Jordan handed over, took a bite, thought for a while and asked, Have you ever thought about? I don't want to. Albert interrupted. I haven't finished talking yet. George looked at his roommate with a speechless expression. It's not hard to guess your little thoughts. Albert's face showed an expression of don't think I don't know what you are thinking, and reminded, alchemy is at least the third grade content. It's too difficult for you. I dare say that you may not understand that book. I don't believe it, don't you understand? Fred curled his lips. If you really don't understand, Albert will obviously not finish reading the entire book, because it is undoubtedly an extremely painful thing to gnaw on an incomprehensible book. The guy opposite obviously doesn't have that habit. Understanding and whether it is two different things. Albert reminded, alchemy is not as simple as you think. That book is just a joke. We didn't say that we should learn alchemy. Fred said cunningly, we just want to. Well, the alchemy you want. Albert thought for a while, took out a rough cross from the pocket of his robe, and threw it to George. The amulet I made can save you from the intrusion of dark creatures. If you want to learn, first practice the cutting spell, I'm teaching you. You bluffed us again. Fred didn't believe it, and, don't you think this cross is too ugly? Albert said seriously, this thing is worth two gallons. Two gallons. Fred and George couldn't help but raise their voices a bit, and looked up and down the rough cross, as if they wanted to see why this was worth this price. You could sell it in advance, right? Lee Keaton couldn't help rolling his eyes at Albert when he heard the words. After getting along for a month, he also understood the character of his roommate a little bit, and talked about fudge the words of others, six points true, four points false can make people who don't know, be fooled. That's right, Albert said. The effect of this thing is the same as the amulet in that book, and it is also made of wood from the Dharma tree. Most of the amulets sold on the market are made from the Dharma tree. There are many styles and finer workmanship, but they are actually that's it. Does this thing work? Fred asked suspiciously. On the contrary, the effect of this thing, very poor. Albert paused and said again, according to the description of the book, just soak the cross in garlic, take it out and dry it in a few days, and then make it complicated. Pick it a few times and you can get a cross full of garlic. This is good attention, the cross will be given to me, anyway you can make a bunch of them anytime. But where do we get the garlic? Fred seems to be very interested in this. Is the garlic cross? I heard that it also has the effect of resisting dark creatures www.ntlnovel.com You can write it on the parchment first, and try it after the Christmas holidays. Albert's mouth twitched, he was just joking, but he didn't expect these guys to take it seriously. He didn't want these guys to make the whole dorm smell like garlic. As for how the twins go home to die during the Christmas holidays, it is not his business. There should be garlic in the school kitchen. George suddenly said, maybe, we can get some house elves. If you want to eat garlic, the house elves will definitely give you some, but if you let them know. Albert's face showed a malicious smile, 
even if you are willing to give you garlic, would you dare to waste it like this? Okay. Fred shrank his neck. If Professor McGonagall knew that they were wasting a lot of garlic in the school, the family might have to send a roar letter to the school. George thought whimsically, we can get garlic from the kitchen, and then borrow Hagrid's vegetable field to grow garlic, so we don't have to worry about the shortage of garlic. That's a good idea. The others nodded in praise. What kind of show operation is this? Albert heard that the three of them were preparing to grow garlic, and he was shocked to hear from ear to ear. For the first time, he felt that the thinking of himself and his roommate were not on the consent channel. Do you really plan to, grow garlic yourself? Of course. The twins said in unison. Do you know how to grow garlic? Albert asked tentatively. I don't know, but Hagrid must know. Albert's cheeks twitched twice, and he didn't ask any more. He didn't think Hagrid would agree to let them make trouble in his vegetable garden. Ever since Albert showed his talent in potions, Snape hasn't bothered him any more, and it should be said that he completely ignored him. In the morning, after the potions class was over, Albert and George took advantage of the free time before lunch to go to the library, return the book Simple Alchemy, and then borrowed a book on alchemy. The name of the book is Extraction, Separation, and Potions. Albert originally thought the book was related to potions, but after reading the contents of the book, he was stunned to discover that it was a book on alchemy, and the content was about the relationship between alchemy and potions. Although potions are not equivalent to alchemy, the two still have a great relationship, and there is a partial overlap between the two. Some of the potion raw materials need to be processed through alchemy, and even some potions are obtained directly through alchemy. At present, the most representative one is white fresh flavor. Bakesian essence is a kind of thing obtained directly by extracting the herbal medicine called Bakesian. It is an effective medicine for treating wounds. Using Bakesian essence to treat wounds is far more effective than using Bakesian directly or using it to prepare potions. In the book Extraction, Separation, and Potions, there is a detailed record of how to extract the white freshness, which reminds him of the creation of a garlic cross in Simple Alchemy. Ahem, Albert quickly shakes off the the weird thoughts put the thoughts back on the book's description of extracting white fresh essence. Fred and Lee Jordan, who went to the kitchen, returned empty-handed. They sat listlessly on the chairs next to them, spreading their hands toward George with a look of helplessness. As Albert expected, the two got nothing, and the house elves did not allow them to take the garlic from the kitchen. This means that the twins' plan has been declared bankrupt before its implementation. I reminded you a long time ago. Albert looked at the discouraged three people and proposed, maybe, you can send a letter to your home and ask them to send you some garlic. Are you crazy? Fred looked at Albert in disbelief, his voice raised a bit, if we dare to do this, we will definitely be given a broomstick when we go back during the Christmas holidays. No, I think your mother may let you not use it in school, stay at home and continue to grow garlic. George couldn't help but vomit. The way to get garlic from home simply doesn't work even for research on defense against the dark arts. Do you have a good way? The three of them looked at Albert together, their eyes gleaming with hope, as if that was their only hope. Give up. Albert said, of course, if you really don't want to give up, I suggest you go to Diagon Alley to order some garlic by mail. The three of them suddenly withered when they heard this. If they have Canaan, do they still need to worry about this? So let's give up. Albert flipped the book in his hand and said indifferently, whether it is potions or alchemy, they are all things that burn money. What's wrong with the three of them? Shauna asked the three of them listlessly. It's nothing, it's just a little depressed, so ignore them for now. Albert said. Don't pay attention to us, unless you can help us get garlic. George waved to Shauna. Shauna looked inexplicable so she stopped paying attention to the twins. Instead, she chatted with Albert about today's homework in potions class, and asked him when he was free, and went to the library to complete the article about aconite. Paper. 
The difficulty of most of the papers lies in finding materials. It is faster if you find more people together. As for how to put the materials you find into a paper, it depends on your writing skills. Albert pulled out the homework sheet from his school bag, and after agreeing to a time with Shauna, he refocused his gaze on the book. To be honest, Albert hopes to find a way to develop the potion and photos of the magic world from the book Extraction, Separation, and Potions. In Albert's view, magic photos are undoubtedly related to alchemy. What's good to know is that he really found information about this in the catalog. While Albert was looking for the formula for making the developing potion and the correct way to use it, he suddenly discovered that a new panel task had been activated. Magical Photos That Move You have discovered the secret that magic photos can move, and you are trying to learn how to make magic photos, why not try it? Made 3 Magic Photos Reward, 500 Experience, Gain Skill Alchemy Until the end of the lunch, Albert was thinking about whether he should take the time to prepare a developing potion to try. The task gave little experience, but it would be good if he could directly obtain alchemy skills. After all, the task of magic lamp requires lighting alchemy. Skill Just after passing the hall, Albert suddenly heard someone calling himself next to him. He turned his head and looked at the three of them and asked, What's the matter? I didn't hear him clearly. We are going to try our luck in the next village. The three seem to have discussed the result, and that is to go to Hogsmeade to see if they can get some garlic, and then get back to grow their own. Oh, good luck then. Albert patted Fred on the shoulder and said, Actually, Hagrid must have them there, if you want. What is there? A sudden voice asked. Nothing. Fred was a little embarrassed, they were not familiar with Hagrid so they didn't intend to disturb each other in this regard. UU reading www.uuganchu. CM. Even if it was said that Hagrid borrowed a vegetable garden to grow garlic, it was just a joke. Hogwarts is so big, it's not difficult to find a place to sneak up some soil and grow some garlic. Garlic, we want to study whether garlic can resist dark creatures. Albert changed the subject and asked, Is there something? It's rare to see you enter the castle. I have something to find Dumbledore. Hagrid looked at the people suspiciously, walked towards the principal's room, turned around and said before leaving, If you need garlic, I can provide you with one. The three of them looked at Hagrid's leaving back, looking at each other. They didn't expect that they were still racking their brains, thinking about how to get garlic. Albert helped them get it done with a casual word. Is this not so good? George said. Hagrid often cooks by himself, and he has a vegetable garden. There is definitely no shortage of garlic. Albert glanced at the embarrassed three people. This Christmas, help me think about what Christmas gifts to give him. Hmm. Several people nodded repeatedly, indicating that they would help out at Christmas. However, I need to remind you that that little garlic is not enough. Albert said again. You take the time to grow your own. It's easy to grow garlic anyway. This was originally their plan. As for where to plant, the three of them actually thought about it. It wasn't Hagrid's vegetable garden, but a forbidden forest farther from Hagrid's hut. After listening to the three people's plan, Albert was silent. Actually, just plant some garlic, just get a vase and grow it yourself. As for fertilizer, isn't the ashes in the fireplace the best fertilizer? However, Albert did not intend to remind the three of them, let them slowly toss about this matter by themselves. For students living in Hogwarts, the weekend is undoubtedly a good day. At the weekend, everyone doesn't have to worry about being late for class, and they can wake up naturally after sleep. After waking up, they don't need to consider the problems encountered in class. They can have a good time and relax the pressure accumulated during the week. Let students take a breath during their busy study life. Early in the morning, the Weasley brothers' bed was already empty. The two got up early and went out, planning to plant garlic on the edge of the forbidden forest in a clearing where the sun could shine. 
this is where they found it after a lot of effort. It is sparsely populated and there is no need to worry about being discovered. To be honest, Albert really couldn't understand what Fred and George were thinking about. Is the time and energy spent growing garlic really just to make that kind of ridiculous amulet? Perhaps. Anyway, the two of them have very strange brains, and they are not surprised what they do. Before Albert finished breakfast, Fred and George had already returned. Their robes and hands were stained with dirt. After they hurried to the bathroom to clean them, they talked to him about growing garlic. Listening to the constant chatter of the two, Albert had always wanted to complain, did they not have the concept of planting garlic in a flower pot? Rejecting Lee Jordan's invitation to train at the Quidditch Stadium, Albert just reached 10 o'clock on his pocket watch, and he reached out on time to knock the wooden door of the Dark Arts Defense Office on the second floor of the castle. In other words, did you open the wooden door of the other's office the last time you entered Professor McGonagall's office? At that time, a few of them were not punished by Professor McGonagall. It is really incredible now that I think about it. The wooden door was opened from the inside, and Professor Bud Broad looked at Albert standing outside the door and invited him into his office with a smile, it was just ten o'clock, and you were really on time. I hope I didn't bother you. Albert walked into Professor Browder's office and looked at this extremely comfortable room. There were a few soft sofas in it, bronze carpets at the feet, and neat walls. There are several bookshelves on the ground, and the bookshelves are full of various books. The number must be over a hundred. Blue silk curtains hung around the windows. Looking out from the windows, you can see the courtyard of the castle. Now, some students are walking, chatting, and basking in the yard. What do you want to drink? Broad asked. Milk tea. Albert said curiously, Professor, take the liberty to ask, are you graduated from Ravenclaw? Yes, it's not hard to guess, right? Broad blinked at Albert. He raised his wand and tapped the empty teacup in front of the two of them. The cup immediately gave off a fragrant milk tea smell. Albert put some sugar in his milk tea and stirred it slowly with a spoon. For a moment, he took a sip from his teacup. I heard that Ravenclaw's eagle-shaped bronze door knocker is very interesting. Yes. Professor Broad nodded. As long as you can answer the question about the eagle-shaped bronze door knocker, the Ravenclaw common room will be open for you. Albert laughed without saying a word, shaking his head impenetrably. Although Professor Broad said so, he did not think that Ravenclaw students would welcome a stranger into their common room. People are always xenophobic. If students from other colleges go to the Greyfinder common room, the result is not hard to guess. Professor Browd pointed to the dessert on the table and said, You may like this freshly baked pumpkin pie. I also like pumpkin pie. It tastes great when it's hot. Albert took a piece of pumpkin pie and talked about the book he had read a while ago, By the way, Professor, I just read it. After Simple Alchemy, the book feels, very special. He organized his vocabulary a bit, then hesitated for a moment before continuing, it's hard to imagine that what is described in that book is the so-called alchemy. Do you understand this? I don't want to pretend to be an expert in alchemy. The opposite is true. My knowledge of alchemy is limited to the knowledge in books. Professor Broad shook his head and said, I think you are definitely not here today to discuss with me. It's alchemy, right? Albert knew that he should end the topic of alchemy, so he pulled the topic to Dark Force, a guide to self-defense, chatted with some doubts about reading this book, and talked about the spell described in the book by the way. I'm glad you talked about this topic. Professor Broad said happily, yes, that's right, as you can see, the Dark Force's self-defense guide does not record many useful defensive monsters. Curse but do you know why this book will become a must-chosen book in defense against the dark arts class? No. Albert said, this book can help us recognize the dark creatures in the world, and teach you how to deal with these dark creatures. Yes, you are right. In fact, this book is really not enough for a gifted student like you. 
Professor Broad put down his teacup and said, However, the Ministry of Magic does not like to expose students to moderately aggressive spell. Yes, it's not difficult to see. Albert picked up another pumpkin pie, took a bite, and continued, If I want to learn more about defense against the dark arts, I don't know if you have any good suggestions. I recommend you to read the book Practical Defense Magic and its Restraint to Dark Magic. Professor Broad took a book from the shelf and handed it to Albert, however, this set of books the price is a bit expensive. There is no collection in the school library. If you want to see it, I can borrow it from you. Oh, it's a coincidence. I happened to buy this set of books. I think the Iron Armor Curse and the Disarming Curse are very good. Albert quickly took out a handkerchief and wiped his greasy palm, and reached out to take the hand of Professor Broad. The book that came over, of course, the coma spell and obstacle spell are also good. Unfortunately, I don't know much about the curse. No, no, Mr. Anderson, it's amazing that you can master so many spells in a short period of time. The surprise in Professor Broad's eyes flashed away, and he asked with a smile. I heard McGonagall the professor is very optimistic about your accomplishments in the transformation spell. I think my talent in magic is not bad, plus I have been practicing magic well, so the speed will naturally not be too slow. Albert thought for a while and said, there is no harm in learning more things, maybe in the future. It's useful. The greed for knowledge is not a fault. Professor Browder suddenly showed an exaggerated expression. Merlin's beard, to be honest, you are more like Ravenclaw than Ravenclaw, the sorting hat will definitely let you choose right. Yes, the sorting hat thinks I am suitable for other colleges except Slytherin. Albert blinked and said, actually, I have no particular prejudice against other colleges, but because I met the current one on the train. My friend, so I chose to go to Greyfinder. Yes, yes. Being without prejudice is a good thing, and it is difficult for many people to do this. Professor Broad's eyes showed an appreciative smile. One day, when you finish learning practical defense magic and its restraint to dark magic, your level of defense against dark magic will reach the level of dot L. Professor Broad regretted Albert said, because this course was cursed by a certain wizard, the defense against the dark arts course, which is obviously very important has become dispensable. Most students are not high in this aspect. Professor, is the person who cursed the defense against the dark arts class alive? I'm afraid it is. Professor Broad nodded, otherwise, Dumbledore should try his best to relieve the curse. After all, it is very hard to find a defense against the dark arts professor every year. I heard from my roommate that the Ministry of Magic has a profession called Auror. They are all experts in defense against the dark arts. Why doesn't President Dumbledore invite Auror to teach students? Albert asked curiously. Tau. To be honest, this is also Albert's doubts in his last life. The retired Aurors are undoubtedly suitable for becoming a professor of defense against the dark arts. They have rich experience and only need a little experience to teach, which can benefit the students of the school. Many people are scared. Professor Broad blinked, and Albert dared to pat his chest to ensure that he saw contempt in Professor Broad's eyes just a moment ago. Afraid. They think this profession is unlucky, afraid of curses, and very few professors have successfully left this position. Professor Broad did not worry about his safety because of his position in this position. Moreover, the Ministry of Magic actually I don't want to see this happen either. Professor, I have another question. Albert said again. What is the problem? Have Principal Dumbledore ever thought about, stopping the defense against the dark arts class, choosing a new course, or changing the name of this course? Albert said his previous life thoughts, since Voldemort imposed the defense against the dark arts class curse, as long as this course disappears, the curse may also disappear together. As for the name of the class, it can be changed to a new one, called the defense class, the self-defense class can be anything, it's just a name. Professor Broad smiled, smiling happily, 
as if he had heard something interesting. You make a lot of sense. Defense against the dark arts is just a name after all. It is not impossible to discard it when necessary. Professor Browder nodded in agreement with Albert's point. I think Dumbledore should have thought about this too. But the wizard who put the curse on the defense against the dark arts class is not dead. After dropping this name, maybe he will put another curse on the new class. Although this explanation is reasonable, Albert thinks it is an excuse. However, he didn't ask too much and ended this topic www.mtlnovel.com If you learn the spells in Practical Defense Magic and its restraint to dark magic, you can borrow defense and defense from the library. Deterrence Curse, this book introduces many powerful defensive spells, which should satisfy you. Professor Broad continued, however, there are some things you need to know. What you see is only the surface of magic. The magic of magic is that it will undergo some subtle changes with your whimsical ideas. A powerful spell does not mean everything, sometimes a small spell can solve the problem easily. While Albert was still thinking about the meaning of this sentence, he heard Professor Browd say, Well, lunch time is coming. You better not miss it. I am very happy to chat with you. Most of the students are very in awe. It's hard to sit down and have a conversation like you and me. I have also benefited a lot, and I look forward to the next chat. Albert nodded in tribute to Professor Browd, turned and left the defense against the dark arts office. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. As soon as October arrived, Hogwarts Castle was already shrouded in wind and heavy rain. Heavy rain that lasted for several days caused the surrounding temperature to drop sharply. Under the rain curtain, the cold air permeated the castle quietly. When Albert noticed that he had a cold, he immediately went to the school hospital and got a cup of refreshing medicine from Madame Pomfrey, the head nurse. The effect was immediate after drinking the medicine. However, the downside is that people who drink this medicine will smoke in their ears for several hours. To this end, the twin brothers also gloated. As a result, they hadn't jumped for a few days, and their ears started to smoke. However, this seems to be a funny thing for the Weasley twins. They also deliberately sounded the siren of the train, which made everyone laugh. Outside the window, the rain is still falling. Greyfinder's common room was brightly lit, with a roaring flame burning in the fireplace, warm and comfortable. At this moment, Albert and his roommates are sitting by a window doing homework. You said, will the garlic seedlings be rotten by the rain? This rain has been going on for several days. George looked up at the dim rain screen outside the window, looking sullen. Be careful, if I were you, I would pay attention to my homework. Albert reminded, don't ruin your essay that is almost finished. Ah. George found a drop of ink on his parchment and couldn't help screaming, it's over, my homework. Don't howl, who distracted you while doing your homework? Angelina's temper is not very good. The Quidditch training a while ago made her catch a cold, even if she had drunk Madame Pomfrey's refreshing agent, her head now I am still a little groggy, unable to concentrate on homework. Should we check? I'm a bit worried that the garlic will be rotten by the blisters. Fred proposed anxiously. In such bad weather, they could not check the condition of germinated garlic. Albert shook his head when he heard this, and said in his heart, this is the difference between planting outside and planting in a flower pot. If you are worried about garlic, go out and check, but don't find me. Lee Keaton said grimly. There was still smoke in his ears, and the hapless man had just drank Madame Pomfrey's refreshing potion. The freshmen of this class were almost wiped out in the pandemic. It's useless to go out to check, and I can't do anything. George was also depressed and finally waited until the garlic sprouted. As a result, the heavy rain that lasted for several days came, 
and the freshly sprouted garlic seedlings were all soaked in water. They just grow garlic, is it so difficult? For some reason, the common room suddenly became lively, and people were talking excitedly about certain things. What happened? Angelina asked Albert. How would I know? Albert stared at the chrysanthemum he turned out a little depressed, and put it in the vase next to him. The chrysanthemums in the vase were all the result of Albert's practice of summoning. Notice to Hogsmeade. Lee Jordan said, pointing to a notice on the old bulletin board. At the end of October, before Halloween. Yes, but it was a third grade student's activity. Angelina corrected. She looked a little restless, and the buzzing talk in the lounge affected her concentration. Actually, I'm looking forward to Halloween this year. Albert has already been to Hogsmeade and is not interested in the only wizarding village in the UK. I heard from the senior sisters saying that Halloween at Hogwarts is very yes, that day, there will be bats flying everywhere in the castle, pumpkin lanterns and pumpkin food, and there will be a Halloween party in the evening. In, after Harry Potter came to Hogwarts, there will always be some moths every Halloween. In the first grade, the troll broke into the castle, in the second grade, Filch's cat was petrified, in the third grade, the wanted criminal Blake tried to break into the Gryffindor lounge, in the fourth grade, the school ushered in other players in the Triwizard tournament, in the fifth grade. Alia raised her eyebrows and asked, I don't think there is anything particularly fun about Halloween. Don't you think it would be more fun for everyone to spend Halloween together? Albert explained, playing games together is fun, and it is fun to spend the holidays together. It makes sense. Lee Keaton agreed. Last time, when I went to Hagrid, I found that in the vegetable field in his backyard, every pumpkin was half a person tall. Albert continued, those pumpkins should be prepared for Halloween. There is no doubt that Hagrid used the expansion spell on the pumpkin. In fact, Albert thinks that the twins can use the expansion curse on the garlic they grow, but they don't eat it anyway. Okay. If Fred and George would use the expansion spell. Unfortunately, compared to Halloween, everyone seems to be more interested in Hogsmeade. They also heard second grade students complaining about why they can only go to Hogsmeade in the third grade. However, Albert and his roommates are not as enthusiastic about Hogsmeade Village as the others. After all, a few people have only visited Hogsmeade not long ago, and there is not much mystery to them, and it is useless to go without money in their pockets. When the rain subsided, the twins immediately opened their umbrellas to check the condition of garlic, and by the way they also took Albert who was practicing the summoning technique together. The current situation is not very optimistic, all the garlic sprouts rotted in the water for too long. The expressions on the faces of several people were as gloomy as dark clouds in the sky. No way, the garlic seedlings finally gotten, waited for a long time until the garlic sprouted, but all this was ruined by a heavy rain. The twins who had worked so hard for this were suddenly depressed. What the are you doing? Hagrid's voice came from the rain curtain. When the three of them looked in the direction where the sound came from, they saw Hagrid rushing towards this side directly, without even hitting the umbrella, his body was wet with rain. He thought that a few people were going to enter the woods, so he hurried over www.mtlnovel.com His nose was almost crooked. Albert briefly talked about the situation, and Hager was stunned. He pointed to the twins in disbelief and said, You grow garlic here. When Hagrid saw the overturned sack and rotten garlic, he believed. Ahem, in fact, they just want to use garlic to try to make a amulet, they need a lot of garlic. Albert explained quickly. This is definitely the stupidest thing I have ever heard. Hagrid looked at the three of them speechlessly, reached out and patted Fred and George on the shoulders, it's not just planting garlic, don't be depressed, I can give you guys, this time they will be planted next to my vegetable garden. No, Hagrid. Albert interrupted. This time we are going to transplant garlic into flower pots, and then move the flower pots back to the dormitory. There is no need to worry about heavy rain. The only trouble is every time. 
it will take a while to move out to match the Sunday. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. The rainy days lasted for several days, the sky finally cleared, the temperature around the castle began to drop sharply, and winter in Scotland came without warning. In the dormitory, Fred, holding a small kettle and humming a little song, was standing by the window, watering the garlic sprouted in the flower pot. The garlic, which has been carefully taken care of by everyone, finally successfully sprouts in the flower pot, and now it has grown to the height of a thumb. I really don't understand, back then. George was putting a hand-knitted sweater on his body, and he couldn't help muttering and complaining, back then, why didn't we think about planting garlic in a flower pot? Don't water and fertilize the garlic seedlings in the flower pot all day long. Be careful to raise the garlic seedlings to death. Albert was buttoning himself on the buttons on his robe, not forgetting to say, today is a rare good weather. Don't forget to take the flower pot outside and let it bask in the sun for a while. The plant won't live long without the Sunday. The weather is getting colder and colder, and it has been raining intermittently throughout October. The weather is very bad, and the fine weather is rare. The pot of garlic in the dormitory has almost no chance to be exposed to the sun. From the time it sprouted to the present, the number of times it was taken out to the sun can be counted with one hand. What the are you guys doing? Filch stopped them when they passed the front hall. Hogwarts doesn't stipulate that potted grass cannot be grown, right? Fred pointed to the flower pot in his hand, I think this shouldn't violate school rules, right? This is grass, do you think I am blind? Filch pointed to the garlic seedling in the flower pot. Ahem, garlic was a weed shortly before people found it edible. Albert raised his eyebrows and reminded, and, this is not a dangerous plant. Hey, it's best not to let me find out what you guys are doing behind your back. Filch glared at the four of them, turned and walked away holding his cat. That guy is really annoying. George moved toward Filch's distant back and made a rude gesture. You can wait for the garlic to be planted and give him a few. The cat hates the pungent smell of garlic. The expression on Albert's face became very strange, as if he thought of something bad. During the meal, the surrounding senior students had been discussing Hogsmeade. Charlie also rarely stopped the weekend's devil training and gave the official Quidditch players a vacation. Percy sat not far from them, chattering with others about interesting things in Hogsmeade village. No one knew that Albert and his party had already slipped to Hogsmeade through the secret road. At nine o'clock in the morning, students who were going to Hogsmeade began to gather in the foyer. Filch stood in the middle of the door, holding a long list, checking the names of the students going to Hogsmeade one by one. The wrinkled old face leaned the list. After reciting every name, he would use doubts. Look at each other's face, and beware of any younger students who take the opportunity to sneak out. The four of them returned to the common room. Most of it was empty. Only the first and second grade students were left. They were very happy that no one would take a comfortable position with them. Of course, there are a few older students who have obviously been to Hogsmeade many times, and they have no fresh feelings about it. Continue to do homework. George asked. My distorted essay is still one inch short. I'm done, Albert reached out and patted George on the shoulder. Come on, I'm going to take a walk and take a few photos by the way. As he said, he raised the camera in his hand and asked, Is anyone going with me? I'll forget it. Fred was a little depressed, he couldn't believe how Albert could finish the pile of homework that the professors assigned forever. Others also shook their heads. The deformed essays they will submit next Monday have not yet been finished. If they cannot submit the papers in time, they may be detained by Professor McGonagall. Moreover, few people have mastered the levitating mantra that the mantra learns, and it takes time to practice the mantra. Forget it, I'll go by myself. 
The roommate's answers were entirely in Albert's expectation. Let us copy your homework, learn it. Lee Jordan said before Albert turned and left. Don't think about it, do you think Professor McGonagall will not be able to see it? Be careful she locks you in confinement. Albert waved at several people, turned and disappeared at the entrance of the lounge. Today, Hogwarts Castle is basically empty, most senior students go to Hogsmeade to play, and freshmen are enjoying the exclusive lounge. For Albert, this is a good opportunity. He came to the giant stick on the eighth floor of the castle to beat Barnabas Tapestry, raised his camera and took a picture of the tapestry. After observing no one around him, he closed his eyes and began to pace back and forth in front of the wall opposite the tapestry. I need a place for me to hide things. I need a place for me to hide things. I need a place for me to hide things. When Albert walked past the empty wall for the third time, the pattern of the door began to appear on the empty wall, and the door of the responsive house opened again for Albert. After confirming that no one was around, he opened the door and walked in. On the other side of the door is a spacious place like an auditorium. The windows above the room cast sunlight and shine on the hills piled up with discarded furniture. It is not difficult to see that these hills are all made by successive Hogwarts students or professors. They are piled up with items we have used. Successful. Albert raised his hand and made a yes gesture. Even if he knew that he could find this place, he was still a little excited when he really entered the place where things were stored in the responsive house. No way who made Voldemort's horcrux hide somewhere here. Find Ravenclaw's crown, that's why Albert entered here. Each of the heroes of Harry Potter fellows will try to find Voldemort's horcrux in the responsive house, and regard the great task of destroying the Dark Lord as their responsibility. Well, Albert's fan protagonist in his last life is not immune. However, Albert did not intend to give himself such a noble sentiment, and it is obviously not something that a sane person would do to die with the no-nose monster who has an IQ problem. Moreover, defeating the Dark Lord is the work of the Savior Potter. Stealing the limelight of the protagonist www.mtlnovel.com This is not kind. Moreover, the Savior Potter was born with the protagonist's halo body, so dangerous things naturally require him to be at the forefront. Even in a life and death crisis, he can resist through the protagonist's halo. The boy who lived in distress is not for nothing. However, Voldemort is a trouble to deal with after all. In Albert's eyes, this final boss is a trouble. He doesn't mind helping out in the back, so that the guy nicknamed the No-Nose Monster will die faster. The premise is that the death of the big boss in Harry Potter can bring him enough benefits. In fact, Albert never doubted this. After all, it's also a big boss, anyway, it can squeeze enough benefits from the opponent through the panel. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. As we all know, Playing boss means experience and spoils. Of course, the premise is that you are not killed by the boss, and by the way, take your own life together. How to smoothly transform the Dark Lord into experience is definitely a technical task. The hapless Quirinus. Quirrell is a good negative teaching material. This talented young wizard is too naive and conceited. He even imagined that he could learn more magic skills from Voldemort and put it into practice. Practice, by the way, take your own life together. Compared with the remnant of Voldemort, who doesn't know which horn he's hiding in, starting with his horcrux is undoubtedly a simple and effective way of harvesting experience, and the best horcrux to find is Ravenclaw who stays in the responsive house. Of the crown. Albert is convinced that as long as he can find Ravenclaw's crown, he can definitely stimulate one or two panel tasks, or more which means experience and skill points. After harvesting the fruits of the mission, you can also sell Dumbledore a favor, and get some benefits from the old man who has lived for a century. As for how to explain to Dumbledore? In fact, 
it's very simple it's just a chance discovery. Yes. Occasionally a small probability event. At that time, when Fred and George escaped Filch during the night tour, he accidentally broke into the responsive house, and then used this clue to further dig out the way to enter the responsive house. After finding a room that is responsive to requests, and aware of the wonders of the room, with Greyfinder's character, naturally, he will not give up exploration and experimentation. On the other hand, while conducting various tests on this magical room, I discovered this place, and while exploring this place, I occasionally heard whispers and whispers, following the sound to find the suspected dark magic item. The rest is better solved, just talk to Dumbledore about it and say that you find something a bit like a raven claw crown. Then bring the other side here, everything is done. Albert really didn't believe that Dumbledore didn't believe it, because every word he said was true, and words woven from a bunch of truths were naturally true. According to speculation, Dumbledore should also be aware of the existence of the responsive house, and even know how to get in, but he had never thought that Voldemort's horcrux would be hidden here. The only trouble with this is how to choose the right time, telling Dumbledore that the time must be right, which is very important. Of course, the premise of all this is to find Ravenclaw's crown, and there are enough benefits for Albert to take risks. As for, no good? No good, say an egg. Albert took a deep breath. The sight before him was truly amazing. He raised the camera and snapped a picture. My photography skills are getting better and better. Albert glanced at the photo and stuffed it into the pocket of his robe. Only then did he cautiously walk towards the pile of crumbling and broken furniture in front of him, and it was dusty. Picking up a spiked flying saucer on the table, this thing has been left here for too long, completely losing its magic. Putting the spike flying saucer back on the table, Albert raised his head and his eyes fell on the stack of books not far away. He walked a few steps quickly, came to the pile of books, and pulled out a book from it. It is not difficult to see from the cover that this is a book of magic potion and potion. The potion professor of the owner was Snape, because a bat was drawn on the front page of the book, and it was also marked with Severus Snape. Short for, Professor S.S. There are many pictures in this book, and some of the pages are stained with stains and even torn. It can be seen that the owner of this book did not care about it. On the right-hand side of the pile of books are a few rusty armors. Next to the armor, there is a weapon rack on which are placed a few rusty swords and a blood-stained large axe. Albert's eyelids jumped, because the armored face mask in front of him suddenly moved, and a little iron-blue creature that looked a bit like a devil came out of the armor, his eyes fixed on Albert, just about to open. A red light flickered on the wings behind him, and the hapless little guy fell back into the armor again, making a crisp sound. Albert put away his wand, re-examined the blood-stained axe, guessing what it had chopped down. However, he quickly retracted his sight and wandered through the passages between the garbage dumps, observing the things near the tall garbage dumps around him, some dilapidated furniture, boxes, chairs with missing legs, old broomsticks, broken bats, unwanted old newspapers, worn school gowns, and other unrecognizable debris. Maybe something here is evidence of a student's failure to cast a spell, maybe a table with missing legs was thrown here by those house elves who maintain the decent castle. Albert even saw some burnt crucibles, abandoned herbs, and some old broken bottles, the potions in them had solidified, however, there were still a few bottles sealed with wax. Shining evil green light. The garbage channel has come to an end, and there is a road on both sides. Albert stopped and his eyes fell in front of a giant monster specimen. This thing was huge, probably it had been processed, and it didn't smell bad. Perhaps, a certain professor once used troll specimens to teach students. To be honest, when he walked in and took a closer look, the troll still gave him an inexplicable sense of oppression, especially the wooden stick in his hand, which looked extremely lethal. If you go down with a stick, you really get cold if you are not careful. However, as long as he is careful enough, Albert thinks that with his current magic and knowledge of trolls, 
it is not a problem to bring down a troll. However, it is not an easy job to make such a large monster into a specimen, especially to deodorize, disinfect, and preserve the monster. How much trouble does the person doing this work? As soon as Albert took his gaze away from the troll, he found a new task popped up on his panel. Fearless Challenger You found a specimen of a giant mountain monster and felt the oppression from that huge body. As a brave Greyfinder student, try to defeat a giant monster to show your bravery and fearlessness. Reward, 3000 experience. Albert was speechless at once, you you reading www.uugonshu.com This is where I can find the troll, and why should I challenge a troll to prove Greyfinder's bravery? Is there a mistake in understanding Greyfinder's bravery? Or is it that Greyfinder's bravery has always been reckless? Albert resisted the desire to complain, and comforted himself in his heart, there will be a thousand Hamlet for one thousand readers. Everyone has a different understanding of courage. However, it is not bad to be able to activate the panel task. After all, it's good to have a task to send experience, don't do it for nothing. As for where to find trolls? When Harry Potter enrolls, which is when Albert is in third grade, just borrow a troll to use it. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. In a corner of the responsive room, Albert was standing quietly in a daze. People who knew him well knew that this guy was thinking about it this way, and even he himself admitted it. After all, no one can guess the truth, Albert is actually immersed in his panel. After regaining his senses, Albert immediately took his gaze away from the giant monster specimen, and finally took time to come in. Naturally, it is impossible to give up the exploration here. He also intends to continue searching for other interesting objects, not to forget. I came here to find Ravenclaw's crown. However, according to the vague memory in his mind, he only vaguely remembered that the Horcrux should be worn on the head of a certain bust plaster statue. However, the clue is nothing more than that, whether you can find Ravenclaw's crown or not, sometimes you really have to try your luck. As soon as he moved his footsteps, Albert was attracted by something again. Somewhere in front of him on the right side, a large mirror with a golden frame was placed, and underneath were two claw-shaped brackets. Albert walked quickly towards the big mirror, raised his wand and recited a desk alling spell on the mirror surface, removing most of the dust on the mirror surface. Eris, the magic mirror. He muttered, looking at the letters on the frame. That's right it should be the magic mirror, the magic mirror that claims to show the deepest deepest desires of the person in front of the mirror. What do I desire most? Albert looked at himself in the mirror curiously, and then he found himself in the mirror holding an eagle-shaped crown. That was Ravenclaw's crown. Although I do want to find the crown is right, this shouldn't be the thing I desire most. Albert suppressed his desire to complain. Originally, he thought he would see in the mirror that he was hugging several beauties on his left or right, or standing on a golden mountain with piles of gold coins, at the very least, he would give me a picture of Voldemort holding the elder's wand in his hand. In other words, what is it like holding the raven claw crown, the desire for knowledge? Want to become smarter? Is this really what I want most? Or is it what I want most now? Disappointed. Albert looked away and fixed his gaze on the frame on the top of the magic mirror, where a line of letters was engraved, Erisedstra Erui Tubi Kafru Iton Wosi. The name of the magic mirror comes from the first word Erist. Readers who have carefully understood the stories of Harry Potter novels will know that the line of letters engraved on the top frame of the Eris mirror needs to be read upside down. Albert moved his gaze to the letters and read it out softly, Is shown Odi Our Fasi Beauty Our Heart's Desire that is, I show not your face but your desire. Wish? Don't I actually have no desire? No, I'm not a saint, how could I have no desire? Albert suddenly grinned, 
sure enough, the magic mirror can't reflect a bunch of vague panel experiences. And skill points too. Yes, what I desire most is not panel experience and skill points. Isn't it all for these vague things to take risks to find Voldemort's horcruxes? Thinking of this, Albert suddenly wanted to laugh again. To some extent, the raven claw crown reflected on the magic mirror is not wrong. After all, finding horcrux means a lot of tasks, experience, and skill points. This is what he desires most. After walking on the trash path for a while, Albert felt that he was about to get lost in the trash mountain. A slingshot with wings flew in front of him, and he was staring at him. After a freezing spell, falling down in midair. It's a weird thing. Albert walked over, bent down, and picked up the slingshot from the ground, looked at it, pulled it, and finally turned a debris into a projectile with his wand and tried the slingshot. The power of the slingshot, but he soon discovered the purpose of the slingshot. The projectile's shot out seemed to have been released with tracking magic, which can accurately bypass the object and hit the target. A slingshot that has been released by magic is interesting. It is probably a toy in Yoko's joke shop. It's good to use to fix people. Albert murmured to himself, and soon started to wonder if it could be. Applying this technique to the bow and arrow, the archer becomes a sharpshooter in minutes. If it is used on firearms, is it possible to take the top level from a kilometer away? Well, this slingshot is good, and it is worth researching. Albert used a desk alling curse to remove the dust on the surface of the slingshot, and then took out a handkerchief and wiped it, before putting it in his robe pocket. After strolling around in the garbage dump, Albert found a dilapidated quid-ditch box in a certain corner. After opening it, he found that the quid-ditch game props inside were all tattered, including a ball. The stick was even left with the section in the hand, and God knows what happened to it. Both of the wandering are also broken. The only ghost ball is relatively complete, but it also looks a little worn. Albert's gaze was attracted by the golden snitch. When he picked up the rusty golden snitch, he found that it had lost one of its wings. The other wing of the golden snitch can still be used, but after one wing is missing, it can no longer fly normally. A damaged golden snitch is very attractive to Albert. The Golden Snitch's craftsmanship is actually very high. It is said that in order to determine who catches it first, this thing has physical memory capabilities. If this physical memory ability is used in the treasure house, can't you easily create your own secret treasure house? Dumbledore did just that. In other words, how come you feel a little bit tattered in the trash? This style of painting is wrong. Ahem. It seems inappropriate to call this place a garbage dump. In any case, Voldemort's horcrux is hidden here. Obviously the Dark Lord will not hide his horcrux in the trash. Sure enough, this place should be called the Treasure House, yes, it is called the Treasure House. Hidden Hogwarts items for thousands of years, and he was a treasure hunter in the Treasure House. No one knows what he can find in this Treasure House. It may be worthless rubbish, it may be an extremely precious Ravenclaw relic, or it may be a horcrux that kills you. No matter what he will find, Albert's exploration and treasure hunt will continue. He walked lightly into the maze, continuing to search for a bust wearing a crown. Maybe, people who like to smile won't have bad luck, maybe Merlin's beard is blessing him, maybe it's that Voldemort's soul fragments can't hold back. Albert stopped suddenly held his breath, pricked his ears and listened carefully, and a vague whisper came from far away. At that moment, Albert felt that his soul seemed to be trembling, and the whispering in his ear disappeared, replaced by his heavy breathing. It's near, it's near, the horcrux is nearby, it's tempting itself, yes, Voldemort's horcrux is tempting itself to the bait through whispers. At this moment, Albert suddenly wanted to laugh. He knew that Voldemort's horcrux was tempting him, but why didn't it take the initiative to send it to the door? Also save yourself a lot of trouble to find horcrux. However, it was Voldemort's horcrux. Albert didn't dare to care at all. There was a case of Chino overturning the car behind. 
he had to be more vigilant and took out his wand from the pocket of his robe, and began to look around, carefully check the surrounding objects to find the source of the whisper. Albert walked very slowly, carefully crossing the area, but the whisper in his ear was getting closer. Yes, right in front, on the top of the old cabinet with blisters, isn't there a bust of a wizard covered with pits? On the head of the bust was an old grey hair cover, A and D. An old faded crown. That was Ravenclaw's crown. Voldemort's horcrux actually let himself find it. Albert could not hide the excitement on his face. At this moment, he could already be sure that the whispering in his ear came from the crown, and it was tempting himself to pick up the crown and put it on his head. As long as you wear the Ravenclaw crown, you can become more wise. Albert almost instinctively stretched out his hand to touch the crown, however, he stopped moving forward and dropped his raised arm. He listened carefully to the whispers in his ear, and laughed like crazy, tears of laughter almost dripping. Interesting. Albert murmured after he stopped laughing, if it's an ordinary student, I guess I can't help but try to wear a crown. After all, no one wants to miss the experience of Ravenclaw's crown belt. The coming intelligence improved, and even took it as his own under the temptation of Horcrux. Come on, let me take a picture of you. Albert took a few steps back, raised the camera on his neck, and took a picture of the wizard's bust and the old faded crown on his head. Then Albert stepped back more than a dozen steps, found some more eye-catching coordinates around and took a few photos continuously, until he retreated to the entrance he went to check the new task that appeared on the panel. Evil whispers. You hear some whispers that tempts you to fall, and the whispering thing is most likely an evil black magic item. Although you don't know what it is, you have realized that it can be extremely dangerous and are ready to try to figure out what it is. Reward, 10,000 experience, random access to an unmastered magic. Great. Albert stared at the task panel and said softly, that's a horcrux, Voldemort's horcrux. When he finishes saying this sentence, the task has been automatically completed. Albert did not choose to complete the task, but continued to view the remaining tasks. Return the relic. You stumbled upon the raven claw crown that was lost thousands of years ago. As a Hogwarts student, you should return the raven claw crown to the school. Rewards, 30,000 experience. 3. Skill Points Dumbledore's Favorability plus 10, and Ms. Grey Favorability plus 30. The Secret of the Dark Lord. You stumble upon the secret of Voldemort's immortality. You can choose to remain silent or share this secret with others. Reward, 1000, Experience Points the target's Favorability plus 20 or minus 20. Ms. Grey's Regret. You accidentally find the raven claw crown that was lost thousands of years ago, but this relic from the Big Four is contaminated by powerful black magic, purifying the black magic on the crown. Reward, 10,000 experience, 2, skill points, and Mississippi Grey favor plus 30. What is the use of I want the goodwill of the ghost? Albert couldn't help but complain. Is it possible that after the goodwill is full, Ms. Grey will fulfill one of my wishes? Destroy the Horcrux. Everyone is responsible for destroying the Dark Lord. Since you have discovered Voldemort's weakness by chance, you can devote yourself to the great cause of confronting the Dark Wizard, destroy it, or assist others in destroying the Horcrux. Reward, 30,000 experience, 3, skill points, and the favor of the target plus 10. The destruction of the Dark Lord. You discovered Voldemort's weakness by accident. If the other party knew about it, he would never let you go. Since it may become an endless enemy, why not first act to destroy the most evil dark wizard of this century? You can choose to do it yourself, or call up more helpers to help you eliminate the dark demon. Current contribution 0%. Reward 10,000 to 100,000 experience, 1 to 10 skill points www.mtlnovel.com Magic World Prestige plus 100 to 10,000, Bounty 100,000 gallons. Awesome, really worthy of being the final boss, such a rich reward. 
Albert looked at the task information on several panels and couldn't help swallowing his saliva. His previous efforts were really not wasted. As for how to accomplish these tasks, isn't there still the iron-headed baby Potter, the savior? The front is hard, attracting firepower, and confronting Voldemort. Harry in the novel has always done an excellent job. The most important thing is that the task doesn't say that Albert must do it himself. It's actually not bad to lie down for the task. Reaching out and patted his cheek, and after clearing up the expression on his face, Albert opened the door and walked out of the responsive house. After looking around to make sure there was no one, he walked happily in the castle, and even smiled and said hello to Pippi on the way. Pippi looked inexplicable. After taking a few more photos in the castle, Albert returned to the lounge happily while Fred, George and Lee Jordan were still doing their homework. Albert seems to be in a good mood. George looked at Albert's back disappearing at the entrance of the dormitory, and suddenly said to the two people around him. Maybe something good happened. Fred said without looking up. To be honest, this is the first time I have seen him like this. George couldn't restrain his curiosity, got up and packed his things, and chased after Albert. If you don't go and see, maybe something good has happened. Lee Jordan also packed up and followed George back to the dormitory. Fred raised his head and found that his two roommates had run away. He immediately packed up the homework on the table and quickly followed the pace of the two. The three soon knew that Albert had encountered something good, but Albert did not tell them directly. With a puff, a mud ball passed at a tricky angle around the student who was in the way, and hit the marble slab in front of Filch. Administrator Filch was staring at the mud in front of him, his face suddenly became ugly, and there was an aura of no one near him. Albert and Lee Jordan also noticed the changes in the corridor, stopped, and together with the other students looked towards the source of the low air pressure. I saw Filch stiffly turned his head and looked towards the direction where the mud ball was flying, only to find that another mud ball the size of a thumb was flying towards him. Filch quickly dodged sideways, staying where he had just stood for a moment, and suddenly pushed aside the crowd in the corridor, chasing in the direction where the mud ball came. The unstoppable momentum without catching the culprit made the surrounding students cast surprise glances at Filch's back and several students even prepared to follow behind to watch the fun. Other students were speculating about who threw the mud ball at Filch. In the opposite direction of Filch's pursuit of the prisoner, the twins appeared on the corner and waved at the two Alberts, with a cheerful smile on their faces. How about it? Fred and George had just appeared from a nearby secret road, and Albert raised his index finger and made a quiet motion. That's right it was the Weasley brothers who threw the mud ball at Filch. They borrowed the winged slingshot that Albert found in the responsive house. The mud ball they used was just obtained from the herbal medicine class. The mud of the dung of the beast. Of course, the twins did not aim at Filch, but at the marble slab under his feet. However, no matter who looked at it, he thought that the mud ball was smashed towards Filch. Now, Filch chased after him in desperation, but he couldn't find anything, and he didn't know if anyone would be inexplicably miserable. After returning to the lounge, the few people immediately took a hot shower. When they changed their clothes, they heard others talk about Filch, and the manager was angrily looking for the culprit. Wonderful, it's wonderful. Fred's smile became brighter, as if there was nothing more pleasing to him than watching Filch collapse. Eat quietly. Albert glanced at them, raised his head and nodded at Filch in the corner of the hall to remind him. Albert didn't eat much for lunch, there would be a grand Halloween party in the evening. However, Filch's matter still made the entire afternoon of the few people happy. Professor Broad from the Defense Against the Dark Arts class also knew that everyone didn't have much thought to listen to, so he told everyone interesting stories throughout the afternoon. For example, in the mid-15th century, a certain Earl of Dragonset was about to fight a child who was suspected of being a witch. He rode a warhorse and carried a lance, preparing to stab the boy with a shot, and hit his head against the iron curse barrier released by a witch. In the end, his whole body was fractured, 
his head was severely injured, and he became a mentally handicapped Earl. This story immediately evoked everyone's interest in the Iron Armor curse, but the professor said that this curse would not be exposed until the senior year, which disappointed most people. Is it difficult? By the way, doesn't Albert know this spell? Lee Jordan muttered suspiciously. His voice was not loud, but many people heard it, which brought a lot of suspiciousness to Albert. Look. Albert just smiled, did not admit or deny, anyway, go and guess for yourself. The Halloween banquet in the evening quickly dispelled everyone's lingering thoughts. When they walked into the hall, they were immediately attracted by the Halloween decorations in the auditorium. The twelve huge pumpkins in the vegetable garden behind Hagrid's cottage were carved into large lanterns, which could even seat two or three students. A large group of bats flew around on the enchanted ceiling, occasionally circling and dancing above the dining table, causing the candle flames in the belly of the little pumpkin to flutter. Before the opening of the banquet, Dumbledore first invited the famous witch singer Sedna Warbeck to give everyone a song children, play back and forth, throw ghost flying ball. Albert sitting at the table was stunned. He had no ability to appreciate the songs of this era. Although he felt that the witch singer's voice had a unique appeal, he could not compete with others anyway. People are on the same channel. When everyone was cheering up, I was alone in the seat and felt embarrassed. Shauna, who was across the table, was in a similar situation to him, and she sounded dumbfounded. Fortunately, this tune did not last too long, and finally, to the enthusiastic applause of everyone, the witch singer and his assistants temporarily left the stage. Why don't you react, don't you like Sedna Warbeck's music? Very contagious music. Albert carefully organized his limited vocabulary. In fact, he wanted to say whether you were crazy just now, but after careful consideration, he swallowed this sentence back in his stomach to avoid being famous. Submerged by unknown objects for fans. Yes, Shauna. He looked at the witch opposite. It's amazing music. Shauna, who also came from the muggle world, couldn't appreciate the music in this style. Faced with Albert's inquiry, she just smiled reluctantly. You don't seem to like Sedna Warbeck's music. Angelina's eyes shone slyly. Well, there is no such thing. I just, don't listen to music often. Albert replied vaguely after swallowing the cut beef. By the way, I thought you were also intoxicated by this wonderful it's in the music, I didn't expect. Ahem. Angelina gave a dry cough, and hurriedly buried her head to eat, while Alia next to her shook her head insignificantly. My whole family is Warbeck's fans, and my family likes to play her songs during the festival. Fred said vaguely while stuffing a chicken leg in his mouth. Yes. George agreed. I heard that there is a female ghost in Sedna Warbeck's team. They often perform together. I don't know if I can see that female ghost here. Female ghost. This topic quickly aroused everyone's interest. Are you sure it is a female ghost? Albert raised his eyebrows and asked, A female ghost is a dark creature. It is said that hearing her cry is fatal. Satina Warbeck is the most popular singer in the UK. It is said that she graduated from Hogwarts. Lee Jordan said, however, the rumor of a female ghost is true. My mother likes that song with a female ghost very much. Chorus song. How do you know? Shauna asked curiously, and, today, her female ghost companion did not appear here. Principal Dumbledore would definitely not allow female ghosts to appear at Hogwarts. It would scare many faint-hearted students. Albert recalled the introduction of female ghosts in Dark Forces, Self-Defense Guide, female the ghost has long black hair that drags to the ground, his face is like a skeleton, and his eyes are glowing green. Is that something? Suddenly, I don't know who asked. What does it look like? On the stands. Albert looked sideways towards the stage, his expression froze immediately. The fried potato in his hand slipped from his hand before he put it in his mouth, clinked, and fell onto the plate together with the fork. That's right, 
the thing on the stage is really similar to what Albert just described. He has black mopping hair, a face like a skeleton, and his eyes are glowing green. Yes, it is a female ghost. She opened her mouth wide, and suddenly, weird screams echoed in the auditorium. At the moment the scream sounded, the musical accompaniment also sounded, and the two voices were cleverly mixed together, and Sedna Warbeck, an older witch singer, was holding a long golden microphone, began to sing ecstasy. If you use Albert's words, this one is singing with all his life. However, the female ghost's scream was not as sharp as the legend, but successfully integrated into the soundtrack and became a part of the entire song. However, the most admirable is the dancer who dances with the female ghost. Albert is very doubtful how the other party overcomes the psychological pressure brought by the female ghost. After the song was over, even Albert couldn't help but clap with everyone. It was not that he understood the song, but that he admired the group of guys on the stage for being able to use the accompaniment to cover the female ghost's screams, creating such a wonderful song. Sedna Warbeck's third song begins at the end of the Halloween party. After everyone learned that the name of the song was added You Stole My Pot, But You Can't Get My Heart, it attracted a very enthusiastic response, and applause almost lifted the roof. Is this song very famous? Albert asked suspiciously. Very famous. My mother always wanted to go to her live concerts, but the tickets were often sold out at the beginning. It is said that Sedna Warbeck had just When You Stole My Pot, But You Can't Get My Heart was released, fans flocked to the concert desperately, and this caused the collision of three broomsticks. Fred explained. Oh. Albert just sighed, not serious or not, because he himself does not chase stars, so he is very light in this regard. Of course, Albert was very curious about the charm of this song, and quickly pricked his ears to listen carefully. You thought you were a good wizard, conquered me with a spell. But guess what, Mr. Wizard, you don't really know me. You think you are extremely smart, but you are actually a liar. You stole my pot. And the toad in the pond. Crystal bottle for memory. You stole my pot, but you can't get my heart. After the singing, Albert still looked awkward. To be honest, the song is really not good or that this is the style of the magic world, I can't appreciate it after all. Moreover, since there is no female ghost soundtrack, this song is not even as good as the previous one. At that moment, Albert felt that he could no longer face the aesthetics of the magic world. Seeing the people around him clapping vigorously, Albert also pretended to applaud, and there were waves of shouts in his ears. However, the brief chaos was quickly calmed by Dumbledore. Sedna Warbeck left, leaving Hogwarts with her team and female ghosts. The Halloween party ended in regret. Albert followed the raging crowd back to Greyfinder's lounge. Along the way, he heard many people talking about female ghosts. You said, how many people will have nightmares today? Mark put his arm around Albert's shoulder and asked with a smile. I don't know. However, I feel that it's a wonderful, bold idea, isn't it? Albert didn't care about Mark's joke, and waved at Mario and said, I think when they formed the circus, you can invite Pippi to join. What a brilliant idea. Mark blinked and smiled. By the way, you haven't been training for a long time recently. Isn't this busy? Albert was very quietly surprised at Mark's way of changing the subject. Homework can never be done, and I need to participate in the Transformation Club every week. Zayu asked you to take his spot as a seeker. Mark said directly, to be honest, there is really no one who can take over this position in Greyfinder. Ahem, maybe next year or the next year there will be more powerful characters. Albert noticed Mark's do you believe me? Expression, and said helplessly, well, if it is true there is no suitable one. Let's talk about it then. You are very suitable to be a seeker. Charlie didn't know where he came out, smiled and patted Albert on the shoulder. Everyone will be optimistic about Albert. In fact, during a Quidditch friendly match, Albert actually caught the golden snitch in front of Charlie. 
This made Charlie think that Albert was suitable to be his successor. After all, in a Quidditch game, the seeker is very important and almost determines the outcome of a game. You know, I'm just playing Quidditch for pure interest. Albert, who was caught between the two, looked helpless. Playing Quidditch does not prevent you from becoming a good wizard. Professor McGonagall was also a good seeker when she was young. Look, she is better than anyone else in Metamorphosis. You are how can her proud disciple not play Quidditch? Yes, Albert is Professor McGonagall's proud pupil, at least some people think so. Although Albert was very happy to hear what Charlie said, he actually understood why Charlie cares so much about it. No way, Greyfinder hasn't won the Quidditch Championship for several years. Albert actually didn't care much about this, because after Charlie graduated, Yu Yu read www.yuyuganchu.com also has Harry Potter as the top cylinder, and Potter will naturally be on top of the seeker's seat. Yes, please call him, Harry Potter. Although in Albert's eyes, it is a stubborn one. Ah. Albert sat on the edge of the bed, stretched out his hand to cover a yawn, picked up the pillow next to him and smacked at the Weasley brothers who were tap dancing and singing in the dormitory. Is this Merlin's beard the sequelae of the legendary concert? In fact, it's no wonder that the two are excited. It's really rare to hear set in a Warbex concert on the spot. By the way, shall we go for a night tour? George suggested. The other day, throw the pillow over. Albert raised his hand to take the pillow that Fred threw over, then covered a yawn, and lay back in the bed, easily sleepy after eating. Vertex. After entering November, snow began to float in the grey sky, and the weather became extremely cold. When he woke up from his dream, Albert found that the woods around the castle were covered with white snow, and the black lake was also frozen with a layer of hard ice. Everyone said that this year's winter came very early, but Albert himself didn't care much about the changes in the weather. Before the temperature dropped, he had wrapped himself tightly in a woolen sweater and scarf, and he went to fled on purpose. Professor Wei has learned how to use the drying spell, and he is fully prepared to start the winter. There is one thing more worthy of everyone's attention than cold weather, Hogwarts Quidditch season has begun. Every morning, Albert could see Hagrid holding a broom, cleaning the road to the Quidditch Stadium in the wind and snow, so as to prevent the road from being completely covered by snow. As the captain of the Greyfinder Quidditch, Charlie is also entering a period of excitement at this time, and every time he trains, he will seize the time to explain tactical cooperation to everyone. George and Fred escaped because they were not official players. They also told Albert that Charlie, who was in the situation, was as severe as the devil possessed. Fortunately, in recent training sessions, informal players do not need to participate. In the first game, Greyfinder vs. Slytherin, Charlie announced the result of the draw to everyone at the table, and the game time was this weekend. All Greyfinder students hoped to defeat Slytherin in one fell swoop and win this Quidditch match. Professor McGonagall also waived everyone's homework before the game. It is not difficult to see the Dean's desire for victory and his love for Quidditch. In fact, everyone is eager for a victory, and there is a more important reason. Greyfinder's Academy Cup points are currently at the bottom, and it is urgent to obtain points through Quidditch's victory to restore the embarrassing situation of the bottom. If the Greyfinder team wins, their Academy points can surpass Hufflepuff, rise to third place, and approach the second-placed Ravenclaw. However, the strangest thing is that Hufflepuff students actually hope that Greyfinder can defeat Slytherin, and Ravenclaw students also support Greyfinder which shows how much Slytherin is at Hogwarts. Unwelcome. On weekends, the weather was extremely cold, with sleet in the sky. Albert Lye fell asleep in his bed, but refused to get up. In the end, Fred, who was full of excitement, lifted the sheets together with George and pulled them out of the warm bed. It's so cold, I don't want to run outside to watch the game in this kind of weather. Albert wrapped himself in thick clothes as fast as he could, 
and hurriedly used a drying spell on himself to make you and you and the cold clothes became dry and warm immediately, as if they had just been baked in front of a raging fire. Don't be stupid, this is a rare opportunity to cheer for the Greyfinder team together. Fred stomped on the spot twice, trying to warm his body. Don't jump, it makes me dazzled. Albert raised his wand, poked Fred's body, and cast a drying spell on him. Hey, what you did just now, it doesn't feel cold anymore. Fred looked at Albert in surprise. Youth, magic is power, it doesn't hurt to learn more spells. Albert patted Fred on the shoulder and said earnestly. Fred was stunned, and he didn't adjust to Albert's style for a while. Bring me also. Lee Keaton, who had just dressed and put on a winter cloak, also hurriedly leaned over to let Albert dispel the chill from him. And I. It was really cold today, and the temperature in the room dropped to 8 degrees. This was due to the fireplace. If the thermometer on the cabinet is taken outside the house, it is estimated that it will drop directly below zero. In other words, the first time Fred saw the thermometer, they were shocked, and they felt particularly interesting. Albert thought about the Christmas gifts for the three of them this year, and each gave an indoor thermometer. Bring a foldable umbrella, put the sight glasses in your pocket, wrap your neck with a thick towel woven by Daisy's hands, fill a flat and small silver-plated water bottle with hot water, and put it in your robe pocket as a heat preservation bag. Albert went to the auditorium hall with his roommates. As soon as I walked into the restaurant, I could smell the attractive smell of grilled sausage in the air. The people at the table were talking excitedly about the game, and everyone was looking forward to seeing a wonderful quid-ditch game. However, there was a smell of gunpowder between Slytherin and Greyfinder. The tables for both sides are right next door, and quarrels are inevitable. The lack of a real fight indicates that everyone is restraining and intends to keep the real matchup on the quid-ditch court. Charlie, come on. Albert and his little friends also joined Charlie to send blessings to these familiar friends. By the way, Charlie, are you looking for a substitute? Mark suddenly asked. Substitute? Albert asked suspiciously. Could it be that this game will last for a long time? There are always exceptions. We have old grievances with the Slytherin team. Even if some players graduated last year, the relationship between the two sides is still very bad, and some conflicts on the court are inevitable. Jack glanced at Slytherin. At the table, explained to Albert, so, we need some substitute players. Of course, the other side also needs it. Albert felt that there was something wrong with this. He remembered that players were not allowed to replace players during quid-ditch games. I found it. Charlie patted Mark on the shoulder, comforting everyone, don't worry, Mrs. Pomford will also go to the game. If she is injured, she will be healed soon. When Albert heard the words, the corners of his mouth twitched. How could this sound like the illusion of going to battle? Will the two teams fight on the court? At eleven o'clock. All the teachers and students of the school were holding umbrellas and heading to the stands of the Quidditch Stadium under the weekend sleet. The audience is not only Hogwarts teachers and students, even some wizards who like Quidditch, also came to Hogwarts to watch the Quidditch match despite the bad weather. Yes, Hogwarts sells Quidditch tickets. When Albert came to the Quidditch Stadium, he saw some wizards from outside the school, all of them wearing thick cloaks holding an umbrella in one hand and binoculars in the other, sitting in the seats of their graduate colleges. Wait for the game to start. It can only be said that there are not many entertainment activities in the magic world, but there are many people who like quid-ditch games. It is said that the tickets for each game are selling well. Of course, these external activities are limited to the quid-ditch stadium, and the distance from the quid-ditch stadium to Hogsmeade is not too far. Fred and George chose their seats not far from the Greyfinder locker room. Albert was a little puzzled. If you want to see the game clearly, the top level of vision is undoubtedly the best. However, the Weasley brothers just replied, maybe, we can also come in handy. 
Albert directly interprets this sentence as when the game may need to change the batting hand. However, he believes that this possibility is not high. Although the weather is a bit bad, watching the game with everyone still feels very atmospheric, just like watching a movie or watching a game in front of the computer, which is completely different from going to the cinema or watching a game on the stadium. Amidst the cheers of the crowd, after the Greyfinder team in red Quidditch uniforms entered the field, there was a burst of enthusiastic cheers and applause. When the Slytherin team in the green Quidditch uniform entered the field, they were greeted with boos and applause. It seems that our Slytherin team is not welcomed by everyone. Ravenclaw's commentator raised his microphone and joked loudly. The next moment, his response was a boo from the Slytherin auditorium. Albert never doubted that if the school did not separate the seats of the four colleges, it might cause a chaotic fight during the game. Mrs. Hooch of the flight class will be the referee. She is standing in the center of the court with her flying broomstick in her hand, waiting for the players from both sides to enter the court. Listen, I hope everyone will participate in the game fairly and honestly. Mrs. Hooch said loudly after the players of the two teams gathered around. This was expanded through magic, enough to be heard by all audiences on the venue. In fact, Mrs. Hooch's words were specifically aimed at certain people on the two teams. I feel that the captains of both sides are trying to squeeze each other's hands off. Albert moved his monoculars and focused his gaze on Charlie, who was shaking hands with each other, feeling a little tempted to laugh. Try vigorously when shaking hands. There are people who like to play this trick no matter where you are. Charlie also specifically asked me how to use force when shaking hands. A familiar voice sounded beside him, Hagrid, holding a big umbrella and holding a pair of binoculars, sat down beside a few people. Before the game started, Albert could feel that it was full of gunpowder. I am afraid the game will not be as simple as he thought. Fifteen flying broomsticks rose into the sky after the whistle sounded. The game officially started. A few minutes later, Albert dared to slap his chest dumbfounded to ensure that this is definitely the dirtiest game he has ever seen. The ghost ball was first snatched by Jack. Under the cover of his teammates, this acrobatic pursuit player cleverly used the reverse pass tactics to give Greyfinder ten points. However, in order to prevent Greyfinder from chasing the ball to score, the Slytherin batter chose to slam into Jack, and their broomsticks were directly offset several meters. Foul. Foul. An angry wave erupted from the audience, engulfing the sleet overhead. Slytherin deliberately bumped into a foul. The commentator shouted, unfortunately, their conspiracy failed. Greyfinder took the lead in getting ten points. Now. The ghost ball is awarded to Greyfinder by Mrs. Hooch. The game continues. Is this normal? Albert ignored the yelling roommates around him, and asked Hagrid beside him loudly. It's not normal. Hagrid turned his head and said to Albert. However, in recent years, Greyfinder and Slytherin games have been full of gunpowder. After the narrator called out Greyfinder to score, Hagrid clapped vigorously. Smell of gunpowder. Albert returned his gaze to the court. He felt that it was not the smell of gunpowder, but full of explosives, which could explode at any time. Greyfinder scored another goal and took the lead by 20 points. The commentator was obviously not qualified, but Albert liked this guy's bias towards Greyfinder. The Greyfinder team led by 20 points in a short time, making the Slytherin team very angry they began to grab the ball unscrupulously. When Mario was preparing to pass the ball, the broom was hit by someone else's kick, and suddenly it shook violently. He had to hold the broom with both hands to avoid falling down. The ghost ball that was tightly held was also by the Slytherin chaser. Robbed. However, as revenge against Slytherin. When Mark passed by the side of Slytherin seeker Marcus Flint, he suddenly made a false move and hit the opponent's nose with a punch, making the unfortunate seeker head back. Began to bleed. Greyfinder and Slytherin were awarded a free throw by Mrs. Hooch. The game continued in this chaos. Almost every few minutes, 
Mrs. Hooch would blow the whistle to announce that so and so fouled again. This almost drove the referee crazy. Albert took out a water bottle and gave himself a sip, and began to condemn the Slytherin students with everyone. No way, Lock of Slytherin hit Irene on the back of the head with a stick, and even quibbled that her head was a wandering ball. Madame Hooch blew the whistle again, and the ghost ball landed on Jack again. The chaser cleverly avoided the interception and rushed towards Locke with a sharp turn. The ghost ball smashed into the face of the stunned hitter at a swift speed, bounced back, and was picked up by a teammate flying below. Ah, sorry, the vision is not so good, I saw the wrong person, I'm so sorry. Jack apologized to Locke falsely, and then flew away on the broom without waiting for the other person to react. Although the Slytherin student below yelled for a foul, Mrs. Hooch did not blow the whistle and regarded it as a normal pass. However, the object of the pass is the Slytherin batter. It can only be said that the Greyfinder chaser took the initiative to give up his own advantage, which does not seem to be a foul. As for smashing the opponent's face with a ghost ball, Locke himself has no use to dodge. Until the game, even Professor McGonagall has no time to stop the narrator's extreme remarks. The Dean of Gryffindor shook his fist towards the sky in anger. Because just now, when Charlie was about to catch the golden snitch, the Slytherin chaser montage slammed into him, causing Charlie to almost fall off the broomstick, and thus lost the opportunity to catch the golden snitch www. Novel.com Although Gryffindor got 10 points for this, the result did not calm the anger of Gryffindor supporters, and some people began to throw things at the venue in protest. Gryffindor also gave the color back, taking the ghost ball into the scoring zone in Gryffindor at Montage, and was slapped in the face by Wood, so dizzy and almost falling off the broom. Free throws. Madam Hooch, furiously, shouted towards Wood, I don't remember any rule that allows attacking chasers. Sorry, I was so excited and made a mistake. Wood apologized, as if what had just happened was an accident. In the audience, Albert felt that this game was very problematic. It was definitely the rudest game he had ever seen. Could this be the legendary hot-blooded quid ditch? Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update. It is said that the new full marks are found at the end of The Beautiful Wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. The snow stopped, but the rain got bigger and bigger. There was a icy chill in the air, but it still failed to extinguish the enthusiasm for Quidditch in the hearts of the audience. People were cheering for the team they supported. In an inconspicuous corner of the auditorium, Albert and a few roommates were nesting here to watch the game, with Hagrid drenched beside them. Several people around completely ignored the cold rain, cheering for the Gryffindor team to score. Albert lowered his monocular vision glasses and drew out his magic wand to use fire and water curse on the lenses to prevent the rain from blurring his vision. On the Quidditch pitch, the fierce confrontation continued. Slytherin never suffered they quickly seized the opportunity to fight back. Under the cover of his teammates, the chaser Monty carried the ghost ball into the scoring area. Not far away, the batsman Locke cleverly seized the opportunity to hit the ball that flew towards him to the goalkeeper Wood of Greyfinder. Wood was staring at Monta, trying to prevent the opponent from scoring, but did not notice a wandering ball flying towards him. When he heard the sound of the wandering ball breaking through the air, he dodged in a hurry, and thrilled past Wandering's attack. Before Wood had completely recovered from the panic, Monta had already seized the opportunity to break Danny's blockade, clutching the ghost ball and moving towards Wood's face. A wave of fouls sounded in areas except for the Slytherin accident, and the heavy rain in the sky was faintly suppressed by this sound. In the audience, Albert watched this scene, feeling that his face was hurting, and he was stunned by the ghost ball. It must be uncomfortable. Quidditch player is still a high-risk profession. What, what you were talking about, I didn't hear clearly. Hagrid next to him raised his binoculars and looked straight at the sky when he heard Albert's whisper and asked loudly. Nothing. 
Before Albert had time to sigh, he listened to Fred exclaiming next to him, No, Wood is going to fall down. At this moment, most of the people in the auditorium stood up in horror and looked at Wood, who was falling in a spiral. Some screamed in horror, and some closed their eyes for fear of seeing Wood's tragic situation. Wood, who was smeared with a ghost ball by the montage, was still in a state of vertigo. He instinctively reached out and grabbed the broom, slid down the railing of the scoring ring, and fell on the lawn of the Quidditch court. His injuries were not serious. It's too serious. Madam Hooch immediately blew the whistle, announcing the suspension of the game, and fell to Wood's side to check the goalkeeper's injury. Madam Pomford walked into the court with a sullen face on her face. She used a spell to heal Wood's cheek injury and poured him a bottle of potions so that the Gryffindor goalkeeper could regroup and continue the game. However, this violent Quidditch game still annoyed Mrs. Pomfrey. The head nurse said that if someone was injured, he would go to the school hospital and lie down for a few days. The Slytherin Seeker montage attacked the Gryffindor goalkeeper. This kind of despicable behavior is unheard of before. The Slytherin team scored another goal. The score between the two sides is 80 to 50. Gryffindor was 30 points ahead. Wait, the referee announced that Slytherin fouled and the goal just scored was invalid. The current score of the two sides is 80 to 40. The commentator shouted excitedly. Gryffindor has opened a 40-point advantage. At present, the seekers on both sides are looking for the golden snitch. Who will catch the golden snitch first? Which team will win? We will wait and see. Unfortunately, the bad weather and the visibility around it is also very bad. It is not easy to find the snitch. The game is still going on. Wood recovered and greatly encouraged the Gryffindor audience. Gryffindor's cheering voice echoed from the audience. Mrs. Hooch blew the whistle again and the game continued. How exactly the Gryffindor team will fight back, let us wait and see. The Ravenclaw commentator has already been enthusiastic about it, completely forgetting that he is explaining the game. Strange game. Kill the Slytherin team, kill the montage, kill the Slytherin team, kill the montage. At this moment, Gryffindor's audience seat unexpectedly broke out such an unprecedented roar. This sound gave Albert the inexplicable illusion that he was actually watching a duel, not a quidditch match. A few minutes later, the players of Gryffindor really lived up to expectations and launched a new round of revenge against the Slytherin team. The target was the chaser Montage who had just used a ghost ball to attack Wood. Mark and Irene are a couple, and they have a super tacit understanding. The two only exchanged glances in the air, and Mark directly speeds up and hits the batter lock. With the help of her boyfriend, Irene, the violent batsman, shoots the wandering ball out, and the target is the montage surrounded by the three acrobatic brothers. Mengtai was blocked by the three of them, thinking that the three chasers next to him were going to attack him, but did not find that the real lore came from the walking ball behind him. Oh, my goodness, I hit it. Violent batsman Irene successfully hit Monta with a wandering ball. This is really painful. I hope he can break a few more ribs, cough cough. I am said that I hope he is okay. The commentator coughed lightly and quickly changed his words, the referee did not blow his whistle. There is no doubt that there is no violation of the rules in the counter-attack this time. Although the Slytherin team took the opportunity to score 10 points, their pursued hand had been injured and fell to the ground, completely outweighing the gain. What's the matter, Mrs. Pomfrey didn't show up, could it be? The commentator said with gloat, don't our head nurses like the Slytherin players. Monta was forced off the court because the frustrated Madame Pomfrey had returned to the school hospital, and he was obviously unable to continue the game without treatment. Albert saw the dark-faced Snape through his monoculars and took out his wand and turned it into a stretcher. Several students sent Monta to the school hospital on the second floor of the castle. It is said that it took only a few seconds for Mrs. Pomfrey to help Montage connect the broken ribs, but the hapless guy was obviously unable to continue playing. According to the official rules established by the Department of Magical Sports, 
in the event of a disability, no other athletes may be substituted. This means that Slytherin is missing a chaser. However, the vast majority of Gryffindor spectators regretted it. Why didn't Slytherin seeker Marcus Flint end up? However, this dirty quid-ditch game has just kicked off. Slytherin was at a disadvantage because of one missing player, and they began to blatantly attack Gryffindor's players. With a series of changes on the field, Albert was stunned. In the single scope, the four batsmen riding broomsticks flying under the rain curtain actually fought together like swordsmen with their bats. Fred and George next to them were muttering, hit him, yes, aim at his head. Pierce his eyes. And other violent words. The Slytherin players went to surround Charlie together, preparing to send Charlie off the court first. Once Gryffindor loses the seeker, it basically means losing the game. In the end, a group of people riding broomsticks fought together in the sky. The most lethal force was the batsmen on both sides. They were attacking the opponent's players with bats. Irene also knocked out Locke's bat, which was unlucky. Irene hit her elbow with a stick, but before she recovered, she was kicked again by Jack and almost fell off the broom. However, Gryffindor also had several minor injuries. Madame Hooch, who was furious, ordered the four batsmen to leave the field, although this is not within the rules. Who made the four hit the hardest just now? In the words of Mrs. Hooch, staying on the court simply lost Hogwarts' face. The original 15-seater court suddenly lost five people, and the huge stadium felt a lot vacant. Even without the batsmen, the Gryffindor chasers still have a way. They seem to be in a relay ceremony, receiving the bat from the off-field bat. At least, that's what Danny did. The acrobat can also play as a batsman while acting as a chaser. This time, their target was Slytherin seeker Marcus Flint. Charlie, Jack and Mario compressed Marcus's flight space from three directions, pushing the seeker to the edge of the court. Then, they all resorted to Mark's fake moves, waving their fists and feet and greeted each other unceremoniously. As for hitting the target? Sorry, that was a tactical error. Free throws, no one cares. As long as you can kill the opponent's seeker, the victory of the game naturally belongs to Gryffindor. Charlie, didn't you say that the use of Mark's fake moves is prohibited? Jack teased his captain while waving his elbow at Marcus, accidentally hitting the opponent's kidney with an elbow, and his own nose. He was beaten crooked by the fist from the right side. In the rear, Danny, who was holding the ghost ball in one hand and the bat in the other, had already caught up. He was hunted and killed by two Slytherin pursuers. Danny threw the obstructive ghost ball to Jack, and he took the stick and greeted Marcus behind him, preparing to completely oust him. However, Danny didn't know that Jack, who had just caught the ghost ball, was the first to be unlucky. One of the two Slytherin pursuers hit him directly, and the other kicked him. Jack hadn't responded yet. When he came over, he was kicked off the broomstick. Fortunately, he still grabbed the flying broom with one hand and hit the audience seat completely. Fortunately, he didn't fall into the Slytherin auditorium, otherwise he would have to face a large-scale fight. A group of spectators joined in beating Jack. Danny, you actually cheated me. Jack covered his injured waist and couldn't help cursing. On the other hand, Slytherin's seeker's situation was also a bit bad. Marcus, who was blocked by the three, was beaten violently by the three. The sharp whistle cut through the rain, and the frustrated Madame Hooch called the players from both sides to give a severe training. You forgot, did I just say what I said at the beginning? Mrs. Hooch sprayed directly, spraying all the faces, since you can't participate in the competition fairly and honestly, then give me the audience. Stay, I'll give you one hour to let your respective alternate players take your place in this game. What's going on? Albert watched the players on both sides being severely trained by Mrs. Hooch, and couldn't help frowning. Because the game did not go on, both teams returned to their respective lounges. Bian also didn't know what happened. However, everyone quickly got the latest information. 
we just got the latest news. Because the two teams' bad behavior in the game seriously violated the various rules of the Quidditch game, all the players were sentenced to leave. The commentator was surprised by the information he had just received. Oh my god, to be honest, I heard for the first time that all teams have been sentenced to dismissal. Both sides will have an hour to pick a new group of new players to replace them and continue the game. Go, go to the locker room. The wet Fredella walked toward the locker room with George and Albert, his face full of excitement, it's time for us to play. Before leaving, Albert glanced at the Slytherin seeker. The hapless man was helped into the locker room, and Snape's face was extremely gloomy behind them. What the are you doing? As soon as Albert and the others stepped into the locker room, they heard Professor McGonagall shout, and the dean glanced angrily at all the players present. Sorry, Professor, but you also saw that it was the Slytherin team who did it first. They don't seem to plan to play with us fairly and honestly. As the Quidditch captain, Charlie immediately stood up and was scolded for everyone. He held the angry gaze of Professor McGonagall, so, I have to take other measures to ensure the safety of our players. Don't worry, I have made arrangements. The victory of this game will definitely belong to us. Professor McGonagall was also taken aback, and then he heard Charlie say, Look, our alternate player has arrived. It seems that you are going to let us play. Fred blinked at Charlie and said, The club just hit really well. I saw Marcus being helped away. Professor McGonagall stared at Fred, who immediately shut up. Kyle, you temporarily act as a goalkeeper to take over Wood's position. Only you have experience as a goalkeeper here. Charlie said to the freckled teenager. He is the team's substitute for the chaser, but now there is no good solution. You two take over the batsman. Albert is the seeker. Where's Angelina? Is the girl not here? Charlie said to Danny without seeing Angelina, go and find the girl. And also. Greyfinder can quickly put together a complete substitute team, although it is far inferior to the official players, but everyone has the experience of playing together, I believe it will not be worse than the teammates on the Slytherin side www.mtlnovel.com Come on Albert, you are our secret trump card, don't let me down. Charlie stretched out his hand and patted Albert on the shoulder. Whether we can win the game depends on you. We must catch the snitch. Albert's mouth twitched. He knew that Charlie said he was the secret trump card. It was just an encouragement, but he didn't care too much. However, Professor McGonagall frowned slightly, looking at the freshman who replaced the players, and he was a little puzzled about Charlie's arrangement. They are alternate players. They were originally going to participate in the selection of official players next year and take over the positions of the official players who left. Don't worry, they have also been well trained. Charlie seemed to have guessed what Professor McGonagall wanted to say, and quickly explained Tao. Well, now that you have decided. Professor McGonagall looked at the next few people and said, I don't expect your excellent performance but at least don't cause me any trouble. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Returning to the dressing room, Albert immediately took up his wand and used a drying spell on himself to dry the rainwater on his body. Put the protective gear and quid ditch costume taken off in the basket. Charlie pointed to the big basket in the corner and reminded him, By the way, I will go to the school hospital to find Madame Pomfrey and get some cold prevention potion. Drink, don't catch a cold in the rain. Actually, you want to see those hapless Slytherins, and disgust them by the way. Aaron suddenly guessed Charlie's sinister intentions. Jack also needs to be checked by Madame Pomfrey, he just fell hard enough. Danny reminded with a light cough. It's not all you killed yet. Jack complained loudly. How did you do it, your clothes, are getting dry. 
Wood was surprised when he noticed that Albert was about to put on a winter cloak. Of course it was the drying spell, Albert noticed the puzzled gazes of several people, and asked, You, don't know. The few people looked at each other, and no one really knew the drying spell. Albert suddenly didn't know what to say. There is a record of drying spells in Practical Family Magic. Albert looked at the suddenly quiet locker room and said the book that Professor Flitwick had suggested he read. Of course, he hadn't read this book himself. You know how to read this kind of book. Irene looked at Albert in surprise. Isn't magic just to save trouble? Albert rubbed his nose and said, I feel like I'm about to catch a cold. Ah, sneeze. Mario sneezed and complained, go back to the castle. I want to take a hot bath first. Thank you. Irene said with a smile. After Albert used the drying spell to dry the clothes for others, he returned to the castle together. Everyone came to the corridor of the school hospital on the second floor of the castle and found that a large group of people had gathered here. They were all spectators who went to the Quidditch match in the rain. Most of them were soaked in the rain. Now they come to Madame Pomfrey. Order a cold potion. The arrival of the Greyfinder team attracted the attention of a large group of people, and the crowd gave them away. Charlie greeted acquaintances with a smile, and led the team into the school hospital. Mrs. Pomford was distributing potions, Charlie greeted her, put Jack on the hospital bed pretendingly, and smiled unkindly toward the Slytherin pursuing hand montage in the next hospital bed, A.I. Bert understood their lips, we won. Mrs. Pomfrey, we also need some potions, lest everyone catch a cold after getting wet in the rain. Irene said to the head nurse who came by. On the table, one person, one small cup, go get it yourself. Madame Pomfrey came to check Jack's injury, still complaining that their game was too messy and deserved to be injured. She healed Jack's injury in less than a minute. While they were drinking the cold preventive medicine, the members of the Slytherin team also came, and the atmosphere in the ward suddenly became very tense. Okay, don't squeeze here. Madame Pomfrey drove Charlie and his party out of the ward. Albert saw the replacement goalkeeper Wiki, whose teeth had been knocked out, and tried to intercept him without stopping the broomstick. The two hapless guys who bumped into the auditorium, they were being supported by other players, and they seemed to have been seriously injured. By the way, the guy who threw the bat at you was confined by Professor McGonagall. Before leaving the ward, Mark suddenly turned his head and slapped his mouth at someone's back. The bat he threw at you it hit someone. He and another hapless guy who tried to stop you didn't have time to stop. They rushed into the Slytherin auditorium and hurt several. Mark's voice was loud enough for everyone in the school hospital to hear and the student who was receiving the potion next to him couldn't help laughing. The Slytherin team collectively turned around and glared. If it hadn't been in the school hospital, they might have scuffled. What's the matter with the teeth in your mouth? Why are they missing? It doesn't matter. Danny's gaze fell on the substitute goalkeeper Wiki, and asked with a smile. Ahem, hurry up. Charlie pushed everyone quickly and led them out of the school hospital. I really hope that Madame Pomfrey won't fill his teeth and let him keep leaking. Fred couldn't help laughing. By the way, who did it, it's so cool. It seems to be knocked off by Albert. Jack said. He wanted to stop Albert at the time. As a result. Jack laughed to himself before he finished speaking. Don't look at me. He hit my elbow and knocked it off, Albert looked innocent. I was staring at the snitch, no time to beat him. That guy didn't know why. I just have to hit my elbow, there is still a little pain there. Perhaps, he has a strange disease that makes him uncomfortable without being slapped in the face. I hope that Madame Pomfrey can cure him. George's look of compassion and compassion amused everyone. Go. Go back and celebrate this victory. Let's go to the kitchen to get something to eat. George and Fred are going to try their luck in the kitchen. No, Professor McGonagall is ready for you. Lee Keaton emerged from the corner without warning, patted Albert on the shoulder and said, 
I have seen it all, you put Slytherin the goalkeeper's teeth knocked out. He knocked it off himself. Albert corrected. None of you noticed how ugly Professor Snape's face was when you caught the snitch, like someone smeared his face. Lee Keaton's voice stopped abruptly because he saw Albert put his fingers up and motioned him not to speak, and quickly looked up and saw that Snape was not nearby. He couldn't help but hammer Albert's shoulder with his fist. The others couldn't help laughing. Of course, the only unhappy person in the corridor is probably Filch. The manager stood at the door of the school hospital with a mop and bucket, and looked over here with a malicious look. Filch maintained order and waited for the students to disperse by the way, so as to clear the mud footprints in the corridor. As soon as the crowd returned to the common room, loud cheers broke out. People shouted his name when they saw Albert, and even a few hands could not wait to pull him in. There were some cakes, pies, candies and a large pot of pumpkin juice on the table in the common room. Many people gathered around Albert and asked him to talk about the thrilling scene before catching the snitch. Some people talked about him. The last thing that knocked off the Slytherin goalkeeper's teeth. However, Albert insisted that it was Slytherin's backup goalkeeper who hit his elbow and knocked out his teeth. He is a good person, how could he do such a thing? After finally getting rid of everyone's entanglement, Albert took a small plate with cakes and sat on the armchair in the corner. Yes, I didn't expect your quid ditch to fly well. Field next to him with one hand on his chin, molested, if you are older, I can't help but chase you. Albert is a bit embarrassed immediately. Are foreign girls so tough? Of course, he also knew that Field was just teasing himself www.mtlnovel.com so he whispered back, Actually, I don't like girls older than me. Older. Field couldn't help but roll his eyes at Albert, and turned away from the subject, how is your summoning skill? It's okay, I'm trying to summon other things now. Albert thought about his progress in learning summoning, and nodded with satisfaction, after a while, I can successfully summon an umbrella. What do you call the umbrella for? Field asked puzzled. Of course it's because you don't need to bring an umbrella when it rains in the future. Albert said solemnly, Britain is a rainy country. Sometimes when I go out without an umbrella, I get covered in rain when I come back. Field. It sounds like it makes sense. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, Data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. The crushing defeat that the Slytherin team loved and heard became a topic of chat among Hogwarts students after dinner. The hapless backup goalkeeper Vicky Avery has become a topical figure for many people to talk and laugh, even if Mrs. Pomfrey had already repaired his knocked-out teeth, but when other college students saw him, I think of the saying that came out in Gryffindor Academy. He knocked my elbow and knocked out his tooth. No one really cared how much Albert's words were true. They just laughed at the little Avery who knocked out his teeth. Just laugh at it for hate. At least, Albert thinks so, otherwise the sentence would be a bit of a smile, even he would not be able to find it out. This wave really stabilized the hatred value for him, so stable that even the panel task popped out. Albert didn't care much because after the game between Gryffindor and Slytherin, the smell of gunpowder between the two sides became stronger. The atmosphere between the two houses is very tense, and it has even reached the point where it is volatile. In the corridors, there are often some small jokes, and the corners of Filch's mouth are crooked. Recently, the number of violations has risen sharply, and all his small rolls of parchment have been used up. In the end, it turned into a very bad event. Several Slytherin students blocked Mark, and when they were about to do it, a few Gryffindor students coincidentally passed by and stirred up the chaos. In the end, weird scales grew on the face of a Gryffindor student, and a Slytherin's nose came out with leaks. Professor McGonagall was very angry when he learned that, Gryffindor and Slytherin were both deducted a lot of points. Now, one is at the bottom again 
and the other becomes second to last. Of course, there are actually quite a few Slytherin students who are troubled by Albert. After all, being defeated by a muggle freshman is a shame for them. However, there are not many opportunities for Slytherin students. Someone tried to trip Albert by stretching out his leg in the hallway. However, one of the guys who did this was stepped on and went straight into the school hospital. One was kicked in the calf, and tears came out on the spot. What annoyed them most was that the freshman always looked at him helplessly and said in a very calm tone, Are you okay? Why are you sticking out your legs? In short, it means that I am innocent and harmless, and everything is your fault. This is also irrefutable, because you stretched out your leg to prepare to trip someone, and you accidentally got hurt. As for containment, Albert will always have three friends by his side. When there are few orders, most of them stay in the library even if they do. This guy was very patient. He lay in wait outside the library for a long time, but no one came out of the library. However, this is not the worst. Not long ago, a third-grade Slytherin student thought he had seized the opportunity to follow Albert into the boys' bathroom, only to be discovered that he had stepped on the water trail on the ground and fell down by himself and passed out. Of course, there will always be more than one guy who has never died. George walked alone in the empty second-floor corridor, and there was an abandoned women's bathroom not far from here. He hummed softly, as if he hadn't noticed anyone behind him following him. The senior Slytherin student in the fifth grade was sneaking out his wand from his robe, preparing to use a curse to teach George a severe lesson. However, when he raised his wand, he found that the new student walking in the front turned his head and actually smiled at him. When the hapless guy hadn't recovered yet and figured out what had happened, a slight noise suddenly rang from behind. Fainted. This was the last thing he heard before he passed out. After being hit by the stunning curse, he fell to the ground and passed out. Another guy looking for trouble. George stepped forward, kicked the opponent's body with his toes, grinned and said, Well, I didn't expect it, I have a helper here. Stop talking nonsense, carry it into the women's bathroom, and prepare to surprise everyone. A few minutes later, a few low-grade Hufflepuff girls passed by the door of the women's bathroom, and they saw a guy whose head was wrapped in a robe from a distance. The other party was lying at the door of the women's bathroom, half of his body was inside, and his hands were making a climbing movement, as if he wanted to climb out of the women's bathroom. Hearing the movement, Filch hurried over and looked at the large puddle of water in the hallway, his facial muscles couldn't help shaking twice. This is... I fell to the ground? In other words, what does a boy do when he breaks into the women's bathroom? What did he see, why did he crawl out embarrassingly? Several girls have very strong brain replenishment ability. When Filch found two passing students, picked up the drenched hapless man from the ground and sent it to the school hospital, their minds had already popped out. A lot of guesswork. It happens that the Albert Quartet passed by nearby, and after witnessing this scene with his own eyes, he smiled and suffocated his ribs aching. Why did the Slytherin student fled the women's bathroom in embarrassment? The girls who were the first to find out did a good job of their brain replenishment ability, guessing why the boy broke into the abandoned women's bathroom, and why he escaped from the women's bathroom in embarrassment. Next time, if anyone dares to make trouble for us again, just... Fred made a squeaking motion. By the way, put his head in the toilet. Some jokes can't be done too much. Albert tried not to make himself laugh too exaggerated, but he did not forget to remind him, however, next time I meet, I will faint them and stuff them into the women's bathroom. In his cubicle, I believe the girls will not easily pass him. That's a good idea. George blinked, I suddenly looked forward to it. They must be prepared. Definitely. You you reading www.yuncha.com. However, I don't think they can guess at all. You actually know how to use the phantom spell. Lee Jordan pointed out their biggest advantage. The Slytherin students completely underestimated AI. But's ability. 
because of the phantom spell, I never thought that someone would hide behind them and wait to yin myself, and Albert would also use the coma spell, which could easily turn people over. Although some people suspected that Albert was doing the ghost, they quickly eliminated several of them. After all, a muggle wizard, no matter how talented he is, it is impossible to master too much magic in a short time. As for the few people around Albert, it is obviously unlikely that the new students who can master the coma spell, even in Slytherin, do not have much precedent. Therefore, this pot was finally dumped to the senior students of Greyfinder. After all, Mark has a precedent. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Albert was sitting in the corner of the library, dragging his chin with one hand, and casually flipping through the catalog orders in the Fenja brand wizard clothing store, planning to choose a suitable Christmas gift. Originally, he planned to make an amulet for Naya himself, but after reading several books on alchemy, he temporarily dispelled this idea. Albert found his original idea was very unrealistic. Although wizards can cast spells on items and give them some magical properties, the magic on items usually cannot last too long and will disappear over time. In Albert's view, it is not as meaningful to make a amulet that will soon expire as a birthday gift than to buy a scarf for Nia. It is never easy to create a powerful and long-lasting magic item. First of all, it is necessary to use some items that carry magic power as raw materials, and during the entire manufacturing process, it is also necessary to cast spells on those raw materials for manufacturing. After the work is completed, there will be a process of casting a spell on the finished product. Whether the caster is strong enough and the skill of using magic will determine whether the magic item is strong enough and lasting. In ancient times, wizards would carve some runes on magic items to further enhance the effect of magic. However, there are very few wizards who can do this today, and most of the ancient skills left over are lost. Using this complex and cumbersome process, what is usually created is a powerful and long-lasting magic item. Of course, some places are called alchemy items. To be honest, the magical world in England doesn't pay much attention to alchemy. The concept of alchemy was originally derived from the areas of ancient Greece and Egypt, and was introduced to Western Europe in the 12th century. The early wizards had very vague concepts about alchemy, and didn't even know what it was. Albert had read the famous Kuiulu of ancient Egypt in the library, but he did not understand the meaning of the above. The first sentence of the book was translated as As it is above, as it is below, in this way, the miracle of the one is fulfilled. The second sentence is, everything is the one, created from the one by differentiation. After reading it forcibly and remembering it, Albert put Jade Jade record together and tucked it back on the shelf. Old books are usually full of complex and profound concepts that are difficult to understand. Albert's only understanding after reading the two sentences of the Jade Record is, is he talking about the universe or something? He really wasn't thinking about the meaning of that book. Maybe, one day when he learns alchemy, he might suddenly realize it. Anyway, the early alchemy involved multiple fields. What explores the mystery of magic? the form of matter, and early cosmology, anyway, a bunch of things are integrated into alchemy theory. Later, alchemy became obsessed with metal making, which is why some metalsmiths were named so and so alchemists in later generations, although they might prefer to call themselves metal craftsmen. After centuries of development, alchemy established the material transformation after the research of Albert, Thomas von Aquinas, Roger Bacon, Arnold von Willanova, and other great alchemists. Philosophy Raymond Luler even put forward the hypothesis of the sage stone, that is, the philosopher's stone, based on the theory of understanding, decomposition, and reconstruction. This hypothesis was completed by Nico Mailer. Through the philosopher's stone, that is, the magic stone, 
the early concept of transforming by adding seeds to transformation was realized, and the elixir of life was successfully created, and any metal could be turned into pure gold. Nico Mailer, who created the Sorcerer's Stone, is therefore regarded as the ancestor of European alchemy, standing on the summit of alchemy and looking down on all alchemists. However, after the continuation of the past generations, the concept of material transformation eventually turned towards potions. Although the metal craftsman is also crowned the title of alchemist, this group of people obviously does not have that kind of consciousness, and the branch of alchemy falls on the mystic. Making magical items is something that metal craftsmen often do. They are good at using magic to process metal and create some magical props with hidden magical powers. Fairies are the best among them. They are good at performing pure silver products made by fairies' magic, which in this world is similar to the mithril in the magic world. However, after a few days, the fairy forging sterling silver technology was also lost, and only a few fairy craftsmen could forge fairy iron. After the profession of metal craftsmen gradually disappeared, alchemy completely moved closer to the occult. However, most alchemists did not admit that items that were simply casted could be called alchemy items. However, some guys call it alchemy now, and the book Simple Alchemy that Albert once read is one of them. After in-depth understanding of alchemy, Albert has a new copy of the making amulet. He needs to find a bunch of magical materials with protective meaning, and put them together to make amulets. The amulet produced in this way will greatly strengthen the protective magic that Albert finally releases on the amulet. For example, the magic tree or yew tree, the garnet known as the stone of life and the body stone, yu siwaz, which symbolizes protection and defense in the rune, and other runes the combination of runes can strengthen the protective power of the amulet. Unfortunately, although the idea is not good, the reality is cruel. Albert needs more knowledge to help him complete this structure, and he himself has little understanding of runes, that is, ancient magic texts. Regarding the records of ancient magic texts, they are more about interpretation and understanding, rather than involving deeper things. Perhaps Dumbledore has studied these things, but now there are very few wizards who really know how to use them. Not enough. Albert threw the idea of making amulets as gifts behind his head. In fact, he already had a more suitable choice, and he was about to fix it. A lion head beast symbolizing Greyfinder. This is Albert's inspiration when he practiced basic sports magic, using wood, gears and magic to create a moving lion body eagle head. The reason why he set out to do it was the model of the fire dragon on the Goblet of Fire, a model of scale waving. That's right, after clicking on a few levels of economics-related skills, Albert began to think of various sorrow operations www.mtlnovel.com for example, selling models of various magical creatures in the future might make a lot of money. What an idea! After all, he can find someone to cooperate and set up a company or something, and he can invest and provide related technology himself. In order to carve the lion eagle head, Albert deliberately went to the spiral staircase of the principal's office on the third floor to observe a lion eagle head statue for a long time and took several photos from all angles. He also upgraded his carving skills to one level by the way, using the wood of the tree provided by Hagrid to piece together a lion body eagle headed beast. The basic movement magic can even make it stir its wings. As for whether it can fly, of course it is currently impossible. As for the future, Albert believes that he can do it and perfect it completely. After all, he has a panel, how could he not be confident? As for who to work with, Albert even has a candidate, such as a hapless person who was overwhelmed. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, Data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Albert found a good item on the catalog order. It was a delicate and small silver phoenix batch, but the price was a bit expensive and needed a gallon. However, Albert is still going to let Owl order and give Naya as a Christmas present. 
After closing the catalogue order and putting it back into the school bag, he closed the thick book on the table and prepared to put it back in its original position. As Albert passed the shelf with the book, he looked at an acquaintance in surprise. I have encountered a lot of trouble recently. Truman showed a little surprise on his face when he saw Albert, and said in a low voice, but, well done. Thank you. Albert asked curiously after putting the book back on the shelf, what are you looking for? Evil curse, useful curse. Truman whispered, I'm going to fight Ravenclaw Prefect Nork. Albert was stunned when he heard this. What kind of sorrow was this? You and Ravenclaw's Prefect, duel. Albert asked in a low voice. Truman nodded. What's the matter? Are you going to hesitate and discuss, or, use a duel to resolve the conflict? Albert had actually guessed that it was possible. If it were friendship and discussion, Truman would not come here to find useful curses. However, I am afraid that the school will not be too happy, they will not want to see students use duels to solve problems, A and D. Albert believes that Truman has little chance of winning. Since the opponent is Ravenclaw's prefect, it shows that the results are not bad, and there will be a gap in the mastery and use of magic between the two sides. Nork insisted that Bridget Winlock was from Ravenclaw. Truman's tone was a little annoyed. Bridget Winlock? Albert asked suspiciously, he had never heard the name. Bridget Winlock was a famous arithmetic fortune teller in the 13th century. He was the first to discover the magical properties of the number seven. Truman explained, I'm learning arithmetic and divination and chatting with others about this event. Later, when he passed by, he said Winlock was from Ravenclaw. I argued about it, and then it became like this. So Bridget Winlock is from Hufflepuff. Of course, there is an introduction by Bridget Winlock on the chocolate frog picture. Truman took out a chocolate frog picture and handed it to Albert. Albert asked after reading it, why didn't you give this to him at the time? I asked a friend later. Truman explained, moreover, I think even if I show it to him, the other party won't admit it. That guy must have known that he was wrong a long time ago, so he just wouldn't admit it. Albert already understood the reason for their duel. The typical argument went to spray each other, and then it evolved into beating people. In his previous life, Albert had seen too many such things, and there were a lot of people on the internet with this kind of virtue. However, because there is a layer of network, and you can't climb over and beat people along the network cable, there is no tricks, you can only spray each other on the internet forum. This time it was different. Both sides were already angry. Perhaps, at the beginning, the prefect of Ravenclaw himself remembered incorrectly. When the two sides blushed with each other, even if they realized that there was nothing wrong, they would not admit their mistakes, so it evolved into this duel. Obviously, the prefect of Ravenclaw was furious, at least Truman thought so. Not everyone has the courage to admit their mistakes like Greyfinder. No, even Greyfinder, few have this courage, just like Dumbledore's classic quotation, people are easy forgive others for their mistakes, but it is difficult to forgive others for their correctness. Truman is to maintain the glory of Hufflepuff, at least, in their opinion, your own academy finally except for a famous person, you actually shamelessly insist that it is Ravenclaw. Need me to give you a little advice? Albert whispered. Okay. Truman looked forward to Albert's proposal. It's not a duel, it will cause you trouble. Albert reminded, don't admit that it was a duel. Truman was a little regretful. You certainly don't want to be confined. Albert said. I don't want to. Truman nodded repeatedly. Will you disarm the curse? No, Truman said gloomily. Come with me. Albert motioned to Truman to go out with him. The library is not a good place to talk. He has noticed that Mrs. Pins is looking over here. If he doesn't want to be driven out by the chicken feather blanket, then just leave by yourself. The two walked out of the library one after another and came to the corridor outside. 
Albert looked at the Slytherin students passing by, squinted his eyes and said to Truman, The spell of the disarming curse is to remove your weapon, which is what he meant, it is to remove the opponent's weapon. You mean, get rid of Nox's weapon. Truman's tone was a little excited. If the wizard loses his wand, it's like a tiger loses his minions. Yes. However, you must first use it first. Albert said suddenly, you will definitely count one, two, and three in a duel. When you count to one, you will attack him first, otherwise you may not be him. Opponent. But. Truman seemed to want to say something, but was interrupted by Albert. This is not a duel, is it? Albert said lightly, when you disarm Nox's weapon, use a whole body restraint curse while he is in a daze, you can use it. Yes. Truman nodded. Then, go up and beat him, and beat him to know that he was wrong. Albert made a punch. With fists. Truman was a little unable to understand Albert's thinking mode. There is a saying that the truth is in your fist. Albert looked at Truman dumbfounded and said, Moreover, he was indeed wrong, he did not admit it, and he wanted to teach you through a duel. Don't forget, he is older than him. You are two years older and know more about magic than you. Albert paused suddenly, and his eyes fell on a certain red-haired girl in raven claw. Do you know Isabel? I've seen it several times in the same club. Albert confirmed that there was no one around, and continued, There is a saying, you can never wake up people who pretend to sleep, the best way to wake them up is. Beat him fiercely. Truman suddenly felt very reasonable. What about the sneak attack, what he wanted was to teach the other party a severe lesson. Albert nodded and said, Remember, don't use evil curses. Using evil curses is worse than using a fist. Then, after you get caught, you will tell Professor Sprout why you are fighting. Remember it's a fight, not a duel. Your dean will definitely not punish you. After all, you are fighting for the honor of the academy. It's okay. Truman was stunned. He had believed it for seven or eight points. Yes, he hit you for honor. When he was excited, he suddenly realized that there was one thing that he would not disarm. Come with me, I know what you need. Self-defense spells. Albert entered with Truman, you need to find someone to practice with you, don't look at me, I don't have that kind of free time, you can find one Hufflepuff's friend. Well. Thank you, remember to come to the duel on the weekend. Truman grinned, on the lawn near Black Lake. I will. Albert looked at Truman's back, his gaze fell on his task panel. Enthusiastic help. Your friend Gabriel Truman seems to have some trouble. As the first wizard friend you know, you should help him solve the problem as much as possible. www.mtlnovel.com reward, 100 points of experience. Gabriel Truman likes plus 10. Distant victory. Your friend does not have any advantage in the upcoming duel. As a friend, you should find ways to help him turn defeat into victory. Reward, 1000 experience, a random skill from the mission target, Gabriel Truman's favor plus 10. Albert was a little interested in getting a random skill from the mission target. When she returned to her seat, Shauna who had just finished her homework, asked curiously, What did you do just now? It's nothing, I just met a friend and talked a few words. Albert noticed that Mrs. Pants looked over, shut up quickly, checked the homework he had just finished, and put him away. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Someone is fighting. On the edge of the hall, I don't know who yelled. The students who were having dinner rushed towards the hall curiously, wanting to see what happened. What's the matter? Albert took his homemade sandwiches and followed the Weasley twins, following the crowd to the entrance of the hall. On the lawn near Black Lake, Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw students are dueling. All of a sudden, 
Albert figured out what had happened. The duel between Truman and Ravenclaw Prefect Nock was advanced. When everyone ran toward the lawn, the duel between the two sides had ended. Ravenclaw's Prefect Nock was knocked to the ground, and there were traces of being beaten on his face. Truman, the victor, was standing in front of Nock, saying something. When Albert and the others hurried over, the last scene they saw was Truman squatting down, stuffing a picture of a chocolate frog into Nock's lips, and then surrounded by a few Hufflepuff students, winning the gesture of the person left. What's the matter, what happened? Fred asked other people around for news, and quickly figured out what happened. In the duel, Truman took the first shot and attacked Ravenclaw's prefect with a full-body restraint curse. After he succeeded, he put away his wand, raised his fist and slapped Nork severely, swelling the opponent's face. Up. Before leaving, Truman was holding a picture of a chocolate frog and read a story about Bridget Winlock, and said that the famous 13th century arithmetic fortune teller came from Hufflepuff. Everyone quickly figured out the reason for the duel. The two sides were arguing over whether Bridget Winlock graduated from Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw, and finally turned into a duel to solve the problem. Really relieved, not all famous experts are from Ravenclaw. A senior Hufflepuff girl stubbornly waved her fist to express her thoughts. Nock must know that Bridget Winlock came from Hufflepuff, knowing he was wrong and still repenting, deserves to be beaten and swollen. Of course, some people are also talking about Truman's sneak attack. Nyaki, a prefect, is embarrassed to fight a third-grade student. Many people didn't care much about Truman's attack on Nyaki. After all, this duel itself is not equal. If you don't fight back, is it possible to stand and be beaten? Especially after knowing the cause of the matter, more people were excited about Truman's swollen Nyaki face. That bastard, despicable fellow. After being unbound, Nock got up from the ground embarrassedly. The Ravenclaw prefect trembled with anger and took out his mouth. Draw a piece of chocolate frog and tear it into pieces at once. Yes. It is not difficult to see that Nock doesn't care if Bridget Winlock graduated from Hufflepuff. His duel with Truman was only because of the correctness of others and repeated provocations by the other party. However, he was sneak attacked by the opponent and was beaten by the opponent, and his cheek was swollen and painful. The students on lookers knew why this guy was beaten, and the joking and gloating looks made Nock even more angry. If you're wrong, you still don't admit it and you want to bully others with your age. Being beaten deserves it. At least many people think so. Before Nock could vent his anger, he was taken away by Professor Flitwick who hurried over. It's so cool, this matter can be discussed for several years. Fred looked very excited, and the expression seemed to say why it was not me who went to the duel. However, I'm even more curious. How did their duel advance? Albert ate the sandwich in his hand and said to himself, Truman told me that his duel with Prefect Ravenclaw was on the weekend. How do you know? The three of them looked at Albert together, their voices in a bit of astonishment. The last time I met him in the library, Truman told me and invited me to come to the duel. Albert explained. You didn't tell us. George grumbled dissatisfiedly. Isn't there a few more days? When Albert returned to the restaurant, everyone was talking about this, especially Truman's last behavior. As for whether they will be severely punished through a duel in private to solve the problem, no one will pay attention to this. Anyway, as long as the punished is not yourself. On Friday night, Albert met Truman in the library. Perhaps this guy was waiting for him here specially. Nock was confined by Professor Flitwick for a week. Truman happily announced the good news to Albert, I should have been confined for a week. However, Professor Sprout only warned a little. I clicked and gave me a box of coconut sorbet. With that said, Truman took out two pieces of packaged coconut sorbet from the pocket of his robe and placed it in front of Albert, apparently intending to share this snack from Professor Sprout with Albert. Truman looked very excited when he talked about it, so... He was finally driven out of the library by Mrs. Pants with a feather duster. Seeing Truman running away, 
Albert suddenly wanted to laugh. Under Mrs. Pin's gaze, he immediately stuffed two coconut sorbets into his pockets, pretending that nothing happened, and planned to continue his homework. However, Mrs. Pants didn't seem to plan to let Albert. In the end, under the watchful eyes of the librarian, Albert had no choice but to pack his things and get out of the library. At least, it was not driven out by a feather duster. Really. Albert stood in the corridor outside the library, took out the coconut sorbet from his pocket, unwrapped the paper, took a bite, very ice, there is a strong coconut flavor, it feels a bit similar to the ice mouse sold by the Honey Duke, but not so iced, A and D. It tastes good. What idea did you give him? Suddenly, a voice came from the side. Albert turned his head and saw a red-haired girl standing next to him. Good evening, Isabel. Albert greeted the red-haired girl, because they were actually familiar with each other in the same club www.mtlnovel.com. Gabriel Truman claimed that he was just looking for knock theory. Isabel raised his eyebrows. However, it seems that you gave him the idea. Yes, this thing tastes good. Are you planning to buy me? Isabel looked at the coconut sorbet handed in front of him, his face turned very strange. If you insist. Albert didn't want to talk about the subject, but said with a smile, I just told Truman, never try to wake up the person who pretends to sleep, unless you use your fist. After speaking, Albert turned and left. Unless you use your fists. Isabel stared at the coconut sorbet in front of him, slowly unwrapping the wrapper, put the coconut sorbet in his mouth, and after eating the pastry, he raised his foot and walked to the library. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. At the quid ditch match at the end of November, the Hufflepuff team suffered a terrible defeat in the wind and snow. At present, Greyfinder and Ravenclaw have become competitors for the Academy Cup. In order to win, Captain Charlie has been strengthening the intensity of Quidditch training, which made the official players miserable. As the team's substitute, Fred and several people can always find a good excuse to avoid the hardships in the wind and snow. Training Charlie must be crazy. Fred muttered looking at the wind and snow outside the window. He is just too eager to win the Quidditch trophy. Albert can understand Charlie's efforts. After all, it is the responsibility of the Quidditch captain. If even the captain himself relaxes, the Greyfinder team will probably always no chance to raise the trophy. Are you going home during Christmas holidays? Lee Keaton asked, just after reading the letter from home. I went back to vacation. Fred and George looked at each other without hesitation. I will also go home for the holidays. Albert looked at the potted plants by the window and asked, We are all back now, what about the things in the pots? Throw it here. It shouldn't matter if you don't water it for a month. George looked at the pot of lush garlic by the window without much confidence in his tone. Actually, you can make it when you go back, I mean, during the Christmas holidays. Albert talked about it tentatively. In fact, Albert knows that a few people have no enthusiasm for making garlic crosses. No way, the patience of children is always very limited, and Albert even wonders if they have left this matter behind. Oh, this thing. Fred and George looked at each other, and they seemed to, as if they no longer had the enthusiasm they had when they made the so-called amulet. Several people are even a little confused, not knowing why they were so enthusiastic about making such things. Well, you can try it. But we don't know how to make, garlic crosses. Do you really want to soak the cross in smashed garlic? Fred asked tentatively, not sure he was wasting this way will garlic be beaten by his mother with a broom. You can mash the garlic, soak it in alcohol, and then soak the cross in it. Albert hasn't practiced it either, and there are very few suggestions for them. This is a good idea. But... 
Frederick gave a sigh of relief, as if he had forgotten what to say. However, we are not sure if we can get alcohol. George continued. They are hard to find ordinary beer, let alone alcohol, it is very difficult to get it. What do you plan to do with your pot of fresh food? Lee Keaton quickly turned off the topic, his actual situation is not much better than the twins. Stay here, if you die, there will be no way. Another pot of plants by the window is the white fresh branch that Albert got from Hagrid. The white fresh herb, as long as it is the branches are buried in the soil sack, and if you take care of it carefully, it is not too difficult to recultivation of new white fresh. However, Bakesian is easily affected by the weather. If you don't transplant it in a greenhouse in winter, or find a warmer place, it will wither easily. In fact, Albert didn't have much confidence to be able to feed this pot of fresh food in winter. After December, the weather became colder. Although the common room in Greyfinder was burning with fire, the cold windy corridor became even colder because of the wind and snow. The glass of the window was creaked by the freezing wind and snow, and everyone had to wrap themselves more tightly with clothes. Christmas is approaching and everyone is looking forward to the holiday. However, the professors subconsciously left a bunch of homework for the students. This also prevents people from having a good Christmas holiday. Seeing the homework rising sharply on the parchment, Lee Jordan once again threw the quill pen on the table. Accept your fate, you have to do it anyway, or come back after the holidays, let the professors take turns to imprison you. Albert put away the parchment, had to admit that there are indeed a lot of homework during the Christmas holiday, even he it cannot be completed in a short time. Don't mention it, you are simply the devil. Lee Keaton leaned on the armchair. Today, all the students in the third grade and above have gone to Hogsmeade, otherwise there would be no chance for them to comfortably use the common room. Albert. George said with a tremor in his words. He pointed to the front page news of the Daily Prophet and urged, Look at this, look at this. What's the matter? Fred asked feebly. What's the big news in the Daily Prophet? Millicent Bagno has decided to retire in February and his successor has been determined to be Cornelius Fudge. George's breathing became very rapid. Corneli Fudge. Fred repeated, his thoughts paused for a moment, and his voice suddenly increased by eight points. You mean? Connolly Fudge. What's wrong, is there anything wrong with Cornelius Fudge? Lee Jordan looked at the twin brothers in doubt, and suddenly recovered, wait, Cornelius Fudge seems to be. The three of them all turned their heads and looked at Albert with weird eyes. When they saw this report, they suddenly remembered something. They met Albert on the Hogwarts Express train. I remember. George said bluntly. You seem to have spent twenty-five gallons. Fred continued the unfinished words. Connolly Fudge will become the next Minister of Magic. Lee Keaton's eyes gradually widened. At this moment, the three of them opened their mouths together and looked at Albert in shock. I remember it did happen. Albert nodded, at first, I asked you if you want to participate in the quiz together. My heart, hurts. Fred reached out his hand to cover his chest, his breathing became rapid. If at first, watched Kanan slip away from her hand, the feeling would be too bad, it would be heartbreaking. What are the odds for Cornell Fudge? Lee Keaton asked suddenly. I remember it was four times. Twenty-five gallons is, one hundred gallons. Lee Jordan's breathing became heavier and heavier, like a panting cow. One hundred gallons. UU reading www.uugonshu.com The twins muttered with dull eyes. One hundred gallons, this large sum of money, for a few people, they have never even thought about it. I said. My luck is usually not too bad. Albert blinked at the three of them and said, But, does the Daily Prophet mention when to give the money? This, it shouldn't be too late. I think when Cornelius Fudge announces that he will take over as the next Minister of Magic, the quiz will be over. They should count them soon and give rewards to the winners. Albert nodded his head and said, 
recently there is no need to worry about running out of money. To be honest, he doesn't like asking his family for money to buy things, and it feels uncomfortable to ask someone for money. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. After the Daily Prophet announced that Cornelius Fudge would become the next Minister of Magic, about two weeks later, the Daily Prophet's quiz reward was delivered by the Owl Postman. It was still snowing outside, and the Owl Postman rushed into the auditorium as usual. Among them, an owl threw a frozen envelope in front of Albert. In a moment, another owl threw a heavy-looking animal skin bag on the table in front of Albert, and the dull metal sound suddenly attracted the attention of others around him. Albert stretched out his hand to pick up the animal skin bag and squeezed it twice. After listening to the crisp sound inside, he guessed what was in the animal skin bag. He did not open the animal skin bag on the spot, but put it in his backpack. Then, draw out the magic wand and use the drying spell to remove the frost on the envelope, then open the envelope and read the contents. The letter read. Congratulations, Mr. Albert Anderson. You have won 100 gallons in the quiz for the next Minister of Magic. Please sign for it. Barnabas Goof. Note, before signing, please do not open the animal skin bag, which has been enchanted to ensure that Albert himself receives the garin. In the envelope, there is another piece of parchment, which is a magic contract to ensure that the money is signed by Albert himself. If someone else tries to take money that doesn't belong to them from the animal skin bag, they will get into trouble. As for what the trouble is, the letter doesn't say, Albert guessed it might be some kind of curse or some kind of tracking magic. So that they can find the thief who stole the money. Albert wants to keep this secret as low-key as possible, but the secret will always spread like wildfire. Soon after, all the teachers and students of the school knew that he participated in the quiz of the Daily Prophet and had won a large sum of Jin Jialong. As for how much? No one knows the specific number. Some people say 50 gallons, some say 100 gallons, and some guess 200 gallons. In the end, George couldn't help telling the truth and envied a bunch of people. Every time someone talks about this, the sour tone is almost about to corrode a big hole in the ground. Now, everyone calls you Lucky Albert. Shauna sat in front of Albert, turned and asked, What do you think? Very good, I like this name, and I hope I can continue to be lucky, maybe I can win the jackpot again. Albert said with a smile. You can sleep on the table for a while now, maybe you can dream of winning the jackpot. Shauna couldn't help rolling her eyes. My luck has always been good. Albert took out his wand, shook it in front of a few people, and continued to flicker, Mr. Ollivander told me that a wand made of red cedar will be able to bring the user fortunately, my magic wand is made of red cedar. Can the red cedar bring luck? Angelino looked suspicious, obviously not believing these words. There has indeed been such a saying. It is said that the wand made of redwood can bring luck to the user, so this kind of wand is very popular with wizards. Katrina looked up and down Albert with a weird look. Of course, some people think this is pure nonsense. Of course it is true. I guessed it right with the help of a magic wand. Albert's wand can really bring a lucky look. The face of Lee Jordan next to him was twitching slightly. In their memory, that was really the case. At that time, Albert put the wand vertically on the table and let it fall to one side freely, and then inexplicably decided to press 25 gallon on Connolly Fudge. When Fred told everyone about the situation, everyone was dumbfounded, with the look of you kidding me. What kind of show operation is this? Is this the correct posture to win the jackpot? However, this matter did not allow everyone to discuss for too long the Christmas holiday has quietly approached. After Albert packed his luggage, he took the school's night horse carriage and walked along the snow-filled road to the Hogsmeade station. What are you doing? 
George asked in a puzzled way, and he saw Albert scoring his hands towards the front of the carriage. Aren't you curious about what is pulling the carriage? Albert pointed to the snowy tunnel. Don't you see the footprints on the snow? Something is pulling the cart. The three of them all looked shocked, but the footprints on the snow are indeed the best evidence, an invisible horse. Yucky, Albert said softly. It is said that only those who have seen death can see Yucky. I've heard of these creatures, they are very unlucky. Lee Jordan tried to pull Albert away from Yechi, and whispered, I heard that these creatures will bring terrible disasters to those who see them. Is a bad omen. You think too much. Yeki is a kind of flying horse, and its bad reputation is related to dead people. Otherwise, do you think Hogwarts will use them to pull carts? Albert couldn't help but glance at Lee Jordan. Pulling I entered the express train with my luggage and prepared to find an unmanned carriage to rest. Looking at the leaping scenery outside the window, Albert was in a good mood. Along the way, several people ate snacks and chatted about what to do during the Christmas holiday. When I was bored, I also played the Bibidoo adventure proposed by Fred. This game is to close your eyes, just pick up a Bibidoo bean and put it in your mouth to see who is unlucky enough to taste the strange taste. Lee Jordan was the most unlucky when he ate a piece of soil. He once again claimed in front of everyone that he was no longer eating BB Duo beans, which made everyone laugh. When the train began to pass through the Muggle town, Albert took off his wizard cloak and put on a Muggle coat. Fortunately, Daisy prepared his coat carefully, otherwise Albert would have forgotten it. In the afternoon, the train finally stopped at King's Cross Station. Everyone was about to leave platform 9 and 3 fourths, but was stopped at the ticket gate by a shriveled old guard who did not allow too many people to pass through at once. A large group of people emerged from the solid wall at the same time, attracting the attention of the muggles. However, the Hogwarts students still attracted muggles' attention. When Albert just walked out of the wall, he found a well-dressed man standing by the wall, and several Ministry of Magic people around. Among them, there is actually one who uses the phantom spell on himself. However, the technique of the phantom spell is really not very good, and Albert vaguely captured his position. Before mastering the phantom spell, Albert may not notice the opponent, but he still has some understanding of the phantom spell, and it is not too difficult to find the flaw. Bye, Albert. Goodbye, Albert. Lee Jordan and Shauna waved goodbye to Albert. Goodbye. Albert also waved at them. He is there, Mom, Albert is there. Nia ran towards here as she waved her hand. Albert waved to his family with a smile on his face, then turned to Fred and George and said, Goodbye, I'm leaving now. Goodbye, my family is here too. Fred pointed not far away. Albert saw the red-haired Weasleys, Fred's brother Ron and sister Ginny. What are you looking at? Naya complained dissatisfied. Okay, okay, I'll buy you snacks. But I have to wait to get in the car and bring them to you. Albert reached out and touched Nia's head, but the girl turned her head away. Don't touch the lady's head, it's very impolite. Naya complained solemnly www.mtlnovel.com Heber couldn't help laughing, and reached out to take Albert's luggage and asked, Hog how is Watts's life? Not bad. I learned a lot of useful things. Albert said without hesitation. Welcome home. Daisy smiled and handed Tom to Albert. It's getting heavier, Albert said, weighing Tom's weight. A while ago, Tom stayed at his grandfather's house for a few days. Nia whispered, you also know the character of Grandma Sansa. Albert looked at his fat cat and sighed lightly. After getting into the car, Albert put Tom on his lap and combed his hair while muttering, It's time to lose weight. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of The Beautiful Wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. The Anderson family's original skiing plan for the Christmas holiday is cancelled. 
Luke and Sansa will come over to spend Christmas together. No one in the family complains about this. They are not too enthusiastic about skiing itself. On Christmas Eve, Albert saw Herb wandering outside Nia's room and seemed to be considering whether to put the gift on his daughter's bedside table. Santa Claus is out of fashion now. Albert motioned to Herb to put the Christmas present next to the Christmas tree downstairs. I told him about it. Daisy in her pajamas looked helplessly at the two people in the hallway, and shook her head to remind, You also hurry back to sleep, don't stay up late, you have to get up in the morning to open Christmas gifts. The next day, Albert was awakened by Nia early in the morning. No way, Tom's cat face was leaning against his face, and Albert was completely sleepy. I didn't find the Christmas gift you gave. Nia asked for it. Here, I haven't had time to put it beside the Christmas tree. Albert reached out and pushed Tom's face away. After doing it, he took out a well-packed box from the drawer and handed it to Nia. Where is mine? He asked. The two siblings would give each other Christmas gifts long ago. Next to the Christmas tree downstairs. Naya opened the package, picked up the badge and asked, It's beautiful, by the way, what kind of bird is this? Phoenix, you can also call it a fire bird or a phoenix. It is said that Principal Dumbledore raised one. However, I did not see the phoenix. Albert took out a small dried fish from the drawer and handed it to Tom set in front of him, and your Christmas present. As he said, he tore open the wrapping paper, pulled out a small dried fish from it, shook it in front of Tom, and easily attracted his attention. However, when Albert was about to put the dried fish in his mouth, Tom's face came closer and he made an anxious meow. This guy is too bad, Tom, we won't play with him anymore. Naya put the badge in her pocket, reached out and picked up the cat, took the bag of dried fish and went downstairs, leaving Albert alone. Holding a small dried fish alone. White Christmas. Albert got out of bed and came to the window, stretched out his hand to open the curtains, and looked at the snow falling outside, with emotion. When he went downstairs, Albert couldn't help but look under the Christmas tree, where there were still a bunch of small packages. Naya is already sitting at the table and unpacking her own package, so, the rest is all hers? Albert walked under the Christmas tree and started unpacking. A few books, a few greeting cards, and a quid-ditch poster. Well, it was from the Weasley brothers. Although Albert didn't know who the group of guys in this poster were, he planned to take it back to school. Posted in the dormitory, the poster should be the team supported by the twin brothers. Albert took a look at a small bag of sweets. It was given by Shauna and thanked him for his help at the beginning of school. Lee Jordan gave him a box of BB Duo beans. There is also a metamorphosis today, but it is a past issue. Albert looked at the sender and it was actually sent by Professor McGonagall. Albert is curious, Professor McGonagall will give himself Christmas gifts? Then a scarf? How? Naya asked nervously. I picked this color. It's beautiful. Albert wrapped the scarf directly around his neck, it was warm, off-white children's style, okay. He is only twelve years old and a child, so he has nothing to complain about. The rest was either candy or books. Albert was not surprised to receive the books. It was like this before. The breakfast was very rich, but the Andersons did not eat immediately. Instead. They waited until Luke and Sansa came over. At about 10.30, the family of six had breakfast with Christmas songs. After eating, they lay down on the sofa while watching TV. The show, while chatting about some relaxing topics. Naya originally hoped that Albert could perform magic, but Albert did not agree after considering it. To be honest, he still doesn't know how the traces of the Ministry of Magic is going. Although they have asked other people, they are not quite clear about the principle of traces. Under normal circumstances, it should be before the summer vacation for the first grade to receive the notice that magic is prohibited outside the school. However, Albert did not want to take risks. 
it is undoubtedly unwise to rush into legal loopholes without preparation. Although you don't use magic, you can do a lot of things, play wizard chess, or talk about interesting things. However, in terms of wizard chess, it is clear that no one is Albert's opponent. After Herb lost another game, he temporarily gave up playing wizard chess with his son. Fortunately, Daisy brought out a large bowl of freshly fried French fries from the kitchen, giving him a good excuse to end the game. Tom, don't tease Swilla, be careful of being pecked. When Albert went to wash his hands, he took the short hair cat away from the owl by the way, still muttering in his mouth, did I take the wrong name, it it should be called Jerry, Tom and Jerry, what a great combination. Shara sounds better. Naya couldn't help but reminded. After Albert came back from washing his hands, he heard a scream, and Tom, who had cheap paws, was finally pecked by the owl. Cheryl obviously didn't intend to let Tom go, and chased him with a fierce peck. With full combat effectiveness, Tom was embarrassed and could only hide under the sofa. Everyone couldn't help laughing. Sansa pulled some owl food for Snow, then bent down, picked up Tom under the sofa, and soothed his injured heart with dried fish. Tom is getting fatter. Naya took out the birthday present Albert gave herself and showed it to others. It's nice for a cat to be fat. Sansa smiled and scratched Tom's chin. You said it's Tom. When will it fly? Naya raised her hand and poked the griffin, and, does our world really have such a creature? Yes. But they are said to be in unknown places. Albert was putting the fries dipped in tomato sauce into his mouth. That group of people in the wizarding world are like this www.mtlnovel.com why should they hide like mice? Daisy sat next to Herb, the two leaned together. After all, the number of wizards is small, and most ordinary people are afraid of more power than they know. It was Luke who opened the mouth to answer. In fact, many people fear magic while admiring others possessing magic. Then, for various reasons, they treat magical people as monsters and find reasons to persecute them. Humans are such creatures. Tom was lying on the table, staring at the toy with its wings spread, and fiddled with it with his claws. Albert, have you read the book I picked for you? Daisy asked suddenly. I have finished reading, a very good book. Albert headed up, it's a pity that the book is only from the book after all. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of The Beautiful Wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, Data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Holidays are always pleasant to the body and mind. This is especially true for students. Although there are annoying vacation assignments to complete, they cannot affect Albert's good mood. In fact, Albert had already wiped out his unfinished homework as quickly as possible the day before the Christmas holiday. A holiday without holiday homework is undoubtedly enjoyable. During the Christmas holidays, I can sleep until late in the morning and lie on the sofa to watch TV after dinner. When you are bored, you can tease the cat, listen to music, chat with Naya, play chess, or sit by the fire and find a book to savor. However, just after Christmas, Albert found something of interest. After the town's library was reopened, he went to the library to find relevant records on the runes. This incident originated from the fact that he bought a copy of a simple introduction to ancient magic texts a while ago, and it took a lot of effort to finish the book. As a result, the skill panel did not show any skills related to ancient magic texts. Albert thought that this situation was similar to alchemy, so he decided to read more related books to deepen his knowledge of the runes and master it. As for, wait until the third grade to take the ancient magic text class? Albert didn't have the patience to wait for two and a half years. After all, he is a man with a panel. As long as relevant skills appear on the panel, the follow-up questions will become very simple. There are few records about the runes in the library, but Albert still found relevant records in Germanic mythology. The rune alphabet, 
also known as the Rune Alphabet, originated in Germanic mythology and is related to Odin, the famous father of the gods. It is said that Odin exchanged an eye for the knowledge of runes. Odin belongs to the Germanic mythology, and the runes belong to the Germanic language, and when it comes to Germanic people, Albert is the first to think of Germans. Well, yes, it's a state German. German evolved from Germanic. However, there is a problem. Albert still vaguely remembered that the author of Harry Potter used a lot of Latin when designing the spell. However, Latin and Germanic belong to two different languages. Albert never considered himself an archaeologist, let alone a language expert. He never wanted to solve these problems that confused his mind. He chose to record his doubts. Perhaps, the more knowledge he has about the alphabet, the doubts will be automatically resolved. Later, Albert really found the connection between the two in the library, after the runic alphabet disappeared, Germanic also used part of the Latin alphabet. This explains why the English and German alphabets are classified as Germanic. After several days of work, Albert understood a little bit, why Hogwarts offered an elective course in ancient magic. Germanic mythology originated in Scandinavia, which is now Sweden. According to Albert's search of Germanic languages, the languages of Denmark, Norway and Iceland near Sweden all evolved from Germanic languages and belonged to North Germanic languages. Ancient English is derived from Anglo-Saxon footoak, which belongs to the West Germanic language, that is, the runic alphabet. Later, as if it was a religious relationship, a large number of Latin letters were introduced. The whole of Europe is heavily influenced by Latin. Albert thought that this might be one of the reasons why the runes disappeared. However, there is one thing that cannot be denied. Runes are magical, and ancient magical items will be carved with such ancient magical texts to enhance their magical power. Albert thinks this originated from the rune stone, which was famous in the magical world in his previous life. Although many things are derived from his own guesses, Albert is still passionate about them. He is exploring these ancient words, touching them, and trying to learn to distinguish them and read them. After consulting a lot of information, Albert found that the records in Muggles were very limited. To this end, Albert wrote a letter to ask Truman, and at the suggestion of the other party, he bought the Magic Characters Sound Table and Magic Dictionary from Lihan Bookstore. Compared with the ordinary world, the magical world knows more about runes, after all, this thing is originally a mysterious side. In the following holiday, Albert spent a lot of time trying to interpret runes. It was a difficult thing, but such an attempt finally paid off. His panel finally appeared on a panel called Although the skills of Maun were not the same as what he had imagined, Albert still used the experience pool to raise this skill to level 1. Soon, he found that he could barely understand the runes at last. The feeling was very strange, and he could vaguely feel the magical charm of ancient magic texts. Albert continued to invest his experience in magic. After he was directly promoted to level 2, he found that he was able to understand and understand most of the runes without the help of magic characters list and magic dictionary. And be able to read them aloud. This is a very interesting thing. The runes that Albert has mastered with the help of the panel are undoubtedly correct, and when he relooks at the magic characters list and magic dictionary through his own knowledge, he can found some interesting errors. Words are sometimes not necessarily able to be clearly and accurately described in another type of text, and errors are inevitable. Especially for those rune steals with religious colors, most interpretations are actually somewhat wrong. A rune character is somewhat different in its symbolic meaning, magical use, and the function of notation and the analysis of divination. Once these things are confused, the final result will be biased. After mastering the runes, Albert became keen on finding faults, looking for the places that were mistranslated, and recording them. Later, Albert began to try to design and study the use of magic texts in magic, and the amulet that was previously left behind became Albert's latest research topic. However, before he could fix the magic text on the amulet, the Christmas holiday was over. 
Albert took an express train back to Hogwarts on the day before school started. As he expected, Fred and George did not make a garlic cross, but they secretly obtained a bunch of garlic from home, and Lee Jordan was no exception. Seeing the garlic piled up in front of him www.mtlnovel.com Albert's eyelids twitched a little, he thought the three of them had forgotten it. Have you finished your vacation homework? Albert changed the subject, he really didn't want to continue to struggle with the garlic issue. Oh, one more point. Lee Jordan said while eating pumpkin pie, I will go to the library to find materials later, I will be able to make up soon. We have no problem here. The twin brothers said in unison. Copy each other. Albert saw through their tricks at a glance. No, this is called borrowing. Lee Jordan snorted in disdain and continued to eat. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Mr. Weasley, I need to remind you one thing. Except for a few differences, your vacation homework is exactly the same. After class, Professor McGonagall called Fred and George and handed them back their vacation assignments, take them back and redo them. Next time, if something similar happens again, they will be locked up and the homework needs to be done by themselves. Do it, don't keep trying to copy other people's. We all did it by ourselves, we are connected with each other, and we can only say that there is a tacit understanding. The twins looked at each other and defended in unison. Professor McGonagall was stunned when he heard the words. He didn't expect that the twins' tacit understanding would be so high. He couldn't help but looked up and down the two, nodded and said, Well, this time, forget it. Seeing Professor McGonagall leaving behind, the twins happily high five and winked at Lee Jordan and Albert. Actually, Professor McGonagall has seen through your tricks a long time ago. I believe Snape will not let you off easily. Albert reminded. His words were soon fulfilled. The twins' rhetoric was not able to dispel Snape. The potions professor just stared at them coldly, and then said, take it back and do it again. At least Snape gave you a chance. Lee Jordan slapped Fred on the shoulder gleefully and said, you know, that's Snape. You haven't been confined. Your luck is already pretty good. I think Snape can see through our thoughts. George said suddenly. Don't look directly at Snape, it's easy to see through. Albert reminded. It's definitely a kind of magic, although I haven't figured out what kind of magic it is. Magic. The three looked at each other, but they still believed in it. In the near future, I plan to. Albert raised his hand and made a walking gesture, I need to go through the rope on the fifth floor of the castle. When are you going to? Fred's eyes lighted, and they knew that Albert had mastered the phantom spell, possessing this kind of night tour weapon. Basically there was no need to worry about being caught by Filch. In the near future. Albert stopped, raised his hand to catch the object flying towards here, and opened it to see that it was a piece of chalk. Good noon, Pippi. Albert raised his wand and bounced all the chalk boxes that Pippi had thrown over. Pippi made a grimace at several people, and then planned to throw something here. Repay you. With that. Albert threw the chalk back again, and the chalk passed through Pepe Ghost's head and hit the wall behind. The latter made a rude gesture at them, turned and floated away. Where is a good place? Fred whispered, I have always wanted to go in and have a look. It is said that the books there are dangerous. What are you talking about? Lee Jordan looked at them suspiciously, not following the thoughts of a few people. Library, rope? George reminded. You mean? Lee keyed and suddenly, before he could finish his words, he was stared at by the three of them and swallowed them back. It's fine if you know it yourself. Albert patted him on the shoulder. However, the things there are too advanced for us. Lee Keaton also knows how many kilograms he has, 
so he didn't play the idea there because he couldn't learn it at all. Previous magic is a bit dangerous for people now. Albert said disapprovingly, in ancient times, wizards were almost unconstrained. At that time, the magic created and used was the product of unscrupulous. Many spells seem to be messy now, and when they are recorded, they are not standardized, let alone easy to understand. Those ancient books are hard to understand without research, and some are written in ancient magic texts. Therefore, Hogwarts put those books in the forbidden book zone so that students would not read them, and they would pit themselves after trying to use them. But Albert is different, he has a panel. As long as he finishes reading the book, he can smoothly master the spells that can appear in the panel through the experience pool. It is actually necessary to expand the diversity of magic. Your words reminded me of Sesame Open. Fred remembered the incident when Albert had opened the door of Professor McGonagall's office. I checked this spell later. Before the opening of the Arajo Cave, the unlocking spell used by people was open the door and then open the door with sesame seeds. In the interest of the three people, Albert continued, this the spell will be like a rude visitor, knocking down the door of someone else's house with one kick, so that a certain way of opening the door will open. In comparison, the current Arajo cave is indeed more detailed, which is also one of the characteristics of contemporary spells. It's unbelievable. Lee Keaton was surprised. This spell is so, cool. The twins' eyes flashed eagerly. After lunch, the Weasley twins had to go to the library. They had more homework than the others. If they didn't finish it in time, they might be locked up by Snape. It was a nightmare for the two of them, and it could not happen anyway. What weird thing are you studying again? After Lee Jordan finished his homework, he glanced at Albert's parchment. There were many strange symbols on it. He couldn't understand it anyway. Running symbol. Albert pointed to the intersection of three lines above, a bit like a rice character with one horizontal missing and one more oblique right. This symbol of wealth, it is said that making amulets and wearing them can increase a person's wealth. I think your fortune is good enough. Lee Jordan whispered. No one would mind that their wealth is better. Albert said lightly. Does this thing work? The twins who were busy doing homework put their heads together. We need some luck recently. Then you need some blessing potion. Albert said. What is that? Good luck water, it is said that drinking it will make people lucky for a period of time. And this thing? The twins felt incredible. Yes but it is said that it takes several months to prepare this potion. A few months. George couldn't help raising his tone. After being stared at by a group of people, his neck quickly retracted, pretending to be a little transparent. It is very difficult to configure the fulling potion. A little mistake will turn into poison. Albert lowered his voice. How do you know? Last time I did Snape's homework, I found it when I was looking for information, and then I checked it with interest, but unfortunately I didn't find the formula for the elixir. Albert explained casually. I'm even more curious www.mtlnovel.com are these things you made effective. Field had been watching for a long time, and then suddenly asked. I'm sure it won't work. Albert couldn't help rolling his eyes. The rune you have been looking at just now adds charm to boys. Oh, where does that add charm to girls? Field asked casually. In fact, Field had also studied ancient magic texts. Although she only got an E in the exam, she could still feel that Albert had no low attainments in this regard. It's really hell, how did he master this knowledge? Those complicated runes can't be drawn simply. She herself has looked at it for a long time, and she can barely distinguish it through the notes on the parchment. Oh, no. After all, I am a man. Albert said of course. If these runes are valid, I will definitely use them for myself first. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, 
data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. The one, you know. George looked up at Field's leaving figure, muttering softly. A friend I met in the Transfiguration Club. Albert said without looking up, Field is very good at Transfiguration. It is said that he has published an article on Transfiguration today. After graduation, he should also go to the field of transformation go ahead. In fact, students who are eligible to be selected by Professor McGonagall into the Transformation Club will basically publish articles in Transfiguration today. That magazine has several pages for Hogwarts students who are particularly good at transformation. Of. Do you know where to be good at transfiguration? Professor Transfiguration. Lee Jordan interjected suddenly. Do not know. In fact, girls usually don't work too long after graduation because they need to take care of their families. Fred whispered, this is the norm. Of course, there are some exceptions. Is that so? Albert blinked, he was not very clear about the magic world. However, there is one thing that Albert knows very well that full-time mothers in the UK are considered a kind of professional, and their status has been left several blocks in their lives. Yes. George nodded in agreement. This was the situation in his family. This is the case in my house. Shauna whispered. Where is your home? They are all lawyers. Albert replied. Who will take care of you? Shauna asked curiously, and she had finished her homework. Now, every time they encounter homework that needs to find materials, they are used to go to the library together, then find materials together, and find materials to share with everyone. As for how to write a paper, it is their own business. Normally, they can always finish their homework quickly because they don't need to spend a lot of time looking for information. This tradition was started by Albert. He felt that it was time-saving and labor-saving, everyone liked it, and there was an atmosphere when doing homework. I can take care of myself. Albert said of course. Several people looked at Albert with sorrow, but thought of Albert's style and style. This product looks and doesn't seem like the type that needs other people's care. You. Shauna paused and changed the subject, pointing her finger at the symbol of good luck on the parchment. This kind of thing is really useful, isn't it your scribble? This is runic jibuauja, which means good luck. Albert explained in a low voice, ancient wizards used it as amulets or good luck stones to bring good luck to themselves. I think your luck is good enough. Shauna whispered. I feel the same way, Fred murmured. This kind of thing is really useful. Shauna actually noticed that the senior student just now was very interested in these symbols and seemed to know what they were. I'm not sure, but why don't you try it yourself? Albert said. How to try? Shauna asked. Carve this symbol on a stone or a tree. After carving, you have to drip your own blood on the nick so that it will be effective. Albert blinked at her and said, if it works. Remember to tell me that when the time comes, I will sell all kinds of amulets at Hogwarts, and I will definitely make a lot of money. Remember to pick me up. George said immediately. Hearing this, several people couldn't help but roll their eyes. In fact, they also knew that Albert's words were mostly joking. As for the pile of symbols on the parchment, no one knows whether they are effective. You haven't tried it yourself. Fred didn't expect you to be such a person. Isn't this still being studied? In fact, Albert is still studying, but his words sound a bit like quibbling. Then you are going to put the symbol on the amulet. George remembered the cross made by Albert. The thing was originally the amulet. No, I will redesign one. Albert shook his head. He also knew that George didn't believe these things, but he didn't care about their doubts. If it wasn't for a vague intuition, he would not believe it himself. Although Albert mastered the reading and writing of ancient magic texts, how to use them and how to elicit the mystery of runes still needed him to explore. Now, the only thing Albert can do is to record this research process on parchment, which will give him a feeling of studying magic. 
when you really succeed in the future, you can turn these parchments into a book. Look, this is the handwritten manuscript left by the XX wizard studying the rune characters, the legendary XX wizard handbook, etc. It will feel very interesting. One day, a certain student from Hogwarts solved the mystery left by Albert and found his treasure hidden in Hogwarts, which was actually quite interesting. Maybe, I can use these manuscripts in the future to write a book on ancient magic texts, maybe it can be used as a teaching material for Hogwarts ancient magic texts. Well, this idea seems good. Just as this idea flashed through Albert's mind, the panel task was moving again. Mauen expert. You are already ahead of most people in the field of magic texts. In order to further prove your authority in this area, write a book related to ancient magic texts and make it a textbook for the ancient magic texts of Hogwarts. Reward, 10,000 experience, 1, skill point title, magician expert, prestige plus 300 in the magic world. After reading the panel task, Albert was shocked. He wondered if he wanted to become an expert in a certain area to trigger the corresponding task. After having this kind of speculation, Albert immediately tried it, but no other panel tasks appeared as he wanted, which made him a little disappointed. Although it may not be possible to complete, as long as the task appears, it means that there is a certain possibility. Moreover, even if it cannot be completed now, it may not be impossible in the future. Maybe I really wrote a book on magic text. No one knows the future. What do you want, come here? Fred stopped and shouted towards Albert behind. It's nothing, I was thinking that I should rest early today. Albert suddenly said, after all, if you want to get up early at night. He stopped suddenly. He noticed Fred's quiet movement. Before he looked towards his fingers, an unfamiliar voice rang in his ear, get up early at night? Why are you getting up early at night? Filch was standing not far away www.mtlnovel.com Apparently he heard Albert's words, and regarded it as a provocation, so he walked over here staring at Albert. Special said, better don't let me know that you are in the middle of the night. Ahem. Albert looked at several people helplessly and couldn't help rolling his eyes. How could it be such a coincidence? Albert murmured after Filch left. Filch must think you are molesting him. Fred forced himself to laugh. It was a coincidence just now. Just when a few people were about to turn the corner, who knew that Filch would suddenly come out. As you all know, this is just a small accident. Albert looked innocent, saying that he really didn't want to molest Filch. Of course we know. The three said in unison. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, Data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. In the early morning, Albert had just woke up from his light sleep, and his surroundings were dark. He could not determine what time it was, but he could clearly feel the shallow breathing of other roommates around him. Albert got off the bed quietly, preparing to change his clothes, when a familiar voice suddenly sounded in his ears. We thought you would sleep till dawn. So, George, you lost. Fred sat on the edge of the bed and looked at his twin brother with a smile. I said long ago that Albert will wake up. Well, you won. George was a little depressed and nodded. Good evening. Albert put a sweater on himself, looked at the two roommates and asked, together. Of course. Unfortunately, Lee Jordan really fell asleep. What should I do? Do you want to wake him up? The two lit their wands, raised them to the other bed, looked at the roommate who was breathing evenly, and shook their heads together, give up, I can't wake up. Then don't wake him up. Albert was putting thick clothes on himself, wrapping the towel Naya gave him around his neck, and reminded him, it's very cold at night, dress well. Clothes, lest you catch a cold. We were prepared. This is not the first time for the twins to travel at night. 
they have more experience than Albert. The three quietly went downstairs, Greyfinder's common room was empty, and the fire had long gone out. I will use the phantom spell for you now. Albert adjusted his winter cloak briefly, then raised his wand and said to the twins beside him, Wait a minute, stay close when you go out, don't lose it. Up. Where are you going? Fred asked curiously, No books area. Yes, I am going to borrow some books there. Albert did not deny his peeping into the forbidden book area, lowered his voice, The Book of Spells, A and D. Powerful Potion or other potions books, I'm actually very interested in fooling G. Relevant records can definitely be found in the band book area. Are you going to boil good luck? The twins looked at each other and said in unison. It's still a bit difficult now, but it will definitely be possible in the future. I have confidence in my potion level. Albert has a skill panel, so he is naturally confident. Fooling G is a good thing he will not give up easily. Could it be that you plan to make a fortune by selling blessing potions in the future? The twins looked at each other, I dare to say that they will sell well. When that happens, remember to pick up us and make a fortune together. This is a good idea. You can sell it for 20 gallons or even higher in a small bite. Albert murmured, the potions of both of you are in a mess. It is estimated that you can only get poison. One small mouth. Twenty gallons. The twins' tone of voice rose instantly, as if they had heard something unbelievable, completely ignoring the second half of Albert. The value of the blessing potion is indeed very high, but it is also very difficult to make, and the process is very complicated. It is said that only advanced potions masters can make it. There is a market and it is priceless. After all, most people need lucky at the time. Albert reminded, however, it is very complicated to boil it. Once it is mistaken, the consequences will be unimaginable. Even a master cannot guarantee that it will succeed. Failure means three months of hard work. It's freaking out. In fact, Albert knew that the elixir could not bring real good luck, but he needed the effect of the elixir, and drinking it was equivalent to adding a powerful buff to himself. To a certain extent, everything goes well as a kind of good luck. The most important thing is that he has a skill panel and a pool of experience. He has mastered the skills first. When necessary, he can change his body and instantly become an expert in making blessings. The blessing potion undoubtedly aroused the interest of the twins, a potion that can make people lucky, and it can also be sold for a large amount of money. If they really master it, it means making a fortune. Although they do not deliberately pursue wealth, they are also very clear. What is it like to be poor? If you can have money, no one wants to be poor. Okay, I'm going to use the phantom spell. Albert looked at the two and asked, who will come first? No, you don't need to use the phantom spell, we have a better way. A better way. Albert naturally knows what they mean by better way but this time he should pretend that he doesn't know anything. Use this. The twins conjured an old piece of parchment from their pockets and shook them in front of Albert like a treasure. What is this? Albert lowered his voice, deliberately making his tone sound suspicious, lest he reveal any flaws, he didn't know about the map. In fact, the surroundings are very dim, and Fred and George would not notice the expression on Albert's face. Map. Do you remember the good things we both got from Filch's confiscated supplies, highly dangerous drawer? Fred reminded. Oh, this is what you got from Filch, a piece of old parchment. Albert lifted his wand and moved to the old parchment. There was nothing on it. Invisible magic or invisible ink. This is a map. The map of Hogwarts. It requires a special password to use. But you are right. It can hide the information inside. George raised his wand and clicked on the map, muttering, I am solemn swear that I did nothing good. I didn't do a good thing. Albert felt a little wanting to laugh, but he nodded seriously, I really didn't do a good thing. Changes soon appeared on the map, 
and countless inks and interlaced lines outlined a map of the castle. It's really a wonderful map. It's not difficult to see the good intentions of the maker. Albert whispered, there is also a very advanced tracking magic on it. What magic? George asked puzzled. Tracking magic. Albert explained. The maker used tracking magic on the map, and his accomplishments are not low. Yes, he will mark the location of everyone in the castle. Fred blinked at Albert and said, just after 12 o'clock, Filch really got up and patrolled around, trying to catch it's a pity to live with you, you weren't awake at the time, so he ran for nothing. So, you know that the locations of those secret passages are also related to this map. Albert asked, narrowing his eyes. Yu Yu reading www.yuyugonshu.com Yes, it is indeed known from the life spot map. The twin brothers whispered, don't tell Lee Jordan about this for now. I know. Albert expressed his understanding. However, I think there are some secrets in the school. You definitely don't know. What's the secret? The twins said in unison. The broom cabinet you were looking for earlier. Albert said mysteriously. Have you found the broom cabinet? That's not the broom cabinet, come with me. Albert smiled mysteriously, you will be surprised later. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. The three pushed away the portrait of the fat lady and crawled out of the hole. Who is it, I'm still going out at this time. The fat lady opened her dim eyes, scanned three leaving shadows, and muttered dissatisfiedly. The three of Albert did not say a word, and walked quickly in the corridor, toward the corridor where the tapestry where the giant stick beat Barnabas was. Is the place you talking about here? George looked at the wall opposite the tapestry and asked in a low voice. Yes, right here, you need to concentrate on thinking about the venue you need, and walk across the wall three times, and a door will appear on the wall. Albert motioned for the twins to stand aside, and then began to concentrate and prepare. Open the entrance of the responsive house. However, when he passed the wall three times, he found no door appeared on the wall. No door. Fred and George both looked at Albert with doubts. Albert looked at the wall opposite the tapestry and fell into a brief silence. Before the twins could speak again, he stretched out his hand and gave them a push to signal everyone to leave here quickly. What happened? After the three of them walked forward for some distance, Fred stopped and asked puzzledly, Are you? There are people inside, and there are people in the room upon request. Albert said affirmatively, we can't open the door from outside unless you can guess the room where the person inside is. Are you sure it's not the way you opened it? George asked suspiciously. Impossible, I have been in several times. Albert shook his head, and, I don't have to deceive you, it's meaningless to do so. The twins looked at each other and thought that Albert didn't need to make a joke at this time, and the other side didn't seem to be joking. Who do you think is inside? George asked curiously. I don't know, it's probably a couple. After all, it's a great place for couples to date, and no one will bother. Albert casually said, however, there should be very few people who know this place. Why? Fred asked puzzledly. Will you be willing to share secrets with too many people? George couldn't help rolling his eyes. That's right. Albert said. The house of all requests is a magical place. What kind of place you need, it will provide you with a place. Is it so magical? The two said in unison. Otherwise. Albert whispered. Try another time. Of course, if you don't believe me, then I'm lying to you. Why don't you believe it? Fred said, there will be our secret base from now on. Have you figured out how to use it? Albert asked rhetorically. No. George thought for a while, at least, when we go out at night, 
we don't need to worry about being left in the lounge overnight. Look, you're so promising. Fred despised. What about you? Albert asked rhetorically. I, haven't figured it out yet. Fred muttered. You are ashamed to say me. George despised. What about you? The two looked at Albert together. Me. Albert paused. In the future, you can make potions, practice magic, find a quiet place to do your homework, or make something. You can come here. You can find a urinal here when you are holding back urine. It's okay for a date. Say, do you have a girl you like, ready to drop George? Albert asked righteously. Why do you say that I am abandoned? George looked speechless. Don't make trouble. Fred couldn't help rolling his eyes and turning away from the subject, let's take you to other places first. We know many hidden secrets. Let's go to the library later. Okay, that's a good idea. Albert Tao agreed with the twins' proposal and could take the opportunity to improve the progress of exploring Hogwarts. As for who is using the room on demand, Albert does not think it is a certain couple. Although this possibility cannot be ruled out, he has other ideas in his mind. Who is the most suspicious of Hogwarts? The answer is undoubtedly Professor of Defense Against the Dark Arts. Although Bud Broad left a good impression on Albert, who made every Hogwarts defense against the Dark Arts professor suspicious. From Voldemort's Minions, Writer's Part-Time Liar, Werewolves, Fake Former Aurors, True Undercover Agents, Ministry of Magic Toads who deliberately look for things, Mr. Double Agents, to the last Death Eater's siblings. In fact, Albert would doubt Professor Browder because they had encountered Professor Browder here. Could it be Voldemort's minions again? Albert started to think about things, but quickly got rid of this thought. If they were Death Eaters, few would be willing to talk to a Muggle wizard. After all, it is an indisputable fact that Death Eaters hate Muggle wizards. This way. Fred led the way. The three stopped in front of the knight statue, and the two showed Albert how to use the password to open the secret passage. For most of the rest of the time, the three had been wandering around the castle. Albert was very satisfied with the current progress of the exploration. After George showed him the secret passage leading to the castle, he couldn't help wondering whether Sirius Black sneaked into the castle through the secret passage a few years later. Pippi is on the third floor. You said we should use it to wake Filch. When Fred stopped to check the map, he suddenly proposed, it must be interesting to let Filch get up and look around for us. He should have just slept not long. The two looked at Albert together, waiting for his opinion. Okay, but where are you going to hide? Don't tell me, you are going to hide and seek with Filch in the castle. Albert agreed. We can make some trouble for Filch, and there is your phantom spell, he must not catch us. Fred took out a bag of dung bullets from his pocket and blinked at Albert. It seems that this guy is here prepared. Well, what are you going to do? You will be invisible first, then look at me. Fred disappeared as soon as he slipped. Come on. Albert raised his wand and tapped George's head lightly. The latter trembled, and was surprised to find that his body merged with his surroundings. It's so cool. George checked his body with the help of a glowing curse, and said excitedly, I dare say that even if he is standing under Filch's nose, he will definitely not be able to catch me. It's better not to take the risk www.mtlnovel.com My phantom spell is not too smart. Albert reminded him after using the phantom spell to himself, if Filch can identify it carefully, he can still find it. As soon as the two said a few words, they heard Pippi's roar from the other side of the corridor, students don't sleep, they wander around in the middle of the night. Last time, when we were out at night, we met Pepe Ghost. That guy did just that. George blinked at Albert. However, he forgot that he had a phantom spell on his body, and other people couldn't see the expression on his face at all. Soon, Fred ran over here in a hurry, was grabbed by George's hand and dragged into the secret tunnel behind the portrait. 
it's so cool, I didn't even find you. Fred looked at the bodies of the two of them, and said excitedly, Albert, hurry up and use the illusion charm on me. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. The phantom spell should last for a few hours, or it may be shorter. Anyway, the effect will gradually disappear. Pay attention to the changes on your body. Albert reminded when he used the phantom spell on Fred, if it is a spell I was arrested for failure, don't confess me. I have confidence in you, after all you dared to use it for yourself. Fred didn't take this matter to heart. In his opinion, Albert dared to use it for himself, which means that the effect of the spell is guaranteed. Filch was awakened as expected. He has gotten up and is ready to come and arrest someone. George, who had been staring at the map of the life spot, immediately reminded him when he noticed that Filch had started to act. Have you found any other professors? Albert asked. There is also a mission related to Filch on his side. If Filch is the only one, Albert doesn't mind completing the mission smoothly. I haven't found it so far. Filch should search the third floor first. Let's go to the fourth floor and make some noise there. Then, after the three got together, they started to act according to the original plan. In the corridor on the third floor, Filch, wearing a thick cloak, was in a bad mood, because he found himself out again. Those students who wandered up in the middle of the night didn't know where to go, and even Pippi disappeared. Filch quickly regained his energy, because he heard a rush of footsteps, and the voice was very close here. The guy is still nearby, he can't escape. Filch gritted his teeth to catch up, and when he passed the corner, he even saw the light disappearing in the corner. You can't run away. Filch murmured, carrying the oil lamp and chasing him. However, Filch, who was chasing the past, found that he had missed the target. That's right, chasing lost. Filch dared to pat his chest to make sure that there is absolutely no secret tunnel nearby, where is that nasty guy hiding? What is this? Filch just walked a few steps forward when he felt that he had stepped on something, moved his feet, and put the lamp over, his face immediately gloomy. I stepped on a big dung bomb. Filch raised his head furiously, raised the oil lamp and scanned around, looking for the who was playing with him. However, Filch didn't realize that the person he was looking for was squatting in the corner of the corridor, trying to hold his breath, and forbearing himself to laugh. There is no doubt that Albert's illusion spell successfully helped Fred to hide Filch's eyes. Filch didn't stay in place for long, because he heard the clinking of the armor falling from the floor. Did that guy run upstairs? Is there a secret road nearby that he doesn't know? Impossible. Filch believed that no one knew Hogwarts' secret way better than himself. He hurriedly chased in the direction where the sound came from, still whispering in his mouth, You can't escape, I will definitely hang you up and give it a hard whip. After Filch's footsteps were gone, Fred started to gasp, and he felt as though he was suffocating. Filch rushed to the armor corridor on the fourth floor through the secret tunnel as fast as he could. He only found one helmet dropped to the ground. The sound just now came from its falling. When Filch walked over, he smelled a familiar smell again. That's right, the smell of a big dung bomb, a big dung bomb fell on his boots, Filch just reacted and chased it straight ahead. He already knew he was being teased. Is it the nasty students, or the peppies? Pippi, get out of me, I know you are making a ghost, get out of me. Filch flushed looking like a volcano about to erupt, and Fred, who was hiding next to him, looked excitedly looking at the direction in which Filch disappeared, he had never thought that he could actually blame Pippi on this matter. This is a good thing. Anyway, neither side is a good thing, it would be best if they could pinch each other. In the other corridor, Albert closed his pocket watch and used magic to make a crackling noise after estimated time. 
When he was about to leave the crime scene, he suddenly heard the sound of rapid footsteps approaching here. Bad. Albert quickly held his breath and hid in the corner. A few seconds later, a pale light appeared in Albert's field of vision, and Professor Bud Broad, wearing a purple cloak, walked towards this side. He raised his wand and looked around, gazing for a moment where Albert was hiding. It's over. Albert felt his heartbeat speed up a few beats, he was not sure whether his hallucination spell could fool Professor Broad. Filch also rushed towards this side. Professor, have you heard any sound? Filch said angrily. There are students who are walking at night, I think they are more than one. Albert smelled a bad smell, and he swears that this was definitely a good thing the twin brothers did, and they threw a dung bomb at Filch. A student is traveling at night. Professor Broad raised his eyebrows, glanced at Albert's position, and said, I didn't see it. I just came over to check after hearing the sound. What are your boots? What's going on? The big dung bomb, it's very likely that Peppy Ghost made it. That guy is invisible. Filch explained angrily. Pippi. Professor Broad repeated meaningfully, and he swiped his wand lightly to clear the stain on Filch's boots. Thank you. Filch said gratefully. You're welcome. You go there to find it, I'll go there and see, if the student makes the noise, he must have not gone far. Professor Broad pointed in the other direction. Okay, we must catch them tonight. Filch was walking around and chasing around the corner, and Professor Broad also turned and left. Albert vaguely heard Broad's voice, let's not take this as an example. Albert didn't think this was an illusion, and Professor Broad found him. However, the professor actually let him go, which surprised Albert. After the two left, Albert squeezed his feet and left and went to the agreed place to meet the twin brothers. Having said that, why did Professor Broad appear suddenly? Could it be that he is really the one who enters the room of responsiveness? Albert didn't think about it anymore, and after shaking off other thoughts in his mind, he proceeded to the meeting point cautiously. Are you okay? George asked worriedly. I just found out that Professor Broad also appeared. He didn't see through your phantom spell. No, he has seen through. But he let me go. Albert said helplessly, let Fred come back quickly, let's go to the eighth floor. What are you going to do on the eighth floor? George asked in a puzzled way www.mtlnovel.com go to the responsive house. It should be possible to enter there. If possible, hide there for a while. When Filch returns to rest, we will go to the library. Albert wanted to make sure that the person in the responsive room just now was Professor Broad. Okay. George also knew that tonight is over, it's not good to make too much noise. Where did you and Fred agree to meet? He's coming soon. George said. Albert, are you okay? Not long after, Fred who was going to lead people away, hurried over and asked worriedly. It's okay, get out of here first. Albert interrupted, Filch is still looking for us. Of course, there is also Professor Broad. The phantom curse can't hide from his eyes. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. The three moved quickly through the secret road, and it took a while to reach the eighth floor. After listening to Albert's account, Fred gasped slightly and felt incredible, so, Professor Broad didn't help Filch catch you. Albert is an excellent student in the eyes of professors. George joked and then opened his mouth in surprise, because a door actually appeared on the wall opposite the tapestry where the giant stick hit the silly Barnabas. Sure enough. Albert whispered softly. Sure enough. Fred asked curiously. It's nothing, go in. Albert opened the door and walked into the responsive room first. Unexpectedly, it's true. Fred and George looked at each other, 
and walked in behind Albert. Their mouths were all big, and what caught their eyes was a beautifully decorated one that had never been seen before. The room contains. The excited expressions on their faces froze, and they looked at the various exquisite and luxurious potties in front of them in amazement. Albert looked at the stunned expression on the faces of the Weasley brothers, blinked mischievously, and said, How is it, are you surprised? Couldn't you find it by accident when you got here when your bladder was so full? Fred couldn't help asking. How is it possible, am I so stupid? Albert couldn't help rolling his eyes. Is this really the broom cabinet we found earlier? George looked at the luxurious potty here curiously, and suddenly he had an idea, and asked, So, are you urinating? The three of them couldn't help laughing, and each chose a favorite style. However, we really have to hide here, it feels a bit strange. Fred scratched his head. After all, no one likes to hide in a pile of potty. Nothing, just go out and change another room. Albert said casually. This place is not within the scope of the life spot map, maybe the prongs, moon faces, worm tails, and big feet have not discovered the secret here. George looked at the life spot map in his hand and said. Pointed fork, moon face, worm tail, big foot. Albert asked pretendingly. The maker of the life spot map. Fred explained. Oh, they. Albert headed up, maybe I haven't found it. After all, there is the secret of the responsive house, few people know. No problem, Filch is still on the fifth floor. George said after checking the spot map. After the three of them left the responsive house, Fred asked, what is going to change? A place to rest, Albert proposed. I'll come this time. I also want. The twins put their hands on each other's shoulders. After trying again, the door opened. This time, they appeared in a comfortable room with a burning fire. Awesome. Fred patted the armchair. By the way, you haven't said how exactly you found here. I want to know too. George agreed. This is the result of my analysis from you. Did you pass through here many times at that time? You still wanted to find a place to hide. Albert moved out his pre-prepared rhetoric. In fact, to some extent above all, what he said is really right. That's right. So, I took the time to try, pass here many times, and then want a place to hide. Albert explained. The result. George asked. Of course it failed. I tried many times before finally opening this door, and after a general sense of classification, did I figure out the correct way to open it. Albert began to exaggerate the difficulty of finding here. In fact, he succeeded on the first attempt. Later, I tested and turned it into another room. After trying many times, I found out the correct way to use it. Albert blinked and said, So, I later called this the room for all requests. Because of this. The room will become all kinds of rooms you need according to your needs. Is it very appropriate if you ask for it? So, through these clues, you found this place. Yes, I found this place through the clues you provided, am I very good? Albert headed his head, if you want to praise me, please praise me. You. The twins swallowed back what they had just prepared to say, but they still admired each other very much. They didn't expect Albert to find this kind of place just by relying on this clue. When we make the garlic cross, we can do it here. George said suddenly. In this way, we don't need to worry about making the dormitory full of garlic. Have you given up yet? Albert thought they had forgotten about it, but he didn't expect to mention it again at this time. Why give up, we already have enough garlic. Fred nodded, this is the first alchemy item we made. Albert could not help wiping the cold sweat on his forehead. He didn't know if he was going to tell them that it was actually not an alchemy tool. But, he was really embarrassed to speak, shattering the boy's dreams. After all, the two men will become the king of jokes in the future. The three rested in the responsive room for a long time, 
waiting for Filch and Professor Broad to give up searching for them. Compared to Filch, who was searching for them, the twins who were sitting by the fireplace were fighting Albert. There were two games of wizard chess at their table, and Albert dealt with them easily with one against two. Fred, work harder, you still have a chance to turn defeat into victory. George exclaimed. How can you add it? By the way, you actually lost earlier than me. Fred looked at the brother who was sitting next to him and said coldly, and couldn't help rolling his eyes. He knew he was about to lose. Ahem. George gave a dry cough and quickly changed the subject. Filch seems to have gone back to rest. Let's go to the library. That's a good idea, let's go. Fred stood up immediately, ready to lose the game. Uh, okay. Albert did not pierce the other's mind, but moved the queen to check Fred's king to death. You also lost. George slapped Fred on the shoulder gleefully. You are much better than our ineffective brother. Brother. Albert asked puzzled. The hapless guy whose tongue was burnt through candy. Ahem, it was just an accident. George gave a dry cough, and walked out of the responsive room. The three of them walked towards the school library. The Hogwarts library was closed at eight o'clock in the evening, and the three were surprised that the library door was not locked. Albert opened the door and walked in first. The inside of the hall was dark and terrifying. Albert raised his wand, looked around with the light of the wand, and then walked towards the restricted area behind the library. After crossing the rope separating the restricted book zone, the surrounding atmosphere became even more gloomy. Albert raised his wand and read the title of the book with the pale light. Help me find the Book of Spells. And don't open those books casually, and don't take them off the shelf. No one knows if these books have been cursed. Albert warned, remember stay, don't open the book, it may cause us a lot of trouble. I got it. The twins looked at each other, but nodded. It is undoubtedly a waste of time to find the books you need in the sea of books. Albert has spent a long time without finding what he needs. The books in the band book area all look very shabby. Albert is a little doubtful whether there are a lot of original copies stored here. Albert. Fred's voice was very low, I heard a whisper in some books over there. Whispering. Albert frowned, hearing the twins say so, unknowingly thinking that Voldemort's horcrux was hidden in the restricted book zone. The three of them all leaned forward and pointed their wands at the flaked and faded bronzing letters. They all felt the hair on the back of their neck stand up, and they could all hear the whispers from the books. This is a banned book area. It's not surprising that there is such a book. Don't open it. Albert warned, it must be a book on dark magic by the recorder. Do you think there is a powerful black magic recorded in it? The twins looked at the book with a sense of awe. Maybe, I don't know. Albert exhorted. But I can be sure that if you open it now at this time, you will definitely be unlucky. You're right. Fred gave up the idea of dying, worried about the bad black magic in the book, after all, some bad things will happen after reading some books. Toadstool Tales and The Wizard's Sonnet are the best examples. The former will make people nauseous and vomiting, while the latter will make people only use the five element limericks to speak for a lifetime. Help me find the Book of Spells, the spells in it are more suitable for us to learn now. Albert reminded again. Fred and George both nodded their heads and agreed to help. They also wanted to learn some evil spells. The powerful evil spells in Book of Spells were obviously suitable for them to practice. Search separately, it will be more efficient. As long as you don't touch the books casually, you will definitely be fine. Albert reminded him and continued to search for the books he needed. There are a lot of books stored in the forbidden book area. When Albert passed through an area, he could vaguely hear someone talking in a low voice. Albert immediately held his breath and listened. The source of the vaguely heard sound was a bookshelf next to him, but not the books in these bookshelves in front of him, but elsewhere. There seems to be something here, but it is hidden by magic. It's weird. Albert muttered. 
He didn't try to uncover the secret, but continued to search for the books he needed. That was his purpose here. It took about an hour or even longer, and the three of them basically walked around the forbidden book area before finally finding the books they needed. I knew that the books here were not so easy to take away. Fred pointed to the chains on the books and said, What to do? Araho caves won't work. These chains must be enchanted. Should you plan to forcefully break the chains? Neither George nor Fred wanted Albert to do that. He worried that doing so might have bad consequences. Of course I wouldn't do that kind of stupid thing. There is an anti araho hole curse on it as I expected. Albert took a knife from his pocket. This knife is something he bought at Christmas. Albert didn't want this knife, but some universal accessories on the knife. Among them, one is a tool for unlocking. He has practiced at home, and it is not too difficult to open this old lock. What are you going to do? Neither of them understood why Albert suddenly took out a knife. You smuggle tricks. Muggle trick. Both were curious as to what Albert planned to do. Keep your eyes open for me to watch carefully. Albert began to fiddle with the lock on the book. After a while, the lock on the book was unlocked with only a slight click. How did you do it? The twins looked at Albert in surprise. I said, this is Muggle's unlocking trick. Albert shook the knife in his hand and said, Most wizards ignore some of Muggle's tricks, although they are not as good as the unlocking spell, and they are slower. It's a little bit, but they often ignore it, leaving me with loopholes. Although Hogwarts casts spells on these locks, and even if the chain is forcibly broken, it may cause an alarm, but he believes that using a key to open the lock will definitely not have any side effects, because this is the correct way to open it. Although Albert doesn't have a key, there is obviously no problem with Muggle's unlocking technique. Next time I have a chance, we must teach us this technique. The twin's eyes were gleaming, and he thought Albert's method was very useful. Most wizards always despise Muggles because they are not magical, which gives Albert a loophole to drill, even Hogwarts obviously ignores this. This kind of unlocking trick is easy to learn. I will teach you if I have the opportunity. Albert said casually. He didn't know whether the twins could learn. By the time they left the library, it was already four o'clock in the morning, and the three of them held tonight's spoils in their hands, the original book of spells, book of potions, and powerful potion. After repeatedly confirming that there was no one, the three quietly left the crime scene and returned to the Greyfinder common room avoiding a ghost wizard holding a cane on the way. When he returned to the dormitory, Lee Jordan was awake and looked at the three people who had just returned from the night tour. You should wake me up. Lee Jordan complained. Who made you sleep like a pig? www.mtlnovel.com Fred raised up today's trophy to show off to Lee Jordan, we got it from the library. Let me see what books are there. Lee Jordan asked curiously. Look for yourself, don't break it, let's sleep for a while. Fred covered a yawn and began to take off his clothes, ready to go back to sleep, he hadn't slept like Albert before. After the excitement of the night tour, I want to sleep now. Good night. Good night. It's really three bastards. Looking at the three people who were lying back on the bed, Lee Jordan cursed in a low voice turning his attention to the three brick books they brought back. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. At present, Mrs. Pins has not noticed the collection of books in the band area and someone has quietly borrowed three books. Albert is more attentive to this matter. Every time he goes to the library to do his homework, he will pay special attention to whether there are reports of missing books in the library. In fact, Albert was too worried. The books in the forbidden book area are chained to the shelves, and the librarian will not be idle all day to check whether there are few books in the forbidden book area. After all, 
the chains used in the Forbidden Book Zone are all given protective magic, which is not something that ordinary students can open or break. Maybe someone will run into the Forbidden Book Zone to read books in the middle of the night, but it is not easy to steal books from the Forbidden Book Zone. Compared with this matter that Albert cares about, another interesting story has spread at Hogwarts. It is said that when a certain student woke up in the middle of the night for a night tour, he played around Filch patrolling at night. The administrator has a gloomy face in recent days. Well, most of the time, Filch had this look on his face. The cause of the rumors was a student who happened to pass by Filch and heard him whispering. I will catch you, I will hang you up and whisper. Combining the last case, everyone quickly concluded that Filch failed to catch the student who woke up in the middle of the night for a night tour. For Hogwarts students who desperately need to find interesting topics, this is undoubtedly an interesting thing. Some students quickly made up their minds, making the whole Hogwarts aware of this matter. However, the rumors they weave are very consistent with the actual situation. After being bombarded by gossip, every time the administrator stood in the corridor, he would stare fiercely at every student passing by, trying to find the guy who woke up at night in the middle of the night. Filch's hideous appearance failed to catch the culprit, but frightened the lower grade students. The administrator has no idea that the culprit who caused all this is now having a snowball fight outside the castle. George looked at the snowball stagnating in the air, and said in surprise, Did you successfully master the obstacle spell? Well, I learned it not long ago, Albert said. This magic is actually not too difficult. Fred scoffed at this, one of Albert's lies, this magic is not too difficult. It's not easy to use magic to accurately hit a moving object. Lee Keaton reached out and poked the snowball that was parked in the air, turned his head to look at Albert, and asked curiously, You're accurate. How did you practice it? Be careful, Albert reminded. Be careful what? As soon as he finished speaking, before Lee Jordan could react, he was confused by Snowball. I reminded you. Albert spread his hands and explained innocently, although the obstacle spell can pause the target hit by the spell, the effect will not last too long. Of course, if the wizard who uses it is malicious, it can also have the effect of knocking the enemy back, which is related to the wizard's own magical power. Ha ha ha. Seeing this scene, the three couldn't help laughing. The next moment, while still laughing, George was hit in the face by a snowball, and part of the snow fell into his mouth. George wiped off the snow from his face and gave Lee Jordan a snowball with his backhand. I dare say that few of the freshmen would use the obstacle spell. Fred also threw the snowball in his hand at Albert when Lee Jordan threw a snowball at George. Fred's sneak attack was unsuccessful, and the snowball was held in midair by a blue-green spark. This scene was like someone pressing the pause button. The effect is not bad. Albert reached out and pushed the snowball to one side. The next second, the snowball hit the nearby snow. Snowball fights don't involve the use of magic. Fred couldn't help protesting loudly, You are shameless, can you still play happily? Fred admired Albert's speed of learning magic, they were all learning the obstacle spell. However, it is a pity that everyone except Albert has not succeeded in mastering the obstacle curse so far. There are a lot of things that you usually need to learn. If you want to master a magic, you need to spend a lot of time to practice. Especially in the first grade, everyone's magical power is still in a period of continuous growth, and someone like Albert who can quickly master magic seems to be cheating. Well, I don't use magic. Albert put the wand in his pocket, bent over and pinched a snowball out of the thick snowdrift on the ground, and stuck it directly on Fred's face who was still about to speak. Let me finish. Fred couldn't help protesting. Then, while talking, he was hit by a snowball again, this time by Lee Jordan. Do you want to practice obstacle spells with a snowball? Albert raised his eyebrows and said first, that's a good idea. I. This time, before Fred had spoken, he was interrupted by George next to him with a snowball. You three bastards, Fred exclaimed angrily. 
which one of you will come first? Albert directly ignored Fred's protest and asked. He first. George and Lee Jordan raised their hands to Fred. Fred, get ready. Albert bent over and squeezed a snowball and shouted at Fred, I'm going to throw it. What's the preparation? Fred was still a little startled, and was hit by a snowball in the face again. Of course it is to practice obstacle spells. Albert blinked, this is a rare opportunity. Yes, this is a rare and good opportunity. Lee Keaton and George nodded in agreement, we also gave you the best opportunity. Asshole, I don't want this kind of opportunity, which of you will get out and get hit first? Fred stared at the three of them angry. He. The two pointed at Albert. No, it's you, George. Fred was very dissatisfied that his brother was clearly on the team with him, and he actually fell into trouble with him. Well, I'm just me. George accepted the reality bluntly, but he said again, but let's talk about it first. Everyone tries ten times. No one is allowed to hide. You can only use obstacle spells to block the snowball. I have no problem. Albert said flatly. Of course you have no opinion. As a result, it is conceivable that none of the three of them could use the obstacle spell to block the oncoming snowballs, and were hit by the snowballs one after another. These guys especially like to greet others in the face. Lee Jordan removed the snow from his face, pointed to Albert and complained, the three of us will go together. Who told you not to use the obstacle spell? Albert waved his wand and easily stopped the three flying snowballs, moved a step aside, and let the three snowballs miss. What the are you guys doing? Shauna who passed by was hit by three snowballs. It's all Albert's fault, who made him avoid it. Lee Jordan took the lead in putting the pot on Albert's head. Yes, yes. Fred agreed with George. Smash them with a snowball, or I will help you. Albert enthusiastically offered to offer help. Ahem, Shauna, do you want to join the snowball fight? Fred finally put a snowball on Albert's face when he was not paying attention. Albert is so cunning that he used magic snowballs in snowball fights. George said nonsense seriously. Albert couldn't help rolling his eyes at the twin brother, and muttered, Actually, we are practicing magic. What magic? Shauna asked curiously. Obstacle curse. Albert said without hesitation. You bastards, actually want to attack me. I'm not giving you the opportunity to use the obstacle spell. George quibbled. Do you want to practice together? Fred invited with a smile, this spell is quite interesting. No, I'm going to go ice skating by the lake. Shauna pointed to the skate boots on her hand, I brought them from home when I went home last Christmas holiday. Skates. Albert raised his wand, stopped George from trying to sneak a snowball against him, and said to Shauna, are you alone? Angelina doesn't know how to play this thing. You know, Quidditch is the only sport that many wizards like. Shauna said helplessly, by the way, can you skate? Yes, yes. However, my level in this area is very average. Albert said casually, however, I thought you didn't like sports. It's too rude to say this. Shauna raised her eyebrows and said, I have been playing this throughout the Christmas holidays. Do you want to go together? Is it interesting? Fred asked curiously. I personally find it quite interesting. There are many people skating on the Black Lake. Shauna nodded towards the Black Lake and continued. Let's go over to see www.mtlnovel.com George is a little interested in skating. You don't have skates, so let's join in the fun. Albert couldn't help rolling his eyes at the three of them. Skating is not easy to learn. If you want to learn on your own, ordinary beginners have to break their buttocks. Moreover, ice skates are quite dangerous and unfriendly to beginners. Aren't you still there? Lee Jordan stretched out his hand and gave Albert a hand. When the time comes, you will use transfiguration to make a pair of shoes. I believe you can do it. 
transfiguration is more difficult to make that kind of shoes. George denied Lee Jordan's method. You should find someone to borrow skate boots, and then use the copy spell to help us get the boots. Albert was stunned when he heard the words, all these people around him are talents. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. As George said, it is not difficult to get a pair of skates. Albert asked Shauna to borrow skates, and then used the copy spell on it to easily get the skates used by the four. Although the skates used by Shauna are generic, Lee Jordan's feet are relatively large and can't wear Shauna's skates. He can only stand on the shore eagerly and watch other roommates put on skates, ready to try. This new sport. Be careful with the skates, don't slip, don't hurt yourself. Albert looked at Fred and George who were wearing skates, and reminded loudly, you better separate and practice where no one is. Can't really help me change the size. Lee Jordan was a little depressed, and it felt uncomfortable to be left behind. You find someone else to borrow a pair of skates, and I'll help you copy another pair. Albert put on his brown boots, buckled inward, and became familiar with the feeling of sliding on the ice. After George put on his skates, he tried to walk, almost twisting his ankle. Fred next to him was even worse and fell directly to the ground, grinning in pain. So angry, this guy is really good at everything. With the help of Lee Jordan, Fred slowly stood up. Be careful, don't step on my feet. Lee Jordan reminded loudly. Are you all right? Shauna turned a corner and stopped in front of them. I told them all. Albert stopped next to Shauna looked at the twin brothers who could not stand still, and shook his head insignificantly. At first, no matter how many times I fell, it was considered normal. You really know how to skate. Looking at Albert's smooth movements, Santa couldn't help but said with emotion, you guys are really good at everything. Played before, family taught. Albert lied. In fact, Albert has no talent in this area. After falling down several times during the previous practice, he was angry and used the panel to directly upgrade his skating skills to level 1. Which one of you will teach us how to use this stuff? George shouted at the two. This, I can't help you. Albert shrugged helplessly, and said to the twin brother, My skating skills are bad. As if to reinforce the sentence he had just said, Albert nodded after saying it and repeated, Well, it sucks. You guys are also skating. Mario turned a corner and stopped in front of Albert's left side. The acrobatic trio are all skating here, their skating skills are very adept, and they can make all kinds of strange moves when skating. Albert felt that all three of them could form a team to participate in an international skating competition. Mario, can you teach us how to skate this? George saw an acquaintance and quickly asked for help. I have just started to learn it myself, and I can't teach others. Albert noticed Jack's gaze and explained helplessly. This, isn't a problem. However, we can't guarantee that you can learn it. After all, skating also requires talent. Danny doesn't mind helping them. After all, they are all from the Greyfinder team, everyone. The usual relationship is actually pretty good. Albert saw someone teaching Weasley a few people, so he looked at Shauna and asked, Do you want to take a stroll around the Black Lake together? I'm not going. Shauna looked around the Black Lake, and tactfully refused. See you later. Albert waved to several people and started skating around Black Lake. The Black Lake at Hogwarts is really big, and there are many students on the shore near the castle skating here. The lake is very flat. Albert glides around the lake shore and enjoys the scenery on the lake shore. To be honest, this feeling is very novel. He believes that many students do not actually enjoy the scenery around the school from all corners of the lake shore. It would be nice if they brought a camera. Albert spent a lot of time walking around the lake, 
and when he returned, he met a few acquaintances. Ravenclaw's red-haired MacDug sister. Katrina just let go of her sister Isabel's hand, but she fell to the ground without slipping a few steps. Albert hurriedly walked around to avoid hitting the opponent. Freshmen who are just starting out are very dangerous when practicing skating. After all, you don't know when they will fall and when they will take you down together. Are you okay? Albert saw that Isabel didn't plan to help, so he reached out and pulled Katrina up from the lake. Thank you. Katrina was a bit embarrassed because Albert saw her embarrassed appearance, but she thanked Albert politely. Uh, you're welcome. Albert was considering whether to let go, the other side looked like he might fall down at any time. Katrina, I'm afraid you don't have any talent in this aspect. Isabel looked at his sister helplessly. Long time no see, Isabel. Albert said, I've read your paper. It's great. It's a pity. Thank you. Isabel nodded and said, I never thought I would be awarded the most promising newcomer award for transfiguration today. That's too early for me. You two know each other. Katrina raised her eyebrows. Yes, we all participate in Professor McGonagall's Transformation Club. Albert explained. Albert is a genius of polymorphism. Isabel said suddenly. You two like to tout each other so much. Katrina looked at them with a weird expression. It's not a flattery, it's a fact. Isabel shook his head, by the way, my paper uses a small part of your theory. I don't mind. Albert waved his hand. Professor McGonagall told me about this, and I agreed. Anyway, I found something in the book. See you next time in the Transformation Club. Albert handed Katrina's hand to Isabel, and turned to leave. Isabel suddenly stopped Albert. I heard that you are very familiar with Professor Broad. Isabel said suddenly. Albert couldn't help but stunned, wondering why Isabel brought up this matter, but still answered the other party's question. Not very familiar. I have been to Professor Broad's office several times and talked with him about defense against the dark arts. It seems that Professor Broad is very optimistic about you. Isabel said meaningfully. What's the matter? Albert looked at Isabel in confusion, feeling that what Isabel said had other meanings. Professor Browder is a very famous wizard. You can learn a lot if you get along with him. Isabel nodded and said, if you want to improve in some way, you need to talent exchange in this area. Oh, thank you for your reminder. Albert was puzzled www.mtlnovel.com but he thanked the other person, then turned and left. Professor Broad is really okay? Just a more famous wizard. Albert was full of question marks, and he decided to take the time to check Professor Broad's information. Professor Browder always feels a bit weird. When Albert returned from a lap of Black Lake, Lee Jordan was still competing with his skate boots with the help of Mario. As for Fred and George, these two guys have long gone out of sight. Where is Brother Weasley? Albert asked suspiciously. They gave up. Danny shrugged and said, only Lee Keaton is still insisting, but he fell hard enough. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Where is Lee Jordan? At dinner time, Fred and George came to the restaurant late. School hospital, I fell hard enough while practicing skating in the afternoon. Go where to get some medicine for Madame Pomfrey. Albert swallowed the food he was chewing, and looked up at the twin brothers questioningly. Where did you go this afternoon? Why did you come to eat now? In the woods. Fred winked at Albert. You ran away by yourself. Lee Jordan's voice floated from behind, with a hint of resentment in his tone. I told you when we left, who told you not to go with us? George stretched out his hand on Lee Jordan's shoulder and asked, How are you doing? Will you skate now? If I could skate, 
would I fall so badly? Lee Jordan said grimly. That's right. Fortunately, we gave up long ago. George nodded earnestly. That kind of exercise is really not suitable for wizards. Albert wanted to vomit after hearing this, no, he refused to take the time to learn, naturally never. Lee Jordan couldn't help asking, is it the same way when you were learning to skate? Well, falling down is inevitable. Albert said seriously. He must be comforting you. George couldn't help laughing. With Albert's ability to learn, he must have learned how to skate after falling a few times at the beginning. What are you skating, do you eat? Albert said silently. In fact, George's words are really right, but Albert learned to skate through the panel. I kind of understand why Albert doesn't teach you anymore. Fred said suddenly. Don't teach us. Lee Keaton irritably corrected, don't pick you out. You think you have fallen so badly now when you learn how to skate, and in the end you haven't learned how to skate, you will definitely blame him in the end. George nodded seriously, that's why Albert dare not teach you. You won't complain. Albert's hand that had inserted the golden fried egg froze in the air, and he couldn't help but muttered, these two guys have really strong brain supplements. He dared to use the half golden fried egg in his hand to guarantee that he had never had that idea. Lee Keaton glanced suspiciously at Albert. The latter coughed quickly and turned off the subject and asked, What fun thing is there in the woods, did you come back until now? There are only a few animals. The woods are not dangerous. Fred sat in the empty seat next to him, and while eating his dinner, he said, George and I were chasing a rabbit, but unfortunately we didn't catch it. There are still rabbits in the Forbidden Forest. Albert was a little curious. By the way, what do you catch rabbits for? Wouldn't you want to roast rabbits? This seems a good idea. I haven't eaten roast rabbit meat. Shauna raised her head and glared at Albert when she heard this, and said, Roasted rabbit? How can you be so cruel? I'll just talk about it, don't take it to heart. Albert twitched his mouth and asked, Are you raising a rabbit? Well, a very small rabbit. Shauna nodded and admitted. Ahem, is your topic off the beaten track? Lee Keaton coughed lightly and pulled the topic back again, what's in the forest? Nothing special, just ordinary woods. George thought for a while and said, we also saw some deer footprints. I think that was the footprint of a unicorn. We also found this. Fred took out a few white hairs from his robe pocket and explained, this is the tail hair of a unicorn. You weren't caught by the hunting field guard. Angelina was surprised to pinch a unicorn's tail hair and looked at it carefully. I heard that the students who broke into the forest will was caught by that hunting ground guard. We have a way to get out of Hagrid's sight. George and Fred looked at each other and said seriously, as long as they are not found by him, there is no problem. The brief conversation soon ended and Albert planned to go to the library to find information related to Professor Broad. If this professor of defense against the dark arts is famous, it shouldn't be difficult to find relevant information. Do you want to go together another day? Fred invited. Catch the rabbit. Albert raised his eyebrows slightly, I suggest you go fishing in the Black Lake, smash a hole, and get some raw meat. It must be more reliable than catching a rabbit. This is a good idea. Lee Jordan echoed. Are you not going skating? Fred looked suspiciously at the black friend beside him. Look at how I fell into this, how can I skate? Lee Jordan asked with a twitch of his mouth, by the way, who of you can grill fish? I can give it a try, provided that you can catch fish. Albert thought for a while and said, if it doesn't work, you can go to Hagrid. He will definitely grill fish. I thought you could do everything. Fred pretended to be serious. So, you have something you can't do. It shouldn't be difficult to grill the fish. Add some seasoning or something to it. Albert said solemnly, when the time comes, I will sprinkle some garlic grown in the dormitory on it. Don't pay attention to garlic. 
George couldn't help protesting. After entering the library, the four stopped talking. If you want to spare time to go fishing, you need to finish homework to make free time. This problem is not too difficult. After all, Albert also does homework together. After finishing the homework, they can ask Albert if they don't understand and get a solution. What are you looking for? Lee Keaton put away his homework, took the book Albert placed next to him, and glanced at the name of the book, The Great Wizard of the Twentieth Century. Albert said softly, I heard that Professor Broad is very famous. Professor Broad. George put down the pen, blew the ink on it and asked, What are you looking for? Lend me your parchment. Fred was very depressed, he was actually behind, and there was still a big question left. Do it yourself. George reached out and held the parchment, not allowing Fred to take it away. Found it. Albert opened the list of famous contemporary magicians in front of him, and whispered, Bud Broad, Thorough Blood Wizard, Senator Vizan Gamo, Merlin Medal III winner, has won the Barnabas Finkley Award for Outstanding Spelling Techniques, Hobbies, Wizard Chess, Adventure. Bud Broad once won the International Wizard Chess Championship, and once used a wandless and silent body binding spell to win the European Wizard Duel competition. In the adventure, he rescued several muggle climbers who were attacked by giant monsters and won the Merlin Medal of the Third Class. Maintain friendly contacts with many great wizards, and are close friends with contemporary masters of magic, Adby Wallen and Mog McDug. Albert looked at the above record and fell into a brief silence. Mog McDug? Coincidence? Obviously not. Isabel McDug is obviously related to this Mog McDug family, or relative. Why does he say that Professor Broad is very optimistic about me? Could it be me thinking too much? Forget it, you you reading www.uuganchu. As long as Professor Broad is not malicious to himself, just let it happen. Albert doesn't mind getting to know more famous wizards through Professor Broad. I didn't expect Professor Broad to be so famous. Fred took the book from Albert and looked at the introduction to Professor Bud Broad, very surprised. Dual champion. George said in surprise. That blames him for becoming a defense against the dark arts professor. Albert felt that Professor Broad's becoming a defense against the dark arts professor had nothing to do with whether he was a dual champion. That's right. Lee Keaton suddenly changed the subject and looked at Albert seriously. I heard that there are senior students planning to start a bet on the Quidditch match on the weekend. Who are you going to win? Well, I almost forgot about it. Who are you going to win? Fred and George asked in unison. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, Data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Weekend. This is a sunny day, very suitable for watching Quidditch games. At 10.30 in the morning, Albert and his team set off from the castle and crossed the snow on the road to the stadium stands. There have been a large number of students here, and everyone is talking loudly about the outcome of the game. Good morning, Hagrid. Albert greeted Hagrid with binoculars. Thank you for the hat. Hagrid patted the woolen hat on his head. I never thought I could receive a gift on Christmas. You can take it as a gift. Albert said with a smile. Returning a gift? Hagrid asked inexplicably, what in return? The Guardian Branch, Unicorn Tail Hair. Albert raised his wrist, and there was a delicate white bracelet on it. What is this? Bracelet that can bring good luck, I made it with the unicorn tail hair and guardian tree you gave me. Albert explained with a smile, it can bring good luck to the wearer. Bring good luck to the wearer. Hagrid murmured, I have never heard that unicorn tail hair and the tree of protection can bring good luck to the wearer. Fred, George and Lee Jordan could not help but laugh. Make you like to fool others, now it's deflated. Hagrid coughed lightly. But, 
your rope is beautifully woven. I mean the symbol above. Albert picked up two pendants polished from a tree of guardianship and showed them to the three of them. They were carved with the rune symbol that Albert showed them a while ago. You actually engraved that strange symbol on it. Are you sure this thing is really effective? George asked suspiciously. Who knows? Albert shrugged. Maybe it can bring good luck, but then it will be earned. Originally, Albert planned to make a body bracelet. However, after breaking several beads in a row, I gave up temporarily and chose the simplest good luck symbol to engrave. As for whether this thing can bring him luck, Albert actually doesn't know. Anyway, when he tried to use his blood to activate the rune symbol on the beads, he didn't feel any special feeling. It is estimated that it failed. However, Albert still wears it on his body, just to verify whether the rune symbol is really effective. Greyfinder vs. Hufflepuffs, does anyone want to place a bet? At this time, several senior students walked toward this side with a wooden box for betting, and the shouts interrupted Albert. Special thinking. The twins seemed to be planning to bet, and Lee Jordan next to him had already taken out a silver seco. Who do you bet on to win? The three looked at Albert. I bet that the Greyfinder team will catch the Golden Snitch and win. Albert took out a silver seco to make a bet. It's the same with us. The three swiftly handed the money to each other. A lot of people bet on this. The odds are not high. If Hufflepuff wins, we will give three times the odds. Said the student. No, just Greyfinder. Albert doesn't care whether he can win or not, he is just happy, purely for an atmosphere. What's your name? The senior students pulled out their notebooks and quill and looked at them. His name is Albert Anderson. George answered for Albert. Albert Anderson. The senior student scribbled some words and handed it to Albert. After the game, we will be at the exit. If you win the bet, take the paper. Go to us. Albert looked at the three roommates and said silently, You are not afraid of losing money. We believe in your luck. The three said in unison. Since Albert had bet, although the probability is not high, they are actually willing to follow. My luck. Albert couldn't help but roll his eyes. Don't blame me for losing money. We won't. Fred started. We don't think the Greyfinder team, which has been training hard, will lose. Gambling is not a good habit. Hagrid raised an eyebrow to remind him. This is just for the atmosphere, and I still have this, and my luck is good. Albert said confidently. I just thought you would bet ten gallons. Are you a fool? Albert couldn't help but roll his eyes and said, this kind of private bet has never been reliable. If I bet ten gallons and win, the other party can pay me back. Come back. I can't get it out. Fred thought for a while and replied. Well, it seems you know exactly what you are doing. Hagrid nodded, and occasionally a small bet is fine. The last time he bet on who was the Minister of Magic, he won 100 gallons. Lee Jordan explained. This guy's luck is very scary. Hagrid opened his mouth in surprise, and threw his thoughts on the ground and trampled on the ground. Ahem, Hagrid, which pair do you think will win? Albert asked. Of course it's Greyfinder, Hagrid said gruffly. It's best not to bet, no one can keep winning. Ahem, I know this very well myself. In fact, Albert really won the bet, and the Greyfinder team eventually defeated the Hufflepuff team. This exciting game lasted only an hour, and Charlie successfully caught the snitch. One. One. Ah, the paper flies. In the end, Hagrid reached out to help them grab the parchment, but fortunately there was no wind today. Give the parchment to Albert, you unreliable fellow. Lee Jordan took the parchment from Fred and stuffed it to Albert. Accident, it's just an accident. Fred sneered, and he just squeezed his sweat. Thank you, Hagrid. Albert thanked Hagrid. You're welcome. 
Albert and several people found the two senior students at the entrance and took them from each other. Four silver coins can be used as rewards. Look, my lucky bracelet still brings me luck. Albert blinked, those runes are still useful. Your luck is good, okay. Fred couldn't help rolling his eyes, betting that winning the bet made them all feel good. By the way, did you enter the woods from here last time? Albert looked at the nearby forest and asked suddenly. Fred and George's expressions froze, and Hagrid is beside them, bastard, don't mention it. Into the woods. Hagrid looked at the four people in front of him warily. Hagrid, can you take us into the woods to increase your knowledge? Albert looked in the direction of the forbidden forest and asked Hagrid next to him. That's not good. Hagrid flatly refused. Albert was not embarrassed to sell Fred and George. The two of them sneaked into the woods and said that the woods next to the school were ordinary. Sure enough. You guy. The twins glared at Albert, this guy betrayed them so simply. Ahem, I heard others say that there are many secrets hidden in the Forbidden Forest. You can take us in for a stroll and satisfy our curiosity. Albert winked at Hagrid, from now on, we I won't be curious about what's in that forest. Hagrid was silent for a moment, seeming to be thinking about something, but finally shook his head and refused. Can't you ensure our safety? Albert asked rhetorically. The school stipulates that students are not allowed to enter the Forbidden Forest www.mtlnovel.com Hager Road. Actually, I think Dumbledore's prohibition from entering the woods will arouse the curiosity of the students. Albert blinked, as far as I know, many people have quietly entered the woods. A lot of people. Hagrid stared at Brother Weasley. Ahem, they are just an example. Albert explained, we just want to satisfy curiosity, and you don't often go into the woods. Well, just this time, not as an example. Hagrid thought for a while and agreed, come with me, don't run around. Look. The lucky charm works well, right? Albert winked at the stunned three. The three of them had never thought that Albert could persuade Hagrid to take them into the woods. Dear, click in. Give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Hagrid led them to the edge of the forbidden forest, pointed a path hidden in the forest, and said to them, since you are curious about what's in the forest, then go. Albert and several people looked into the forest one after another. In their vision was a dead forest. A cold wind blew from the forest, causing the four of them to shiver and shiver. Hagrid, don't you prepare? Albert asked aloud. He thought that Hagrid would take a weapon and enter the forbidden forest with his bare hands. Ready. Hagrid tilted his head, as if thinking about what Albert meant. For a moment, he patted his chest with the big palm of his fan and believed, as long as you are with me, no creatures in the forbidden forest will hurt you. Albert gave Hagrid a thumbs up and praised, it seems that not everyone can be a hunting ground keeper. That's natural. Hagrid walked ahead, and Albert and the others quickly followed. There was a dead silence in the woods, thick snow accumulated on the ground, and the movement of the short-legged people was greatly hindered making it particularly difficult to walk. It's a shame that you want to catch rabbits in this environment. Albert pulled his boots out of the snow, and he could feel the snow pouring into the boots. Catch a rabbit. Hagrid stopped and turned to look at Albert and his party. Catch what rabbit? Nothing. The last time we came here, we found a hare. George muttered, we are going to go fishing in the Black Lake recently. Hagrid, where are you taking us? Fred glared at George and asked, turning the subject away. Take you around and learn about the Forbidden Forest. Hagrid pointed to the surrounding snowfields. It's always been like this, you know. I heard that there are giant monsters in the Forbidden Forest. Lee Keaton asked suddenly, is this true? Forest monsters? 
they are in the depths of the Forbidden Forest. It may take a few days to walk. Hagrid said confidently. Even if you encounter giant monsters, you don't have to worry. I can defeat them with my bare hands. Is there really a troll here? Albert said in surprise. In fact, Albert didn't doubt whether Hagrid could ever fight a giant monster. After all, the blood of a giant belonged to a figure who could walk sideways in the Forbidden Forest. There used to be, and there are many more. After Dumbledore took over as the principal, he decided to drive the trolls far away from Hogwarts. He didn't like those stupid ones. Hagrid explained, Giant it's stupid and dangerous to most students. I think the principal knew that there would be students who were curious to enter the woods, so he drove away all the dangers nearby to avoid students from accidents. Fred guessed. It makes sense. Several people agreed. What I am more curious about is, how can there be a road here? Albert pointed to the fork in the road ahead, it's not like a beast path. Most of the roads here are mine. Hagrid said proudly. Of course, some of them were actually animal trails. For the next period of time, Hagrid kept taking them around in the forest without encountering any danger or seeing any magical creatures. There are no so-called fierce beasts in the woods and there are no curious and interesting things, and some are just falling into the cold and dead silence of winter. It reminds Albert of the adventures he has seen before. Behind the thrilling adventures, there are often boring journeys day and night. In the dense bushes, there is a rare open space, and the sun shines from among the branches, reflecting a golden area on the open space. Albert's gaze fell under an old pine oak, where there was an unnatural uplift. He walked over, pushed aside the snow layer, and dug a mushroom out of it. No, it's not like a mushroom, this thing should be called a mushroom. Hagrid, do you think this thing can be eaten? Albert handed Hagrid to find the mushroom. This? What are you doing with this thing? Hagrid couldn't help but scratched his head, but he nodded and explained, Yes, it tastes okay, but I don't eat this thing. It is usually only available in winter, and in quantity. It's relatively rare, and it's very hard to dig. Don't eat this stuff. Albert's mouth twitched, staring at the thing on his hand, he thought it was a bit like. What are you digging for? George asked curiously. Nothing. I heard that this thing is delicious to bake. Albert gave a light cough, bent down and sculpted a smaller one in the snow. He directly used his wand to turn a branch into a bag, threw the dug into the bag, and stuffed it back into the robe pocket. Bake, delicious. Hagrid raised his eyebrows. I haven't tried it. Ahem. Albert changed the subject. Hagrid, did you take us around the forest? The forbidden forest is so big that I can't walk for a few days. The embarrassment on Hagrid's face was hidden under his beard and no one else could see it. After walking for a while, Albert heard the sound of gurgling water in the distance. There is a stream nearby, and it hasn't been frozen. Hagrid suddenly stopped and raised his hand to signal the people behind him to stop. He stared at the figure not far away and shouted, Who is there, come out. Hagrid? Why are you here? The one who spoke was a witch who seemed to know Hagrid. Are you? Hagrid was a little embarrassed on his face, apparently forgot the other's name. Albert looked at the visitor curiously. This was a witch with short grey hair and a protruding jaw. Will mean a grapland. The witch introduced herself, we have met several times. Oh, hello, grapland. Hagrid patted his head awkwardly. He had seen each other several times where Professor K. Telba was. Grapland was also an expert in magical biology and occasionally communicated with each other. Hagrid, what are you doing here? The witch Grapland's eyes fell on the four students behind Hagrid. They are students at Hogwarts. This. Hagrid was embarrassed and didn't know what to say. He obviously didn't comply with the rules when taking Albert into the woods. Ahem, ma'am, actually Hagrid brought us here to dig Matsu take mushrooms. 
Albert took out what he had just dug out of his pocket, by the way, satisfy our curiosity. Matsu take. Grapland's gaze fell on the mushroom in Albert's hand, and he looked at Hagrid suspiciously. The latter nodded awkwardly, pretending that it was like this. Grapland did not continue to ask. She was not a professor at Hogwarts, and she didn't have much to say in this regard. After chatting with Hagrid for a few moments, she left and was ready to visit Professor Ketlebo. What is that lady doing here? George asked curiously. In order to visit Professor Ketlebo, they are experts in magical creatures. I have met Professor Ketlebo several times. Hagrid scratched his head and said, I heard that Professor Kettlebow's bird the snake eggs have hatched, and I am going to give her a few. By the way, you guy can really squeeze a lie casually. Fred looked at Albert angrily, it seems that I can't believe your nonsense in the future. My name is wit www.mtlnovel.com understand. Albert repeatedly emphasized. Do you know what wit is? Also, we did dug Matsu take. It is said that it tastes good when grilled on charcoal, if you can dig some. Albert has never tasted the taste of matsu take. He is a little curious that grilled matsu take is as good as the rumors. Ahem, that's not the point. Why is that witch going to visit Professor Kate Elberg? Fred said curiously. Does the conservation magical biology professor live in the forest? Professor Ketlebo is indeed temporarily living in the forest. Hagrid gave a dry cough and reminded, however, I think we should go back. Didn't it mean that the Forbidden Forest is dangerous? Lee Jordan asked rhetorically. Professor Kate Elberg lives on the outskirts of the forest. The magical creatures he raises need empty space for activity. Hagrid coughed lightly, well, I think we should go back. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score. The faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of The Beautiful Wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Before leaving the Forbidden Forest, Hagrid deliberately helped Albert dig some Matsu take, but this thing was scarce, and in the end he couldn't find a few. As soon as Hagrid opened the door of the hut, the black hound's fangs came out of the hut, happily running around a few people, and liked to sniff around. Albert knelt down and touched Yaya's head to let it settle down. Hagrid took the matsu take out of his pocket and put them all on the table. He squeezed a matsu take, looked up and down and asked, Are you sure this thing is really good when grilled on charcoal? Leave it to me to deal with it. Albert believes himself, he is as stable as Mount Tai on the surface and as stable as Mount Tai on the inside. If you want to fish, I have some fresh meat left here. You can get some to make bait. Hagrid pointed to the big wooden barrel in the corner. What are you? Albert looked at the raw meat in the bucket and raised his eyebrows. He had just smelled a smell, which was coming from the bucket. Food prepared for Yechi. In winter, it is difficult for Yechi to find food. I occasionally feed them in the woods to ensure that the young individuals in the group can survive the winter. Hagrid reached out and rubbed his hands. Rubbing Yaya's head, is this leftover meat the dinner I prepared for Yaya? Are you sure this thing is really edible? Lee Jordan asked, staring at Matsu take. Of course. Hagrid lit the unburned firewood in the fireplace, put the copper kettle on it and boiled and then went outside to make a bucket of well water for Albert. Albert took a sharp knife from the kitchen and scraped off the mud from the roots of the matsu take. After repeatedly cleaning it, he drew out his wand and played a complicated posture. He pointed the stick at the newly cleaned matsu take and chanted the drying spell. The matsu take has evaporated. You don't look like a first-year student now. Hagrid looked at Albert who was casting the spell, and said softly, your use of the spell is beyond my imagination. It's hard to imagine you come from a muggle family. Yet. George said softly with emotion, I dare to use the two silver secos in my pocket to bet that this guy knows more magic than a second-year student. Albert ignored the ridicule of a few people and asked, 
Hagrid, do you have olive oil here? There is some left. If you want to use it, I'll get it for you. Excuse me. Albert concentrated on using a sharp knife to cut Matsu take into thin slices. You are too stingy. Li Qiyadan pinched the Matsu take thin slices with the tips of his fingers and said with contempt, This thin slice, how does it feel to eat? It's thinned, and it will be cooked later. Albert glared at Lee Jordan and brushed a thin layer of olive oil on the matsu take. Then he took a piece of wood, turned it into a barbecue, and used tongs to pick out a few pieces of charcoal from the fireplace that were not completely burned out and put them in the brazier, put the barbecue up, nodded with satisfaction, I finally feel like a barbecue. I think you are making a big fuss. Fred looked at the busy Albert and rolled his eyes. Well, it tastes good. Hagrid put his own sausage aside, reached out and squeezed the still-roasted matsu take and threw it into his mouth, chewing and nodding, it's good, but the portion is too small. Fred and several people looked at each other as they swept away the golden matsu take that had just been roasted as quickly as possible. I find this stuff is pretty chewy. But, is it better to add some salt? I think there should be some sauce. Asshole, you have eaten all of my share. Albert saw his freshly roasted matsu take being robbed, and couldn't help glaring at the three of Fred. George ate your portion. Fred and Lee Jordan raised their hands to George. Cough cough, there is still a lot on the plate anyway. George gave a dry cough and picked up the sausage, or, how about we grill the sausage? Wait until I finish roasting the matsu take. Albert stared at the three people irritably and continued his work. The barbecue did not last long. The amount of matsu take was too small, and everyone only got a few slices, but everyone had to admit that the taste of matsu take was really good, and the aftertaste was endless after eating. Afterwards, they baked Hagrid's own sausages, and returned to the Greyfinder Lounge after drinking a few cups of tea. As for the biscuits that Hagrid made by himself, several people tactfully rejected it. After all, the mouth is not so good, and they can't eat the thing. When I returned to the Greyfinder Lounge, the banquet celebrating Greyfinder's victory was not over yet, but the cakes and pies prepared were basically eaten up by everyone, leaving some toffee and some vegetable pies. Where did you go? Angelina stared suspiciously at the four who had just entered through the entrance. Go into the woods with Hagrid. George said smugly. The hunting ground administrator will actually take you into the forest. Angelina was very surprised. Albert succeeded in persuading him. Fred explained, we also heard that Professor Ketlebo, who protects magical biology, lives in the woods. Are you kidding? Shauna leaned over and joined the discussion. No, it's true. We just met a witch who was going to visit Professor Ketlebo, as if for the bird and snake. Lee Jordan said. What is a bird and snake? Shauna asked curiously. Lee Jordan choked, turned his eyes to Albert, and asked his friend for help. The bird snake is a two-legged animal with wings. It comes from Asia and can stretch and retract its body at will. Therefore, the bird snake can be big enough to fill all the space, and it can shrink the body according to the available space. I'm curious how do you know birds and snakes so much? George joked. Why don't you know where are fantastic beasts by heart? Birds and snake eggs are also one of the ingredients in the making of the elixir, Albert said grimly, so I checked it out. By the way, the shell of the bird snake egg is made of sterling silver, which is silver. Albert looked around www.mtlnovel.com looking at the shocked expressions of several people, Nodding satisfied and continued, it is said that, the famous writer Guidrol Lockhart used bird snake egg to make a bird snake egg yolk shampoo, the effect is really able to lock the gloss, but due to the price and danger, the bird snake egg yolk shampoo is not it could be produced for the mass market and sold only on the black market, but it quickly disappeared. Why? Shauna asked puzzledly. Because it's too expensive, Albert said of course. No wonder the blessing potion is so expensive. Fred said with emotion. 
it's not that expensive, but it's impossible to buy. Albert said grumpily, later, I specifically checked the raw materials of the elixir, only to find out why basically no one would make that thing. The raw materials are very expensive. If the manufacturing process fails, it will be an unbearable disaster for any pharmacist. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. You said, when will this pot of garlic be harvested? George is fertilizing and watering the pot of garlic that is booming. Wait for the end of May. Albert gently blows off the sawdust from the wooden bracelet, and put it down to compare the runes carved on it. Are you going to eat raw garlic? Asked Lee Jordan, who threw bibito beans in his mouth, with a smile. Is there a problem with your focus? You should ask Albert why he knows when the garlic will be harvested. George put down the small kettle in his hand and looked at the multi-flavored beans in Lee Jordan's hand, using a malicious he said in a tone, the one on your hand must taste like booger. This is soya bean flavor. Lee Keaton glared at George. This guy actually disgusted others like this. However, he still didn't eat it, and threw the bibido bean into the box again. If you eat it raw, I suggest you marinate the garlic in soy sauce. I heard it tastes good. Enough, don't make the topic awkward. George said again angrily, is it really the end of May? As Hagrid said, he grows his own vegetables and he definitely knows when to harvest. Albert raised his head and looked at George. If you want to make a garlic cross, the garlic you brought from home is enough. You have to use your own garlic to have a sense of accomplishment. George said solemnly. These words drew him a lot of eyes. Well, it's up to you. Don't you throw away the pot you planted? That branch has already withered, and it must not survive. George pointed to another pot with white flowers. Keep it here first. Albert raised his head and glanced at the flower pot and said, When the weather picks up, I am going to plant again. What do you grow Bakesian for, are you interested? Lee Jordan was a little unable to understand Albert's thinking mode. This guy is very in charge of dabbling, basically he can learn everything, and everything involved is very good. What makes his stomach hurt most is that this guy lives more leisurely than anyone else. Sometimes, Lee Jordan is still quite jealous of Albert. The treatment effect of Bakesian is very good. Albert explained, the medicinal value is very high. In the future, if I have my own house, I will definitely plant some Bakesian in the flower garden. Now I will accumulate some planting experience. In fact, Albert won't say that he thinks Bakesian's therapeutic effects will be very popular on muggles. This special thing can sometimes have miraculous effects. Of course, this kind of thinking is actually the inspiration that Aber will come up with from time to time after he has developed economics. He thought it was good, so he took the time to learn how to plant. Your thinking mode is really different from ours. George also felt that Albert's thinking was strange. Will it? Albert disapproved of this and continued to concentrate on carving his own runes. This time, he made a wooden bracelet with a whole circle of runes on it, all of which he designed. Albert actually didn't know whether it was effective. He didn't feel too special when carving this thing. Is it appropriate to use the yew wood symbolized by I was as the material? Forget it, write it down first, next time I will see if I can find you. Albert thought so. What? There was a scream in the dormitory. Fred who was reading a book, suddenly jumped up from the bed and somehow threw the book on his hand. Albert shook his hand and carved the rune crookedly. Lee Jordan, who was about to taste the yellow multi-flavored bean carefully, was taken aback and swallowed it. George was almost hit by the book that Fred threw out, and jumped up in shock. He hit the foot of the table and was now jumping on his knees. What are you going crazy? The three glared at Fred and said grimly. I feel, my heart hurts. 
Fred clutched his chest and made the appearance of a heart attack. What's wrong with him? Lee Jordan couldn't help muttering, couldn't you be dumped? But I never heard that Fred has a girlfriend. Would you like to send him to the school hospital? Albert put down the knife in his hand and proposed, Mrs. Pomfrey must not have a rest yet. My leg hurts so much. Book, that book. Fred put his hand on his chest and pointed his finger at the book that was just thrown out. What's wrong with the book? George grabbed the book and scanned the cover. It was a thousand magical herbs and mushrooms. Unexpectedly, you would look at this stuff if you are fine. Turn on page 98. It's the introduction about snow mushrooms. Fred said grimly, his tone was not like a patient. Shwe mushroom. George turned the book suspiciously to page 98, still muttering, Let me see, there is, shwe mushroom. Ah, my heart hurts. A few seconds later, George suddenly covered his chest and sat on the bed with a look of lovelessness. Both Albert and George Lee were attracted by their reaction and were interested in the snow mushrooms in the two populations. Lee keyed and opened the book curiously, took a look, and closed it slowly, not knowing what he was muttering in his mouth. Anyway, he didn't want to say more, and just gave the book to Albert so he could read it for himself. Albert looked at the three of them, wondering what they saw. After opening the book, he knew what was going on. This painting, hmm. It's a bit like the matsu take they ate a while ago. Last time, he thought it was strange that when it snowed heavily in February, he could still find matsu take. Shwe mushroom, also known as cedar mushroom. Albert quickly finished reading the introduction about snow mushroom, and his cheeks twitched. No wonder they had that expression. It only grows in the snowy winter, and has extremely high medicinal value. Not to mention the others, the one ounce of cedar mushroom powder is worth 50 gallons, no wonder they feel distressed. That's definitely the most expensive thing we've ever eaten. Fred complained, covering his chest, Albert, you prodigal son, you actually grilled snow mushrooms like this. If you sell it, you can get a lot of money. George agreed. You said, should we dig snow mushrooms, we can make a lot of money in the future. Lee Keaton suddenly proposed. That's a good idea. The twins' eyes flashed with Canaan's golden light. Is this, crazy about money? Albert's mouth twitched. In fact, he was not unable to understand why they had this idea, but poured cold water on the three of them, don't think about it, we walked around and found that point, and the snow mushrooms were not easy to preserve. Unless you know how to process it into powder, it will be useless if you dig it. If you leave it for a long time, the snow mushroom that has lost its efficacy is worthless. But. It's nothing good. It is undeniable that the Forbidden Forest does have a lot of good things. After all, it is still in the primeval forest www.mtlnovel.com The opportunity has not been mined, but I still need to remind you that even if we get snow mushrooms now, there is no place to get rid of. Albert stared into the eyes of the three of them, and seriously reminded, who do you expect to trade with? Others know that you are just a child and will deal with you fairly? They are not your father, any guarantee it's nothing more than a trick to lie to children. Aren't you tempted at all? George couldn't help asking. Of course it will, but I know exactly what I should do, and I don't think there are a lot of snow mushrooms there, A and D. You have to make it clear that snow mushrooms are non-tradable products and they are not so easy to get rid of. There are two kinds of prohibited trade goods, one is of extremely high value or extremely dangerous, so the Ministry of Magic will strictly prohibit trade. If you want to trade, you can only get rid of the black market. Children want to get benefits from the black market. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Do you know what's inside? 
Lee Jordan pointed to a square box placed on the table. When I first came in, I smelled a smell of food. I don't know. But, the smell is delicious, do you want to open it? George immediately leaned in and stared at the box in front of him with the smell of food together with Lee Jordan. You said, is this the supper that Albert brought us from the kitchen? Fred guessed, staring at the box in front of him. What about others? George said. Just ask him. Take a hot shower in the bathroom. Lee Jordan reminded. Or, take a look. The three of them looked at each other and said in unison. The next second, the three of them couldn't help laughing. George moved the fastest, and immediately reached out to open the box, and a strong fragrance spilled out. The three of them immediately moved their heads to see what was inside. One dish? Yes, a dish, very strange, a dish that has never been seen before? But it smells really good. I'll try it for everyone first. George pinched a piece with his hand threw it directly into his mouth, and chewed a few times. It looks like an egg, and those green things seem to be, garlic. Asshole, don't use your hands, there is a fork on the side. Fred exclaimed dissatisfiedly, let me try it, it feels like Albert has made something strange again. By the way, he did it himself. Lee Jordan asked curiously. 80% of them are made by house elves in the kitchen. The twins confided the truth together. It tastes good. Lee Jordan just put the food on the fork into his mouth, and suddenly said, You said, should we keep some for him? While talking, the food on the three people's plate was empty. It seems, it's too late. George muttered quietly. During the talk, the door of the dormitory was opened, and the three of them looked towards the door and put down their forks. What's the matter with you? Albert looked at the three of them suspiciously, and fell into the open box, his face twitching slightly, done. Can't hold it back. Fred said awkwardly. What's the name of this dish, it tastes really good. Lee Jordan tried to change the subject, but George reached out his hand and covered his mouth. Sorry. The three said in unison. Garlic scrambled eggs. Albert said calmly. Garlic. Scrambled eggs. Speaking of garlic, Fred couldn't help looking at the pot of garlic on the window, and then the expression on his face froze. Why is my garlic bald? Garlic, could it be? Fred asked, pointing to the plate of garlic with garlic leaves cut off. Okay. Did you, make it into a dish? George looked at the bare flower pot and didn't know what to say for a while. I think you are very happy to eat. Albert said irritably, don't worry, spring is here, and garlic will grow back soon. The three of them were speechless. In other words, this dish, is really good. Lee Jordan coughed slightly and asked curiously, you did it yourself. I asked the house elves to help with the stir fry. Albert said with emotion. Those little guys are good at craftsmanship. I don't know if I can be kidnapped from Hogwarts to help with housework after I graduate. Mom always hopes that an elf can help us cook and wash clothes and handle the housework. George murmured, Unfortunately, I don't have one in my house. Don't even think about it, Fred explained. Only the old wizard family and the very wealthy ones will have house elves. Neither does my house. Lee Jordan shook his head. Maybe, you can pay enough gallon? The house elves must have a source, um, write this down first. Albert took out his own notebook and recorded the event. Don't you? The three looked at Albert suspiciously. As long as there is Garen, most problems can be solved. Albert explained, well, let's not talk about this, help me do an experiment. What experiment? George said. Throw a pillow at me. Albert raised his wrist with a wooden bracelet. Are you sure? The three of them all grabbed their pillows and threw them towards Albert, but the pillows seemed to hit a layer of strange things and spread out. How did you do it? The three of them gathered around and asked curiously how Albert got off the pillow out of thin air. This. 
Albert took off the wooden bracelet and said, The unique amulet I made has an iron curse that can resist evil curses and objects, and it can effectively drive away dark magic creatures. I always think you are fooling people again. Fred took the wooden bracelet and looked at it carefully and asked, However, it is undeniable that it is really a magical thing. Is it the effect of the weird symbols on the wooden bracelet? I'm not sure yet. Albert shook his head. This thing needs many attempts. Change me this time. Fred said, How does it work? Wear it on your hand, or hold it in your hand. Albert said uncertainly. It should all work. I threw it. George threw the pillow at Fred, the effect was triggered again, and the pillow bounced off. It's so cool, you made a very amazing thing. Lee Jordan was shocked, I think there must be a bunch of people wanting this thing. You think, when someone is going to use a spell on you, you just raising your hand, you can block the evil curse, it's really cool. Next, change me and try the curse to see if it can really rebound the curse. George shouted at Albert excitedly, use obstacle curse. There are many obstacles. Albert motioned a few people to let go, took the magic wand and danced. Before the magic spell hit George, it seemed that something was blocking him, and the spell bounced back. Lee Jordan was affected, he was knocked out and knocked on the bed. Asshole, it hurts. Lee Jordan gripped his back and complained, you guy must be on purpose. Lee Jordan just saw the George stretch out his hand and put the spell on his side. It's cool, it's awesome. It's hard to believe. The twins looked at each other and said in unison, this thing will definitely sell several gallons. You bastards, come and pull me. Lee Jordan complained. Sorry, I was so excited. George apologized, are you all right, I really didn't mean it just now. Now it's time for me to test. Lee Jordan took the wooden bracelet, got up from the ground, and shouted excitedly at Albert. Fainted. Albert also wanted to test the limits of the iron armor curse on the wooden bracelet, so he didn't refuse Lee Jordan. It's just that Lee Jordan's luck really seemed to be so memorized, he was directly hit by the coma spell, and the wooden bracelet did not work at all. He held the wooden bracelet and fainted straightly. The protection of the bracelet has failed. Fred asked curiously. It may be the limit. Albert walked to the side of Lee Jordan and squatted down, guessing. After all, this is just a test product. It's normal to encounter this kind of thing. I think. Lee Jordan's luck today is not so good. Fred looked at his unconscious roommate with a gloating look. Now, what should I do? George asked. Can you wake him up? I think it would be better for him to sleep like this until dawn. Albert said. I feel so too. How to make the iron armor curse on the protective bracelet last longer has now become one of Albert's latest research topics. Recently, Albert has read a lot of books, and some methods can indeed make the spell last longer. The easiest way is to concentrate when casting a spell, which is actually to maintain it with stronger magical power. Copying spells are the best example. Some copied items can last forever, while others will disappear after a period of time. This is related to the person who uses the spell. As far as Albert knows, there is another kind of spell called permanent paste spell, which is an irreversible spell. The ancient spell to maintain Hogwarts Castle is very powerful, and the big four are also humans. Since they can do this, Albert believes he can too. However, his thinking may be crooked, or his expertise in knowledge and magic is far inferior to them. Albert is considering whether he wants to ask Professor Flitwick about this question. Someone behind Albert gave him a naughty pat on his left shoulder. When Albert turned his head, he didn't see the person. What's the matter? Albert knew that the other person was on his right, and asked. You are really boring. Field sat on the empty seat beside Albert with a smile, have you seen this issue of Transfiguration today? I haven't read it yet. Albert said honestly. Wow, you didn't watch it. 
Field looked at Albert in disbelief, as if looking at some strange creature. Isn't there no time to watch, what happened to this issue of transfiguration today? Albert heard something special from the other party's words. Recently, he has been busy protecting the bracelet, and also found that the rune above did not have the expected effect, which made him depressed for a long time. After today's transfiguration today was delivered, there was no time to read it. The paper you wrote last time was published in this issue of Transfiguration Today. Field stared at Albert's eyes carefully, as if he was sure whether this guy really didn't know this, or pretended do not know. Oh. Albert froze for a moment, and repeated, What did you say? The essay you wrote last time was printed in this issue of Transfiguration Today. Field, with an expression that I really lost to you, put the transfiguration today in his hands in Albert. T.E. spread out in front of him, pointed to the article and continued, Professor McGonagall said, our transformation club activities this time is to study this topic. The students around who heard the conversation between the two leaned in, wanting to read the paper on transfiguration written by Albert. Professor McGonagall deleted a lot of things. Albert took a closer look and said to Field. It's half the content. I know, I have read your manuscript. Field nodded. Albert looked at Field in surprise, when did you watch it? Why don't I remember? After reading this paper, I asked Professor McGonagall for a copy of your manuscript. Field explained, you dare to write those things. Transfiguration is the most complicated and dangerous spell. Field vaguely remembered that this was what Professor McGonagall said in the first class. However, this guy in front of him actually wants to use it to deal with the enemy? Did you accidentally bump your head when you entered the lounge? Field asked angrily. Something wrong. Of course, you know the transfiguration torture curse. Field asked again suddenly. No sum, just use transformation. Before Albert's words were finished, he was interrupted by Field again. Did you know? Field reminded, the Ministry of Magic has always been committed to maintaining peace in the magical world. They don't want. Yes. After all, Transfiguration Today is an academic journal. Field sighed, some of your papers don't match. In fact, Field has to admit that Albert's whimsy is admirable. The usage of spells is strange and strange, and at the right time, proper use will often cause unexpected destructive power. However, sometimes it just doesn't work. Understood. Albert nodded his head to express understanding, after all, no one wants their living environment to be messed up, and this is easy to manage. But. But what? Field focused on the sneer that flashed across Albert's face. Nothing. Albert smiled without saying a word. This method is one of the favorite routines of upper management. After all, sheep herds are better managed than wolves. However, once something is lost, it is often vulnerable when faced with challenges. When Voldemort came back, it was the best example. The prestige accumulated by the entire Ministry of Magic was trampled underfoot and twisted at will. Albert doesn't care much about these things. In fact, he has always been indifferent to things that have nothing to do with him. I don't think this thing is practical. After reading the paper carefully, Fred suddenly said, this requires superb transformation skills. In fact, you know, most wizards are terrible at transformation skills. Your own transfiguration is terrible, don't pull what other people say with you. Shauna glared at Fred angrily. No one will admit that he is bad in any way, even if it is true. Shut up, Fred. George reached out his hand to cover his brother's mouth, not letting him speak. At this moment, Baker came over and patted Albert on the shoulder. Is that enviable? Unexpectedly, you published your first paper on Transfiguration today when you were in the first grade. This has completely refreshed the historical record of Hogwarts. I remember that McDougar just refreshed the record not long ago. I didn't expect you to refresh it so quickly. McDougar. 
Shauna raised her eyebrows, and the other mentioning the name reminded her of someone in Ravenclaw. Who called me? Katrina McDugger asked when someone called herself. The atmosphere at the scene was embarrassing. What's the matter? Katrina frowned unhappily, feeling the change in atmosphere. Nothing. Albert coughed lightly www.mtlnovel.com not talking about you. Unexpectedly, Isabel has a younger sister. Baker looked at Katrina McDug in amazement, I never heard her mention it. Why did she mention it? Field asked, looking at Baker. Just curious. Katrina and I are in the same class Albert said that he knew it. Katrina had already guessed who these guys were talking about, her sister Isabel, she is indeed a genius, no matter what field she is in. However, the guy in front of him seemed to be more talented than her sister. She had just read Albert's paper not long ago, and she was not at the same level as herself. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. The classroom used by the Transformation Club was enlarged by magic. Professor McGonagall was standing in the middle of the classroom, waving his wand to show everyone the transformation magic, dazzling everyone present. Manipulate flames and control the flow of water, shoot dangerous beams of lightning from the magic wand, turn the floor into a swamp, and the mud will churn down the enemy, or turn into a barrier to protect yourself and block the oncoming spell. As Albert writes in his thesis, the usage of transfiguration is very strange, and when used at the right time, it can often achieve unexpected effects. Not only Albert, but everyone else in the classroom watched Professor McGonagall's magic fascinatingly. However, when everyone suddenly woke up, they found a big problem. If you want to reach the level of Professor McGonagall, you need to master more sophisticated spell casting skills and everyone present will not. Yes, none of them can, let alone do it. Now, Professor McGonagall is showing everyone how to turn objects into creatures and manipulate them well. Water poured out of the basin, and under the control of Professor McGonagall, it stood up like a winding python. In the blink of an eye, the water in the basin disappeared, and only one python remained. It opened its mouth and let out a faint sound crawled out of the basin, and wrapped it around a table under the command of Professor McGonagall. The python suddenly disappeared and stayed behind. Only the cage that bound the table. If you are a wizard, if you are caught, you will basically have to obediently admit your fate. Professor McGonagall waved his magic wand, and the cage that trapped the table turned into a pool of water again, and the water stains wet the ground. It doesn't matter if it's fire, water, fog, or mud. Professor McGonagall said, I know that smoke curses were taught in defense against the dark arts class. Professor McGonagall, I don't think the enemy will give us time to prepare. A Slytherin student reminded. I know. Professor McGonagall said, looking around. Usually it's not useful for duels with wizards, but sometimes it works. Professor McGonagall raised his wand with a finger, and countless ropes trapped the Slytherin wizard and tied it to his seat. The rope suddenly exploded into a cloud of smoke and disappeared. Wizards rarely duel, even if they face to face, they will not show duel etiquette unless you participate in a duel contest. Professor McGonagall said calmly, defeating each other and protecting yourself, this is the right way for you when you are in danger. Practice. After speaking, she picked up her magic wand slightly, and two kittens made of water crawled out of the original water mark, they were playing with each other. Then, the two cats collided and merged into a little cheetah, running around everyone behind them, their sharp gaze swept from behind them, and everyone was frightened and sweating. Under the control of Professor McGonagall, the cheetah broke into two humanoid villains again. They picked up the wooden bucket on the ground that was overturned by the python, jumped into the bucket together, and changed back to a basin of water. After the presentation, there was a warm applause in the classroom. 
Professor McGonagall raised her hand to signal everyone to keep quiet. She said to all the members of the club, How many kinds of magic did I use just now, how did I do it, and how much can I do if I change to you? Everyone began to whisper to each other's discussions. For most people, three consecutive questions were undoubtedly a difficult problem. Many people didn't even think about these things when they watched Professor McGonagall show magic. Now, I can only rack my brains to think about the answer. How much do you understand? Field exchanged his notes with Albert. After she saw the content of Albert's notes, she was surprised to find that the other party's understanding of magic was not much worse than her own. Those transformation magic is too difficult for me now. Albert secretly estimated that he might have to upgrade to level 3 before he could use transformation magic like Professor McGonagall did. It seems that he had already thought about these issues when he was writing that paper. Field did not change on the surface, but he was very surprised. Where is Baker? She asked again. My situation is similar to yours. Baker is very depressed. Although he has worked hard to observe, the gains are still limited. Originally, everyone thought that he was a leader in metamorphosis, and his papers were occasionally published in the magazine Transfiguration Today. However, after seeing Professor McGonagall's magic show, they suddenly felt that the transformation magic they used was like a child waving a magic wand. You need to figure out how I did it, and if I change to you, can I achieve this level? Professor McGonagall strolled in the classroom and checked the contents of everyone's notes. The results were not very impressive. Satisfaction. She continued, I never expected you to fully understand, but you need to know a small part. When you go back, you will study it. I believe you will gain something. Next time, it will still be the subject. Okay, today that's it. It's really hard this time. It's harder than all the content before. After the transformation club, when everyone came out of the portrait, Baker told Albert dejectedly, I feel that the transformation technique during this period is useless. Learned. Not as serious as you said. Albert comforted, the gap between us and Professor McGonagall is experience. It's not just a matter of experience. Field shook his head. I don't know when I can reach that level. For me, it's bad experience. Albert couldn't help muttering in his heart. You wrote that paper. I'm curious to what extent you can do it. It was Isabel who had not left yet. This Ravenclaw genius looked at Albert with a complicated expression, and she never thought that the other party would publish her own article on Transfiguration today so quickly. Have you ever heard of good eyes and low hands? I am one of them. Albert said seriously, actually, I am also very curious why Professor McGonagall chose to publish my paper. Don't underestimate yourself, the standard of your paper is very high, Mr. Anderson. Professor McGonagall said, what's the gain this time? I found that metamorphosis can be played like this. Albert said from his heart, unfortunately www.mtlnovel.com many people are not good at metamorphosis. You are right. Professor McGonagall said, I suggest you talk to other experts in this field, so that you can improve your level in this area. Oh. I will. The Chief Albert watched Professor McGonagall leave. It seems that the rumors are right. Baker said. What rumors? Albert asked curiously. Everyone says you are Professor McGonagall's proud pupil. Field reminded. Why don't I know? Albert asked puzzled. Several people couldn't help but stare at each other. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Maybe a bit famous. Or, that's not a reputation at all. Anyway, Albert was surprised to find that a famous wizard actually wrote back to himself. The man was named Ed Fusco, 
and the reply was very short, expressing his willingness to communicate with Albert, and he also left a question for Albert, wanting to hear Albert's basic law of transformation in GAMP insights. The question left by Mr. Fusco was not too difficult, or even so simple, that Albert suspected that the other party already knew his age. However, Albert doesn't care about this, he cares more about his new task panel. Make a lot of friends. Make friends with five famous wizards in the magic world, and keep in correspondence with them, you will have unexpected gains. Number of wizards, one-fifth. Reward, 5,000 experience, prestige plus 500 in the magic world. Unexpectedly, a panel task can appear in this way. Even if Albert may not be able to complete it temporarily, it does not mean that it cannot be done in the future. Albert never feels too experienced. He feels that he is in a good mood today and began to think about writing a reply to the other party. It took a while to finish the letter. Albert handed the envelope to Shara, watching the direction the owl was flying away, and then refocusing his attention on his food, only to find that his slices of bread had been covered by snow. Pole to peck is full of holes. Albert gently shook his head, used magic to empty the items on the tray, and picked up a piece of bread to continue enjoying breakfast. You are in a good mood, has anything good happened? Angelina, who was sitting next to her, asked curiously. Mr. Fusco replied to me. Albert naturally wouldn't say things like panel tasks. Mr. Fusco. Actually, I don't even know. I just received the other party's letter, so I wrote him back. Albert said casually, anyway, a letter does not waste much time. Moreover, there are some things Albert did not say. He doesn't think that both parties will exchange letters frequently. Famous people are usually busy every day, so there is so much time to write to himself. Not everyone is like his Tom, except for eating and sleeping all day long, just basking in the sun. Have you heard? Lee Jordan came over here with a mysterious face, as if he had heard some interesting news. I haven't heard, let's talk about it. Albert raised his head and looked at his roommate. What's the matter? Phantom visualization class. Lee Jordan excitedly said the news he had just heard. Isn't this mentioned shortly after I came back from the Christmas holiday? Albert looked at Lee Jordan in a puzzled manner raised his eyebrows and asked, could it be that the lower grade students can also sign up for the apparition class? Do you want to sign up? Fred asked lazily. Well, apparition is a convenient magic, you have to learn it. Albert headed, don't you want to learn it? It will be easier when you are on the road in the future. Don't even think about it, unless you are 17 years old. Lee Jordan said grimly, I'll start teaching in the afternoon. You can go and watch senior students practice apparition. I've read a piece of Hogwarts history. It seems that apparition cannot be used in school. Shauna said uncertainly. Are they going to practice apparition mantra outside school? No, the location is the lobby. Lee Jordan pointed to this. It's impossible. Shauna frowned. Nothing is impossible. It is estimated that the principal will remove the protective magic that prohibits apparitions from the school, so that the hall can be operated. By the way, any of you have an owl to lend me, I want to order something. Albert opened the record. Develop the potion book of the potion and ask everyone. Didn't you have? Lee Jordan asked puzzledly. Shara helped deliver the letter and flew away. I'm going to write a letter to the pharmacy in Diagon Alley to buy some medicinal materials. Albert explained. He is ready to complete the task of magic photos as soon as possible and obtain alchemy as soon as possible. Albert originally thought that after making a protective bracelet, alchemy would appear on the panel, but his panel never showed related skills, so Albert did not intend to continue trying. Albert intends to acquire alchemy skills first and is planning to try its effects. Lent you mine. Alia said. What potion are you going to prepare? Fred asked curiously, could it be a blessing potion? It's the developing potion. 
Albert pointed to the page of the book and said, I heard that the developing potion can move the characters in the photo. Sounds great, can you tell me a little bit? Shauna asked awkwardly, of course, I'll help. At that time, if there is left over, there is no problem for you. Albert agreed. Albert, we are going to go out later, are you going? Fred asked, nodding outside. Where to go? Angelina asked suspiciously, is the Quidditch Stadium. In the afternoon, there was a training session for the Greyfinder team and it was about to win the championship. Charlie did not dare to relax at all. I have an appointment later. Albert gently declined the twins' invitation. Who? George couldn't help asking, you don't plan to go to the woods with us. Into the forest. Angelina's voice was raised a bit, what are you doing in the forest? Adventure treasure hunt. The twins said in unison. In fact, they are looking for some valuable pharmaceutical raw materials. Especially after the last incident, the twin brothers have watched a thousand wonderful herbs and mushrooms several times, and are ready to go into the forest to hunt for treasure. As for Lee Jordan, the punishment last time was really boring and made him think about whether it was worth venturing into the woods. Lee Jordan also knows that there are many precious things in the Forbidden Forest, but sometimes you really have a little luck, so the twins want to get Albert together, because this one's luck is always good, and if Albert go, Lee Keaton will follow. In their words, if Albert followed, the risk of taking risks in this trip would be greatly reduced. It's Professor Bud Browder, UU reading www.uugonshu.com I am going to play with him the wizard chess. Albert said casually. I remember Professor Browder is an international wizard chess champion. I feel like you will lose miserably. Not only George, but everyone else looked at Albert with pitiful eyes. It's fun to play chess with powerful people. Even if you lose, it doesn't matter. Just set your mind right. Moreover, you don't want to think about it. It feels good to have a wizard chess champion to give special guidance. Especially without thinking. It sounds reasonable, Fred nodded. However, I always think you are making excuses for your impending failure. Albert couldn't help rolling his eyes, ignoring this group of unreliable friends, he was still looking at how to make the developing potion. Alchemy. A little look forward to it. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Professor Broad is a funny old man. Albert is looking forward to this invitation. When he was about to raise his hand to knock on the door, the door of the Defense Against the Dark Arts office opened automatically. Albert's hand froze in place. Knowing that it was Professor Broad's invitation, he stretched out his hand and gently opened the door and lifted his foot into the Office of Defense Against the Dark Arts. Professor Broad has prepared cakes and drinks. Of course, there is also a set of wizard chess. Wait a moment. Professor Broad sat at his desk, staring at some parchment in front of him, not knowing what he was doing. Albert didn't bother him, sat quietly on the sofa, bought himself a cake, and ate himself. Ten minutes later, Professor Broad finally finished his business, sat in front of Albert, smiled and said to him, I heard Professor McGonagall say about you. She is proud of you. What about transfiguration today? Albert asked a little puzzled. Yes. Professor Broad nodded, at your age, it's very remarkable. Albert was silent, suddenly wondering what to say. In fact, he really didn't care much about this issue. Professor Broad noticed the astonishment and silence flashing across Albert's face, and asked suspiciously, You seem to, don't care too much. Hey. Albert nodded in embarrassment. In fact, he wants to say that his reputation is not as affordable as Canaan. Hogwarts students don't have to pay for publishing papers in Transfiguration today. Of course, 
the relationship between the two parties has always been mutually beneficial. Only the students who have won the best and most potential newcomer award will be given a symbolic Canaan award in Transfiguration today. The number of Canaan is not large. More honors come from the title of best and most potential newcomer award. White moves first. Professor Broad was not discussing the topic, but made a request to Albert. Albert immediately concentrated his attention and began to carefully test the strength of Professor Broad. He is very clear about his situation, the level of wizard chess is only one level, and it is still far away from the second level. This level is fine for ordinary people, but it is much worse for international wizard chess champions. In fact, facing the offensive, Professor Broad deliberately released the water. Albert still failed to block the opponent's offensive, and he was checked to death by Professor Broad's knights in less than ten minutes. Although he lost in chess, Albert has benefited a lot from his chess game with Professor Broad. After the start of the second game, Albert slowed down his speed to avoid some small mistakes in the first game. The two sides fought for twenty minutes, and finally the opponent queen was checkmate dead. Lost again. Albert said with emotion, is this the level of an international wizard chess champion? The level of wizard chess games must be very high. No, in fact, you are wrong. The level of wizards participating in international wizard chess competitions is very average. Professor Broad took a sip of milk tea and gently explained, in fact, there are very few people who really train in this area. Wizards, they may have some level, but they are still that way. In two years, you should be able to reach that level. You mean, the players participating in the International Wizard Chess Tournament are all amateurs? Albert was a little surprised at once. In fact, it is said that when a person is 17, he will begin to reach the peak in many ways, and Albert once suspected that it was for this reason that he became an adult at 17. Yes, in fact, there has never been a so-called professional or amateur. However, every game is like this. When you become an adult, you can also participate in the International Wizard Chess Competition. Professor Broad said with a smile, although there is no bonus how much, but the title is pretty good. Yet. Yeah. Albert replied absently. In fact, he didn't care if he was famous. Famous, sometimes it works. Professor Broad smiled meaningfully. How did he sound like, well, a little strange? What were you doing just now? Albert changed the subject, of course, if it's not convenient. Study ancient magic texts. Professor Broad didn't mind at all, Bath Ishida just sorted it out for me. However, I haven't touched these things for a long time, and it's quite difficult to research now. Ancient magic text. Albert raised his eyebrows and said, I heard that it was an elective course for the third grade. Yes, yes, an elective course in the third grade. Professor Broad nodded repeatedly. Albert suddenly said, it is said that in the era of the Big Four, this magic text was used to cast spells. Yeah, there is such a saying. Professor Broad looked at Albert. Someone once guessed that ancient wizards were so powerful and inseparable from ancient magic texts. It is, very powerful, Albert said softly. The ancient magic of Hogwarts can last for thousands of years. It seems to me a miracle. Although it may be rude to say that, I doubt Principal Dumbledore. Can this be done too? Ha <laughs> ha, Dumbledore. Professor Broad put down the teacup in his hand. He is recognized as the most powerful wizard of this century. He has also been the chief wizard of Wizengama for decades. Got it. The rumors that mysterious people are afraid of him. Professor Broad continued, Well, do you know who the mysterious person is? I know. Albert nodded, I have read his deeds in the book. It is said that the savior Harry Potter defeated the Dark Lord. This matter is much discussed. At that time, many people thought that the mysterious man would be defeated by Dumbledore, but lost too. Professor Broad realized that this topic should end here. He paused and brought the topic back again, the ancient magic text has many legends. 
It is said that this is a kind of magical text. Using it to chant a spell can enhance the magical power of the wizard. Well, Dumbulito also uses them, and he himself is an expert in this area. Professor. Albert said suddenly. What's the matter, Mr. Anderson? Professor Broad asked, raising his head in confusion. I have also taught myself rune writing. Albert hesitated, and still asked, but I didn't feel the mysterious power of this ancient magic writing as I could tell you. You taught yourself. Professor Broad was surprised. Yes. Albert said. Just during the Christmas holiday this year, I once taught myself runy characters and barely understood them, but, in fact, they are not as magical as you said. After all, it's just a legend. Professor Broad whispered softly, but, do you really bring me many surprises? Surprise. Albert frowned slightly www.mtlnovel.com nothing. Professor Broad laughed, actually, many wizards have learned ancient magic texts, but at their level, they can usually only achieve ordinary knowledge and simple application. There are actually few real experts in this field. Albert was silent. After a long time, he said, no one digs deep. Dig deep. Professor Broad shook his head. For most of the time, this kind of ancient text is good as long as you can understand it. After all, no one uses it, so it would take time and effort to dig it. What about the secret? But the school? Professor Broad interrupted, the Hogwarts school will hold an ancient magic text class, just don't want future generations to look down on these ancient words. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. There was a brief silence in the room, and Albert had never thought that Professor Browder would talk about it so bluntly, but he still nodded, indicating that he could understand. Indeed, the ancient magic text is no longer available today, unless it is necessary to interpret those ancient books. As for using it to cast spells? In Albert's perception, Dumbledore may have this ability. Whether other people can use them skillfully is a question. This is like when you first learned English in your last life, you need to look up the dictionary word by word for the sentences in English books, so that you can barely connect them together and guess the original meaning of the sentence. Can I look at the runes on the parchment? Albert pointed to the parchment on the table and asked Professor Broad. Of course there is no problem. Professor Broad seemed to be curious about the level of Albert Rune's writing. He didn't expect the other party to be able to read it, so he didn't stop Albert from reading it, because the runic text on the parchment was very broken. With the consent of Professor Broad, Albert picked up the parchment and read it carefully. He found that the runes on it were very strange. Albert immediately recognized what these were. They resembled Albert not long after. Rune Rune used before. Unlike the runes in the Muggle world, these runes are connected together. If you want to interpret them, you may need to study them one by one. Albert noticed that there are notes beside these runes, which should have been left by Professor Bathsida or Professor Broad. It means, eyes, trees, spring water. A few short words, but it made Albert frown slightly. He felt as if he had touched something but he couldn't remember it for the time being. These runes, are disrupted. Albert asked uncertainly. Yes, it was disrupted. Professor Broad nodded and said, you have also seen that these runes are difficult to translate by themselves. Well, you need to disassemble and research to understand. Albert said seriously. Is it true that ancient magic texts are like this? No. Albert has read the books of ancient magic text weaving. The one before him is obviously rune. However, I really don't know who is so idle to get such a bunch of runes. Albert did not say this sentence, but he did think so. Not many people can understand the use of rune texts. He also compiled them into runes, 
and then put the runes into a paragraph, and how many people can you really understand it? Or is it that these runes were actually made by Professor Bathsida for Professor Broad to practice ancient spells? Just as Albert was thinking about it, someone knocked on the door of the office. Katrina McDougar appeared outside the Office of Defense Against the Dark Arts and looked at Albert who was standing in front of the office desk reading the parchment in amazement. She couldn't help blinking her eyes and seemed curious about this guy. How could it be here? Albert raised his head when the door was knocked, and he happened to meet Katrina's eyes when he opened the door to enter. He just nodded slightly at the other person and continued to focus on the parchment. The more he reads the runes on the parchment, Albert feels that something in his memory is starting to loosen, but he doesn't seem to have guessed what happened. I just played two games of wizard chess with Mr. Anderson, and his chess skills are pretty good. Professor Broad noticed Katrina's suspicious look and said casually. However, Mr. Anderson seems to be interested in ancient magic texts. Katrina, just sit down and accompany me in a game of chess. Professor Broad is optimistic about Albert. Katrina had already guessed this. After all, Albert is a genius, and geniuses are always treated specially. Focus. Professor Browd noticed that Katrina was distracted, and he reminded him aloud, Don't worry too much about other people, just concentrate on doing your own thing. Hmm. Katrina refocused on the chess game on the table. However, she still lost the chess game after all. When she looked up in a daze, she found that Albert was sitting on Professor Broad's desk and didn't know what she was writing. How dare he? Professor, the runes on the parchment are incomplete, right? Albert, relying on his mastery of runes, took nearly half an hour to translate most of the runes. Oh, why do you say that? Professor Broad asked curiously. Albert is right, the rune here is only part of it. Well, I can't even make a sentence after translation. Albert took the parchment full of letters and walked over. I think these should be two very famous poems and words of God. The word of God, what is that? Katrina asked suspiciously, placing her gaze on the parchment in Albert's hand. Talk about the origin of runes. Albert said simply, Odin exchanged an eye for the fountain of intelligence. In order to seek the mystery of higher wisdom, he hung himself on a tree for nine days and nine nights, and used the spear stabbed himself, and the blood fell on the ground and gathered into runes. Albert dubiously translated the rune into text, and then connected it with the things he had seen before, and guessed the general content. When he first translated, he really didn't react for a while. Later, as more runes were interpreted, Albert was able to piece together most of the content. Katrina looked confused, but she still knew what the runes were. Compared to Katrina, Professor Broad next to him was shocked and incredible. Professor Browder hadn't thought about it at all, but Albert actually interpreted it. Blind? No, this is unlikely. By the way, are you sure you just learned rune by yourself? Professor Broad's face twitched continuously and his heart roared loudly, you are ashamed to claim that you can barely understand it. If this is really hard to understand www.mtlnovel.com what other guys who are good at runes are considered? Professor Browd. Albert raised his head and cried out in confusion. The other party suddenly recovered and explained with a smile, I don't know too much, because I'm also trying, but I think it should that's right. Professor Bathsida will be very happy that you chose the ancient magic text. If you are interested, please write to her, or go to the side. Professor Broad thought for a while, and felt that this was inappropriate. Because he thinks Albert may not need to attend class anymore. To be honest, he still had a lot of runes left on the table. Albert did not use the magic dictionary, so he disassembled, translated, and put together the runes. Whether Professor Bathsida has this ability, Professor Broad is not sure, but he knows that he definitely does not. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of The Beautiful Wife. 
The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. I didn't expect that Professor Broad would give you such a high evaluation. The expression on Katrina's face is very complicated, or she is not convinced now. At home, although his sister Isabel treats her very well, Isabel is an out-and-out -out magical genius. Katrina, who has been growing up under the aura of Isabel genius, is under great pressure. Later, Katrina finally went to school at Hogwarts, thinking that she could show her talent here and get rid of Isabel's aura of genius. Katrina's magic talent is actually very high, and she always works very hard in all aspects. If there is no Albert, Katrina is definitely the best in this class of freshmen, with talent. Willing to work hard enough to make the same class of students beyond the reach, even Hufflepuff's Cedric Diggory can't compare to her. However, there is no if. Albert was born, covering all the dazzling light of Katrina, and even Isabel, whom Katrina admired, the so-called Ravenclaw's most genius wizard in a century, is far behind. Originally, Katrina, who was very confident in herself, was instantly depressed. Compared with talent, the opponent is better than himself. Than hard work, the other party's efforts will not lose to oneself. What is even more depressing is that Katrina originally thought that even if she lost, she would not lose too much. After all, she had been studying hard and was ready to surpass the other party at any time. The actual situation is far beyond Katrina's imagination. When Albert Anderson was invited by Professor McGonagall to join the Transformation Club, Katrina comforted herself that she would definitely be invited to the Transformation Club next year. Later, Albert showed extraordinary flying talent on the Quidditch court and helped Greyfinder defeat Slytherin. Since Katrina is not good at sports, she just comforts herself, as long as she can beat her opponent in other aspects. However, Katrina found that Isabel was also very difficult to push from this person, thinking that the other party is very talented in polymorphism. At that time, Katrina was still reluctant to admit it, however, the latest paper on Transfiguration today gave her a heavy blow, confirming Albert's extraordinary talent in transformation. However, what about today? What happened to the ancient magic text? This is obviously an elective course for the third grade, Albert Anderson actually learned it by himself? Self-taught? This kind of show operation made Katrina stared at him, and from the change in Professor Broad's expression, it is not difficult to see that Albert's level of ancient magic text is so high that Katrina is simply unimaginable. Could it be that I really chose the wrong opponent? Katrina felt like this. Jing Guan is used to being crushed by her sister in many ways, but this girl from Ravenclaw does not intend to admit defeat. Yes, she hasn't lost yet. Since Albert is also very good at playing wizard chess, then... Play wizard chess with me. Katrina said suddenly. Witcher chess. Albert was surprised why the Ravenclaw girl next to her wanted to play chess with herself. Although everyone knew each other, they only knew each other. You and me. Albert asked pointing his finger at both sides. Yes, play chess to decide the outcome. Katrina needs to find some confidence from Albert, playing chess is a good way. Professor Browd said that Albert's wizard chess played well, and the wizard chess is one of the few things that Katrina can beat her sister Isabel. Albert suddenly felt inexplicable. Moreover, what makes him most inexplicable is the task of the panel. All round rolling. Someone regards you as a competitor, trying to challenge and defeat you, defeating the challenger in the field of wizard chess, and let her know that she will never be your opponent. Reward, 200 experience, Katrina McDougs favor plus 1, Isabel McDougs favor plus 5. The experience of this task is pitiful, and it's weird to increase the favorability. Why is Katrina's favorability less than Isabel? With only 200 experience, Albert actually doesn't have much interest. After all, there is already a rich experience package like Voldemort in the task panel. Of course, if he can get it, he won't let it go. Albert has done similar tasks before. 
play wizard chess. Albert deliberately showed a surprised expression, in the auditorium. Yes, in the auditorium, play three games. Katrina nodded. Well, if you want to, I don't care. Albert felt that the red-haired girl in front of him was very poor. After all, the name of the task is crushing all aspects, which shows that he is crushing the opponent almost all aspects. With an open-ended competitor, she chose the wrong target completely. By the way, is the note in your hand something to be handed over to Professor Broad? Albert asked suddenly. After all, Professor Broad has already had an appointment with him, and Katrina's appearance is obviously something else. Ah, I almost forgot about it. Katrina suddenly exclaimed when she found the notebook in her hand, this is the note that Professor Bathsida asked me to forward to Professor Broad. With that said, Katrina walked quickly towards the defense against the dark arts office. Albert looked at Katrina's back and shook his head. In fact, he couldn't understand Katrina's insistence, and the other party actually borrowed wizard chess from Professor Broad. In this way, the two competed in the hall of the auditorium, and they also attracted several people eating melons. Albert lost in the first set. Katrina's wizard chess was indeed very powerful, and Albert was caught off guard and was taken away by the opponent. However, Albert does not care too much. He does not care about winning or losing, but about enjoying the fun of playing chess. Even if he loses, the task will not fail suddenly, but the task cannot be completed temporarily. It is hanging on the task panel and can be done any time to finish. In the second game, Albert won, with some risks. He deliberately played fast chess to speed up Katrina's rhythm. Perhaps the easy victory in the first game made her misjudge, and Albert drilled a loophole. In the third game, the two sides tied. This time, Katrina obviously will not give the opponent a gap drill, and Albert chooses the pair at the beginning, and in the end, after the two sides exchanged their respective pieces, the latter ended in a tie. As for the fourth game, there is no fourth game. As initially said that there were only three games, Katrina wanted to tell the winner, but Albert directly stated that she won the fourth game. Although I don't know why Katrina wants to win herself www.mtlnovel.com, for Albert, if the two sides start the fourth game, she really might lose miserably, so she simply gave in. Katrina was very dissatisfied, but she finally chose to end in a draw, and said that she would take time to continue to play chess with Albert the next day. What's wrong with your sister? After watching Katrina's departure, Albert asked Isabel, who had been standing there since the beginning. Stressed, but she has a strong sense of victory. Isabel said calmly, probably knowing that I can't catch up with you in terms of magical attainments, so I want to rely on my strengths to defeat you. I think you must have put too much pressure on her. Albert murmured, there is a genius sister. Being her sister is very hard. Speaking of this, Albert suddenly fell silent because he thought of Nia. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Will Naya have similar pressure? Albert never really thought about this kind of problem. In the past, even if the people around him thought Albert was a genius, he never thought that he was really a genius. But after seeing Katrina's situation, he was a little worried about Nia's situation. If you change to yourself and grow up under the aura of other people's genius, you will probably be very depressed. The next day, Albert left the matter behind and Sheila returned and brought him the medicinal materials that he would use for the visualization potion. Before putting in the development potion configuration thoroughly, Albert habitually recorded the matter in his notebook, lest he would forget it in a hurry. The medicinal materials for the development potion have been gathered, but the allocation of the potion is still a problem. There are two suitable places to boil medicines, the abandoned classrooms, or the responsive room on the eighth floor of the castle. Undoubtedly, 
the latter is the best choice, no one will bother him to prepare potions. On the weekend, early in the morning, Albert had already got up, brought the medicinal materials and cauldron he had just purchased, and quietly came to the entrance of the house of requests. I need a room with potions, I need a room with potions, and I need a room with potions. After wandering around the entrance, the entrance of the Bing room was opened, and the layout inside was a bit like the potions classroom they often used. There is a cabinet with a suspected potion on the wall. Albert put his things on the table, walked quickly to the cabinet, and opened it. It was empty and there was nothing. However, there are many books on potions on the wooden bookshelf beside the wall. Albert raised his hand and stroked the thick spine of the book, returned to the table, opened simple potion, turned to the manufacturing method of the developing potion, and read it several times again before starting to cook it. The difficulty of developing the potion is not high, otherwise it will not be classified as a simple potion. Although the developing potion is a simple potion, the configuration still needs to waste a lot of Albert's time. It took several and a half hours just to process the materials. Albert carefully handled every step of the medicinal materials, and the result was not too bad. The developing potion was successful, but it was not as clear as the book said. Albert scooped up a spoon, put the developer potion into the test tube, and shook it slightly to observe whether the potion changed. Not clear enough, but barely pass. Albert put a label on the test tube, put it in the medicine box, and then began to observe his skill panel. Some changes occurred on it, and there were more developing potions. I don't know if it works. Albert murmured. He took a photo from his pocket dripped the developer on the photo, and then used a small brush to evenly brush the liquid on the photo, then lifted it up. The magic wand chants on the photo, develop and reveal the shape. No effect. Albert looked at the photo suspiciously, raising his eyebrows slightly, but soon he knew that he had succeeded. After the developing potion gradually dried out, the characters in the photo began to move. Seeing the people in the photo are laughing and playing, Albert knows that he has succeeded. He has never felt so happy. After Albert succeeded, he continued to create two magical photos. Then he nodded in satisfaction, then glanced at his task panel. The task of moving magic photo shows that it has been completed. In the completed task bar, there are other tasks that have not yet been received, such as the tasks he completed when he first entered school. Wizard blood is a good thing. It's a pity that the skill point is too bad, otherwise if the skill can be upgraded to level 4 or 5, his own magic power should become stronger. Albert chose to receive the reward for the moving magical photo immediately and then and then it was gone. There was no special feeling in completing the task. If you insist, it is excitement. Albert opened the skill panel and started looking for the alchemy he had just learned. In other words, there are really a lot of skills that I have now, and there are a lot of dense piles, and I waste a lot of time trying to find alchemy. Albert immediately used the experience pool to bring his skills to level 1. Then, sitting in the armchair, carefully savor the information brought after the addition. However, what puzzled Albert was that his knowledge of alchemy was not much different from what he had learned from books. But, Albert hesitated gritted his teeth and upgraded alchemy to level 2. 2000 experience is required from level 1 to level 2. This experience still hurts Albert, who has tens of thousands of experience. I hope it's worth the money, Albert muttered quietly. After alchemy rose to level 2, Albert realized a serious problem. My own alchemy theory is insufficient. That kind of feeling is really bad. It's like having mastered how to make alchemy items, but without design drawings. However, Albert still guessed the problem with his own protective bracelet. To some extent, creating a powerful alchemy prop usually requires casting a spell on the item. The Gublay Fairy Fire is the best example. When you use a fairly advanced magic to create magic items, its durability and protective effect will become stronger. Alchemy props have similar problems. If you use it in ordinary times, 
the consumption of magic power will be very fast, and your wooden bracelet will lose magic so quickly. In fact, it is related to this, which means that it reaches its limit. Items with protective magic are particularly obvious in this regard. The best solution is to let it take a sigh of relief and restore the magic power on the item, just like the magic items used in the game have a cooling time. Most defensive magic items belong to the consumption type. After the magic power on it gradually disappears, it will become an ordinary item. Albert took out a small notebook, recorded his feelings, and took time to improve the protective bracelet another day. However, now it's the alchemy theory that can't keep up. Albert murmured. It would be great if I could get on the line with Nico Mailer www.mtlnovel.com Nico Mailer can definitely help Albert fill this issue. As for the magic lamp. Albert was also a bit inspired, but he just recorded the inspiration hastily, and was not thinking about it. When configuring the developing potion, Albert was very concentrated and tired. As for whether these ideas will be overthrown in the future, Albert actually doesn't mind, his knowledge is still increasing, and improvements are slowly being made. Just like software, there will be version 1.0, version 1.1, or even later version 10.1. After finishing the remnants of the development potion, Albert came to the exit, took out the map of the living point from his pocket, and put his wand against the parchment and said, I solemnly swear that I did not do a good job. After confirming that there was no one at the entrance of the room of requests, Albert erased the traces on the map and quickly left the room of requests with the cauldron and medicine chest and returned to the Greyfinder lounge. Dear, click in, give a good comment. The higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Yes, this is a developing potion. During a rest time after a meal, Albert handed the glass bottle containing the developer potion to Shauna, do you know how to use the developer potion? I know how to use it, thank you. Shauna reached out to take the glass bottle and thanked Albert. But I'm curious, when did you make the developing potion? A few days ago. Albert did not hide it. I have used the photo, and the developer potion is indeed effective. Thank you. Shauna thanked Albert again. With Shauna's current potion level, it is completely unrealistic to make a developing potion by herself. If you want, you can only buy it yourself. However, even if Shauna had Kanan in her pocket, she didn't know where to buy the developing potion. To be honest, Shauna hasn't tried owl mail orders so far, and her impression of the magic world is still stuck in Diagon Alley and Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The entire magical world is too strange to the muggle wizards at Hogwarts. You're welcome. Albert didn't care too much about these things. He had already reserved some developing potions for himself, and the small bottle for Shauna was considered to be distributed to the other party. Albert, Albert. George and Fred hurriedly rushed into the auditorium and ran towards Albert. Aren't you writing homework on the history of magic in the library? Albert raised his head and looked at Brother Weasley suspiciously. Before he could say a few words, Albert was held up by the twins and pulled away from the hall of the auditorium. Lee Jordan, who followed the twins, smiled awkwardly at the others, helped to pack Albert's things, and quickly followed the three to leave, leaving students with curious faces. What's wrong with you? When the four came to a remote corner, Albert took the lead to break the silence. Look, what did we find in the library? The Weasley twins looked at each other and said in unison. What did you find? Albert asked very cooperatively. Punch. George took out a piece of parchment from his pocket with his own voice, and handed it to Albert. Albert took the parchment, scanned the information on it, his face twitched slightly. He had just been struck by the Greyfinder's secret treasure on the parchment. He turned the parchment over, and on the other side was a simple map with trees, number one, campfire, and a fork. Albert looked up at the three and asked, What the is this? 
Greyfinder's secret treasure. Lee Jordan said excitedly. What kind of treasure? Albert asked again. Greyfinder's secret treasure. Lee Jordan said seriously. Okay. Albert said irritably, I admit, this is really interesting, but, if this is taken seriously, it would be too stupid. We found this parchment in the middle of a book. Fred said. The mezzanine of that page is very secret, and we also discovered it by accident. George added. Occasion. Albert sneered at this. If he wanted to, he could create a hundred such accidents. So, are you going to hunt for treasure? Albert has already guessed the minds of the three. These guys want to hunt for treasure and take risks. Maybe they don't care if this so-called Greyfinder secret treasure is true. Of. They just want, adventure, treasure hunt? To some extent, adventurous and treasure hunting are actually very interesting, but, the problem is treasure. What if you finally find yourself tricked by someone as a monkey? I'm afraid it won't be so bad. Is this supposed to be put on purpose by someone? Albert looked at the strange picture and said angrily. And I don't think Greyfinder will put the secret treasure in the Forbidden Forest. Yes, the Forbidden Forest. The tree in the picture should refer to the Forbidden Forest next to Hogwarts. Sure enough, in the Forbidden Forest. The three said in unison. The tree should refer to the Forbidden Forest, the number one should refer to the unicorn corresponding to the ancient magic text number one and the bonfire refers to the human population, that is, the place with people. The only people in the Forbidden Forest can be called people. Horsemen, there is a fork. That should be where the treasure is. Albert saw through the map mark at a glance. Wow, you just cracked this map. Lee Jordan opened his mouth in shock. The secret treasure. The three looked at Albert. Maybe it's near the horse camp. Albert suddenly sneered. To be honest, even I don't believe what I just said. Isn't this just a prankster? Otherwise, the so-called Greyfinder's secret treasure should be hidden in Hogwarts College, not in the Forbidden Forest. This. The three of them were silent, and they had actually guessed at this point. What are you doing here? Filch had long been staring at the few people in the corner who were whispering, with an unfriendly tone. Nothing. Albert said lightly. If you don't have anything, don't just whisper here and get out of here. Filch drove away these four mysterious creatures like a fly. I'll say it again, don't believe this kind of ghost. Albert looked at the three of them. It's like you borrowed a book from the library someday, and then deliberately wrote a word in it, telling others that it is hidden there. What precious things! when the other party worked hard to find the so-called treasure, the result. The other party only found a few big dung bombs that you put in the box. The few people looked at each other, and they agreed with Albert's guess. Because several people had similar ideas at first, but after getting Albert's analysis, it is more likely that this is the true situation. Are you kidding me? There really is such a possibility. By the way, there's more. George raised his hand and scratched the back of his head. What's the matter? Albert asked. This parchment was originally hidden in the interlayer of a two-page book, and then, you should have guessed it. George showed a helpless wry smile. Don't you know how to use the repairing curse? Albert asked puzzled. Two-thirds of the first grade has passed. In the past six months, everyone has also learned a lot of spells, including repairing spells. That. George's expression was a bit embarrassed, and he pushed his head frustratedly and said, We can't use spells to repair that book www.mtlnovel.com Fred took out Yurik's biography from his backpack. It's actually a homework on the history of magic, and they all need to write a thesis with a medieval wizard. It's hidden, and we almost didn't even notice it. Albert turned over the page that had also been damaged by Fred, and the corners of his mouth twitched slightly. Put away the books first, and go back to the dormitory to study in the evening. Albert reminded, don't let other people notice what you did, 
if you let Mrs. Pins know about it. She will kill us. Why are we and not you? Fred asked angrily. Stupid, because we are twins. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Stop it. Lee Jordan interrupted the twins' frolic, turned his head and asked Albert, can it be fixed? It's hard to say, you have to try it before you know it. Albert put the Eurex biography into his backpack, looked at the twins who were still quarreling with each other, and reminded, if this book is repaired if it's not good, you don't have to go back. Why? George was shocked. Furthermore, for your behavior, if Mrs. Pins knows about it, you will definitely not be allowed to enter the library. Albert said grumpily. Borrow books in the library. Many of the homework assigned by Hogwarts professors require students to find materials in the library themselves. If they are prohibited from entering the library, the result is conceivable, and even the homework cannot be completed properly. By the way, your homework on the history of magic hasn't been finished yet. It will be turned in tomorrow. Albert reminded casually, don't forget about it. Ah. Don't mention it. It seemed that the three of them suddenly remembered this, and they uttered a sorrowful cry, and had to return to the library in a hurry to continue doing boring homework. Albert looked at the back of the three people leaving, and shook his head impenetrably. He glanced at the so-called treasure map in his hand, turned around and returned to Greyfinder's dormitory. It failed. The damage on the pages of Eurex biography has not been repaired by the repair curse. Albert thought his spell was invalid at first, but he tried other papers and found that he could still successfully repair the paper, but, why did he fail when he repaired this book? I really don't understand. Albert stared at the book in front of him and said in a low voice. He picked up the book and read it carefully, trying to find out what makes it unique. The biography of Yurik was written by Rudolfo Pittiman, this book Albert also read a while ago, Yurik was from Ravenclaw College, his behavior is very strange, in memory of him for this weird behavior, people posted his short biography on the chocolate frog picture. According to the description in the book, Yurik's own behavior is strange. Moreover, there was a time when Yurik tried to prove that the wicked bird's call is good for human health. He listened to the wicked bird's call for three months. As we all know, the wicked bird's chirping will make you hear it. People lose their minds. There is nothing special about this book, Albert still can't figure it out, why does the spell fail? He put the book on his cabinet, and suddenly remembered something, took out the parchment from his pocket, stared at it for a long time, and prepared to clip it back into the book. However, Albert paused with his hand, drew his wand from his pocket, touched the map lightly, and said, show your secret. Nothing happened? Well, I was really worried. Albert picked up the parchment, looked at the content on it, and fell into a brief silence. Sure enough, after staying with Fred for a long time, even I have become a little funny. Albert laughed at himself, stuffed the parchment back into the book, and turned to leave the dormitory. He didn't know that when he first left, the parchment that was tucked back into the book had undergone some subtle changes. As soon as he walked into the common room, Albert found someone beckoning to him. Anderson. It was a big girl who stopped him, who stood in front of Albert with great momentum. Something. Albert is already very tall among children of the same age, but compared to the girl in front of him, he is half a head. It's really boring, I've been looking for you for a long time. The girl seemed to say in a mild tone, Here, your letter. Believe. Albert looked puzzled, but still took the note that the other party handed over, and did not forget to say thank you. Professor Browd asked me to tell you that if you are free, you'd better go to his office by eight o'clock in the evening. Oh, I see, please have sweets. 
Albert casually took out a few candies from his pocket and handed them to the other party. The girl was looking at Albert curiously, as if trying to see something. What's wrong? Albert also noticed the other's scrutiny gaze, and frowned slightly. I like the taste of chocolate. The other party did not reject Albert's candy, peeled one and threw it in his mouth. Everyone says you are a genius, lucky Albert. Albert had just prepared to open the note with his hand, and looked up at her in consternation. It's not a genius, I just worked a little bit harder than the others. Albert raised his hand and compared his thumb with his index finger. Haha, you are so funny. The girl reached out and patted Albert on the shoulder, go on, I must suppress Isabel McDugger. Albert grinned in pain, only to feel that his shoulder was almost dislocated. Thank you for the candy, it's delicious. After she said that, she turned and left. Why, you hooked up with Crag. Albert, who was rubbing his shoulders, suddenly heard a sound in his ear, and violent batter Irene appeared behind him without warning. Crag. Albert was taken aback when he heard the name, and then he realized what was going on and explained, she sent me a letter, and Professor Broad seems to be looking for me for something. Albert opened the note and the content was similar to what Crag said. He took out his pocket watch and checked the time. Albert said hello to Irene and left in a hurry. Professor Browder asked him what's wrong. Albert was puzzled, but he was still going to the defense against the dark arts office to see what was going on. A few minutes later, in front of the dark arts defense office, Albert took a deep breath and raised his hand to knock on the wooden door. Come in. The one who opened the door was a middle-aged wizard in his fifties, with glasses, a little messy red hair, and a gentle smile on his face. Albert was stunned. He looked over the middle-aged wizard's body and landed in the office, but he didn't see the figure of Professor Broad, so he asked suspiciously, where is Professor Broad? He just went to the library www.mtlnovel.com and will be back soon. The middle-aged wizard said with a smile, Broad told me that if you come, let you go in. He will soon will be back. Professor Browder is looking for something to do with me. Albert secretly looked at the wizard in front of him, and glanced over the messy parchment on the table. Yes, it has something to do with ancient magic texts. Broad thinks you can provide us with some help. The middle-aged wizard sat on the sofa opposite Albert, I have seen those ancient magic texts you translated. Honestly, it was amazing. There was a moment of astonishment on Albert's face, he had never thought about it. By the way, I haven't introduced myself yet. My name is Mog, Mog McDug. The middle-aged wizard suddenly introduced himself, please give me your advice. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Albert was stunned. Of course he knew who Mog McDug was. That was Bud Broad's friend a famous contemporary master of magic, and it is said to be named after the author of Theory of Magic, Adby Woflin. Just. How could the Mog McDo in front of me be different from what I imagined? I should say. What's the matter? Mog McDo noticed the moment of astonishment on Albert's face, and asked suspiciously, is there anything on my face? I thought, you would be younger. Albert hesitated but couldn't hold back the doubts in his heart. Sorry. I was the one who made a mistake. Young, haha, don't have to apologize, I'm indeed not young anymore. McDug didn't mind Albert's gaff at all. He smiled and pointed to the sofa inside, come in, bud should be soon came back. Albert sat down opposite McDugger, but was attracted by the parchment on the table, all of which were written in rune. It seems that Bud is right. You do have high attainments in this area. McDug took a sip of the black tea, and looked at Albert Feature and nodded, seemingly satisfied. Albert also noticed McDug's gentle smile, what should I say? 
the look in the other person's eyes is very special, and familiar. I thought Isabel's talent was good enough, McDoug said softly, she is one of the best children I have ever seen. Isabel. Albert cast a searching look at the middle-aged man in front of him. My distant niece. McDoug nodded toward the parchment full of ancient magic texts, and asked Albert with a smile, I and Bud are preparing to write a book on ancient magic texts. You are interested in participating. Me. Albert felt that he heard a ridiculous thing that the other party would invite a child to write a book together. It's you who want to write, not us. Professor Browg pushed the door and walked in, heading towards Albert, you came earlier than I thought. What would you like to drink? Milk tea. Albert froze for a moment, and replied instinctively. Professor Broad waved his magic wand lightly, and a cup of scented milk tea appeared out of thin air in front of Albert. I can see that you have high attainments in ancient magic texts, so I recommend you to Mog. Of course, the main work of writing books is Mog's, and we are just helping him as thugs. It's incredible, Albert said honestly. Me too. Albert asked tentatively. If you say it, it will probably become the funniest joke of the century. Don't say that, you are special, more dazzling than Isabel. McDoug explained, I think you might be useful, don't you mind? Do not mind. Of course, I think you can definitely learn a lot in this process. McDoug smiled and said, Get to know again, Mog McDoug. Albert Anderson, it's nice to meet you, Mr. Mog McDoug. Albert stretched out his hand and shook the opponent. Although it feels very unreality, he seems to know an incredible guy. Do you plan to write a textbook, or? No, it's a more advanced book. It is not for students to read as material, but involves more profound things in the ancient rune studies. McDougar explained, perhaps, you haven't touched that domain, but the ancient magic text does contain special power, some ancient spells will use it. If Dumbledore is willing to help, our progress will be much faster. Now, there are very few people who really know how to use ancient magic texts. Professor Browder did not hesitate to praise his words, Mog is an expert in this field. No, no, bud, at least there is one in front of my eyes. McDoug smiled and moved towards Albert's wooden bracelet, and nodded slightly, the workmanship is a bit rough, but it is undeniable that this is prototype. Would you mind lending me a look at your results? Hey. Albert realized what the result was, took off the wooden bracelet and handed it to McDoug. If it were me, I would suggest that you use you wood to make it. Although the tree has a special effect, it can't perfectly stimulate the power of runes. McDoug's fingers flicked over the wooden bracelet. Rune Rune looked at Albert with interest and asked, It's a pity that you haven't really mastered the way to use it. Albert's eyes lit up and he stared at Mog McDoug. He felt that his doubts about the runes might be solved by the opponent. Don't worry, you are already ahead of many people in this area, at least Bud doesn't understand these things. McDoug turned his head to look at his friend and said softly, I'm not you and I haven't done research in this area. Professor Browder didn't care about his friend's jokes at all. You are far behind me in practice. Each has its own strengths. McDoug said without any embarrassment on his face, looking at the parchment on the table, well, I think we should focus on work. Can I ask? Albert picked up a piece of parchment and asked, where did you get these things, I said, these runes above. This is one of Ravenclaw's legacy. Professor Browder didn't care how shocking this was, so he said it directly. Legacy. Albert was surprised, but he calmed down quickly. Yes, legacy, Ravenclaw's wisdom. McDoug said, it's amazing. I'm going to summarize it and write it into a book so that others can interpret this knowledge. One day people will realize the magical power contained in ancient magic text www.mtlnovel.com I have never seen any magical power in these texts. Professor Broad reminded aloud. Because you don't know enough about runes. 
McDoug pointed out the problem unceremoniously, OK, let's get started. He waved his magic wand, and the parchment and quill appeared out of thin air, preparing to record. This is a tedious job. Albert can hardly believe that he was actually involved. When he came out of Professor Broad's office, he was in a trance, and there was still a buzzing in his head. I have experienced, although I understand, but the brain can't handle this chaotic knowledge well for a while. Albert didn't even realize when he returned to the Greyfinder Lounge, when he closed his eyes and rested, and his whole brain kept recalling the series of runes and the words MacDoug said, until he didn't know. I fell asleep suddenly. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Since getting to know McDoug, Albert can't believe that his campus life has changed drastically. Excavating the secret of the magic text too deeply has caused a lot of burden on Albert's brain. The direct manifestation is that Albert's spirit has been a little sluggish during the recent period. However, this kind of high-load situation still has some advantages. The experience of Albert's magic writing skills has increased rapidly at an incredible speed, and it has soared by nearly 1,000 points in less than half a month. The most important thing is that Albert felt that he was about to get in touch with what he wanted. McDoug's words really used ancient magic texts. If you upgrade the magic text skill to level 3, you may be able to master that part of the knowledge in a short time, but Albert still prefers to spend more time in this area, even if the skill is directly upgraded to level 3. It still takes a long time to digest. Moreover, Using too much experience at one time to upgrade the skill level is a big burden for the experience pool, and Albert will not risk doing this. For him, upgrading a skill directly to level 2 is a range that is currently acceptable, and it must be a practical skill to do so. The experience in the experience pool is not only reserved for upgrading the economy and finance, but also Albert's biggest backhand and guarantee. It is undoubtedly not a good thing if you only go out and not in. What's wrong with you lately, I feel very tired. George said. It's okay, it's just a bit too much. Excuse me, push me the marmalade over there. Albert is putting two sausages, a fried egg, and half a diced tomato on his plate. Here. George gave Albert a suspicious look, and didn't ask any more. After receiving the marmalade that George handed over, Albert spread a thick layer on the slice of bread put it in his mouth and took a big bite, casually took out the diary from his pocket, and began to read the things he had recorded before. See if anything has been forgotten. Albert's memory is very strong, yes, but after he takes things seriously, he tends to forget other things. Looking at your notebook again. Fred said with a smile, by the way, there is an apparition class in the afternoon. Are you going to see it? I remember the last time in the apparition class, one of Hufflepuff's boys was dismembered. Lee Jordan smiled and talked about the fun of the apparition class. It's a split, not a corpse. Angelina on the opposite side glanced at Lee Jordan in disgust and corrected, don't use this terrible word in the wrong place. I remember that person was called Feige. Lee Jordan said. It's Figo. Albert bit the fried egg weakly correcting the opponent's mistake. How do you know? Lee Jordan asked unconvincedly, I remember. Last time, I met a Hufflepuff friend in the library, cough cough. Albert poured a gulp of pumpkin juice into his mouth, glanced at the fried egg on the fork, and temporarily removed it. Set aside, ready to eat later. Do you still have Hufflepuff friends? Alia is curious that Albert still knows Hufflepuff's students. This guy has a lot of friends. Who doesn't have many friends? Albert disagrees. I remember, the fierce man who punched Prefect Ravenclaw last time, he seemed to be called. It's Truman. Fred started to remind. I found your memory is really bad. Who would memorize these things specially? 
Lee Jordan defended. Speaking of Truman, the Weasley brothers suddenly looked at Albert together and asked in a low voice, Last time, did you give Truman an idea for that matter? Albert didn't answer, pretending he didn't hear him, and continued to flip through the notebook, his gaze fell on a record, and he raised his head to look at George and asked, I can't fix the last Eurex biography. However, it seems that you took the book away, have you repaired it and returned it? It was not repaired, but it has been returned. Mrs. Pins did not notice. George's face was a little unnatural. At that time, we made a bold decision. Fred explained, we tore the page completely. As long as we don't turn to that page, we won't be discovered. Your luck is good. Albert looked speechless. He thought that the twins would repair the book and return it back. He didn't expect it to be like this, as long as Mrs. Pins didn't find it. I don't know which hapless guy will take the blame for you. Ahem, that has nothing to do with us. The twins' expressions were a bit awkward. George quickly changed the subject, By the way, are you going to see the apparition class in the afternoon? Go, it's not bad to listen to a class, you can always learn something. Albert said, he wanted to see if he could make his skill list appear in apparition in this way. Basically, Every time Wakey Cross comes to Hogwarts to teach the Phantom Manifestation class, Albert will watch it and record some knowledge that needs to be mastered by the way. There are three DS mentioned by Cross in his small book. It would be great if you could try it yourself. Unfortunately, first-year students cannot register, otherwise they can practice Phantom Manifestation under the guidance of someone which will undoubtedly greatly improve the safety and learning efficiency of Phantom Manifestation. What are you thinking about? Shauna interrupted. It is probably depressed again why students in the lower grades can't sign up for the Phantom Manifestation class. George gave me an expression that I had already seen through Albert. This kind of opportunity is rare. However, apparition is too difficult for the students in the lower grades. We don't have enough magic power to support ourselves to complete this magic. Although Albert said so, it is actually very difficult. Depressed, he is different from other people, there is no such trouble, as long as he can master the skills, he can immediately master the phantom manifestation through experience at any time. You can use the phantom spell. Fred whispered. Don't be silly, do you think that stuff can fill Professor McGonagall? Albert rolled his eyes at Fred. Even if you learn it, you can't use it. Magic is not allowed during summer vacation. George said seriously. Why? Shauna asked puzzled. Anyway, this is what the Ministry of Magic stipulates. It is said that you will be severely warned the first time, and you may be expelled the second time. Even if you are not expelled by chance, you will be fined a lot of gallon. George is serious. Reminded. How do you know? Shauna asked with a frown. I used it at home during the Christmas holidays without any warning. That's because you haven't received the official notice. Percy sat next to George and answered Shauna's question for him. After receiving an official notification from the Ministry of Magic during the summer vacation, you can't use it unless you become an adult at the age of 17. As far as I know, you won't be warned if you use magic in an area with dense wizards like Diagon Alley. It should be fine for a pure-blood wizard to use it at home. Albert whispered, the Ministry of Magic can't figure out who it is. In use. How do you know? Shauna stared at Albert curiously, while Percy was a little embarrassed next to her. Since the hapless Truman was almost expelled for this incident. Albert curled his lips in disdain, I paid special attention to this question and later asked some senior students www.mtlnovel.com I learned that the Ministry of Magic uses something called Trace Silk to locate and monitor our surroundings. As long as you use magic in the Muggle area, the Ministry of Magic can send you warning letters. If you use magic in Diagon Alley or a place where a wizard lives, the Ministry of Magic can't figure out who used it. Shauna asked tentatively. Yes, that's it. Albert headed. It's too unfair, 
Shauna said angrily. The wizard family needs to rely on the conscious supervision of the family. Percy explained with a dry cough. If it is really useful, why should the Ministry of Magic enact so many laws? Shauna sneered. I like what you said. Albert laughed uncontrollably. How philosophical, don't you think? Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Just after breakfast, Albert and the others chatted for a while in the auditorium hall. Fred, George and Lee Jordan were going to the library. I don't know when you two became so hard-working. Percy asked with a slightly raised eyebrow, staring at her brothers. We have always been diligent. Fred couldn't help protesting. We are going to check something. Albert is going together. George looked at Albert subconsciously. Have you forgotten? Albert has an appointment with Professor Broad. Lee Jordan rolled his eyes at the two and said sarcastically, You two are ashamed to say that I have a bad memory. We were wrong. The twins said in unison. Hey, it's good to know that you are wrong. Lee Jordan raised his nose triumphantly, and soon got into trouble with the twins again. There will be Quidditch training in the afternoon, don't forget. Angelina reminded the twins, then turned to look at Albert and asked, What about you? I'm afraid not. Albert shook his head. Where are you going to Professor Broad? Alia asked curiously. As far as she knows, Albert has been going to Professor Broad in the past few weeks and doesn't know what to do. Well, it's a secret, oh. Albert blinked at several people. Are you familiar with Professor Broad? Percy looked at Albert a little surprised. As far as I know, that professor is quite an amazing person. I don't know. Albert took out his pocket watch, looked at the time, and said, OK, I have to go first. This guy is always mysterious and doesn't know what he is doing. Angelina murmured, he has been out of Quidditch training several times. Charlie has been unhappy, you know, since ABB he has been the next seeker appointed by Charlie even after he caught the snitch. Accelerated. Shauna didn't understand what this meant. Charlie will soon graduate. The next Quidditch captain will be Wood. Charlie originally planned to let Albert stay in the pursuit position for a while. However, he himself is not too keen on Quidditch. To be honest, Angelina envied Albert's good luck. He has a lot of things, don't forget that there is also a transformation club. Shauna reminded. At this time, a senior man walked towards this side, and his voice soon rang in everyone's ears, Where is Anderson, who of you saw him? Baker, what are you looking for Anderson for? Whether it is Angelina, Alia, or Sana, they can hear the respect in Percy's voice. I heard that Anderson is eating here. Baker looked helpless. He hasn't been to the Transformation Club for a long time. I'm here to ask him what's going on. Albert has just left, and Professor Broad is looking for something to do with him. Shauna explained. Professor Broad. Baker frowned and turned his head to Shauna, you must tell him so that he should not forget to hand in the paper for the Transformation Club. That's it, I'm leaving. Who is he? Angelina asked curiously. You don't even know Baker. He is the president of the Greyfinder Student Union. It is said that he has published an article on Transfiguration Today and won the Transfiguration Today Award for the most potential newcomer. Baker is Percy's benchmark, just like his brother Bill, but now the president of the student council is more dazzling than his brother Bill. I think I have seen Albert in a few years. Alia said suddenly. I feel that way too. Shauna agreed with Alia's point of view. At this moment, Albert who was being talked about, was standing at the door of the Defense Against the Dark Arts office on the second floor. However, he was surprised that he would actually meet an acquaintance here Isabel of Ravenclaw. Then. A paper. 
Albert took out his own small notebook and found that there was no relevant record on it. You were absent last week. Isabel reminded. Oh, when will it be handed in? The deformation club at night. It's too late. Albert's face was speechless. If he advances earlier, he still has time to write, but now, he can't keep up. What you're going to write now? Isabel looked at Albert suspiciously, and asked curiously, By the way, you have something to do with Professor Broad. Well, something is wrong. Albert raised his hand and knocked on the office door. It's earlier than I expected. Professor Browder greeted Albert with a smile. The gentle smile on his face made Isabel, who was standing next to Albert, stunned and suspicious. Look at Albert. Isabel come in too. The office of the defense against the dark arts is a mess. The tables are full of books and parchment. Not to mention, even the walls are plastered with all kinds of parchments. These are recent works by Albert. Research results. What's going on? Isabel stared at the defense against the dark arts office in front of him. He couldn't believe his eyes. Is this the defense against the dark arts office? In Isabel's memory, Professor Browder's office is a very warm and comfortable place. This is like studying what a madman looks like. Nothing, please send these books to Mrs. Pins, and borrow the books on the note by the way. Professor Broad pointed to the books on the parchment and told Isabel said. Then he took another roll of parchment from the desk and handed it to Albert. Mog asked me to give this to you. He will come over later. You can take a look first. Is this the finished product? Albert took the parchment, scanned the contents and asked. No, it's a semi-finished product. He only completed one-third of it. Professor Broad asked, what do you want to drink? Milk tea bar, I just finished breakfast soon. Albert sat on the sofa and began to flip through the parchment handed by Professor Broad, nodding his head, it's faster than expected. He was a little surprised, but what was even more surprised was Isabel, who was just about to leave. This genius was trying to figure out what was going on. Uncle Mog is coming to school. Isabel was very surprised by the news. In her memory, Uncle Mog is a busy person. Mog is writing a book, Albert and I are laying hands on him, Professor Broad explained casually, you can come over and help a little later. I remember you are also starting to get in touch with ancient magic texts. It's very helpful to improve your ancient magic text. Oh. Isabel gave Albert a deep look, and left with the book www.mtlnovel.com How about? Professor Broad asked. I don't think many can understand. Albert flipped through a few pages, and finally came to this conclusion, this is not a book written for ordinary people. There is no profound knowledge of ancient magic, even if you know every it's also difficult to understand the meaning of a word. You know, Albert himself is a participant in books. In the recent period, the level of ancient magic texts has improved a lot, and it feels a bit difficult to read, let alone other people. What is the significance of such a book? As if he had guessed Albert's thoughts, Professor Browder smiled and said, Actually, I don't understand this book. In Mog's words, it is used to elevate the level of the entire ancient magic text. It doesn't matter if people don't understand, there will always be someone who can understand. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, Data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. I can't understand it at all. Isabel had just taken the parchment from Albert's hand, and just glanced at the contents, and found that he couldn't understand it at all. Even if Isabel had already been exposed to ancient magic texts, he was far ahead of other students in the same class. However, this genius which reluctantly discovered that she couldn't even gnaw on the content on the parchment without using the magic dictionary, let alone understand it. Can the guy in front of me really understand? Isabel is skeptical. After all, 
Albert's age is there, even if it is exaggerated, there is a limit to me. It's just that Albert's appearance doesn't seem to be pretending at all. Even Professor Broad agrees with him. The previous remarks show that Albert's accomplishments in ancient magic texts are very high, so high that they completely exceed hers. Imagined. Right now, that guy actually took a quill pen and began to make changes on Uncle Mog's parchment, adding his own views and opinions in certain aspects, and occasionally discussing a certain issue with Professor Broad, speaking from his mouth the words that came out were also in ancient magic words, and there was no need for a magic words sound table or magic dictionary. What's the matter with this guy? Isabel is really confused. She can't understand how Albert has mastered the ancient magic in a short time. It is really strange. The silent genius girl was sinking into deep self-doubt, a flame suddenly rose from the fireplace in the office, attracting the attention of several people. Sorry, I'm late, I never thought that something happened on Wesson Gamow. Mog McDug walked out of the fire, and he raised his hand to wipe the ashes from his robe, and said to Professor Broad, Bad, you are absent, haven't you been notified? Suddenly received it in the morning. However, it came very suddenly, so I pretended that I didn't receive it. It's not a big deal anyway. Professor Broad curled his lips, they didn't notify in advance, and I couldn't spare time to participate. That's a good excuse. McDug nodded, as if considering whether he could use this excuse in the future. What's the final result? Professor Broad asked. What else, find a large sum of money, and went to jail again. McDug said disapprovingly. They broke her wand again and went to jail for ten years. Ten years? I thought it would be a prison for life. This is not the first time Carlotta Pinkston uses magic at will in front of muggles in public. Professor Broad reminded, I remember last time, her wand was broken. Carota Pinkston found someone to get another wand. Now, the Ministry of Magic has announced that Carlotta is deprived of the right to use the wand. McDugger explained, everyone has unanimously decided if Carlotta is and if she continues to violate the confidentiality law, she will be given a permanent Azkaban bed. When Albert heard this, he couldn't help but curled his lips and asked, does the Ministry of Magic often break other people's wands? I mean when the secrecy laws are violated. Professor Broad and McDow looked at each other and fell into a brief silence. Finally, Mog answered Albert's question, normally, no, at most a fine. What about the reasonable restraint of minor wizards? Albert asked again. The third paragraph of the Reasonable Restraint of Underage Wizards Act states that it is a crime to deliberately and knowingly use magic in front of muggles in muggle settlements. McDugger shrugged towards Albert. Shrugging his shoulders, in fact, deliberately and knowingly committed here means that you have been warned by a letter once. If it is not too serious, the offender usually only needs to go to the director of the office for prohibition of abuse of magic for an interview. Usually under the circumstances, it will not be too serious, and you will be fined at most. Of course, if you have a criminal record and you are still in bad condition, you may be out of luck. What about muggle wizards? Albert asked again, if I violate the reasonable restraint of Minor Wizards Act twice in a row, is it possible to be expelled from school? Why do you ask? McDug raised his eyebrows slightly. It's just prevention. Someday I really break the law, so I can find a loophole. After all, my family is a lawyer. Oh, you may not know what a lawyer is it's someone who defends people in court. Albert didn't say indifferently why he wanted to understand this. You don't seem to have a good feeling for the Ministry of Magic. Isabel was speechless for a while. She realized that the person in front of him would not be a safe fellow, and he was about to start drilling the loopholes in the Ministry of Magic's laws. Before school started, I encountered some bad things. Albert didn't say Truman's incident. It has something to do with this. Yes. May be expelled. Professor Broad answered Albert's question. To some extent, 
the person who made the decision is the director of the Office of Prohibition of Abuse of Magic. If they do, they need to go. Process to ensure. If you really have some small trouble someday, I will help you settle it, provided that you help me complete this book. McDug raised his hand to interrupt Professor Broad, and said with a smile, Ministry of Magic the situation is indeed as you think, but the reasonable restraint of Minor Wizards Act is actually more aimed at wizards living in Muggle residential areas. You also know that young children are often not well restrained. I, especially after possessing magic, can't help but want to try, so I need the reasonable restraint of underage wizards. When you are an adult and enter the magic world, you will find that wizards rarely deal with muggles, even Weasley who likes muggles. McDug thought for a while and said. So, it's still a matter of connections and power. Albert said meaningfully. Yes, if you encounter some small things, if you have enough connections and power, there will be no trouble at all, and you will be fined at most. Mog talked about this kind of thing in front of Albert without shy. Uncle Mog. Isabel frowned and reminded aloud. This is indeed true. It is important to have power in the magic world. Mog blinked and said, Of course, if you know the Minister of Magic and have a good relationship with him, as long as it is not a serious illegal act, he will open one eye and close one eye. Do you want to? Actually www.mtlnovel.com I am very interested in apparition. Albert said without evasiveness, if you can learn, you won't have to worry about where to go. I suggest you write to the Cavalier bus and let it drop by to pick you up. McDugger said with a smile, the way to board the Cavalier bus is to stretch your magic wand in the air. No, no, Mog, I think Albert just wanted, to save trouble. Professor Broad saw through Albert's intentions at a glance and reminded, apparition is too difficult for you now. It's a bit. Okay. I think we should bring the topic back again. McDug waved his wand, and a stack of parchment appeared out of thin air and landed on the table in front of the two. This is the second manuscript. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, Data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. In McDoug's original plan, the book was composed of three parts, and the parchment he just took out was the second manuscript. Albert took out a few sheets from the pile of parchment and began to read it carefully. By the way, he used a quill to help correct the loopholes in his speech, and occasionally talked to the two about possible problems in the article. Isabel is undoubtedly the most depressed person here, because she can't understand it at all, and can't even insert a few people talk about it. I can only stay by and help organize some things, or flip through the parchment and try to interpret the contents. How did this guy learn ancient magic texts? Isabel muttered softly. Well, I am better at reading and reading than Mog. Professor Browder nodded, according to his current level, in a few years, he will probably surpass 99% of the wizards in ancient magic texts. Later, I will recommend him to publish a book on ancient magic texts. Isabel opened his mouth and swallowed everything he had just wanted to say. Don't compare with him. Sometimes there are such geniuses. It's really unbelievable. McDugger nodded and said, Did you say Mr. Albert? Writing a book? When I said after I graduated from Hogwarts, I have no such consideration for the time being. Although Albert said that, he was really seriously considering whether to write a quick start book. There are already books like A Simple Introduction to Ancient Magic Texts, but this book is not easy for Albert after reading it. I can make a quick start version of the Ancient Magic Text according to the knowledge gained when upgrading the Ancient Magic Text, just like Miranda's standard spell. When Isabel heard the words, the muscles on his face twitched. In fact, she wanted to say that Albert was bragging, but considering the other party's accomplishments in Mauen, it was really possible to do this. Everyone was busy until the afternoon, lunch was settled in the office, 
and the house elves brought a sumptuous lunch. After eating, they sat on the sofa and chatted about the contents of the manuscript. Now that Albert has understood MacDoug's thoughts, this guy is going to get a book that is difficult for others to understand, and then write a few complete explanations to help everyone interpret the book. As for Isabel, the guy sneaked away after lunch, and thanks to her persistence for so long, she found an excuse to leave. After all, the three people in the office didn't intend to speak well, and directly used the ancient magic texts to communicate, which made Isabel's face bewildered and could not understand what they were talking about. Isabel is gone. Professor Broad said suddenly, I have to hold on longer than I expected. Albert expressed that he did not want to speak, and continued to bury his head in helping McDuggar find questions. If she wants to understand or even participate in it, she definitely needs to improve the level of ancient magic texts. McDoug said softly, Isabel really needs some stimulation. Excitement. Albert's mouth twitched slightly, and he changed the subject. I don't think I can touch the hurdle. I always feel that something is short, but I'm not sure what's wrong. Don't worry, when we finish writing this book, I believe you will be able to grasp its secrets. McDougal assured. I hope so. Albert sighed lightly and took out his pocket watch to check the time. It was almost 3.30 in the afternoon. I'll go first, and there will be a phantom manifestation class later. I think you are wasting time. Professor Broad shook his head. Apparition is too early for you now. Listen more, learn more, it's always useful. When Albert was about to leave, McDoug stopped him. What's the matter, Mr. McDoug? Albert stopped and asked, turning his head. I saw that McDoug put a small black notebook into Albert's hand and whispered, I believe this notebook will help you. Thank you. Albert slipped the notes into his pocket and turned to leave the office. You are very optimistic about him. Professor Broad smiled and looked at his old friend. Is it more suitable than expected? It's really an unexpected surprise. He has talent and a good personality. McDuggar nodded. However, it's too early to say this. Other things, wait until adulthood. Albert was ignorant of the brief conversation between the two. He was on his way to the auditorium. When he arrived, Tkross was waving his wand to conjure an old-fashioned wooden circle for each student. Albert leaned to the corner quietly, without disturbing the others, and listened quietly to the other person's lecture. The most important thing when apparition is to remember the three Ds. Tkross once again emphasized the importance of goals, determination, and calmness. He always mentioned them every time before starting to practice. Now, please focus on your goals. Determined to occupy the space you think. Albert murmured, let yourself into the void state, and move calmly. Albert always wanted to try it on his own. Even if he was split, it didn't matter. At most, he would be scolded by Professor McGonagall, and a few points would be deducted. Because of the previous experience, everyone stared at the wooden hoop, and then hurriedly followed Tkross's request. One, two, three. The phantom pop sounded in the hall. Only a few succeeded, and the landing position was not accurate enough, and some things on the body were missing, such as a nail or a few hairs. Of course, more people just turned and fell to the ground, making the other audience laugh. There is also a split hapless. A Hufflepuff boy was held in the air, and the lower half of his body appeared within a few feet in front of Albert. The deans immediately gathered around him, there was a loud bang, and after a burst of purple smoke dissipated, the hapless body was pressed again. Just as the deans and others focused their attention on the Hufflepuff students, Albert also began to apparate, and his goal was an empty seat a few meters away. Without spinning, Albert focused his attention on the target, imagined himself appearing at the target, and let himself into the void state. There were no cracks, Albert stayed quietly, knowing he had failed. However, you you read www.uugonshu.com Albert did not care much because he also knew that failure is a normal thing, no one can succeed at once. 
Without the help of the panel, he naturally didn't expect this. Secretly glanced at the panel skills, but still did not find the apparition, which made Albert a little depressed, although this was expected by him. By the way, this might be possible. Albert suddenly remembered a very bold idea. If he can experience the apparition for himself, maybe a panel skill will appear. It's worth a try, but I don't know who is willing to help me. Albert whispered, although the chances are not great, he is still ready to try. He immediately turned and walked towards the defense against the dark arts office. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. I think you guys have always been mysterious lately. As soon as Albert entered the dormitory, he noticed that the three Fred, who was still talking in a low voice, suddenly stopped talking, obviously there was something he didn't want him to know. You guy are ashamed to say that we are mysterious. George suppressed his desire to complain and rolled his eyes at Albert. Yes, yes. Fred nodded in agreement. What are you doing with Professor Broad? Lee Jordan asked rhetorically, this is an obvious intention to change the subject. Help Professor Broad to sort out some documents. As you all know, my ancient magic text is good. Albert didn't lie, just made his words more vague. Believe you to blame. Fred pouted. What were you talking about just now? Albert asked back. You guess. Aren't you going to find Greyfinder's secret treasure? Albert looked at a few people suspiciously, he didn't forget the Greyfinder treasure map. Well, do you want to come together? Lee Jordan asked. You traitor. Fred waved his small fist at Lee Jordan dissatisfied. With Albert's help, our chances of success will be higher. The Forbidden Forest is not safe. Lee Jordan disagreed with the two people's views. In his opinion, Albert was more reliable than the twins. Forget it. Albert shook his head and refused. I think you still don't go into the woods. Hagrid looks very angry and is careful to be confined. I said he was definitely not interested. George murmured. When entering the woods, as long as Hagrid doesn't find it. I knew you would say this a long time ago, but don't go too deep. It is said that there is an eight-eyed giant spider breeding farm in the Forbidden Forest, and you have carefully fed the eight-eyed giant spider. Albert was not surprised at all, and casually reminded him. If you don't speak, no one thinks you are dumb. Fred complained dissatisfiedly, and the guy said bad things accurately. Okay. Albert took out McDoug's notes from his pocket and began to read them. What is this? George asked, approaching. Professor Browder's friends borrowed my notes about ancient magic texts. Albert turned a few pages and found that there was a letter written by Professor Browder to McDougar. Have you met Professor Broad before? It feels like the defense against the dark arts professor treated you well. Lee Jordan was a little jealous. Our relationship is really good. No, no, it's scary, George corrected. Oh. Albert said that he knew. However, Albert believes that the relationship between the two parties depends on the level of knowledge exchange. Two people who are also good at ancient magic texts communicate with each other, and the other, as an older senior, gives him some kind help to his younger junior. Like Professor McGonagall said, keep friendly correspondence with those famous wizards, and he and Professor Broad just go further. After all, there is a relationship between professors and students on both sides. From this notebook, it is not difficult to see that the relationship between Professor Browder and McDoug is similar to his own situation. The ancient magic text discussed in the correspondence, or the related content left by the correspondence with other wizards, are all in the notebook. The content of this part is not too difficult for Albert, but it is very novel, allowing him to broaden his horizons. It's probably been several years since the second half of the notebook, 
and McDoug had already graduated from Hogwarts. McDo recorded on it that he was suddenly told to obtain a special identity, to gain access to a pile of ancient documents, and to start learning some ancient spells. Special Identity Albert continued to look down. McDoug has already begun to master how to use ancient magic texts to recite spells. I can feel it's special. McDoug left such a sentence in his notebook. It's late, are you still up? Fred muttered in confusion, be careful not to get up tomorrow. I'm asleep too, good night. Albert covered a yawn, turned off the light, and fell asleep in the bed. The next day, when Albert woke up, it was already ten in the morning. Everyone else in the dormitory went out. Albert stretched his waist, leaned on the pillow, picked up the notebook he hadn't finished reading last night and continued reading. McDoug began to come into contact with some ancient magic, these spells are very powerful, but they are not too subtle. There was the name of the spell on the notebook, but there were no spells and gestures left, which made Albert a little disappointed. The next few pages are all about this aspect, as well as McDoug's speculation on ancient magic texts. From the records, it is not difficult to see McDoug's research and exploration of the special features of ancient magic texts but nothing has been gained. Albert noticed one thing, mentioned in the letter exchange between McDoug and Dumbledore, they were discussing the topic of Dumbledore asking the patron saint to speak. Unfortunately, there is no following, and the following text records do not mention this matter again. Moreover, this notebook is over here, there is no following, it should be said that there may be another one. Can I feel it's special? Albert got up quickly and headed to Professor Broad's office. McDoug did come, but he looked a little tired. Have you finished reading? McDoug noticed Albert holding his notebook. Yes, I finished reading, but unfortunately, I still didn't find what I wanted. There should be the other half of the notes, right? Albert asked tentatively. No more. McDoug said, shaking his head. Nothing. Albert was a little surprised at once, the other party actually said no? Well, I'm just making a little joke. McDoug said with a smile, however, there is no more. You have to know, why is rune text considered to have magical power? You mean, magic power was injected into it when carving? Albert said his guess. Yes, but not right. McDoug said softly, I can't tell you the real answer because my knowledge is based on my understanding of the magic text. If you can't reach that level, it will be difficult to understand. And use it. Albert was silent, and listened quietly to McDougall to continue. You need to use runes very skillfully, followed by having a strong magical power as a foundation. Then you need to skillfully use ancient spells. McDoug said, these are the three processes I went through. The first step, you have done it, but your magical power is not strong enough, and you are not familiar with the magic of using ancient magic texts, but fortunately, you have already touched that hurdle, and it will not be too far to cross it. Up. Albert's mouth twitched. He hated such vague statements. You are not a magic stick. Tell me things clearly. Otherwise, just put your experience into the skills of Mauin www.mtlnovel.com Let Mauin directly upgrade to level 3, then there will be no so much trouble. At this time, Albert suddenly remembered something, Professor Broad, can you give me a certificate, I want to borrow books on ancient magic texts in the forbidden book area. Okay. Professor Broad actually agreed. He turned around and wrote on the parchment, allow Mr. Albert Anderson to borrow books on ancient magic texts in the band area. Bud Broad. Good luck. Albert murmured, and left with a note written by Professor Broad. Why don't you tell him? Professor Broad asked puzzledly. What's the use of that, haven't I told you? You haven't learned it yet, and you think I'm fooling you. McDoug glanced at Professor Broad and continued, Albert is a genius. We only need to give him some guidance. You should trust your own vision. Dear, click in, 
give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. Books on ancient magic texts. Mrs. Pins took the note, read the contents softly, and then looked up and down Albert with a suspicious look. Professor Broad recently borrowed a lot of money from the library. Books related to ancient magic texts. Yes, Professor Broad is doing research in this area. Albert headed. Mrs. Pins held up the note and tested it against the light to see if it was a forgery. Of course, it passed the inspection smoothly. There are not many books on ancient magic texts in the Forbidden Book area. Which one do you plan to borrow? Mrs. Pins asked, putting away the note. I'm not sure yet. I need to read it before I know which one I need. Albert is also not sure what he needs, but he knows that the Magic Forbidden Zone mission has been achieved. Professor Broad asked you to borrow books. Isabel asked, frowning as he walked toward this side. Most of the time, she came to help Professor Broad borrow books. No, I'm looking for some information. Albert didn't hide it, and fell on the books in Isabel's hand frowning slightly, I feel like I'm still a little bit short of ancient magic texts. Things, so I hope to find the answer in the banned book zone. Come with me, Mr. Anderson. However, I have to remind you that most of the books related to ancient magic in the Forbidden Area have been borrowed by Miss Isabel. Mrs. Pins reminded aloud. She could also hear that Albert and Isabel knew each other, and both of them were helping Professor Broad. When Albert was brought into a corner of the Forbidden Book area by Mrs. Pins, he found that there were really not a few books related to ancient magic texts left. Can I have a look here? Albert asked Mrs. Pins. Yes, but don't stay too long and don't touch other books. Mrs. Pins warned, I will keep staring at you. Albert also didn't care about Mrs. Pins' warning. He was going to turn over all the remaining books looking for some records he might use, but I have to say that these ancient books do have an annoying side and are complicated. Cumbersome and not easy to understand, with the current understanding, many things are described very confusing. Albert has flipped through several books, and felt that the only one that might help him was a book describing the use of ancient spells. Those spells were all using ancient magic texts with introductions. Some were black magic, some were not. However, it is really hell, if you are not good at ancient magic text, you can't even understand what is written in the book. This is an isolated copy. It looks dirty and seems to be moldy. In fact, the books in the banned book zone are all like this ghost. Albert did not intend to borrow the book, but just copied the spells that he found useful on parchment paper. Maybe he should ask Mr. McDugger instead of trying it rashly. It was obviously not a rational choice. I don't know how long it took, and Albert's records on the parchment gradually increased, but he still couldn't find what he wanted. You don't seem to find what you need. Isabel said aloud when he sat beside Albert at some point, waiting for him to close the book. The girl's gaze fell on Albert's parchment, her eyes gleaming with abnormal light. No. Albert knew it was not that simple unless he wanted to use the skill panel, but if he did, he would feel that he would lose the fun of exploring magic. What are you looking for? Isabel is actually very curious about what Albert is looking for. In her opinion, Albert is already very advanced in ancient magic texts. Rune text is a kind of text with magical power. Its essence may be a kind of spell. Using it to cast spells, record magic or engraved on natural materials such as stones and wood blocks can give them unparalleled magic power. Are you looking for a way to use ancient magic text? Isabel already understands what Albert is looking for, although it seems to her to be quite absurd. If the rune text is really a kind of magical text, why there is almost no has anyone mentioned anything about it. Mr. McDo should have mastered how to use it. Albert shook the wooden bracelet in his hand and laughed at himself, rather than like me, 
I can only use rune runes as nothing. Meaningful decorations. Isabel fell into a brief silence and asked, Can you let me have a look? Here. Albert took off the wooden bracelet and handed it to Isabel. After the latter observed carefully, he asked softly, What spell did you put on it? Iron Armor Curse. Do you want to use runes to enhance the effect of the Iron Armor Curse? Isabel frowned, carefully distinguishing the runes on the wooden bracelet, and found that he could not read it. You designed it yourself? She asked curiously. Yet. Yeah. Albert said, as you can see, these runes can only be regarded as decoration. It looks complicated. Isabel returned the wooden bracelet to Albert. What do you think you lack? Mr. McDuck said that if you want to master the power of ancient magic texts, you need to skillfully use runes, followed by having a strong magic power as a foundation, and then skillfully using ancient spells. You are satisfied with the skillful use of runes. Isabel said after thinking for a moment, but your age will cause your magical power to take time to grow, and it is difficult to skillfully use ancient spells. I think so too, but it's not too bad after all. Albert pointed to the parchment, I found some spells that use ancient magic texts to cast spells, but they can be very powerful and rough without exception. What do you think you still lack? Isabel wanted to hear Albert's personal opinion, after all, the other party is also a genius, it is impossible to have no ideas of his own. Spell, or a way to guide the power of runes, Albert said honestly, but I still haven't found a suitable method. Maybe, there is a book that might suit you. Isabel pointed to the book he had brought back. The Complete Solution of Magic. Albert glanced at the title of the book and raised his eyebrows. Yes, the full explanation of magic. It is said that it is an introduction to the understanding of magic by wizards in ancient times. It is a pity that all of them are written by Rune. I can't read it. After Isabel returned to Professor Broad's office, Uncle McDuck asked him to return the book. She felt it was a reminder to Albert. However, Isabel doesn't understand, what about Uncle McDuck's going around to give Albert a hint? Wouldn't it be better to tell Albert directly? It's strange. UU reading www.uuganshu.com Albert turned a few pages and nodded, I think it might be useful to me, thank you. You're welcome. Isabel said, if you have any gains, please share with me. Okay. Albert said, he put the parchment in his pocket and walked out of the restricted area with Isabel with the book. Isabel. Katrina, who was registering the borrowing information, looked at her sister walking out of the forbidden area in surprise, her eyes fell on Albert again, and raised her eyebrows slightly. Professor Broad asked are you here to borrow books? Katrina knew something about McDug, and also knew that Isabel had been helping Professor Broad to borrow books from the library. To be honest, Katrina admires these two lucky guys, and you know that Uncle McDug has always been generous. Vertex. Dear, click in, give a good comment, the higher the score, the faster the update, it is said that the new full marks are found at the end of the beautiful wife. The new revision and upgrade address of the mobile station, data and bookmarks are synchronized with the computer station, and fresh reading without ads. The Complete Explanation of Magic is a very strange book. The first few pages are about the tracing of magic, talking about the magic of house elves, also talking about the magic of fairies, and even the magic of wizards, but the three magic systems it is completely different and cannot be used universally. He the author of The Complete Solution of Magic, believes that the magic power of wizards comes from the inheritance of blood. But in fact, in Albert's eyes, the unknown author of this book is actually confused, because he didn't say anything clearly in this pile of obscure, boring words. Perhaps, the author of this book wanted to mention something secretly, but such a record is meaningless now, even if it was accidentally interpreted by some people as the so-called truth. And then? We'll believe it. Can you believe it? At least, Albert himself didn't believe it. The magic of magic is not realized by spells, but by will, 
which is idealism. Regardless of using spells, wands, or gestures, they actually only strengthen the process of casting spells, allowing wizards to control magic more finely, and strengthen the power of magic. As far as Albert knows, Tom, or Voldemort, was able to do this before entering school. He only used his will to distort reality to achieve the effect of magic. It was crude, crude, and without aesthetics, just like most ancient wizard. Although they are aware of using spells, gestures, and wands to enhance their power, these wizards are still conceptually stuck in areas with strong destructive power, more prominent effects, or other terrifying areas. Rude and direct, but it is undeniable that those magics are very powerful, difficult to use, and even harsh, and sometimes they can easily get out of control. Li Huo is the best example. This ancient black magic is still a spell favored by many black wizards, and even though they hardly use it. Use it with caution, you will never be a wizard engulfed by your own fierce fire, a tragic death of a dark wizard. Li Huo is called the Devil Flame for no reason. This magic is easy to lose control, and the caster often becomes the first victim. Compared with ancient times, those dangerous magics are disappearing, replaced by more elaborate magics, known from the evolution of the unlocking spell, from opening the door, kicking the door, to opening the door. Magic has become more refined, and its power is also much smaller. The Luminous Curse was only invented by Levina Monk Stanley in the 18th century. Before that, the wizards may have used the Eternal Fire, the Ancient Fire. As we all know, Gublay Fairy Fire is a very advanced magic, because only a few wizards can do it. In fact, in the record of Albert's finding of limited ancient magic, the curse of Gubler Immortal Fire was discovered. It is considered to be a very advanced magic, and it is not unreasonable. The spell used by the Gublay Fairy Fire is Rune Characters. Before casting the spell, a handle must be made. The handle usually needs to be carved with some ancient magic words, which is its spell. Yes, the spell of Gublay Fairy Fire, wizards carved it on the handle to strengthen the power of magic and ensure that the flame can burn forever. When he saw this, Albert felt as if he had caught something, his eyes fell on his wooden bracelet, and then he continued to read. The complete explanation of magic does not mention the rune words. Perhaps the wizards of that era used this kind of words, so it is not difficult to understand that there is no record. However, the content of this book still puzzles Albert. At least, he has read most of it, and there is not much that he can really understand. It is not that there is a problem with the translation, but that he feels the distance between the two sides. Perhaps it would be more appropriate to describe the generation gap in the era. It actually took a long time for Albert to finish reading this book. By the time he turned the last page, the time had quietly arrived in April. The second part of McDoug's manuscript is about to be revised, and it has entered the final revision stage. To be honest, it was faster than Albert expected. Albert once asked McDoug, would anyone buy such a book? Because even Professor Albert and Browd can't understand thoroughly, several of these books can be really understood, and the answer given by this famous wizard is, Silent Book Company has agreed to help publish this book book it. Later, Professor Browd told Albert privately that McDoug paid for the entire printing cost of this book. The famous wizard has never been short of money and the price of this book is very expensive, obviously from the beginning there is no expectation to sell it to ordinary wizards. After listening to Albert, he felt very speechless. What could he say about the ideas of the rich? How do you feel about the third part of the manuscript? Professor Broad asked, putting away the manuscript that Albert had handed over. It's difficult. It's more difficult than the content of the first and second parts, and it's harder to understand. Albert laughed at himself. The third part of the manuscript already involves the use of runes to cast spells, but it's a pity, Huo there are almost no students who can understand quartz. Even a student who can get an O in the ancient Maoan assessment will have to look for a Maoan dictionary to translate sentence by sentence when reading this book. The starting point is too high. However, 
Albert saw something else, and MacDug took a few ancient spells to analyze. The patron saint is one of them, it is one of the most famous and powerful defensive spells known to wizards. Relevant records of the patron saint spell can be found on ancient woodblock prints or scrolls. Ancient wizards have used this spell for a long time, but there is no doubt that it is an extremely complex and difficult spell to cast. It is said that those wizards who can summon the physical patron saint are often elected as members of the wizard council. Up to now www.mtlnovel.com the spell of the patron saint has undergone some changes. It has been translated into a vocabulary that is more suitable for the current wizard. It is said that the power has also decreased slightly, but Albert thinks that is nonsense. To successfully use the patron saint spell, the caster must focus on recalling the happiest memory they can think of. The more pleasant the memory brings, the stronger the effect of the spell. In the past, it was difficult for wizards to summon the patron saint. Most of them were related to their era. It was definitely not a happy age. The Dark Middle Ages was not for nothing. If there were not enough happy memories as a finger support, the patron saint would also be summoned. Will not be strong enough, even the physical body cannot be maintained. Moreover, the wizards of that era were mostly related to the dark wizards. If they used more dark magic, their hearts would be affected somewhat. Albert tried to use the patroness charm. This time it didn't fail, but the wand just emitted a thin mist. As for trying to use the ancient magic text to cast a spell, the wand directly did not respond. According to Professor Broad, he pronounced the wrong spell, or the wrong tone. Easter is quietly approaching, and the professors at Hogwarts are tacitly assigning a lot of holiday homework to the students. Perhaps, professors know that most students like to be lazy, so they use this method so that students can review their homework well and avoid failing the upcoming final exam. At Hogwarts, once the final grade is too bad, it is really possible to be repeated, although this rarely happens. Don't you need to review? Lee Jordan just recited the twelve uses of dragon blood. When he raised his head, he looked at Albert, who was busy with his own affairs, and couldn't help asking. I've reviewed it. Without looking up, Albert repeated the twelve uses of dragon blood that Lee Jordan had just recited. You shouldn't ask Albert. Fred sighed and vomited, that guy can test better than you even if he doesn't review it. By the way, why should we review it more than a month in advance? I heard Percy say that Professor Broad will resign in mid-May. George stretched out his hand to cover a yawn and looked at Albert, is this true? Uh, it's true. Albert said that it was true. I also heard that Professor Broad has already finished the final exam questions. George's eyes flashed with excitement, and he asked quickly, You often run to Professor Broad's office, have you seen? You think too much. Albert looked at George rather speechlessly. For me, it's the same whether you peek at the exam questions or not. Why should I make this extra effort to get myself a bad reputation for peeking at the exam questions? That's right. Fred was practicing the wielding motion feebly. He was not very skilled in transfiguration, especially it was difficult for him to exaggerate the transformation of the species. However, I heard that this is one of the required tests. 1. It's really disappointing, it's rare to take a vacation, can't we let us rest easily? Lee Jordan tossed the book and leaned to Albert's side. Are you making a protective bracelet again? Well, the protective bracelet made last time was not up to standard. I am trying to perfect it. Albert did not intend to hide it. I have learned a lot of new things recently and I just can use it. New. Fred grasped the word keenly. Where did Professor Broad learn it, the deep defense against the dark arts spell? It's the use of ancient magic texts. Albert didn't care about the roommates who came in and swept the sawdust into the fireplace. Aren't you doing homework? Everyone in the common room went back to rest, no people will interrupt your homework. No. I'm not in a hurry anyway. George murmured. Don't you do your homework by yourself? Lee Jordan asked Albert, 
I rarely see you go to the library to do homework recently. Angelina asked about it in the afternoon. What he doesn't need to do, at least he doesn't need the holiday homework for transfiguration. George protested grimly. Professor McGonagall has omitted most of Albert's homework, and defense against the dark arts is probably not necessary. Ah, really? Damn, why do I have to do so much homework? Fred complained dissatisfied. The three of them were furious at the thought of having to do their heavy homework during the Easter holiday. If you can publish a paper on Transfiguration today, you definitely don't need to write the homework on Transfiguration. It was Santa who had just finished her Transformation class homework and stretched exhaustedly. Complaining and complaining, even if the twins are reluctant, they still have to do their homework unless they want to be locked up by the professors. If the exam results are not good, it will be even harder to go home after summer vacation. Albert is not at all busy, he also has his own business. The 1.1 version of the rough protective bracelet was soon announced. However, the effect of the protective bracelet is still only average, and the ancient magic texts carved on it have no effect at all. This means it is a failure. Albert wrote in his manufacturing manual of protective bracelet, the 1.1 version of the protective bracelet failed completely, and the originally intended effect was not realized. It is no different from version 1.0. In fact, Albert hopes that an alchemy skill similar to a protective bracelet will appear in his skill panel. However, his hope is undoubtedly lost. Perhaps, the so-called protective bracelet is not an alchemy item. Albert is so guessing. In the next few days, Albert could obviously feel that McDoug's writing manuscripts speeded up. However, the third part of the manuscript was somewhat beyond his ability for Albert, but the content was it surprised him. Different from the previous part, the third part of the manuscript is actually the use of ancient magic texts, about the use of spells. The patroness mantra is not the only ancient mantra. As if to explain to Albert, McDoug described a powerful protective spell in his manuscript. If you translate it directly, it is, comprehensive protection. This ancient curse is similar to the iron armor curse. After the spell is cast, it will form an invisible protective barrier between yourself and your opponent. This barrier is not in a single direction, but protects yourself from multiple angles. From McDoug's description, Albert felt that he was wrapped in an indestructible passport. If the Iron Armor Curse is a spell with medium difficulty, then full protection is undoubtedly an extremely complex and difficult spell. Albert tried once under the gaze of Professor Broad, but failed. In fact, Albert's attempts to cast spells with ancient magic texts all failed, and he once asked Professor Broad why. Professor Broad's answer is, your magical power is not strong enough to support these ancient and powerful spells, and the understanding and application of them are only shallow. Professor Broad's eyes were extremely harsh, and he could see Albert's problem at a glance, lacking experience. No matter how genius Albert is, it is impossible to learn it at once. The ancient magic is far more difficult to master than the magic used now. Maybe if someone was responsible for teaching Albert, after a few months of practice, he would be able to master the spell. As a professor of defense against the dark arts, Professor Broad is undoubtedly an expert in this area, but he has no plans to teach Albert. Both Professor Browder and McDoug think that Albert should be slowed down, and after Albert has absorbed the knowledge of runes, he will be guided on how to use those ancient spells. Being too anxious is not necessarily a good thing for a young man. Sometimes people need some patience. In Professor Browder's view, the iron armor curse that is easier to master and more practical is undoubtedly more suitable for Albert. I suggest that you continue to tap the potential of this spell instead of staring at those ancient spells. Professor Broad explained, the wizard has developed many variant spells on the basis of the original. Super iron armor curse. Albert asked tentatively. It seems that you have studied the Iron Armor Curse. Professor Broad nodded, this is an advanced usage. Albert did not study, but watched movies. In the Battle of Hogwarts, 
initiated by Professor Flitwick and completed by several professors, the almost indestructible magical protective barrier is a highlight of the movie. Do you know the reason why those ancient spells are not so popular now? Professor Broad asked suddenly. Slow rhythm, long chanting time. Albert raised his eyebrows. Yes. Professor Broad nodded. Especially in Wizard's Duel, flexible use of magic spells is the most important. This is also the reason why iron armor and some simple anti-curses are favored. Can you use that ancient protection spell to show me? Albert asked suddenly. Professor Broad raised his eyebrows, but still did not refuse. He raised his wand and waved it around him. At that moment, Albert noticed a disturbance in the air, as if an invisible barrier surrounded Professor Broad. Can I touch it? Albert asked. Can. It's amazing. Albert stretched out his hand and pushed, he found that there was an invisible stance blocking his palm, however, I remember that all protection seems to be. It is the magic used to protect a specific area. The usage of this spell can be far beyond your imagination. Professor Broad saw Albert's thoughts and said softly, Don't worry, you are still young and need to learn things. A lot more. Albert fell silent, because this was not the ancient protective spell, but it was undoubtedly more suitable for him to use now. Professor Broad guessed his thoughts, but it was not too difficult. By the way, this is for you. Professor Broad said suddenly, he took out an invitation letter from his pocket and handed it to Albert. What is this? Albert was surprised, and Professor Broad would give him an invitation letter directly. Obviously, this is an invitation letter. Professor Broad said, privately, McDug intends to invite a few friends. They are all experts in ancient magic texts. Why did you invite me? Albert was puzzled. Because you are now half an expert www.mtlnovel.com the youngest expert. Believe me, there must be many people who will be very happy to meet you. Professor Broad said with a smile, this paper has not been for too long. Fresh blood joined. Me, expert. Albert was still a little confused. In his previous life, experts weren't a good vocabulary, especially those who appeared on television. In one sentence at the time, there is no time for experts to talk to you on TV in the United States. For some reason, Albert thinks this is a bit unusual. As far as he knows, wizards usually do not have a high status in the magic world before they reach adulthood. They are defined as chicks, the objects of protection. A 12-year-old expert? It seemed a bit funny to Albert, not because he didn't agree with Professor Browder's words but that the magic world he knew was like this. Vertex Harry Potter The Alchemist Volume Chapter 144 Easter Eggs During the Easter Holidays, some Hogwarts students will choose to go back to spend the holidays with their families. Albert did not go home. After all, the end of the term is approaching, and the summer vacation is approaching. Moreover, there are not many students returning home during the Easter holiday, which is related to the heavy holiday homework that the professors assigned to the students before the holiday. Whether you return home or not, you have to do a bunch of vacation homework, and you won't be able to borrow the books in the school library when you go home. Although most of the vacation homework is probably just prepared by the professors so that students can prepare for the exam. Daisy was disappointed that Albert did not return home during the holidays, but still sent him some Easter eggs. On Easter Day, Sheila brought the Easter eggs to Albert, and a photo was included in the package. Albert picked up the photo and grinned. In the photo, Tom is squatting in a basket with Easter eggs incubating eggs. I don't know why, Albert always finds this scene very happy. By the way, Tom seems to be getting fat again. Is it an illusion? Shara, who was left out, called to Albert dissatisfiedly. Sorry. Albert immediately took out the owl nut from the pocket of his robe and fed it to Shara. He unpacked the Easter egg, broke the chocolate shell, and put a piece in his mouth. Like Easter in the past, Daisy will buy Easter eggs in a familiar candy store. 
its shell is made of chocolate, and inside it is Albert's favorite chocolate-flavored toffee. Would you like a toffee? Albert handed the half-egg containing the toffee to his roommate. You also try my Easter eggs. Lee Jordan has used his nails to pry open the Easter eggs the size of ostrich eggs, which are stuffed with fudge. It's actually a fudge. Albert squeezed a piece of fudge and threw it in his mouth, and couldn't help feeling. Otherwise, what do you think it will be? Lee Keaton couldn't help rolling his eyes at Albert. BB Duo waited the twins said in unison. Damn it, who would put Saibabida flavored beans in Easter eggs Lee Keaton couldn't help but vomit, do you want fudge? Of course. Fred ate a fudge, squeezed a chocolate toffee and threw it into his mouth, muttering, George, do you think mom would remember to send us Easter eggs? Perhaps, she forgot. George said, it's too busy after all. Mom never forgot your Easter eggs. Percy walked over here, handed the Easter eggs to Fred and George, then turned to Albert and said, Professor Broad asked me to remind you, go to him at six in the evening, don't remember the time wrong. Six o'clock in the evening Lee Keaton repeated confusedly. It's an invitation. Albert explained casually, Professor Broad invited me to go. Actually, I don't know what the professor invited me to do. I think it might be afternoon tea. Have you ever seen anyone who would have afternoon tea at six o'clock in the evening? George couldn't help rolling his eyes. There is a limit to nonsense. By the way, you didn't tell us this. Fred stared at him, looking at Albert with disbelief. I bet it must be a party or a banquet. I am often invited to the office by Professor Broad to drink tea, and at most I will have another refreshment. Why do you always feel weird to hear you say this? Lee Keaton mumbled. After I come back, I will tell you whether it is a banquet or a tea party. Albert also didn't struggle with this matter. Of course he knew what he was invited to attend. The so-called academic gathering. By the way, this is a walking ball, right? Lee Jordan pointed to the egg that looked like a walking ball in Fred's hand. Don't you open it and see what's inside, Albert reminded. Charlie must have told the family that we will be batsmen. George opened the outer egg, and it smelled of milk. The two wandering ball eggs were filled with milk-flavored toffee, apparently made by Mrs. Weasley. Are you going to taste it? Fred threw a toffee into his mouth, slowly chewing on the toffee, and muttered vaguely. It tastes good. Albert and Lee Jordan both took one from the pile of toffee and threw it into their mouths. After chewing, the mouth was full of thick milk flavor. The taste is not bad, but the toffee cannot be eaten more. Look over there George exclaimed, what's wrong with Shauna? Albert raised his head and saw Shauna who was being violently beaten on the head by the textbooks, school bags and ink bottles. He took up his wand and waved it lightly to lift Mrs. Pants's spell. Are you okay? Albert had already guessed what was going on. Just in the library, Santa said breathlessly, I forgot. I can't eat in the library. Sure enough, Mrs. Pins was driven out. Thank you, Albert. For a moment, Shauna finally took it easy. It's really choking. Would you like some fudge? Shauna's Easter eggs are filled with various flavors of fudge and she just ate fudge in the library before she was driven out of the library by Mrs. Pants. The Easter eggs are very large, with obvious commercial labels on them, and they were bought in a candy store like Albert. Albert ate a piece of fudge, which was filled with strawberry flavor. As long as you don't get seen by Mrs. Pants, you'll be fine. Albert winked at Shauna. I often steal hard candy in the library. That's a good idea. Shauna giggled. Oh, don't peck. Albert felt a pain in his elbow and immediately withdrew his hand. What's wrong with your owl? Shauna looked at Shara suspiciously. It's urging me to write a reply. Albert murmured. He took out the quill from his bag and began to write to the family, not forgetting to tell Naya not to feed Tom too fat. Seeing the owl flying away, Albert focused on reviewing again. Recently, I have been focusing on ancient magic texts, and I always feel a little lax in other subjects. 
Mr. Fusco has not responded to any letter. What are you thinking about? Shauna asked, raising her eyebrows, a little dissatisfied that Albert was distracted when talking to herself. It's nothing, I was wondering how much homework I haven't done yet. Albert said casually. You are the least qualified to say this. Fred said grumblingly. Go ahead, we'll have something to do later. George took Fred and left. Recently, Fred and George are always mysterious, and they don't know what they are doing. Albert retracted his gaze and continued to discuss homework with Shauna. Professors have mentioned that those topics are very important, such as mandatory exams. Lee Keaton has always been interested in them, which can make his review much easier. It's almost time, I'm leaving now. Albert took out his pocket watch, glanced at the pointer on it, got up and said to the people around. Where is he going? Shauna looked at Albert's back and asked puzzledly, I'm going to eat soon. Professor Browd sent him an invitation letter. Lee Keaton sorted out the class notes and casually explained, invite Albert to dinner. Professor Broad. Don't you know? Lee Jordan was a little envious of Albert's treatment and whispered, Albert is Professor Broad's most proud student, not one of them. I thought it was Professor McGonagall. Shauna said in surprise. Some time ago, Albert would run to Professor Broad's office every week. Lee Jordan began to reveal some trivia about Albert to Shauna. Who sees Fred and George? Angelina interrupted the communication between the two as she sat in the empty space of Albert. You said Fred and George. Albert didn't know what Lee Keaton had said to the others. After returning to the dormitory and putting down his school bag, Albert looked at the mirror and sorted out his appearance a bit, and then went to Professor Broad's office alone. Professor Broad seemed to be waiting for himself, and when Albert knocked on the door, the wooden door of the office opened quickly. You are always so punctual. Professor Broad said to Albert with a faint smile on his face. Well, we should go now. Don't let others wait too long. Where are we going? Albert asked. McDoug's house. Professor Browder reached out and picked up a small box from the fireplace, handed it to Albert, and made a pleased gesture to him. This is Albert looked at the shiny powder in the small box, and immediately guessed what it was. Flood powder. Oh, I almost forgot. You haven't used flood powder, have you? Professor Broad suddenly remembered this and said, the use of flood powder is very simple. First you have to go to the stove. Before, then throw the powder into the flame, wait for the flame to rise, and then walk into the flame. At this time, you must clearly state where you want to go. The place we go is called the hut in the lake. Albert took a pinch of shining powder from the small box, walked to the stove, and threw the powder into the flame. With a cry, the fire turned green, rising higher than Albert. Albert hesitated but still raised his foot into the fire, and shouted the cottage in the lake. In the blink of an eye, Albert was swallowed by the flames and disappeared. Fluifan's trip was also not very pleasant. Albert felt his body spinning rapidly. He squinted his eyes. A series of furnace doors flashed vaguely in front of him, and he could vaguely glimpse the room outside the fireplace. The swirling green flame made Albert feel dizzy, and the whistling wind heard in his ears, feeling that he was moving at high speed. Blinking his eyes, the spinning stopped, the whistling sound also disappeared, and Albert felt himself falling on the cold ground. It's really choking. Albert fell to the floor in embarrassment, and someone seemed to be supporting him from the ground next to him. Welcome, Mr. Anderson. A sharp voice rang in Albert's ears, and Albert, who had just got up to dust off the ashes from his cloak, was stunned, and looked in the direction of the voice. It was a house elf. A few seconds later, Professor Broad climbed out of the fire and stood on the carpet in the hall to wipe the ashes from his robe. Two gentlemen, please come here, the dinner is ready. The house elf said sharply. Dinner Albert looked at Professor Broad suspiciously. Of course it's a dinner party. Let's go. Don't let everyone wait too long. This house is very big, 
not small at all. It is ridiculous to describe it as a hut in the lake. Led by the house elves, they left the hall, walked through the corridors and stairs, and came to a carpeted sunroom with transparent walls. The dinner was held in this spacious room. There were already three people in the room. Except for MacDougall, the other two seemed to be quite old. Among them, the elder may be over a hundred years old, and the other at least eighty. They are all looking at Albert with curious eyes. No malice, just curiosity and kindness. Albert Anderson, the genius I introduced to you, is good at ancient magic texts. MacDoug pointed to Albert and introduced to the other two people. Of course, there is also transfiguration. I only transformed today. I've read Albert's article and Professor Browd said that Albert is also very good in defense against the dark arts and spells. I'm Albert, I'm glad to meet you all. Albert looked a little cautious, and nodded slightly at several people. Tiberius Ogden, an expert in spells and magic texts. MacDoug pointed to the older man and introduced to Albert, the magic theory you are using now actually has Tiberius a credit for it. The old man reached out his hand and shook Albert lightly. Gerber Smith. MacDoug pointed to the 80-year-old man and said, good at transformation, divination, and ancient magic texts, and also an expert in alchemy. After Albert shook hands with this Mr. Smith, he felt a bit contrary. But he could not tell where there was a violation. The dinner is very rich, but the food is relatively light, and the five people eat and chat, using ancient magic texts. As MacDoug said, everyone is an expert in ancient magic texts, and they belong to the very powerful kind. When MacDoug wrote that ancient magic text, they also got their help. Smith and Ogden were equally surprised that Albert was able to use ancient magic texts so skillfully. Sure enough, seeing is better than hearing. Albert was full. They sat in soft armchairs and talked about ancient magic texts. To be honest, it feels really weird for a young child to talk about academic theories among a group of old people. But you have to admit that they are a group of very capable people, they are also very knowledgeable in magic texts, and they can speak in ancient magic texts. If people who don't know come here, they think they accidentally crossed a thousand years ago. This friendly conversation continued into the night. Albert also expressed to Gerber Smith that he was interested in alchemy and asked about the use of ancient magic texts. Gerber looked at Albert's wooden bracelet, and said with a smile, there is no problem with the protective bracelet you made. The reason for the failure is actually that you have not been able to inject strength into the runes. Albert was a little dazed. Runy writing is a kind of mysterious writing. It contains mysterious magical power. However, your current practice, just sculpting it, will not give runy writing power. Gerber Smith explained, concentrate your mind. Inject your magical power into the runes you carved. This is why the runes are called magical characters. When wizards use such magical words to cast spells, the spells they use will become more powerful, and only those who are good at ancient magic words will truly realize this. Maybe some wizards are vaguely aware of something, but they don't understand what is going on. They just use ancient magic texts skillfully and unknowingly master the methods of using it. Therefore, wizards would think that ancient magic is more powerful, even if it is true. Unfortunately, the old man's energy is limited, and the conversation between the two sides ends here. However, Gerber Smith and Tiberius Ogden indicated that they could establish friendly relations with Albert through correspondence in the future. After ten o'clock in the evening, the banquet was over, and Albert returned to school through flow of fans. Albert, who had just gotten up from his chair, realized something was wrong. He switched from his side to the right. MacDoug was in his forties and fifties, Professor Broad was in his sixties, Gerber Smith was in his eighties, Tiberius Ogden was in his nineties or even a hundred, and what about myself? Twelve years old. Individuals are missing. A wizard in his twenties or thirties was missing, and he was connected to Mr. MacDougar. Perhaps there should be another genius in his twenties and thirties. Only then is there a rule to follow. 
I think too much Albert murmured. Before returning to school through the fireplace, Albert suddenly asked, Professor Browder, is there no one missing today? Why do you ask like this? Professor Broad was stunned and asked in confusion. Nothing, I always feel that this party is missing someone. Albert murmured. There are no less people. Professor Broad repeated suspiciously www.mtlnovel.com There are no less people. Last time I said that the ancient magic writing is a bit serious. Therefore, it is not that there are fewer people, but the generations. Up. Albert always felt that Professor Browder's words had other meanings, and returned to the Greyfinder common room slowly. At this time, the common room was very lively and did not go to bed. Albert clutched his yawn and went straight back to the dormitory, but none of the other roommates came back. He held the wooden bracelet in a daze, thinking about what Gerber Smith said. Nearly 11.30, Lee Keaton returned to the dormitory, seeming to have a lot of fun. Fred and George are not with you. Looking at Lee Jordan, who returned to the dormitory alone, Albert frowned slightly. Hogwarts had a curfew after 11. No, I haven't seen Fred and George since just now. I thought they would go back to the dormitory to rest first. Lee Keaton also frowned slightly. Fred and George are not in the common room Albert suddenly had a bad feeling. Vertex The Harry Potter Alchemist Chapter 145 Looking for Weasley at the moment, there is silence in the dormitory. Lee Keaton has realized that the situation is not good, Fred and George are most likely missing, otherwise it is impossible not to go back to the dormitory to sleep at night. I went to the common room and asked if anyone saw the two of them. He said immediately, and acted. Albert looked around the dormitory, suppressed the sleepiness between his eyebrows, stuffed a large piece of chocolate in his mouth, went to the bathroom to wash his face, and patted his cheek in the mirror so that he could wake up completely. Lee Keaton has returned, his face is not very good, obviously there is nothing good. When he saw Albert coming back, he immediately greeted him, they are not in the common room. Should they go into the Forbidden Forest to look for the so-called secret treasure Albert washed his face, his head regained consciousness, and asked, Did you find another secret on the treasure map? This Lee Keaton hesitated. If Fred and George were in the woods, things would be a bit bad. Albert's expression froze, and he found new movement in his task panel. Mysterious Disappearance You have two friends who did not return to the dormitory before the curfew. They are suspected to be missing. As a roommate and friend, you should try to find them. Reward 1000 experience. Come with me, and talk about it while walking. Albert grabbed George's wizard hat and strode toward the common room. You mean, they are in the woods. Lee Keaton also realized that the situation is not good, if Fred and George enter the woods. They have not yet returned, and the situation is far from good. The Forbidden Forest at night is very dangerous. There are not many students staying in the common room. A couple is whispering and not paying attention to the surroundings at all. The students doing vacation homework concentrate all their attention on the parchment, not even paying attention to Aber. T.E. and Lee Jordan left the lounge. I'm not sure if they are in the woods. Albert looked at Lee Jordan and asked, Let's talk, did you gain something on that treasure map? Yes, they found some changes on the treasure map. Lee Keaton hesitated and continued, They found that you don't seem to know, so let me keep it secret, saying that I won't tell you for the time being. Go on. Albert said. Fred and George think the map should be real, you know, they used to go into the woods. Lee Keaton followed Albert and said what he knew. I really don't know. By the way, they didn't tell me. Albert stopped and looked at Lee Keaton angrily. Fred said that if you know it, you will definitely prevent them from taking risks in the woods. Lee Keaton sighed and explained. That is inevitable. The periphery of the forest is not considered dangerous. This does not mean that going deep into the forest is not dangerous. Albert raised his wand and imposed a phantom spell on himself and Lee Keaton. 
We are going to enter the woods. Lee Keaton seemed to have guessed Albert's thoughts, and was shocked by Albert's boldness. He hesitantly suggested, I think we'd better go to Professor McGonagall. No, let's go to Hagrid, we need Hagrid's help. Albert vetoed Lee Jordan's proposal without hesitation. But we can't get out, the gate of the castle is closed, we can't open the gate. Lee Keaton reminded. I know where there is a secret way to leave the castle. Albert added. Fred told me the last time I went out for a night tour. But why don't we go to Professor McGonagall? Lee Keaton still didn't understand. In his opinion, he should go to Professor McGonagall now. Hagrid knows the Forbidden Forest better than anyone, and with his help, we can enter and exit the Forbidden Forest safely. Albert took Lee Jordan to take a shortcut. Don't make this matter a big deal, otherwise Fred and George will do so. Bad luck. What's more, we are still not sure whether they have entered the forest. We really can't be sure about this. Lee Keaton mumbled, maybe they are still in school. It's easy to be sure, hush. Albert made a hissing gesture, and there were footsteps coming towards this not far away. He immediately extinguished the light on the wand and pulled Lee Keaton into hiding. Strange, I clearly heard someone talking. Filch walked toward this side, leaning toward the deep corridor with an oil lamp in his hand, and turned around and walked away without seeing anyone. Hearing the sound of footsteps, Albert and Lee Jordan came out of the corner. They came to a vase on the corner of the third floor. The secret road to the outside of the castle is here. Turn left and turn right. Albert came forward and tapped the vase twice with his magic wand. The vase began to make a slight rubbing sound. Lee Keaton was shocked to find a black spot appeared in a landscape painting hanging on the wall next to it. The black spot gradually enlarged, and soon he saw a door. Gone. Albert stepped forward and grabbed the doorknob and pushed it lightly. The original photo frame was opened, revealing the entrance hidden behind. So secretive. Lee Keaton muttered. Don't tell others. No. After a few minutes, the two finally walked out of the secret road, and Lee Keaton was surprised to find that he appeared on the mountain road leading to the dock. Tap this raised stone three times Albert pointed to the raised stone and said, the password to open the entrance is, open the hole quickly. Damn it, do those two guys still know a lot of secret secrets, and they didn't tell me. Lee Keaton complained in a low voice. Follow up. Albert walked towards Hagrid's cabin. How are you going to determine if Fred and George are in the Forbidden Forest? Lee Keaton couldn't help asking. This is very important, he doesn't want to rush into the Forbidden Forest. Using an owl, the owl has the ability to track. We can use the owl to determine whether Fred and George are in the Forbidden Forest. Albert explained. Albert does not know how to track magic, but the owl has this ability. As long as through the owl, Albert can determine whether the two guys are in the woods. It can still be like this. Lee Jordan was shocked by Albert's whimsy, but it seemed to be a good idea. He hurriedly speeded up and followed Albert. The two finally arrived at Hagrid's cabin. There was no light in it. Perhaps Hagrid was already asleep but their approach immediately drew Houndstooth's vigilance. Hagrid, Hagrid, we need your help. Albert raised his fist and banged Hagrid's wooden door. A series of bangs sounded under the night, and only a dog barked from Hagrid's cabin, but Hagrid did not get up to open the door. Something is wrong. Will he? Lee Jordan originally wanted to say if Hagrid was asleep, but after thinking about it, he didn't feel right. If Hagrid was really asleep, it would be impossible for Albert to make such a big movement without responding. Albert pointed his wand at the door lock and muttered, A la ho cave is open. The lock was unlocked and Albert pushed the door into the room. The light from the tip of his wand dangled from the hut and Hagrid. As expected, there was no one inside. He might have gone out. Aren't it good for us to break in? Lee Keaton followed Albert a little uneasy and entered the house. Yaya couldn't see them, and was spinning around them, sniffing the smell in the air. 
of course it's not very good. Albert lifted the phantom curse on his body and squatted down to comfort Yaya, lest it get too excited. Then you still. Before Lee Kiatan finished speaking, he heard the flapping sound of his wings outside the house. He quickly turned his head and looked in the direction of the sound, and found that Swilla flew into the house and landed on the wooden table. Albert's owl always appears when the owner needs to send a letter. Give it to George. Albert put down Hagrid's quill, handed his handkerchief to Owl, and said, Remember to hand it to George himself. Sheila grabbed the handkerchief and spread her wings out toward the forbidden forest. Seeing the direction the Owl was going, their expressions suddenly sank. If Fred and George were in the castle, then the Owl would fly into the castle, but now flying into the woods means that the two of them really entered. The woods. What should I do now? Go back to Professor McGonagall. Lee Keaton took a deep breath and asked. Yes, go back to Professor McGonagall. Albert headed. Lee Keaton couldn't help but heaved a sigh of relief. He was really afraid that Albert said he would go into the woods to find someone. To be honest, he didn't have the courage to enter the woods at this time, the forest at night really looked terrifying. Where did they enter the woods before Albert asked? Should you not Lee Keaton suddenly had a bad feeling? I go into the woods and you go back to Professor McGonagall. Don't worry, I can guarantee your safety, and you need to go back because someone must let Professor McGonagall know about this. Albert looked at Lee Jordan and explained, these things are also very important. But, within two hours, if I can't find them, I will come back by myself in two hours. Don't worry. I have a way to ensure my safety. You know, I never do things that are uncertain. A.I. Bird raised his hand and patted Lee Jordan on the shoulder, also, you think I will make fun of my life. But how are you going to find them? Lee Keaton asked puzzledly. Of course it depends on teeth. Lee Keaton looked at the hound, and then at the wizard hat that Albert had just held. Then he suddenly realized that he had just been wondering what Albert was doing with a wizard hat. It was for this. Follow me. Lee Jordan took Albert to the entrance where Fred and George entered the Forbidden Forest without telling Hagrid. Albert handed Fred's hat to Yaya, and said softly, Yay, help me find Fred, and buy you something delicious another day. Yaya sniffed left and right, and then walked along the intestinal path towards the Forbidden Forest. Remember, go to Professor McGonagall first. If there is a way, it's better to call Hagrid together. Albert reminded again. Actually, you really don't need to take risks. Lee Keaton hesitated for a while, and said, It's too dangerous to go in at this time. I can protect myself. Albert took out his pocket watch, looked at the time, and said to Lee Keaton, It is twelve o'clock. If no one is found, I will be back in two hours. You should know how to get back to the castle. Hit the raised stone three times. The password is to open the hole. Albert reminded again. If Professor McGonagall asks, you say Fred and George didn't answer. The dormitory may have entered the woods. I know. Lee Keaton nodded helplessly and said he knew. In fact, he couldn't understand why Albert entered the woods. Albert insisted on entering the woods for a reason. After confirming through the owl that Fred and George were in the Forbidden Forest, Albert found that a new mission appeared on his mission panel. Rescue Operations The Weasley brothers entered the Forbidden Forest for some reason, but they have not returned. As a student, roommate, and friend of Greyfinder, you can't leave them alone. Enter the forest, find Brother Weasley and the two were safely taken out of the Forbidden Forest. Reward 2000, Experience Points 2, Skill Points George Weasley Favorability 10, Fred Weasley Favorability 10. This task may mean that finding the twins is not too difficult, but the difficulty should be to take them out of the Forbidden Forest. Albert naturally has his own means, he will apparate, and he has enough experience to upgrade his skills. If necessary, you can ensure that you can appear at the edge of the Forbidden Forest through apparition at any time. 
The most important thing is that all of the defenses learned from Professor Broad not long ago, with this defensive magic, combined with apparition, can be invincible. However, if he could, Albert didn't want to reveal that he would apparate at all. That was the last insurance, so he needed someone to come to the rescue. Professor McGonagall or other professors could be the first insurance. Just after Albert followed Yaya into the Black Forbidden Forest, Lee Keaton has returned to the castle as quickly as possible. Albert's owl, with his handkerchief, spread its wings deep into the Forbidden Forest. For owls, night is the time for their activities. Hogwarts owls often forage in the Forbidden Forest. Albert told Sherrod to give the handkerchief to George and the owl immediately locked George's position and found the target at a very fast speed. As Albert expected, Fred and George are not doing well. They are surrounded by a group of eight-eyed giant spiders. Shara did not descend, and the situation below made her feel threatened. The handkerchief held by the owl was thrown down and fell on George's head. What's this? Fred reached out and grabbed the handkerchief, but it was empty. It happened that George was quick to get the handkerchief back. Some words were written on the handkerchief, and George said with the help of the light on the wand, shoot red sparks into the sky. If you have anything to do, you can ask the horsemen for help. They will send you out of the forest. Albert Sowell George looked up and saw Shara, and said excitedly, We are saved. Where can the horsemen find the horsemen? Fred looked at the dense spiders below, and couldn't help but shiver. The luck of the two of them was really bad. They searched for Greyfinder's secret treasure according to the treasure map. As you can imagine, they got lost. Later, somehow they encountered an eight-eyed giant spider and was almost eaten. Fortunately, George used the obstacle curse in time, and they escaped. Somehow, more and more spiders were chasing them and it happened that when Fred remembered, he encountered an old guardian tree on the way. Thanks to listening attentively in class, and Albert using the guardian tree as a protective bracelet. The two ran under the law-protecting tree and escaped by luck. However, this matter is not over yet. The number of eight-eyed giant spiders increased, and they surrounded the magic tree, and even eight-eyed giant spiders tried to cross the tree to attack them. In the end, the two of them could only climb the tree, and because of this, they angered the tree guarding Luoguo who lived on the guardian tree, and had multiple scratches on their bodies. Quickly, there is another big spider rushing over. George screamed. There are many obstacles. The two pointed their wands at the eight-eyed giant spider trying to approach the guardian tree www.mtlnovel.com Two spells hit it, and then the giant spider was shot out. Thanks to learning the obstacle spell from Albert. George murmured. Fire a red spark towards the sky. Fred raised his wand and fired a red spark towards the sky. At the beginning, surrounded by a group of big spiders, both of them were going crazy. The dense spiders really had a visual impact. When the two were nervous, they forgot about it. Don't do that. George stopped Fred quickly. Why? What if Albert comes by himself and bumps into these big spiders? George looked at the spider army below, his face full of worry. I think Albert should ask other professors for help. With his character, he is unlikely to venture into the Forbidden Forest by himself. Based on Fred's knowledge of Albert, the probability of that guy entering the Forbidden Forest alone it's not high. Vertex. Welcome, please remember the address of this site. Read on your mobile phone, so that you can read the latest chapters of the novel The Alchemist of Harry Potter at any time. Effective. Seeing that the dance step curse had a miraculous effect on the eight-eyed giant spider, Albert couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief, and continued to use the dance step curse at the eight-eyed giant spider in front of him. Although losing control of the two legs would affect the movement of the eight-eyed giant spider, it still rushed towards Albert trying to tear the prey in front of it to pieces. Albert had been prepared for a long time. When the eight-eyed giant spider rushed towards him, he quickly used all protection to expand the protective barrier. This hapless big spider once again hit the invisible barrier and was directly bounced out. 
This time, the big spider fell a bit miserably. Because some of his feet were cast by Albert on the dance step, they were still shaking there, and he couldn't get up from the ground in the first time. Albert immediately lifted the protective barrier, and continued to use the dance step spell on the eight-eyed giant spider while it was still struggling. Hit by several dance step curses, the eight-eyed giant spider that just got up found that its eight feet were completely out of control. It was like being put on ice skates, its eight legs were shaking constantly, and it fell on the spot. The scene was once very funny. Spiders are definitely not suitable for tap dancing. Albert murmured, drew a distance back, and began to tilt all known attack spells on the eight-eyed giant spider, so that the funny spider in front of him was completely relieved. Not to lose face in front of its other companions. In fact, Albert's process of solving the eight-eyed giant spider was not as easy as he imagined. Eight-eyed giant spiders are considered to be magical creatures cultivated by ancient wizards. Such creatures are not weak against magic, and ordinary spells have no obvious effect on them. Moreover, after they are created, they are usually used to protect the residences or treasures of wizards, so they are very good at quietly hunting those who steal. One-on-one, -on -one, it still takes some courage to face this monster. Even adult wizards are not as good as Albert when facing these big spiders. After all, not all wizards can open like Albert, cough, use the defense barrier smoothly. The spells are also difficult and easy. Commonly used luminous spells are relatively easy to master, and the difficulty of reaching level 2 is much lower than other spells. This spell is often used and it is easy to master. The highly usable iron armor curse is of medium difficulty. The all protection from the variants of the iron armor curse is obviously more difficult to learn than the former. One of the advantages of the system is that it allows Albert to easily master those difficult magics and use them skillfully. With higher skill levels, it can also make magic more powerful and evolve more. Tricks This can directly omit the exploration and attempt of magic. It's a pity, it's wasted. Albert mumbled while looking at the monster in front of him. He knew that the monster in front of him should be able to extract the eight-eyed giant spider venom, which is a very precious liquid, a pint can sell for a hundred gallons, and even higher in the black market. However, Albert also knew that he did not have the courage and ability to deal with the eight-eyed giant spider in front of him. Forget it. Albert felt sorry that he missed a large amount of Garen. He opened the task panel, chose to complete the angry counterattack, and directly on the skill panel, raised the spider retreat curse to level 2. The feeling of adding a little bit is really wonderful, knowledge is born out of thin air. Albert closed his eyes and carefully recalled the information about the spider evasion curse that appeared in his brain. He raised his wand, and lightly swiped it at the eight-eyed giant spider lying motionless. A rainy Igzumai. A dazzling magic light hit the eight-eyed giant spider, instantly knocking the giant spider away, and leaving serious scars on the spider. This spell directly hurts Max, Albert couldn't help but sigh. It's really a spell specifically for spiders. After mastering the spider retreat curse, Albert felt that he had gained a little more confidence, at least when facing the eight-eyed giant spider, he would not feel constrained. Wait for me, he murmured, I will turn all of you over. Albert was just about to move on, but stopped again, because he found that a new task appeared on his panel. Spider Hunter You have never been a relieved person, and you will never forgive the big guys who want to eat yourself, defeat or kill them, so that these guys can understand who can't mess with them. Current Progress, 0 20 Reward, 10,000 Experience, Item, 1 Bottle of Eight-Eyed Giant Spider Venom, Title, Spider Hunter, Prestige in the Magic World Plus 200. After Albert finished watching the task, the muscles on his face twitched slightly. This system really holds grudges. Yes, yes. After all, he is a good man, how could he hold grudges? Yay, we should go. Albert knelt down, raised his hand and rubbed Yaya's head, and whispered softly, You have to be alert to my surroundings and don't let me be attacked by those big spiders. 
Yes, this is what Albert is most worried about right now. Fortunately, although Hounds Yaya is timid, he is still vigilant and can always sound the alarm at the first time. Albert and Yaya went further, and finally encountered a clearing. He hesitated for a moment, then raised his wand and fired a green spark into the sky. At this moment, the night of the Forbidden Forest was illuminated by sparks. At the moment when the green fire light lit up, many creatures in the Forbidden Forest looked up at the direction of the sparks. Albert's adventure was worth it, and red sparks lit up above the forest. Fred and George also realized that someone was coming to rescue themselves, and they fired red sparks to guide the professors who rescued them. It is a pity that the twins guessed wrong. It was not the professor in the school who came to rescue them, but their roommate and friend Albert Anderson. At this moment, Albert was also in trouble. As he got deeper into the forest, the number of eight-eyed giant spiders he encountered began to increase. Alanya's Secret As the spider's retreat curse sounded, a white light lit up in the dark forest again, and another spider was hit by the curse and fell to the ground and couldn't get up again. Am I going to break into the spider's nest? Albert looked around at the few eight-eyed giant spiders that had fallen down and couldn't help but mutter. Along the way, Albert didn't know how many eight-eyed giant spiders he had flipped, and he didn't even bother to keep counting. The situation is not very optimistic. There are often big spiders around him coming out and attacking him without warning. If it weren't for the alarm of teeth, Albert would have been eaten by the eight-eyed giant spider. The eight-eyed giant spider is a fierce predator, almost silent when it ambushes its prey. After repeatedly confirming that there is no danger around, Albert once again fired green sparks into the sky. He felt that the distance between himself and the Weasley brothers should not be far away. Yaya's condition is not very good either, it can't adapt to the apparition, and it walks a bit wobbly. After using apparition several times in a row, Albert was also uncomfortable. He vomited all the chocolate that he had eaten not long ago. Now I can keep my brain awake, thanks to the tenacity of my will. Of course, this has something to do with level 2 apparition. Are they trapped? Albert looked at the red sparks above the night sky and said to himself. The distance between the two sides hasn't shortened much. If the Weasley brothers also moved toward this side, the two sides should have met early. Albert was still moving in the direction where the red sparks were lit up, and after crossing a large collapsed tree, he suddenly stopped. Not far away, there were a bunch of clicks, rustling sounds. Albert had already heard what it was, the sound of the eight-eyed giant spider moving. However, how many spiders are needed to make such a clear and dense sound? Albert immediately pressed Yaya to prevent him from barking so as not to attract the eight-eyed giant spider in front of him. To be honest, Albert didn't know how the eight-eyed giant spider got outside sounds. Quiet, yay, yay, don't scream, if you are besieged by a spider, you will die. Albert patted yay, yay and after earnestly instructing him, he quietly moved forward. In the next moment, the expression on Albert's face froze. He saw a scene that shocked him, the spider army. A bunch of eight-eyed giant spiders were surrounding a big tree, and the Weasley brothers, whom Albert was looking for, hung on the tree, struggling to deal with those eight-eyed giant spiders trying to approach them. Albert had already guessed what tree it was. Only the guardian tree could have this magical effect. It is rumored that as long as it touches the trunk of the guardian tree, it can be protected from dark creatures. However, there is no absolute in the world. In normal times, the eight-eyed giant spider will stay away from the tree of protection. But now it's different. Fresh flesh and blood are automatically delivered to the door. The temptation of food, the effect of the tree is not so obvious. More and more large-sized eight-eyed giant spiders are trying to attack the tree, and they want to drive the humans hiding in the tree. As long as the humans leave the tree, they can hunt their targets unscrupulously and enjoy the blood and flesh. Temptation can really make people fearless sometimes, and it is obviously useful to apply this to the eight-eyed giant spider. Hold on, someone is coming, the professor at Hogwarts is here to save us. 
George screamed loudly, and he raised his wand and fired a red spark into the sky to show the direction to the professor who came to rescue them. Don't be distracted, those big spiders are about to rush up again. Fred shouted. Block it, don't let them come close. When facing these big spiders who are quickly leading him to collapse, George can only cheer himself up through self-encouragement. The current situation is not optimistic. The big spider is attacking the tree more and more frequently. Only when the two use obstacle spells together, they can repel the eight-eyed giant spider. Fortunately, not all eight-eyed giant spiders dared to attack the guardian tree, otherwise the Weasley brothers would have long been a delicious meal for these giant spiders. What should I use to save you? Albert glanced at his wand, then looked in the direction of Brother Weasley, muttering to himself. If the number of eight-eyed giant spiders is not large, Albert would have the confidence to forcibly kill them and bring the Weasley brothers out, but this situation is very bad now. Albert felt that even if he could use the spider evasion curse, he would not be able to face such an army of spiders at the same time. Unless the spider evasion curse was upgraded to a higher level and the effect of the spell was more extensive, he might take them out of the spider army. Break out of the siege. Albert knows how many caddies he has. In fact, it's not impossible. If you use apparition, you should be able to do it. Apparition yourself and then take them away directly. This final insurance is still very reliable, but, if he can... Albert doesn't want to be exposed, because he can't explain why he operat. Genius? I am afraid that genius is not enough. His use of ancient magic texts is probably enough to make people suspicious. If that can be explained by linguistic genius, then how to explain apparition? Can I just wait? Albert glanced at his experience pool, then opened the Spider Hunter task panel, the current progress, 2020s. After receiving the experience of the spider hunter, Albert's sight fell on another new task. Spider Slayer. You already have some experience in dealing with the big spider, defeat as many eight-eyed giant spiders as much as possible, and let it know who it provokes. Current progress, zero. Reward, 50 points each. Albert saw this task and was speechless for a while. He really hadn't thought that there would be a monster spawning task, but it seemed that the monster was not easy to do. No, there is a way. If you hide in the tree with the twins, can't you just swipe the monsters slowly? However, there is a big problem. How did you get there by yourself? It is not easy to break through the encirclement of the spider army. If you want to rush past, you need to open a gap. The spider retreat curse can do it but how to rush past without being surrounded on the way is not easy. There is still some distance from here to that tree. If you want to pass safely, you need, create a barrier. There is no doubt that the flame is the most suitable, creating a flame channel not only can expel the big-eyed giant spiders around, but also illuminate the surroundings to avoid tripping while running. But, his own flame curse was only level 1, so he couldn't do what Albert wanted. Albert gritted his teeth and raised the flame curse to level 2. Fight, as long as you fight more monsters, you won't suffer. Yay, remember to follow me later, don't fall. Albert asked softly. He couldn't help holding his wand tightly, taking a deep breath, and suddenly jumped out of his hiding place, towards the eight-eyed giant around the tree. The spider launches the spider to retreat. At this moment, UU reading www.uuganshu.com was in Fred and George's vision, a dazzling white light suddenly fell on the spider colony, and the spider army that had surrounded the law-protecting tree was torn apart by force. Those big spiders that they thought were very difficult to deal with were even knocked down several by spells. Both of them were a little confused, and didn't even figure out what happened. In the next second, a large number of flames suddenly appeared in the forest and these flames turned into two raging walls of fire, spreading toward the guard tree, successfully isolating the big spider from the wall of fire. Everything came so suddenly that the twins who had been stunned for a moment soon realized that someone had come to rescue them. The two were about to get down from the tree, 
but they were stopped by a voice. Someone is yelling here, don't come down. Fred and George were both stunned, looking at each other, why is this voice so familiar? Could it be? Welcome, please remember the address of this site, read on your mobile phone, so that you can read the latest chapters of the novel The Alchemist of Harry Potter at any time. The Alchemist of Harry Potter Chapter 148 Rescued At this moment, Albert was running desperately in the blazing fire tunnel, Fang Fang followed him closely. The eight-eyed giant spiders were very anxious by the sudden flame, they instinctively stayed away from the wall of fire, giving Albert enough time and space. After Albert hurried to the protection tree, before even catching his breath, he immediately swung his wand and used the flame curse again. A ring of fire began to burn in the direction pointed by Albert's wand, burning ten feet away from the guardian tree. The fire looked fierce, but there was no burning material as a backing. The mulch and fallen leaves on the ground could not keep the fire wall burning. You got him Leviosa. Albert waved his wand and used the levitation curse at Hound Yaya to make Yaya float. The latter was greatly frightened, whimpered in terror, and slid wildly in the air with his feet, as if swimming in the water. Quick, give me a hand. Albert also began to climb the tree, Fred and George stretched out his hands, which allowed Albert to quickly climb to the tree. Yaya was quickly lifted from the levitation curse, shivering on the wooden platform created by Albert using the transformation curse. Why are you here? Fred and George had recovered from their trance and looked at Albert in shock. They had never thought that the person who came to save themselves would be Albert. Otherwise, who do you think it will be? Albert just slowed down, staring at the Weasley brothers angrily, Professor McGonagall? Or Professor Dumbledore? When they find out that you are missing, you will be arrested. The giant eye spider shredded into pieces and became food in the belly of those monsters. The cheeks of both of them were flushed and they were a little ashamed, but they had to admit that Albert was right. It's Easter now. If Albert didn't find the two missing the first time, then later, maybe Hagrid could come and help them collect their bodies tomorrow, and even the bones might not be found. What should I do now? Fred moved aside to make room for Albert. Waiting for rescue. When I came, I asked Lee Jordan to go to Professor McGonagall. Albert was calming his breathing rhythm, and comforted, the professors should be here soon. You continue to face the sky. Fire red sparks to guide them. You, did you enter the forest alone? George suddenly realized something, staring at Albert dumbfounded, he couldn't believe the fact. How did you do it? You can still find us in the forbidden forest. Fred also realized the meaning of George's words and when he reacted, he looked at Albert equally dumbfounded. They couldn't believe that Albert broke into the Forbidden Forest alone in the middle of the night and found them successfully. Otherwise, Albert didn't care about the shocked look on the twin brothers' faces, because he noticed that the circle of fire below had been extinguished, and the surrounding spider army surrounded again. How did you provoke these eight-eyed giant spiders? Did they stab their nest or stole their eggs? Albert frowned slightly, raised his wand, and moved one that was trying to approach the guardian tree. The eight-eyed giant spider knocked to the ground. No, we met a few big spiders on the road, and we ran to the nearby looking for shelter from the law-protecting tree. We didn't expect that the number of these big spiders would increase. Fred's face was a little tangled. The result is the scene you saw. George added. Alanya ate my. Another spider was knocked down by the spell. Looking down from the tree of protection, the dense group of big spiders below looked very scary. Keep firing red sparks, don't stop. Albert exhorted. Oh. George continued to shoot red sparks into the sky, and then secretly looked at Albert. To be honest, it's really hard for the twin brothers to imagine how Albert walked through the forest in the middle of the night and found himself. Even a professor, I'm afraid it's not so easy to find people in the dark forbidden forest. All guard. All guard. All guard. Albert released three defensive spells in one breath, completely shrouding the tree of protection. 
The big spider outside hit the magic enchantment head-on, as if hitting a wall of air, being blocked forcibly. What kind of magic is this? George's eyes widened in surprise, because they saw the spider rushing up against the wall. Now we should be safe. Don't think too much, if the professors don't come here soon, just wait to be eaten. Albert took a breath and shook his head to remind, don't you find these big spiders getting more and more anxious? Fred and George looked at each other and soon realized that Albert was right. At first they dared not approach the tree of protection. The two couldn't help crying out that if Albert was late, they might be eaten by those big spiders. Why didn't you come with the professors? Fred couldn't help but ask the doubts in his heart. According to Albert's character, he would not rush into the forbidden forest late at night. I originally planned to ask Hagrid for help but Hagrid is not in his hut, so I can only bring Yaya to find you. Thanks to Yaya, I was not attacked by the eight-eyed giant spider. Albert touched Yaya. Head. This timid hound is also choking tonight. So, you went into the forest by yourself. Both of them couldn't help but open their mouths. Now, Fred and George finally understand why Albert was placed in Greyfinder. Given his courage and courage, the students of Greyfinder may not be able to match him. Okay, take it out. Albert said suddenly. What to take out? Of course it's a map, that Greyfinder's secret treasure map. Albert looked at the two of them and shook his head helplessly, you actually believe in that kind of ghost, haven't I reminded you before? Forbidden forest it's dangerous in the depths. You still don't listen. Now they are almost turned into food for spiders. Haven't learned your lesson. Fred and George thought about it carefully, and it really happened. At the beginning, Albert reminded them that there might be a farm for eight-eyed giant spiders in the Forbidden Forest, and said that they should be careful to be eaten by them. This thing really almost came true. Having said that, George still remembers that when the two went out for a night tour for the first time, Albert reminded them to be careful of being locked out of the lounge by the fat lady, that time also came true. Are your words poisonous? What you say will come true. How do you know that there is an eight-eyed giant spider breeding farm here? Fred asked curiously. He wanted to know who was keeping these dangerous monsters in the Forbidden Forest. Listen to Professor Broad. Albert saw through the two people's thoughts and sighed, but don't be silly. 80% of this is not a farm, otherwise these big spiders will not attack you. But what's the matter with these big spiders, don't tell me these monsters originally live in the Forbidden Forest. It is estimated that some people have released eight-eyed giant spiders in the Forbidden Forest. There are almost no natural enemies of the eight-eyed giant spiders. The food is still sufficient, so these giant spiders can multiply so much. Albert looked at the eight-eyed giant spider below. Muttered, maybe, this is Hagrid's pot. Of course Albert knows very well that the so-called eight-eyed giant spider farm is purely a joke. It is Hagrid's release of a pair of eight-eyed spiders into the Forbidden Forest. After decades of reproduction, the huge spider colony now formed. Click. When several people were talking, the protective barrier created by Albert began to collapse. This is the disadvantage of too large a range. It is far from a reduced version. After the continuous impact of the eight-eyed giant spider, the defense barrier the world gradually cracked. What should I do? Fred looked at Albert anxiously. Continue to fire red sparks to force those approaching giant spiders back. After the defensive enchantment was broken, Albert immediately used the flame curse to force all the big spiders that tried to approach the tree to retreat. The situation is not optimistic. However, Albert is not worried about his safety. He is still using the spider escape curse towards the spiders below. Since there are so many big spiders, basically every shot can knock down one, without aiming at all. What kind of spell are you using that can knock down the spider all at once? George couldn't help but ask. The spell used by Albert is very powerful, and every hit can inflict great damage on the spider. Albert has no time to answer the twins' questions, he is trying to harvest experience. 
the professors are estimated to be coming, and it is better to harvest experience as much as possible before the professors arrive. After all, two have 100 experience points which means a level of magic. Want to master a kind of magic, need to waste a lot of time to practice. This sale is a bargain. I don't know how long it took, and most of the big spiders surrounding the law-protecting tree were knocked down. These big guys would also feel scared, and no big spider with a head dared to attack the law-protecting tree. Fred and George looked at the big spider who was knocked down by Albert below, completely dumbfounded, they had never thought that Albert was so brave. One person singles out a large group of spiders. I feel like my tongue is about to knot. Frequent casting of spells made Albert tired, and he was stuffing chocolate into his mouth. The spider swarms are retreating. George exclaimed excitedly, Can we go back? It's best to wait here obediently, leaving the protection of the tree, it is easy to be attacked by spiders. Albert reminded in an angry tone, Also, Think about how to deal with the professor later, and the map. What do you want the map for? George asked suspiciously. Of course it is confiscated, is it possible to let you continue to take risks next time? We will not. People always like to repeat. Speaking people, we don't understand. I know you will try to find the so-called Greyfinder's secret treasure again, so give me the map. Without the map you won't have any stupid ideas of finding any treasure. Albert reached out to F. Reed asked for a map. Don't do that. George muttered. We won't. Do you believe this? Albert stared at George fiercely and reminded maliciously, I think you'd better think about how you can explain this to Professor McGonagall before you go back. She will probably tell you. Family. Oh, no. Fred screamed in horror and almost fell from the tree. It was because Albert's eyesight was quick and he stretched out his hand. George had no such luck. He was far away from Albert and fell directly from the tree with a whine of pain. Are you all right? Albert leaned down and asked. Something happens, it hurts. Okay, stop talking nonsense, and give me that map. Albert warned, next time you probably will go straight into the eight-eyed giant spider's lair. This kind of stupid mistake is enough to make once. Up. Fred reluctantly gave the map to Albert, and the latter stuffed it in his pocket without looking at it. Then, he reached out and pulled George up the tree. Although the spider swarm had retreated, it was still not safe here. As three o'clock was approaching, a professor finally arrived. What surprised Albert was that it was not Professor McGonagall who came to rescue them, but Professor Broad. The old man was wearing a dark purple robe, but the robe was a bit torn. It is estimated that he was torn by a branch while walking through the forest. It seems that you are all right. Professor Broad's eyes were shining strangely in the dark, and he looked at Albert with a smile and reminded, Mr. Anderson, I have to remind you that your approach is too much. Reckless. Of course, I have to admit that you did a good job and surprised me. Good evening, Professor Broad. Albert greeted the old man with a smile, I didn't expect you to come to rescue us. I thought it would be Professor McGonagall. Coincidentally, I was going to the bathroom for a brief comment, and I happened to meet Mr. Jordan. Professor Broad said as he walked towards the three of them. He told me everything so I hurried over. I was worried that you could not find two Mr. Weasleys, so I got myself on board. I'm bringing the Shanghag's hound. With it, the creatures in the forest won't hurt me. Albert used Hagrid's words to stop Professor Broad. Do you believe this? Professor Broad looked around and asked with a smile. Albert was a little embarrassed, so he used this to fool others. By the way, what spell did you use to knock down these eight-eyed giant spiders, these monsters are too dangerous. In fact, Professor Broad came after Albert. On the way, when he found the eight-eyed giant spider knocked down, he was very surprised, and the number of spiders knocked down by the spell was still quite large. However, 
none of the scenes before him shocked Professor Broad. There were no fewer than a hundred eight-eyed giant spiders down here, and the number was really amazing. The three first-year students were simply impossible to do. The spells learned in the first year were not enough to fight an eight-eyed giant spider. However, hundreds of them were knocked down here, not one, not ten, but hundreds, this number is really shocking. These knockdown down eight-eyed giant spiders undoubtedly proved Albert's power. Be careful. George screamed. Alanya ate my. Albert raised his magic and used the spider retreat curse towards the struggling spider. He didn't even know how many times he had used it, he was so adept. Oh, thank you, Mr. Anderson, if I get bitten by such a big guy, I guess I will have to resign in advance. Professor Broad turned his head to look at the eight-eyed giant spider that was knocked into the air by the spell, with consternation on his face. It returned to normal soon. Professor Broad walked to the three of them, and after seeing the tree, he understood how Albert defeated these eight-eyed giant spiders. He said to several people, let's leave here as soon as possible. Let me see if there is something suitable as a temporary door key. Use this. Albert handed Fred's hat to Professor Broad. What do you do with a hat with you? Fred looked curiously at Albert's hat, somehow he always felt a little familiar. This is your hat. I originally used it for Yaya to help you find you. Albert said grimly. Mentos. The wizard hat immediately emitted blue light. Well, if you use the door key to go back, it may be a little uncomfortable, so bear with it. Professor Broad said gently. What about Yaya? Albert asked. Don't worry, I will take it back to apparate. Professor Broad said, Well, you guys quickly get ready, I will count three, and then we will reach out and grab the hat. One. Professor Broad whispered, Two, three. The three Alberts stretched out their hands and grabbed the corner of the wizard's hat. There seemed to be an invisible force to attract the three, and the three of them flew up like a gust of wind, without seeing anything. A few seconds later www.mtlnovel.com Albert fell heavily to the ground, Fred and George fell worse than him, their faces were directly in close contact with the dirt. The wizard's hat as the door key floated slowly from the sky, and it happened to fall on Fred's head. Vomit. When Fred and George got up, they began to retching, apparently losing their keys. Albert is better than them. After all, he had used apparition before, and was more resistant to the discomfort caused by using the door key than the two. Don't worry, this is the faint key. Professor Broad looked at the two who were retching and shook his head, Mrs. Pomford will heal them. We'd better send them to the school hospital and help me. Help one. I hate this feeling. Albert murmured. When he reached out to help Fred, he heard a rush of footsteps coming here. Vertex. The Alchemist of Harry Potter. Welcome, please remember the address of this site, read on your mobile phone, so that you can read the latest chapters of the novel The Alchemist of Harry Potter at any time. The Alchemist of Harry Potter Chapter 149 Secret Treasure. Albert raised his head and by the white light of the tip of his wand, he vaguely saw Professor McGonagall who was walking here quickly. The person behind the professor was, their roommate Lee Jordan, A.N.D. Principal Dumbledore. The old man was looking at the three of them with a smile. Bud, you found them, it's great. Professor McGonagall sighed with relief, his eyes fell on Albert, Fred and George, as if to check whether his students were injured. It should be said. Mr. Anderson found the two Mr. Weasleys. Professor Broad explained with a smile, when I arrived, Mr. Anderson had been rescued from a large group of eight-eyed giant spiders and was trapped in Gentleman Weasley on the Sorbus tree. Sorry, you said a bunch of, what? Professor McGonagall couldn't help raising his voice a little, as if he couldn't believe what he just heard. Eight-eyed giant spider, Minerva. Professor Broad looked sideways at Dumbledore. There should be a nest of eight-eyed giant spiders in the depths of the Forbidden Forest. 
these monsters have basically no natural enemies and have multiplied into a large colony. Up. I see. Dumbledore looked at Albert curiously and smiled. However, I am even more curious about how Mr. Anderson found Mr. Weasley and how he dispelled the group of eight-eyed giants. Spider, as far as I know, those monsters are not something an ordinary freshman can deal with. Albert looked at Lee Jordan and cleverly staggered Dumbledore's gaze. Even if Dumbledore did not use Pantograph, he was an expert in this area. As long as the eyes of both sides were in line, it would be difficult for Albert to follow. Dumbledore lied in front of him. Yes, in fact, I am also very curious about this. Professor Broud's voice changed, and kindly reminded, but I think the most urgent thing is to send them to the school hospital first. We will use it when we return. Door keys, they are still, fainting the door keys. You're right, bud. Professor McGonagall nodded and stared at the three sternly, come with me. Excuse me, come and help me help Fred. Albert directly ignored Professor McGonagall's stern gaze, and said to Lee Keaton, he himself was too tired to support others. Oh, yes, and this dog, it seems to be Hagrid's pet, and Albert seems to rely on it to find the Weasley gentleman. Professor Broad pointed to the tooth on his foot and said, however, it it seems unable to adapt to the apparition. Don't worry, I have notified Hagrid that he will be back soon. Dumbledore said gently. For a moment, he seemed to notice something, turned his head and looked in a certain direction, smiled and said, Look, Hagrid is back. Yes, Hagrid came back, carrying the oil lamp from Hogsmeade's direction. He drank a bit high, and he smelt a strong smell of alcohol. He strode towards this side. President Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Professor Browder. Hagrid covered a burp, greeted the three professors, and fell on Albert again, seeing that they were all right and relaxed. Tone. It's great that they are okay. These little guys always like to sneak into the woods by themselves when I'm not paying attention. Okay Hagrid. Dumbledore talked to Hagrid about the situation and the hunting ground guard said he would take good care of his pet. Everyone bid farewell to Hagrid and soon came to the school hospital. Was awakened in the middle of the night, Madame Pomfrey did not have a good temper, but she still treated the three of them conscientiously. It's okay. The two Mr. Weasleys just didn't get used to the door key, and they haven't recovered from the faint door key. As for Mr. Anderson, he is just too tired. Just a good night's sleep. Pomfrey after examining the three, the wife gave the diagnosis result. They need to rest and recover completely the day after tomorrow. Now the head nurse is ready to rush people. It's a pity that even Madame Pomfrey can't do anything very well for the faint key, as long as she takes a day or two to relax and it will be fine. Poppy, we need to figure out the cause and effect. It only takes a few minutes. Professor McGonagall said. At most five minutes, the patient needs to rest. Madame Pomfrey frowned and gave Albert a piece of chocolate. Let's go, what is going on? Professor McGonagall's tone also eased a little, staring at the three of them and asked. Albert briefly explained the situation. When he went back to the dormitory to rest, he found that Fred and George had not returned. Later, I learned from Lee Jordan that the two might have entered the woods but they have not yet returned. Then Albert said that he had passed the owl, confirming that the two were indeed still in the Forbidden Forest, and prepared to seek Hagrid's help. Finally, because Hagrid was not there, he had to go into the forest to find someone by himself, and then asked Lee Jordan to return to the castle to ask the professor for help. You violated a lot of school rules along the way, but how did you find the two Mr. Weasleys and how did you escape? Professor McGonagall couldn't help asking, the group of eight people mentioned by Professor Broad what's the matter with the giant eye spider. In the beginning, I thought Fred and George were just lost. In places like the Forbidden Forest, no one leads the way. It's actually easy to get lost. Albert continued to talk about his experience along the way. Later he said that he met a horseman. 
and with the help of a horseman, find the direction where the red sparks are bright. The red sparks are reminded by Albert's letter. Fred took out Albert's handkerchief, and it said, launching red sparks into the sky. If you have anything to do, you can ask the horsemen for help. They will send you out of the forest. Actually, the horsemen are not friendly. Albert laughed at himself. But the horsemen said they never attacked the foals. I think they meant that they would not attack the students. Later I said it was a friend of Hagrid. Negotiated with the horsemen and convinced them to lead me to the direction of the red spark, and later encountered the big spider. Dumbledore nodded, he knew the horsemen in the Forbidden Forest. How on earth did you defeat the eight-eyed giant spider? Professor Broad asked everyone the most curious question. Because of Yaya's warning, I was not attacked by the eight-eyed giant spider, but the obstacle curse and the coma curse had no effect on those big spiders. Albert lay on the bed, chewing chocolate, and recalled, I tried use the dance step spell on its feet to limit its ability to move. In fact, such an attempt was very successful. Wonderful idea, your defense against the dark arts is very good, I am proud of you. Professor Broad nodded. Later, when I calmed down, I remembered the spider retreat curse I happened to see in the library. Albert said with emotion, I didn't expect this curse to have a miraculous effect on those big spiders. Albert slowly told the story of tonight, and finally said that relying on the tree of protection, he turned over half of the eight-eyed giant spider that came up. It's incredible. Professor McGonagall has already seen from Albert's narration the boldness and wisdom of this freshman, whether it was he found twins through owls and hounds, or when he faced horsemen and eight-eyed giant spiders. With his courage and ability, even entering the forbidden forest in the middle of the night requires great courage. Okay, I probably know the situation. Professor McGonagall gave the final sentence, Mr. Weasley, you have seriously violated the school rules. Each one is deducted 100 points and there is a week of confinement. Fred and George both groaned, and Lee Jordan next to him was also taken aback. Each one scored 100 points, and Greyfinder's few scores basically bottomed out. As for Mr. Anderson, Professor McGonagall hesitated, as if thinking about what to do with Albert. In the end, Dumbledore said, Mr. Anderson displayed extraordinary courage and wisdom in this process, saving the lives of two Weasleys. I think this is enough for you to win the Special Contribution Award to the school. Yes let me think about yes, you won 200 points for Greyfinder. Fred and George both breathed a sigh of relief, as they offset the points they deducted. However, when I remembered that I was going to be confined, I was immediately forced. Yes, there is one more thing. When Mr. Anderson was in the Forbidden Forest, I avoided the bad luck of being attacked by the eight-eyed giant spider and being seriously injured, Professor Broad said with a smile, I think this is what Grandfender is winning 50 points. Okay, let's go first. I think they should have a good rest. Dumbledore turned to leave. One more thing. Professor McGonagall said suddenly. What's the matter, Minerva? Dumbledore asked. What are you doing in the woods? Professor McGonagall stared at the twin brothers severely. Under such aggressive pressure, the twins confessed everything. What about the map? Professor McGonagall asked. I threw that map in the Forbidden Forest. Albert started, preventing their brains from twitching and running to the forest to die. Well, can I take care of my patients? Madam Pomford walked over and brought sleeping potions to the three of them. Drink it it will give you a good night's sleep. Albert can guess what it is. A serving of life and death. Under Madame Pomfrey's gaze, Albert drank the potion. The effect of the potion was immediate. He felt that his eyelids were heavy, and he closed his eyes irresistibly, and his dreamless sleep enveloped Albert. Well, you can go back to the dormitory and rest. Outside the school hospital, Professor McGonagall said to Lee Keaton, your approach is very sensible, and you won 10 points for Greyfinder. After Lee Jordan left, Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall looked at Professor Broad. 
Mr. Anderson is basically right. However, I am also shocked that he could find Mr. Weasley. Professor Broad said with emotion, he is undoubtedly a talented genius. By the way, there is something I think tell you. What's up? I think I should resign early. This position will really bring doom and misfortune. Professor Broad smiled bitterly, before the curse hurts me, it is undoubtedly a very wise choice to resign early www.ntlnovel.com What's the secret treasure of Greyfinder that Mr. Weasley said about? Professor McGonagall suddenly raised the map and frowned. There have indeed been similar legends, but this is not certain. You know, legends are not necessarily reliable, although they may have some historical basis. I've heard of similar legends. Professor Broad said. Some people claim that the Big Four each left their own secret treasures in Hogwarts. They contained priceless treasures, possibly gold prophecies and other powerful magic items. There is indeed such a legend in Hogwarts Castle, but the legend is only a legend after all, and no one has found the so-called secret treasure. Dumbledore said softly. The three of them were silent. They all had their own judgment, so naturally they would not easily believe the so-called legend. Yes, the legend is just a legend, as if Hogwarts once circulated the legend of the secret room but no one found the secret room left by Slytherin. The Alchemist of Harry Potter Welcome, please remember the address of this site, read on your mobile phone, so that you can read the latest chapters of the novel The Alchemist of Harry Potter at any time. The next morning, Albert opened his eyes and woke up from the hospital bed. I slept for a good night, and now I feel good health, but my stomach is a little hungry, um, A and D. My legs are a little sore. Sitting up from the bed, covering a yawn, stretched out lazily, and looked sideways at the Weasley brother next door. Both of them are awake, but they are still lying in bed, not knowing what they are thinking. Are you okay? Albert looked at the two with a smile. Not so good, it's a bit disgusting, Fred muttered. This is a sequelae of using the door key, disgusting and hysterical. Fred and George are not the only ones who stunned. It is said that before the opening of the Hogwarts Express, the British Ministry of Magic placed a large number of door keys at assembly points all over the United Kingdom. Many students who arrived at Hogwarts in this way had fainted keys. Symptoms Therefore, the school hospital is always overcrowded in the first few days of school. Tomorrow will be fine, I'm going to have breakfast. You guys will continue to stay here. Albert got up and changed his clothes, and used the repair curse by the way to restore the clothes torn by the branches. Albert. Fred suddenly called Albert. What's the matter? Albert stopped and asked, turning his head. Thank you for saving us. The twins said in unison. You're welcome, we are friends, aren't we? Albert smiled and waved his hand. To be honest, both Fred and George were so moved that they wept bitterly. If Albert hadn't noticed their disappearance, guessed where they were going, and risked their lives to come to the rescue when the two were in desperation, they would have been eaten by the big spider. Fred and George looked at each other, looked at Albert's leaving back, and murmured softly, Yes, friends. Albert didn't eat breakfast because it was almost noon and the auditorium no longer served breakfast. He went directly to the kitchen, and enjoyed the freshly baked food under the warm hospitality of the house elves. Albert opened his task panel while eating, and completed the task of the spider slayer. Last night, a total of 94 eight-eyed giant spiders were turned over and 4,700 experience was gained, which is really a lot of experience. No loss. Make a fortune with blood. Albert was very satisfied with his gains and indeed the adventure last night was worth it. In other words, what is this? He suddenly shifted his gaze to the new task. There are three things. You won the Hogwarts Special Contribution Award once, why not get it several times? During the school, he won two more Special Contribution Awards, allowing himself to be named Hogwarts. Current progress, one-third. Reward, 6,000 experience 
a level 3 designated skill, prestige in the magic world plus 200. I'm going for it. It's great, my mission. After Albert saw the mission information, the sausages that had just been stuffed into his mouth fell into the plate. I didn't expect this kind of show operation. Albert's sight shifted to another mission. He didn't notice it last night, and two new missions emerged. Greyfinder's Secret Treasure You found a map of Greyfinder's Secret Treasure. Although its credibility is still not high, some people claim that there are invaluable treasures in the Secret Treasure. As an explorer, you should not miss this adventure and find the location of the Secret Treasure, and enter the Treasure House. Reward, Unknown Unknown? It was the first time Albert saw the situation where the task reward was unknown. Last night, he lied to Professor McGonagall, saying that the treasure map was thrown in the Forbidden Forest, but the treasure map was still in his pocket. Albert is not very interested in the so-called secret treasures of the twins, and stayed just to see if he could trigger the mission. The task was triggered, but, the task prompt seems a bit tricky. Albert took out the so-called treasure map from his pocket, looked up and down this old parchment, and found that the thing had changed. Behind the parchment, there is an extra sentence. This is a great adventure. There is also something similar to a compass. The pointer points to the secret treasure. It still looks quite bluff, no wonder Fred and George would believe this is a real treasure map. However, this should be a map made by a certain wizard. Otherwise the prompts given by the mission will not be credible and some people claim it. The wizard who made the map may have found the so-called Greyfinder's secret treasure, and the other party left the map purely to show off his deeds and allow future generations to experience their own adventures. The phrase this is a great adventure probably means that. Of course, there is another possibility. That is the maker of this map, and did not find the so-called Greyfinder's secret treasure. It left this map, just hoping that someone would help him find the secret treasure, or it was just a prank. The twins obviously believed that it was the former, so they went on an adventure, but got lost and plunged into the hunting area of the eight-eyed giant spider. Forget it, I'll talk about this later. Albert temporarily put aside his idea of looking for treasure now, and this route might have to pass the eight-eyed giant spider's lair. Those monsters are very dangerous. I was lucky enough to complete a hundred kills this time. It was because of luck that I still had to be a little self-aware. However, Albert is still a little interested in the secret treasures left behind by the Big Four, even though the rewards for the mission are slightly pitted. If Greyfinder's secret treasure is in the Forbidden Forest, it is because Greyfinder himself likes to take risks, and it takes courage to get the treasure. So would Ravenclaw also have a secret treasure? But where would she hide the treasure? Hogwarts Castle? What about Hufflepuff's secret treasure? Slytherin, well, shouldn't Slytherin's secret treasure be hidden in the secret room? No, if Slytherin's secret treasure is really hidden in the secret room, Tom would not have discovered it, even if it is estimated, he will be taken away. Wouldn't it? The so-called secret treasure is the basilisk. Albert immediately got rid of these weird ideas and continued to receive rewards for rescue operations. Looking at the two skill points given by the task, Albert felt that his mood became happy, which meant that he could upgrade two skills to level 3, or upgrade one skill to level 4. The Spider Hunter provides Albert with 10,000 experience and the title of Spider Hunter. By the way, how do you get a bottle of the 8-eyed giant spider venom? The 25-gallon from the last mission was sent to Truman through his hands. Who will give it to yourself this time? Professor Broad? Since there will be www.mtlnovel.com on the task, I should not cheat myself. Albert didn't think about this anymore. After eating quickly, he left the kitchen and prepared to write a letter to help Yaya buy dog food. Yaya helped himself a lot last night, and Albert will not forget its credit. What's more, my income this time is very good. However, just after passing through the hall, he was stopped. Katrina, what's the matter? Professor Broad is looking for you. Katrina said. 
coming. The bottle of eight-eyed giant spider venom on the mission was delivered to himself through the hands of Professor Broad. Thank you, I see. I'll go over. Albert nodded slightly towards Katrina, turned and walked towards the defense against the dark arts office on the second floor of the castle. Welcome, please remember the address of this site, read on your mobile phone, so that you can read the latest chapters of the novel The Alchemist of Harry Potter at any time. The Alchemist of Harry Potter Chapter 151 Treasure Land Good afternoon, Professor Broad. Albert tapped on the door of the defense against the dark arts office, and when he got permission, he pushed the door in. He focused on Professor Broad who was sitting on the sofa and reading books. He did not forget to thank him for what happened last night. Last night, thanks to Professor Broad, thank you for saving the three of us. You're welcome. Professor Broad looked at Albert with a smile, I think, even if I didn't go, you can still take them out of the Forbidden Forest. Albert did not answer. He did have a way to take the Weasley brothers out of the Forbidden Forest, but he would not admit that he was capable of doing it. After all, he is only a freshman in the first year, it is impossible to use apparition. Sit down, what should you drink? Professor Browb pointed to the books on the table and said with emotion, Mog has already let people print the book, and his efficiency is as efficient as ever. Look at his own time. The fruits of your labor. You mean Mr. McDug has already published a book? Albert sat across from Professor Broad, picked up the book on the table, and gently flicked the gilded letters on the writing with his finger, Advanced Magic Writing Research. It is indeed a high-level study of magic text, the title of the book is simply straightforward. There is a surprise on the first page. Professor Broad blinked mysteriously at Albert. Are there any surprises? Albert was a little puzzled, glanced suspiciously at Professor Broad, and turned to the first page of the book. There is a sentence written on it. Dedicated to the youngest master of magic text. Thank him for helping me complete the writing of advanced magic text research. Mog McDug. Albert was stunned. Of course he knew who the master of magic text was referring to, but when was he, the master of magic text? Actually, Mog thought about printing your name on it. However, he later felt that with your abilities, he didn't need to rely on him to be famous, and it was a bit early for you to be famous now. The professor closed the book and looked at Albert on the other side and continued, he gave you this book. I remember advanced magic text research was not finished yet, did you? Oh, it turned out to be like this. Albert turned to the last page and looked at the content on it, and he understood what was going on, Mr. McDugger split the book into three parts. After a while, this book will be sold in bookstores. I guess few people will buy it. Professor Broad said with a smile, Mog bet me on this matter, saying that he could sell 100. This. Albert glanced at the price of the book, 5 gallons. In terms of the price of a book, it is not very expensive, but the question is how many people will study this stuff? I can't read it, let alone buy it. Moreover, the population of British wizards is also a big problem. If they can't be translated into other languages and can sell a hundred copies, even if Mr. MacDug has the skills. By the way, there is something for you. Professor Broad put the glass bottle in front of Albert. The poison of the eight-eyed giant spider. When I tracked your tracks, I found one that was killed by you. The eight-eyed giant spider collected some poison at a rare opportunity. For me. Albert noticed that the venom of the eight-eyed giant spider had been specially treated, and the glass bottle had been released with a freezing curse. Yes, this is your trophy. Speaking of this, Professor Broad was also quite emotional, it's just that, I didn't expect that there are so many eight-eyed giant spiders in the Forbidden Forest, let alone you defeated them. In fact, the bottle of poison in front of Albert was obtained from the first eight-eyed giant spider that was knocked down by him. The hapless guy was eventually killed by Albert using a bunch of spells. Professor Browd later discovered that there were still a bunch of eight-eyed giant spiders in the Forbidden Forest, so he did not continue to collect poison, 
which was related to the rush to find someone. Professor, can you? Albert hesitated and said, help me get rid of it, it's useless for me to hold this thing. I guessed you would say that. Professor Broad nodded with satisfaction, this is a wise choice. The venom of the eight-eyed giant spider is not easy to preserve, and this liquid is very precious. Bottle, probably worth fifty gallons. Of course, it might be higher on the black market. Then trouble you. Albert said. He knows very well that holding this kind of thing by himself is actually useless, so it's better to change to Garen. If you really need to use the poison of the eight-eyed giant spider, go around in the Forbidden Forest, and you will naturally have it. After all, the eight-eyed giant spider farm. Here you are. Professor Broad handed Albert the Garen prepared in advance. In fact, it is not difficult to guess Albert's choice from the beginning. Thank you, Professor. Albert thanked the other person. You're welcome. Professor Broad was more satisfied with Albert, and he continued, There is one more thing. What's the matter? Greyfinder's secret treasure, you still keep that map. Professor Broad ruthlessly exposed Albert's original lie. The latter's expression froze, neither admitting, nor denying, just quietly listening to Professor Broad to continue. Don't try to enter the Forbidden Forest anymore, it is still dangerous for you. Professor Broad warned. Is there really a so-called secret treasure? Albert asked curiously. The legend says that the Big Four left a legacy of their own at Hogwarts. This is a gift to Hogwarts students. Professor Broad said of what he knew, however, the so-called secret treasures are just legends. No one knows where the secret treasures are, and no one finds them. Of course, if they were so easy to be known, they would not be called secret treasures. Albert was silent. He thought that Professor Broad might know something. Every defense against the dark arts professor comes to teach at Hogwarts with his own purpose. Isn't Professor Browder here to find the so-called secret treasure? Ravenclaw secret treasure? Wait. Secrets? Treasures? Ravenclaw? House of all requests? It is said that the house of requirement is Ravenclaw's handwriting. Maybe the secret treasure of Ravenclaw is hidden there. As for Professor Broad, he probably knew it a long time ago. Albert felt that he might have guessed the so-called truth. You can try if you have the opportunity. What are you thinking? Professor Broad interrupted Albert's thinking. I'm thinking, where did the eight-eyed giant spiders come from in the Forbidden Forest? It's not a joke that such a large number of spiders come from. Is there really someone raising the eight-eyed giant spider? Albert said casually. It shouldn't be possible www.mtlnovel.com Professor Broad stared at Albert and said seriously, don't rush to find some secret treasure. I cherish my life. Albert replied. By the way, I heard that you use a wand made of redwood. Professor Broad suddenly talked about Albert's wand, making the latter a little confused. Yes, Mr. Ollivander said that it is a magic wand that can bring luck. Albert usually talks about red cedar wands with others, and he will tell others like this. That's good, the wand made of redwood is good. Professor Broad nodded, relieved. Of course, he also knew that the so-called red cedar wand that can bring good luck is purely foolish, but the wizards who hold this kind of wand are some people who are prepared, and they can usually overcome danger. Albert Anderson obviously fits this point. From what happened last night, it is not difficult to see that he could find two Weasleys and return safely from the Forbidden Forest, not just because of the luck brought by the Red Cedar Wand. But Albert made a series of preparations from the beginning. Welcome, please remember the address of this site, read on your mobile phone, so that you can read the latest chapters of the novel The Alchemist of Harry Potter at any time. The Alchemist of Harry Potter Chapter 152 Kind Reminder the next day, the needle-like shape of Fred and George's faint keys had completely disappeared. The two left the school hospital early in the morning and met with the roommates who were dining in the auditorium. What's this? 
George looked at the flying owl, looked at the package on Albert's desk, and asked curiously. Dog food. Albert said without looking up, I bought it for Jamaica, thanks to it the night before. Oh, Yai really helped a lot. George agreed. He actually didn't know what Yaya helped a lot, but Albert said so and bought dog food for him, which must have been a big help. Where to go to Hagrid later, are you going? Albert asked casually. No, we plan to go to the library. There is still a lot of homework for the holiday. Fred touched George with his elbow. The latter recovered from the trance and quickly agreed, we're not going. Albert asked casually. He knew that Fred and George would not even dare to see Hagrid. If the two of them go, they will be talked about by Hagrid for a long time. With dog food bought from the Fantastic Beasts store, Albert went to Hagrid's cabin. Yaya has completely recovered and is playing a group around Albert. It likes the dog food Albert bought. Last time, thanks to Fang. Albert said to Hagrid, who was boiling the water while rubbing the head of Fang. You are so courageous, you dare to enter the woods alone in the middle of the night. Hagrid was taking the copper kettle from the fireplace to pour water, and staring at Albert with his arms akimbo dissatisfied. Hagrid was blaming Albert for his recklessness. Didn't you say that as long as you put your teeth on, the creatures in the woods won't hurt us? Albert easily blocked Hagrid's words back. Have I said anything like this? Hagrid stammered a little. Yes, otherwise you said how dare I take risks. Okay, when I said it. Hagrid was a little depressed, pouring tea, thinking about when he had said this. Although it's not like you said, Yaya helped a lot, just a little timid. Albert took a sip of the amber tea and threw another bone-like food to Yaya. This is one of Hound's favorite snacks. Professor Browd said, you brought down a lot of eight-eyed giant spiders in the Forbidden Forest. When it came to this, Hagrid was a little entangled. A lot, those big spiders are very dangerous. Albert glanced at Hagrid and said to himself, Actually, I am very curious why there are such monsters in the Forbidden Forest. I have checked their information. These names monsters called eight-eyed giant spiders live deep in the Rhine forests of southeastern Asia. Someone must have released them in the Forbidden Forest. Hagrid's expression suddenly became a little awkward, because he was the one who released the spider in the Forbidden Forest. Well, I also met the legendary horsemen, they were very unfriendly to wizards. Albert recalled his first meeting with the horsemen, frowned slightly, and continued, we almost started fighting. I was thinking about whether to bring them down. This is a pretty stupid idea. Hagrid stammered and corrected. Fortunately, you didn't do this. Hogwarts has always had a good relationship with the horsemen. Not bad. Albert shook his head non-committal. Perhaps, Principal Dumbledore can easily stun most horsemen. It is said that he is the most powerful wizard in the magic world. Dumbledore is certainly the most powerful wizard. Hagrid agreed with Albert's point of view. I think the horsemen should know your hounds. They think I shouldn't go into the woods. A brown black horseman could make trouble for me at first. Maybe you know him, but it's undeniable that it was not a friendly meeting. Albert's first impression of the horse is really bad. Horse people have always been like this, don't care. Hagrid comforted. Um, I really don't care. Albert said seriously, since I dare to go deep into the Forbidden Forest, I am prepared to die in it. If the horsemen dare to shoot arrows at me, I will faint them and let them they enjoy what it feels like to be hung on a tree. Albert said these words in a malicious tone, and even Hagrid could see that Albert had a bad first impression of the horsemen. Don't do that, they have no malice, and the horsemen will not harm the students at Hogwarts. Hagrid said that he did not want a conflict between Albert and the horsemen. I have no ill intentions. By the way, next time you meet a horseman, thank you for a brown-red horseman. It seems to be Ronan. Although the horseman did not guide us out of the Forbidden Forest, he did it for me. I thank it. However, I don't think the horseman would like my gift. 
Albert said again, so, thank you or something. I will. Hagrid poured Albert another cup of amber tea, took a sip, and seriously ordered, don't enter the forbidden forest by yourself again. Good luck this time, but not not every time it can be so good. Do you really think I intended to venture into the forbidden forest? Albert couldn't help but roll his eyes at Hagrid. If you are at home, I will definitely find you to enter the forest. By the way, the next time you enter the forest. Be careful yourself, don't be dragged away by the big spiders, even you can't face a large group of big spiders. Although he said that, Albert was actually molesting Hagrid, lest he want to give him a lesson about his entry into the woods. Hagrid's expression was really, tangled. Actually, those eight-eyed giant spiders are not as dangerous as you think. Hagrid hesitated for a moment, and still spoke. It's not, as dangerous as imagined. Albert repeated every word. Hagrid, I think you are joking. If the eight-eyed giant spider is safe, it won't be classified as, dot. Albert stared at Hagrid. After a moment of silence, he suddenly said again, if I were if you rush over later, you probably will find it difficult to find Fred and George's bodies in the Forbidden Forest. Hagrid became more silent, because what Albert said was probably true. Those creatures have something to do with you, right? Don't deny it. Albert sighed lightly. From what you just said, I can be sure of this. Eight-eyed giant spiders shouldn't have lived in the Forbidden Forest. Professor Browd once joked that someone might be keeping an eight-eyed giant spider, but I think that is just a joke. Hagrid, I still need to remind you that maybe the eight-eyed giant spiders won't eat you, but they certainly won't mind eating your friends. Albert looked at the silent Hagrid and continued, I don't the point of accusing you is just to remind you that there is no danger to you, but it does not mean that there is no danger to others. Hagrid didn't speak. You you read www.uuganchu. Com just looks very unnatural, obviously he is not willing to listen to these words. You have the blood of a giant, right? Don't be too busy denying it. Albert raised his hand to interrupt Hagrid's words, and said in a low voice, the blood of a giant makes you naturally fearless of those dangerous magical creatures, but those monsters it only takes one bite, and it may kill us. There is one more thing, don't admit it, and don't mention that you have giant blood. I never mind speculating on others with the utmost malice. If someone uses this to attack you, it will cause you unimaginable trouble. The wizards fear giants just as they fear mysterious people. Albert quickly left Hagrid's cabin and completed a mission related to Hagrid by the way. A kind reminder. Your friend Rubius Hagrid's worldview is a bit different. As a friend, you should give him some reminders before he makes a stupid mistake, and do your duty as a friend. Reward, 500 experience, Rubius Hagrid's favorability plus 5. The Alchemist of Harry Potter. Welcome, please remember the address of this site, read on your mobile phone, so that you can read the latest chapters of the novel The Alchemist of Harry Potter at any time. The Alchemist of Harry Potter Chapter 153 fake. It is said that Greyfinder can't hide secrets, this is really true. Albert went deep into the Forbidden Forest alone in the middle of the night and fished Fred and George out of the Forbidden Forest, which has now been widely circulated by Hogwarts students. It is said that on the way to the Forbidden Forest, Albert also killed a large number of spider monsters, and finally with the help of the horsemen, he successfully found the Weasley brothers. Anyway, this incident was rumored to be very mysterious and became a big legend for Greyfinder. Of course, some people scoff at the so-called legend. After all, you can never expect a new student to break into the Forbidden Forest single-handedly and successfully defeat a large group of terrifying monsters, afraid that you haven't woken up yet. No matter how fierce and outrageous the outside world is, Albert does not admit or deny it anyway. Rumors spread throughout the school the next morning, a large group of students jammed Albert at the dining table and asked about this legendary adventure. Albert, who was eating, reluctantly put down his fork, raised his head and said to everyone, in fact, 
I defeated a large number of spider monsters along the way that night, and almost fought with the horsemen. Finally, through negotiations, the horsemen agreed. Take me to find the red spark cast by Fred. When I dared to go, I saw Fred and George stuck in a tree by a large group of spider monsters. In the end, I managed to overcome the madness and finally defeated the spider monsters, and drive away those big spiders, save Brother Weasley. There was a weird silence in the hall, and everyone couldn't help but look at each other. For a moment, someone finally couldn't help laughing. If you don't believe it, it's right. Albert sighed deeply, and said helplessly to all the audience, you also believe in rumors like this, and you actually came to ask me if it's true. I really don't know you. Do you dislike too little homework during vacation? Many people's faces went dark immediately, and they all could hear the implication in Albert's words, I believe all the rumors, and they even came to ask me, are you idle or mentally retarded? After all, Albert, as the client, said so, and the matter naturally ended. Is this really fake? Shauna couldn't help but ask. Who knows? Albert said disapprovingly, next time, believe less rumors that mental retardation is a disease that will spread everywhere. Whether some things are true or not, you need to judge by yourself. I believe you defeated more than a hundred spider monsters. Shauna said suddenly, Greyfinder Academy is sixty points more. It's fine for you to be happy. Albert's mouth twitched and replied helplessly. Of course it's true, I'll tell you, Albert. Fred was about to tell Shauna what happened at the time, and Albert gave him a stern look. I remember, you still have a week of confinement, right? Albert suddenly interrupted Fred, Filch asked me to tell you, remember to go to his office to be confined at six o'clock this evening. Confinement? So, this thing is really true. Shauna looked at the frustrated Weasley brother, thinking so. Greyfinder's points suddenly went up by 60, which is not a fake. If it were not for the sudden increase in points, everyone would not believe this rumor, let alone the so-called truth. This fact is too much. However, where the points are, that's why there is the scene just now. After all, this fact is legendary and many people are unwilling to believe that first-year students can do it. Albert said this was just a rumor, and they would comfort themselves and say it was false, and then they would go away. As for using this to mock Albert? I didn't see him and didn't say that it was true, and he easily put his mental retardation on everyone onlookers. If he continued to care about this aspect, wouldn't he appear to be mentally retarded? However, what is the point? Angelina asked curiously. Actually, Lee Jordan and I told Professor McGonagall in time, and through the owl helped Professor McGonagall to confirm that Fred and George were in the woods, so the professor gave us 30 points each. Albert he gave Lee Keaton, who was next to him, a gesture, and the latter nodded repeatedly, indicating that this is how things were. Angelina glanced at the two suspiciously, and stopped asking. Ahem go to the library to do holiday homework. Albert proposed. Fred and George raised their hands in agreement. Their homework progress was much slower than the others, and Lee Jordan did not refuse. They could only spare time to play after finishing early. I suddenly felt that those people were so stupid, so I believed your nonsense. Fred muttered. That's because they don't want to admit it, a voice sounded behind Albert and the four stopped, turning their heads to look in the direction of the voice. It was Isabel. Professor Broad is looking for you. Isabel said to Albert. Sorry, we will do homework together another day. Albert cast an apologetic look at the roommates and walked to the office of the defense against the dark arts professor on the second floor. Congratulations on becoming a man of Hogwarts. Now many people are discussing your deeds. Maybe you can record this in your notes, and in a few years, it will become a legend. No, thank you. Albert said irritably, and next time you listen to rumors less. If you listen to too much of that kind of stuff, 
people will become stupid and easily lose the most basic judgment. There is a medal for your special contribution in the prize showroom. If you don't believe it, go and see it by yourself. Isabel glanced at Albert and reminded him indifferently, next time, when you fool others, remember be careful not to expose too many flaws. I'm just saying what everyone wants to hear. Albert just shrugged his shoulders, not embarrassed by Isabel. Sometimes people don't want to hear the truth, they just want to hear it's just the result they want, there is no need to head on with them, it is meaningless. Isabel looked at Albert and suddenly said, Next time you talk to me, remember to put away your bad taste and treat others as fools. Don't you think you are also stupid? I just told the facts www.mtlnovel.com Albert shrugged. So, that thing is true, you really? A voice suddenly sounded, and when Albert stopped, he happened to see Katrina walking towards this side. False. Albert replied simply. Do I look stupid? Katrina looked at her sister Isabel, as if seeking answers. Fake. Isabel said. Katrina. Did you think I didn't hear your conversation just now? Regardless of whether it is true or not, this matter is already false. Isabel explained. Why? Katrina asked puzzled. Because my client said it was false. Albert said of course, so, this thing is naturally false. Welcome, please remember the address of this site, read on your mobile phone, so that you can read the latest chapters of the novel The Alchemist of Harry Potter at any time. P.S. Warmly celebrate the 70th anniversary of the founding of the motherland, and wish you all a happy holiday. Come in, the door is open. Professor Broad's voice came from the office. Albert's hand that was about to knock on the door froze in the air, and Isabel next to him glanced at him, stretched his hand open the wooden door and entered the office. You resigned. After Albert went in, he found that this was no longer the office of defense against the dark arts he was familiar with. Several large bookshelves on the walls have been evacuated, and expensive wool carpets and silk curtains are missing. Everything on the desk was empty, and there was a leather suitcase. I have resigned and will leave today. Professor Broad pointed to the sofa and motioned for a few people to sit down and talk. A few days ago, he was nearly attacked by an eight-eyed giant spider in the Forbidden Forest, which made Broad feel that the threat of curse was approaching him, so the defense against the dark arts professor simply submitted a letter of resignation to Dumbledore. He didn't want to get hurt by that curse, or lose his life inexplicably. Albert naturally knew the reason for Professor Browder's resignation early. The position of Professor of Defense against the Dark Arts was cursed. It was the wisest choice to voluntarily resign before he was injured. It's good to resign, Albert said. It's a wise decision to leave before the curse comes. Shut up Anderson. Katrina couldn't help glaring at Albert. No, no, I actually agree with Mr. Anderson. Professor Broad raised his hand to appease Katrina and said with a smile, The curse of defense against the dark arts has always existed. I am not here to teach because I want to be hurt, or died by the curse. Katrina was completely stunned, she could hardly believe that Uncle Bud would say such a thing. But, if you quit, what should the defense against the dark arts class do? The girl still said her doubts. The knowledge I can teach you has already been taught to you in the previous courses. The rest of this semester is for review and final exams. Professor Broad continued, in the period before the exam, Dumbledore will find someone to substitute for the lesson. Could it be Snape? Albert frowned slightly. Although Snape was an expert in the dark arts field, Albert really didn't like that guy. It's Professor Snape. Professor Broad corrected. Well, Professor Snape. Albert thought of another thing, what about the third part of Mr. McDoug's advanced magic text research? Oh, you said that it was postponed for the time being. Professor Broad's understatement was like talking about what to eat for lunch today. Postponed. Albert was also taken aback, and he didn't expect to get such an answer. Yes, it's postponed. Professor Broad looked at Albert. 
the last remaining part seems to have encountered some bottlenecks. Mog decided to postpone the third part. Speaking, Professor Browd took the suitcase, took out a document bag from it and handed it to Albert, you are also an expert in Maun, and Mog thinks you will also be interested in it. After reading it, what ideas you can write to him. I see. Albert nodded, and got up very wittily to leave. He could see that Professor Broad had something to say to Sister McDug. Isabel got up and followed to the door. You don't have to send me off specially. Albert looked at Isabel and quipped. The next second, the wooden door in front of Albert slammed shut. What a humorless guy. Albert looked at the closed wooden door, shook his head and turned to leave the defense against the dark arts office. He was going to the library, finishing the few remaining vacation homework, and studying what Professor Broad gave him. That guy finally left. Katrina muttered. However, Uncle Mog seems to be very optimistic about him. Thinking of this, the girl was a little bit depressed, and the feeling of being crushed by others was really too bad. From the very beginning, you chose the wrong target. Isabel sat back on the sofa and touched Katrina's head to remind him, that is a real genius, destined to leave school with countless auras, you competing with him is to find yourself uncomfortable. Katrina is a bit dissatisfied, is the gap between the two sides really that big? Albert is very good. Professor Broad smiled. He is the most talented wizard I have ever met. Yes, it's just a bit nasty. Isabel couldn't help but shook his head, remembering what Albert had done. Ravenclaw students are all weird, Professor Broad said. Moreover, geniuses are usually out of step with ordinary people. Isabel's face twitched. She thought that Albert's evil taste had nothing to do with his being a genius. Uncle Bud, Albert Anderson is in Greyfinder, not in Ravenclaw, Katrina reminded. Oh, of course I know. Do you have anything to do with us? Isabel brought the subject back. These are the things your father left with me. Professor Broad took out a delicate wooden box from the suitcase with complicated patterns on it. Can't open. Katrina tried it and found that the wooden box couldn't be opened. There is magic protection on it, and it can't be opened in ordinary ways. Professor Broad drew out his wand, touched it on the wooden box, chanted a series of strange spells, and then said to Sister McDugger, put your hand on the box to open it. Katrina and Isabel put their hands on the box one after another, and vaguely heard a faint clicking sound, the wooden box opened automatically, revealing the items inside. A letter, A and D. A key. Is this my father's relic? Katrina picked up the key and looked up and down in confusion. She remembered her father died in a magic experiment when they were very young. Isabel picked up the letter, opened it and began to read the contents of the letter. The content of the letter is very simple, introducing the key and the relic left to the sisters. That was the key to Gringotts. The items in the treasury were not Canaan, but the files and records of the magic experiment that year. Why did my father give those to us? Isabel looked at Professor Broad in confusion. Does he want us to continue his research? No, after he died, Mog sorted out some of the relics. He believed that these were the inheritance left to you by your father, so, he sealed up the original research materials. Professor Broad explained to the two. The source of the key. Thank you for your kindness, Uncle Bud, but we don't want those things. Isabel declined decisively. After all, it was the magic experiment that caused them to lose their father, and Isabel instinctively rejected these things. But she also understood what Uncle Mog meant. With Isabel's talent, he can continue to study in the future and complete the magic experiment. This is also the reason why Professor Broad gave the things to the two sisters. I can understand. Professor Broad nodded, if you don't want it, I will take care of it myself. Isabel. Katrina was very dissatisfied that her sister didn't ask her opinion, so she refused.